into my emotions Cause all the good times that we had Is flooding like an ocean Sometimes I wish We made it through the summers I never thought I'd lose my homie Love a friend but it's over
Welcome to another edition of Roll Swap here at IEM Katowice 2024. Rick and Swisher are with me. What we're going to do is go to this really amazing restaurant here. It's called Patsik. And you are going to make a pierogi for the head chef. Are you ready for this? No. Hi. Nice to meet Michael, you guys. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I will be your chef today. Have you ever tried dumplings? I've had them before, yeah. Here is our apron and the recipes. Hey, those cheese pierogies. See how this goes. Shouldn't be too bad. So you have to start with peeling potatoes. This is something you've never done before. Never. Uh, we don't have to wash them or anything? You need to wash after. Oh, after yeah. peeling. See, that's an experience. Oh, wait, this might be harder than I thought. This is like watching Virtus Pro play Counter Strike. It's taking a very long time. Let's wash them. You might peel potatoes cut into one inch cubes. You know how to cut cubes? I mean, it's cube ish. Cube ish. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> Have people really cut themselves with the potato peelers? Yeah, I've cut myself with a potato peeler. Really? Yes. All right, last one. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. All right, good. And then we fill this up with water, right? Yeah. How much, you know? So it's about two inches above. What's yeah. two inches? Of what? Enjoyable. Taught him his first potato peel. He has no inches either, even though he's American. Keep the cooking area clean. It's mm. the biggest tip. Because if it's dirty, and it's dirty. Hey, what the? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's good. The statement's coming from you. Uh, it's time to cut some onions now. I'm trying to remember how Mama Schmidt cuts onions. If you spent a bit more time in the kitchen, that would have helped a bit. Definitely. Oh, but we were, you know, playing Counter Strike to get to this stage. There's also Chipotle in America, so, you know. Oh, away. <laughs> you just did that. Wait, I don't think we need to peel all this, bro. You looked at me and then just threw it away. My mom's gonna be disappointed at me. <laughs> Wait, no, I've seen Gordon Ramsay do this, I think. <laughs> Gladly watch the professional. Okay, yep, we failed. Oh, okay, technique. Impressive. Gordon yeah. Ramsay, yeah. not Thank bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching Ramsay. I love him. Nice. Okay, Jesus. Okay, now I know it's not as clean as that, but like... And that is how you chop an onion. We need a skillet, we need butter, and we need medium to high heat. I think I see a skillet. You cleaned it? Yeah. Awesome. Do you have butter? Uh, I'll give you. We need a spatula or something else. Oh, they're burnt already. <laughs> no, man. So they're brown? Yeah. And then salt and pepper, no? Yep, go ahead. Oh, it must be a little golden and soft. Yes, golden and soft. Golden and soft. So we got some of our potatoes here. We transfer them into the bowl. Nice. We have to turn them into the filling. We have to put onions in there and the cheese to onions. stir to combine. Oh, they actually smell good. Get some 
Yeah. If you want, you can put the gloves. If you want, don't want to do your hands. Yeah, it's too late for that. That's too late. Just commit, bro. Cooking's supposed to be dirty. Are you always clean? Yeah. Aye. How much are you thinking, like? Generously. Generously. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good measurement, I think. Generously. Now we just get in there. How's this looking? Good. Nice. I think the filling is okay. Yeah. Okay, now we need to mix together flour and salt in a medium bowl. Okay, 0.27. Okay, so we need a lot more. You need 750. Yes. Yeah. Is there even that much in there? Yeah, just pour it all. Yeah, there's no way that's more than 750. Was this 750? Yes. Okay. Half a teaspoon of salt. A teaspoon is a half a tablespoon. Okay, all right, perfect. And now you mix it, you got that? How long do you normally wait for food at a restaurant before you get annoyed? It can go like an hour. Depends. How do you think you're doing in terms of uh, time? Surely only at like 10 minutes. Surely yeah. only 10 minutes. Agreed. We'll go with that. Agreed. Yep. Oh, 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 Okay, add more water probably. You go. Okay, now I will show you how to make a dumpling. There's flour. No, it's a stick. Yeah. Just roll it. Uh -huh. Feels like Chef Conrad suddenly yeah, doing the work. He's uh, giving us some tips on how to actually get the dough sort of like that and cut. Nice. Okay, then you fold it. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. That looks very official. It's your first pierogi. Hey, not too shabby. Flame in there, jelly. Jelly. Perfect. Perfect. How do you think they're gonna be? They're gonna be good, bro. Think so? Yeah. Like A1, Gordon Ramsay, like tier one. The timer just went off. They look ready. About done. I think they're good. Hold the play. You ready? Yeah. Good. Ooh. It's time now to test the final product. Swisher and Rick with their pierogi. Here you go. They look great. Time to eat? I think, yes. I agree. Nice, let's go. I'm so scared. What do you think, Chef Conrad? Very good. If you gave them a score out of 10? Yes. Yes. It's very potatoey, boys. Yep. But I'm a fan of carbs. I mean, I wouldn't pay you to make these for me. Okay. I wouldn't pay myself. Fair enough, but 100%, good job. I'm gonna eat all of it. So, how did you feel about the whole experience? Did, did we enjoy learning to be a chef? Yes, very much so. I think it was probably the best experience I've had. Um, I've never worked a job, honestly, ever, apart from Counter-Strike, so. <laughs> for uh, restaurants, it makes me kind of respect the time you're waiting, you know? They are cooking it up back there, and they still do it at a, a good pace, so. Definitely. I don't think I can go home and make these exactly, but it makes me more interested in cooking. Chef Conrad, would you hire them? Be honest. Be honest. <laughs> Be honest. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. He's lying. That's my boy. No, that's my boy. Yeah. Let's go. We're getting hired. Just cooked this up in the back. Um, honestly, that one pierogi that we just made really taught us the masterpiece of cooking, yeah. um, the culinary art. And so we cooked this up in about 20 minutes. Um, he actually made that in five, five, yeah. five minutes. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Put some blueberries on top, just to top it off, you know? Now we got the touch, so. Yeah. All thanks to Karat. What's up everybody, it's Darf Mike. I'm here sitting down at the table with Heroic to talk about life, Counter-Strike, whatever we get to. Uh, mostly what I wanna talk to you guys about, right, is this is a very fresh new team. It's kind of a studs up build of a roster. It's not even like, a, I mean, I guess technically it's a rebuild, but it's not really like a rebuild. It's like you guys are making a full new team at this point. Mm -hmm. And so I want to talk to you guys about that process, like how you do that. Um, specifically starting like just about like how you find the philosophy, the identity of a team, because you've got some connected parts. You guys played together, obviously, on the old heroic roster. You've got uh, Nerds and Saul coming over. There's connection there. But then you've also got like the strong voices in the team, the IGL, you're coming in with a different perspective, the Opera, you're coming in with a different perspective. So that's like three or four schools of thought. How do you even start figuring out what you want this team to look like? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very tough and it, it needs a lot of talking and uh, trying out ideas and trying to see what works for us. But 
one thing we have in common and everyone is agreeing on is that we're not going to create one identity. We're not going to be the old heroic or old end. So like for that matter, like we want to create our own stuff and uh, find out what works for us. I think that's one thing we have talked about from the start and going to try and do that uh, as best as possible. And that will take some time and we have to accept that. Talking about it from different perspectives, right? Um, so you guys, well, we'll start with the, the, the old heroic side of things, right? That team was known for having like a really strong identity, right? I mean, everyone's watched the huddles and the you guys doing the, the chants before the game and also just the aggression, the gambling, that kind of thing. You don't want this to be the old heroic, right? This is its own thing. So how are you finding your voices now without that sort of immediate unified identity? I guess. How are you finding what you want to do in the server? Uh, maybe, you know, beyond that old team or with what you learned from that old roster? Yeah, I've, I think we have a lot of good things to bring from the uh, old old team. Uh, but of course, we don't want to like say to everyone else, it's like, we want to do this our way and you just have to deal with it. We want to bring something up that we feel confident in doing, like all of us. So it's not like me and Tessis is the ones in control and saying, okay, this is how we do stuff. Just like all of us being open and talking about like how we want things to be and philosophies and just talking about CS in general. Okay. What was that process like in the beginning? I mean, literally like the first time you guys got together, whether it was a boot camp or whether it was online or what is it? Like who's leading the conversation early on? I, I think we're pretty like... I think we all of, uh, all of us did like a good amount of job uh, of talking about everything. Um, but I mean, f for me, I wanted like Damon to feel uh, comfortable. So I wanted him to like bring his stuff and then we could slowly like chime in with what we felt was good in our past teams. So we like kind of built slow on it. Okay. Talking about that from the IGLing perspective, right? In your old roster in Apex, you came into the team and changed the identity of it, but it was four players who had been playing together, right? And you're coming in and, and the coach as well had been there. Kuban had been there. So you were coming in to sort of a ready built team and then taking the wheel here you're, you're building the car in the process as well so what's what's that difference like what's the the compare and contrast to like arriving in apex versus now arriving in this new team in heroic uh i would say in apex as you already said the team was already kind of built except me and they had some kind of idea how they want to play and i just joined the team and I, of course, brought some my own stuff, but they already had some things that they were doing before. So I think we combined these two things together and it, it was good. But now I feel like we have more than two people bringing uh, things. Everyone has something to bring from their previous teams, let's say. But I feel like in this heroic team, we all kind of have the same vision of how we want to play the game. And everyone is just giving some ideas, bringing some stuff. And I think we will agree how we want to play and it's going good so far, I would say. How would you define that I, that that idea? If you all have a similar idea for how you want to play, if you wanted, to, if you had to put that into words, what would it be? What is the identity of this new team? That's a good question. It's a bit of a stumper, right? <laughs> one's, one's answer. Take some time. Uh, I think it's like if you have to look at it in kind of metas. Uh, I think we like for now to be a Taiwan team. I think you have to be able to be like reactive and do things on the fly and being able to mid-run call very fast and being able to react and information so that's something we're practicing and that's one part of the game where you just have it takes time to evolve that together so i think that's one part of the game where it, take, it takes the longest to evolve but it's that's how we see it to get to the top that's something we have to be able to do and I think in practice, it goes very well. And now we also have to be very comfortable with doing it in studio environments and later on in the arena environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and that also takes time. Uh, but also we have some structure to fall back on because if it's not working doing a game, then we also have to have set things uh, being able to, like if all the reactive stuff is not working, then we have to go into something everyone knows and are already comfortable with uh, because that can also work in some games. So it's kind of the meta of uh, being able to react to information and also having said things where you know everyone knows what what to do mm. i want to ask about like um 
finding the voices within the server. You know, I think this is something that a lot of teams talk about of like, who is the vocal player? You know, I, the IGL is one, but there's other voices, right? Who's giving comms from the other side of the map? Who's maybe calling for strats? Who's maybe calling for what op shot they want to take early on? Um, it's still so early in this roster, but do you guys feel like you're getting a strong sense of where the leading voices are going to be coming from? I think it's different from round to round because uh, I mean, sometimes it can get a little too much where people want to do too many things. Uh, but I feel like we're trying to find like a good balance mm. uh, with everyone being able to chime in and then uh, Damian can say if he wants to do it or not. Uh, so we have it more controlled at least. Um, but I think yeah, like everyone right now is really good at calling things if they feel like something is open on their spot of the map. Does that, does that ring true? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what if he was just immediately like, nah, <laughs> nope. no, no, <laughs> be quiet. I gotta figure out so much like, stuff. It's like, yeah, but I think, uh, I think it's good that we have more than one voice in the team. I feel like, as, as he said, depending on the round, like everyone can call something. And the most important thing is that we trust that call. Like whoever it is, it can be Tessas or Nico or anyone. It's just important that we trust our teammates in whatever they call. Okay. I also think you can turn it around and say that it's better to have more voices than no voices at all because then yeah. it just would be, it's easier to turn it down than turn it up all of a sudden. So yeah. we'll, we'll, it's something uh, that we have talked about and something will make even better in the future. So we're going to find the right balance for sure. I don't think we've heard from you yet, Nico does. Mm -hmm. So how's the, how are you finding the upping in this? Like, uh, how are you finding, you know, your role, your space uh, within this team? Yeah, I mean, I feel good as the fifth rifle on the team. You know? <laughs> feels pretty good. CS2, baby. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it feels good for me. I'm pretty comfortable in the team. I can do what I want. Not against Deco, but in full rounds, I can do what I want. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Uh, talking about uh, sort of your journey back into this or into this roster, right? You had the stint on Fnatic, you have the stint in Prezi, and now you're back in uh, to, I mean, a, a, a tier one team competitive at these events. Um, what is what lessons are you taking from, you know, that that go around on Fnatic that maybe didn't wind up working the way you were hoping it would now into a team like Heroic? How are you approaching it? I think in Fnatic, I was pretty quiet as a player. I didn't really say my opinion. I didn't really say what I wanted to do. Like I was just being there to be there, you know, just yeah, just being in the back, like a background character, you know, and what I learned in Preacher is that I play much better and with much more confidence if I say what I want, if I say what I like everything with more confidence, you know, and I think I'm doing it in this team and it will help me in the long run as well because coming back to Taiwan is a big, like you have to, it's a big adjustment period. You have to adjust again because in Tai 2 you could do the same thing 10 times in a row and it will work and people wouldn't really anti-strat you, but now you have to think more about the way you want to play and you have to like even anti-strat yourself in some ways because like you have to predict what they will do against you and stuff like that, you know. So it will take some time to adjust again, but I think I can do good. Is that, do you, do you guys, I mean, this is a collective question as well. Do you think that's the biggest difference in competition level when you jump up to an event like Katowice? It's just how much you have to change, like you think about what you're doing in terms of not falling into routine, not being easily readable. Is that the biggest jump from tier two to tier one competition? I think people, people have an easier time like reading your... Uh... Like their CT sites, for example, I, I have an easy time reading if they're doing the same like five mm. times in a row or five out or 12 times, then it, I feel like it's easy to read like, okay, what excuse is good against this or how can I find the timing? So if people doesn't change, like not throwing a Molotov, for example, then I'm afraid there's an op there, for example, then I don't want to search it. And mm -hmm. it might just be that he has a deagle just hiding. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's things like that is you have to change it up all the time because people are smart enough to read the game. Makes sense. Checks out. Um, looking, you know, at this event, looking at this year of competition, timeline kind of thing, such a fresh roster still. I mean, beginning of this year is when you guys started playing together, right? Yeah. So where do you feel like for this kind of a team where you're building their identity, you're figuring out your own identity for what you want this to look like, what do you think that kind of timeline looks like for when you're going to say, okay, you know, we know exactly who we are in, in, in Heroic now. We know exactly what we want to do. We know exactly what we expect of ourselves. What does that journey look like? How long do you think that either takes or will take or? I guess it will probably take, I would say, at least few more months. But uh, it's hard to say now because 
now we are starting to play more LAN events, so it might change after some LAN. For example, if we do good now, we might think that after this tournament we are ready. But it's hard to say. But I would say at least a few more months. Okay. Does that feel true? Yeah, uh, like I think I think we have to be reasonable. Also, like things can change, and maybe it works for one event, event, but it doesn't work for the three next. Like we have to, like be able to always like adapt, kinda. And yes, uh, it's good to have an identity, but you also have to realize uh, some things in that identity can also be wrong and change uh, on the move. Um, so I think it's it's something we have to keep evolving our identity and find out what's w working for us. All right. I think we're close to wrapping up here. I do want to sneak one last question in, mostly targeted at you two guys. That old roster, right? We talked about identity, things like that, building it. It was also, at times, you guys were in the news maybe a little bit more than you wanted to be for reasons that weren't great. Um, moving past that, does this feel like a fresh start in that sense of like maybe not having some of the the baggage or the drama that that not to say anything bad about your previous teammates but literally just like how many headlines there were yeah i think i have moved on quite <laughs> to be fair yeah uh yeah i've done with enough bullshit to be honest yeah i just want to move on and not think about it yeah i'm kind of the same i feel like it's been really good like getting like that fresh start as well because I mean, personally, I've learned a lot from myself, like how I want to be in my next team, for example, like being more vocal and being like more honest with like how I see the game and like pretty much with anything in life. If something bothers me, then I'm going to say it and always think about it, saying it in a good way as well. Uh, like, I think I've, we've learned a lot of good things, like uh, from the old roster. Mm. Taking the lessons forward. Yeah. 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 I now agree. The, the question is what new drama can Nikodas bring? K -drama. It's gonna be interesting. He's, gonna be, he's bringing K drama every day. Yeah, yeah. K drama every day. Learn yeah. it from the best, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we'll see where he winds up in the headlines soon. But uh, thank you guys for sitting down with me. This has been a great chat, and uh, can't wait to see what you, you guys do in Cato. Of course. Upswing, down under, but the hardest part is doing it again. With the output of the All American Trio a certainty. JT's bailout clutches and Hal Zerg's output are critical in order to replicate their Sydney success. Monty, mainstay of the middle of the pack. Work rate undeniable. But who alongside Warro can pry open the gates to the playoffs? The new prodigious prince. No desire to be the second simple, but the first wonderful. Having lost the identity and the firepower, Heroic were expected to be dead in the water, but rising from the ashes is not out of the question. Great or greatest? A question Glaive looks to answer with this compromised project. As some write their closing chapters, others pen their first. The Academy's top graduate, Donk. Self-professed inevitability. We are all here to witness his ascension. Intel Extreme Masters Katowice is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, One X Bets, and White Market.
this fight, though. Three seconds left. Last two rounds of match. It's got to start it well for ESC. And this is a massive move for Zest, but he's not content with just the Nexus kill. He wants to win. And it's all done. A troll is winning. Unbelievable Rogue with a 4 0 victory over Classic. And they did it again in the Black Finals. It's going to be. Give it up for your Intel Extreme Masters World Champion. Well, yesterday we seen the playing conclude and we seen some big teams head out of Katowice in 2024. Today the group stage begins, but let's reflect on some of the teams that we missed out on. We missed out on Astralis, who many people thought were going to be a playoff team after their performance earlier this start of this year. And then we lost out on Virtus Pro, who we definitely thought was going to be a playing team. They got some of the best rifler performers in CS2. So very interesting stuff happening in the play in And I can only imagine there's going to be more upsets, more interesting storylines as we head into the group stage today. And I'm interested in seeing these guys behind us, the Falcons showing up today. Coming up on the V-Stream today, we have the juggernauts of Intel Extreme Masters. It is FaZe taking on the plucky Polish underdogs, Rebels. Probably the biggest Counter-Strike matchup in their careers is going to be here in the group stages. But we first have Eternal Fire up against Falcons. Everyone is excited to see Falcons, that new look roster, the superstars or potential superstars of CS2. That's all going to be up for grabs here on the V-Stream. We're also going to be chatting to all your favorite players, Snappy, Magix. We've got them all, so make sure you stick around. Later on, on the A-Stream, it is going to be Spirit versus Navi. And oh my god, are we not waiting for Dong's debut in the Elite here at the main stage. The first time on LAN, he isn't going to play against the top 10 team that isn't Virtus Pro. And I am so ready for that one. After this, Vitality versus Ents. But first, let's check in with Freya with some trivia. First up on the A-Stream, we've got G2 versus Heroic, which may sound familiar because it is. That was last year's Grand Final, but oh, how times have changed. Brand new iteration of Counter-Strike, basically an entirely different Heroic roster. So my question is to you gentlemen, looking back at that Grand Final this time last year, who was the highest rated player? <laughs> I don't even know who was quickest, so I like your noise more. Who was it? Uh, pass. <laughs> Uh, it was Hunter. It was Hunter. Yeah. He, that is correct. Yeah, he popped off. I thought JK, I should have won MVP at that event until the grand final. Yeah. Can you give me the rating of Hunter in, in that series? Freya, that's a crazily specific question. <laughs> and I, for some reason, am feeling 1.23. You got it exactly oh right. God. Oh, my God. This guy is the analyst of the year. You heard it here oh first. Oh, my God. What were your takes on G2 coming into CS2? Brand new game, obviously new mechanics. Do you think they've hit exactly the mark that you expected them to or more improvement needed? I think more improvement needed. They haven't found the consistency that they need, whether it be a new game or maybe there's something else going on. It's not consistent results that we're seeing from them, even though they're a top team, 10 team. It's just not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, back in the fray as well. Uh, what's your take on that? Doesn't sound like you like that too much. JKS was obviously a better player, but they like Nexa for vibes, and I think that vibes are important when I think about my relationships and my, my friendships, but not my teams. Yeah, I think that's a good point. One more question about the Grand Final last year. How many kills in total did G2 get in that best of five series? We're talking four maps. You already know roughly what Hunter was putting up. What are you thinking? Over 8,000. <laughs> Significantly less than that, if that gives you any indication, Maui. I, I think four maps, for them to get 8,000 kills, they need like 600 plus per player or something. I, I'm just going to go with something more reasonable. I think I'd say 300 like the like the Romans, you know. Yeah, around that. I think it was 357 if okay. we want to be exact. Well, I, I guess you've got all the points up here in our first quick segment. But uh, <laughs> Bangs, who are you uh, quizzing down on the sidelines? I'm here with Ollie, the stage manager who has been at countless events. You've been watching Counter-Strike for a long time. How are you doing, Mr. Ollie? I'm doing great. Now, when it comes to watching Counter-Strike, who's your favorite team? I have several favorite teams. Okay. But um, my first favorite team was FaZe, and of course, that Chief of Big, who was sadly out, but I'm German, they're German, so. The national pride, okay. Well, I know you love so much Counter-Strike, so I've got to give you a tough question here, Ollie. 
Katowice Grand Final 2014, Mirage, VP versus NIP. There was only pistols for NIP. It comes down to a 1v1. Who gets the final kill? Biali. Ooh, nailed it. My man, you got the knowledge. That's why we hire you. <laughs> World number ones have landed. Vitality sweeping up five trophies in 2023 with three different lineups, home to the best player in the world, the most established in-game leader of 2023. But my question is to you gentlemen, what's the deepest that the Vitality organization have ever made it at IM Katowice? Aggressive. I'm going to go with you, Jason. Nice. Uh, that would be the quarterfinals, Freya. That is correct. Oh, yeah. It was last year against a, who was it, Jacob? Uh, Team Liquid. Vitality choked massively on an overpass game, going up 13-2 in the first half, losing it out, losing in overtime, and losing on the third deciding map. Not good for them. Yeah, it was not big. It was certainly not pretty. But we expect more from Vitality coming into this year, right? Yeah, well, that was back when Zaiwu was still choking in the big games. You know, as, as Matthew liked to point out in his spreadsheets that he tweeted out into the world, he proved scientifically that there was a little bit of a letdown early on in that career. I think we need to check the air quality as well, courtesy of Maui Snake, because uh, hopefully it's looking good for Zaiwu today. But uh, yeah, coming into the last year for Vitality, sure, that wasn't a great show in Katowice. Let's talk about it. Major, obviously ending out the year with two CS2 trophies. Vitality are definitely the favorites, right? Uh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I think they're the favorites to win the tournament. I think Saiwu has proven time and time again that right now he's undoubtedly the best player in the world. And this whole big game choking thing, I don't see it. Ents in for a tough opponent in their first matchup. Obviously, we saw them in the play in So my second question to you gentlemen, who was the highest rated player? Careful on that buzzer. Who was the highest rated player coming out of Ents from the play-in stage? Jason? Again? Uh, let's go with Goofy. Incorrect. Pass this over to Jacob. Huh. Cleve? Oh, you're so close. It's by 0 0.01. Oh. It was actually Deha. 1.21 rating come out of him. But Glaive, it's a good shout, right? He was looking real hot. Yes, he's been playing well. He's been playing very well. Good to see Deha as well. He's been struggling in CS2. Wasn't looking great at the later stages of in Ents. So if he's playing well, then uh, Ents may have a chance of getting a couple of rounds today, at least. You think Glaive's going to be as equally fired up as we saw him, you know, after winning versus his former brothers in Astralis versus Vitality today? No, that's a special situation that gets you fired up for that one. But I look, you get a legend like Glaive in a chance in the, in the group stage. Who knows? Like, the guy's going to manufacture some way to get hyped up. Well, I just want to say congratulations, gentlemen. You did substantially better than Maui and Steel in our first quiz. But I'm wondering, Banks, uh, you got any more CS nerds down on the sidelines? Harry, I want to ask some tough questions to do with CSGO. You are a man that knows it all from start to finish. I love the, I love the jumper as well, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's actually from CS. It's Ooh. from it's from Valve, so pretty cool. I'm jealous. I'm very jealous right now. Okay, this is your question. Hard-hitting question for you. Grand Final, DreamHack Winter 2013. Who was the highest-rated player? Uh, it was Fnatic versus Nip, and Good. Fnatic won. Uh, so I think it was... I know that Forest, I think, had a higher rating, but I'm pretty sure JW got more kills and was the top performer. So I think, am I good there? He's very good. And actually, more detail than I expected. Harry, you're a master. Thank you very much, my man. <laughs> Thank you very much, James Banks. I know you're very excited for the topic I'm about to talk about because it's Na'Vi versus Team Spirit. Wonderful versus his old organization. We know that Spirit were looking hella fired up in the play-in stage. So my question is to you, gentlemen, who was the highest rated player coming out of the play-ins? Chicken says donk. Chicken and Hugo are correct. If you can give me the opening rating for Donk, I'll give you an extra five bonus points. Ooh, uh, two, let's go two. Uh, uh, no, unfortunately it was 1.64, but still pretty dirty. How has uh, Donk lived up to your expectations so far, Dinko? I think he's kind of exceeded them. I thought maybe he'd have a drop off when he came to LAN because he played all of his tournaments online and, you know, 16 years old. I, I At the time of coming to his first international LANs, and now he's at Katowice, just turned 17, and he looks more comfortable than a lot of veteran players here. So, really, actually exceeded the expectations, and they were high to begin with. And he looks so comfortable that he is literally screaming at his opponents. I didn't know that Don could get this loud, Hugo. I want to see if he does it against the big boys. You know, he's now in the group stages. He's going to play some tier one teams. He's going to start with Na'Vi. It's not going to be as easy as Apex in that opening round. That perfectly segues me on to my third and final question. Wonderful. Obviously, we know he had a tenure on Spirit for uh, how many months? I'm going to say eight months. 
Incorrect. I'm gonna... Six? He's actually more. Double it. He was actually on there for a year on their active lineup. We're going 13 if we're talking about the period he was getting benched. But yeah, how do you see Navi testing Spirit? Is this the biggest test we're going to be seeing yet? Biggest test so far for, for Donk, right? We haven't even seen him play against some top 10 teams on land. So I think, uh, you know, Navi is still in a proving ground, but their results recently have looked pretty solid. Wonderful's look really good as well. Yeah, he's looked really good. I think coming into it, you obviously got the biggest uh, shoes in the game to fill, right? And uh, it's not an easy task to do, but he, he's done very well. And I think it looks like a, quite an organic growth from Navi. Like everybody's ratings increased since the time was simple. Obviously, there's going to be a time together is going to be improving that. So yeah, I'm excited to see Navi. I, I feel like they're a real dark horse of this tournament now. Any predictions for this game? I'm all Donk, baby. Yeah, I'm going to go with Donk as well. His spear are going to continue the run. Donk hype train up here, but uh, Banks, how are you feeling about Navi coming into this game? I'm here with Philip, our producer for many years and a good friend. How are you doing, my man? Uh, very well, very well. I'm very hyped for the group stage. You're always stressed about being on camera. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know how much counter you're watching and you love, so I've just got a, a cologne question for you here. Grand final 2018, who won it? Um, that was Navi over Big. My, you know, I'm German. My heart was, my heart was breaking that day, yeah. But Navi won, so I'm happy. That's all that matters. Thank you very much, Philip. <laughs> Group start here on the A stream. It's going to be insane. Later up, the second match of the day is Team Spirit up versus Navi, which is really exciting to see what Dong's going to do. But first up, we've got G2 Esports, their first match here at uh, Katowice, where they will go up against Heroic, one of the surprises getting into this part of uh, the competition. But what's going on on B? Well, we get a bang to start off with Falcons. We've got to see Oof. them a little bit at the start of the season. They're going up against Eternal Fire, who dominated throughout the plans. After that, we've got FaZe taking on Rebels. But Rebels, this is great for them, right? The best team they would have ever had to face and then to end the day complexity who have fallen off just a little bit shocks at going up against apex who fought so hard last night okay i need to ask you who's going to win between navi and spirit navi navi you navi, always navi, say the navi, same navi. i'm never going to ask you again all right <laughs> hello folks welcome back it's uh, the day one of the group stage here i am katavica and uh, well we've got the best dressed caster in the house yanko joining us for the first couple of bo3s how are you doing yanko i'm doing great you know this duo needed some class and um, unfortunately maniac was unavailable oh. so you guys, are, <laughs> you guys are stuck with me and i guess someone really thought it would be a good idea to put me on the microphone in a g2 game so we'll see how that goes. yeah i'm actually very excited for people to get to see it and i like that we kind of look like your security yeah. in a way <laughs> Like we got like the match. Two Valdez. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that would explain everything actually. Yeah, I'm 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 the inside man, mate. That's me. Hugo, how are you feeling before today? I'm feeling good, man. We got some banging games. I think it's uh, it's nice to go straight into the the group stage off the back of you know seeing all these teams in the play and right seeing heroic make a pretty dream run and spirit as well. That's our second game of the day. Are you are you holding as high expectation for Donk now that he's going to be facing some of the tier one teams, Yanko? I mean, I'm just excited to see it unfold, sure. right? I don't have that high expectation, more so just curious to see what happens. And what about G2 as well? Obviously, uh, your boy Nico and Hunter. I don't want to know what happens. Don't want to know. We'll what find out soon <laughs> enough. <laughs> have to see your, your breakdown live on the screen. Okay, well, we'll be going back to a break. We'll be back with our first game of the day. It's, of course, Heroic G2 coming up soon. Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike! Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. If you could have 60 seconds with 2015 Nico, 60 seconds, you know, you bump into him in a time travel bathroom somewhere and you're looking at him face to face. What are you saying? What are you using those 60 seconds for? <laughs> Don't listen. Ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I honestly have no idea. Uh, I don't have too many like regrets or no, anything. No regrets. It's it's all like been a it's been a fun journey, and uh, I've been learning a lot throughout my career. But uh, I just wish I won some events that I haven't. Mm. Uh, that's probably the biggest impact on my career. If I had won those events, my career just would be much easier to to play and uh, to just work with as well. So uh, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, it's just. Uh, matter of time before I grab uh, those events and uh, then I will feel more, more complete. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I guess, and, and that kind of makes me want to ask the sim a similar question, you know, Nexa, would you have feedback for your, for your young self? Yeah, the, don't go to Renegades. <laughs> don't listen to Kassad. <laughs> <laughs> Run. <laughs> Solid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you'd be efficient, you know, you just write on a piece of paper. <laughs> and, man, you, you probably got uh, a couple of, couple of words for yourself. Everything's gone sickety boo. Everything's fine. I mean, nothing really crazy. Like when I started playing CS:GO, my main idea and my main goal was to play with Nico because he's the reason why I started playing. And at the end, he finishes in my team. So I know. yeah, that is, that is kind of dream dream came true for me. And winning two events, like two biggest events mm. with Major that he never won before, winning it with me, uh, I just felt really good for me. And uh, no regrets, honestly, in my career. Just. Keep going. There is a few more years in front of me. Oh, we sure. try my best with the team I have, and that's all. I mean, it is quite poetic that you two ended up uh, playing yeah. together and succeeding together. Time for G2's Katowice debut. Last year's champions hungry to defend that trophy once more, but with a little bit of a twist. Gone is JKS, welcome back into the fray is Nexa, and also a changing of the guard. In terms of who is standing behind them, Taz, a Polish legend in these halls. So let's go ahead and check in with him. Well, Taz, welcome to Katowice. You have, of course, a big picture up on the wall, so it must be nice to see that and to be back. I mean, it's it's nice to know that uh, I achieved something to, to be there, so it's a cool, cool feeling. Yeah. Not just something, of course, uh, maybe more because you're here with G2, of course. And uh, I want to ask you first about how you think things are going with Nexa, of course, stepping into the lineup generally, how everyone is adjusting and how happy you are with the way they are doing. Uh, I mean, I think this is like still baby steps when it's... Uh, like with the next house joining and we, I think we have a little bit different uh, lineup now, different uh, personalities and from my perspective we need to have a little bit different approach to the game. So we are still like figuring it out but I feel like the atmosphere is really good. I feel like communication game is really good and uh, uh, I wouldn't uh, be surprised if the guys would uh, play extremely good on this event. Wonderful. I'm reading between the lines. You're saying maybe it's communication. So am I hearing that the roles are okay? Maybe the communication in-game isn't? And is that where you want to change the approach? Or No, it's more like uh, I've been in the same place. Like uh, I've, I've played this game for many, many years and I played with different personalities, different people. So I kind of know when, when things are good for the team and uh, what, where, what direction we need to go. And I feel that this, uh, like... Nexa coming in can actually even activate more some of the other players. So I'm just looking forward to development of the team. And uh, I'm also developing myself because I'm like a new guy. I'm, this, this is my rookie season. Yeah. And uh, well, not many rookies, uh, rookies are 30 years old, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, a little over that, I'm in the same boat. Um, but anyways, <laughs> we're coming from Blast, and uh, I think Blast was probably mixed feelings, I guess, going by there, because you got the victories you needed to, but the Navi series probably really hurt. So what were the main takeaways there? I mean, I'm happy with the Blast. Um, I mean, obviously, we, we lost to Navi, which uh, will sting, but I prefer to lose in group stage and then still qualify for finals than uh, just lose two games and be out. So we managed to play like 11 maps. So for the start of the season and uh, having a break and then having a bootcamp going to the Blast, it's, it was really good. So I feel like we had like a double bootcamp before coming to this event and uh, I'm just looking forward to how much uh, of the stuff we were talking about we were actually fix. Lovely, yeah. You won the ones you needed. You were min-maxing actually and you made it so fantastic. Thank you and good luck here. Thank you very much. Taz, a humble king, as always, and an opportunity to be doing so much to even add on to the legacy he already has in Counter-Strike now, standing behind G2. I've got Matthew and Josh down here to be diving into this one and give their opinions of exactly what's going to be happening. Steel, I hope you can wipe some sweat off that brow. No more quiz questions, okay? Over. Those quizzes were, uh, you know, you really jumped at me with those, and <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, and uh, I, I think I produced. You, you produced you did something. Produced an answer. Something. Moving an on, answer. G2, how much have uh, they produced so far, Machu, in your opinion, with Nexo, you know, coming back in, Taz now standing behind him? I think Taz is very much on the money when he says what happened in Copenhagen wasn't perfect, but in the scale, in the scale of here at Katowice, it's good to play a whole lot of games, like a whole lot of maps. The ring rust are out. These are the results that we're talking about. And after all, if you're looking for performance management, this is the place where you want to perform. This is where you want to get the best. They got what they needed in Copenhagen. They show up in Katowice with a couple of information for this lineup. Yeah, and I think right now we're only seeing them playing against kind of the same team. So it's going to be interesting to see them playing kind of outside of the same teams over and over again and see if Taz was able to kind of bring them in a direction. It's always nice to get a fresh fresh perspective. Uh, Taz, someone who's been playing the game for a really long time, playing with many different teams, has his face up on the wall somewhere down there. So right over there. Right, next right over there. Well, there this, is, this is, this is an early one. <laughs> it's right over there. <laughs> he's, he's done it multiple times. So it's good for a fresh perspective from someone who's a veteran and can say, hey, like, he's not afraid to speak as Mind. He'll say like, hey, I see what's going on and you know, we got to change some things. Honesty is great when you're coming into a team like this because you need to be harnessing the very greatest from your players, right? And I think transitioning to CS2, it's been complicated for everybody other than Manasi, right? He's the one who's been really taking the ball by the horns and throwing up some huge numbers yeah. in this new iterator. You're absolutely right. And I'm torn in, in how I want to approach this topic because the side of me just wants to celebrate Manasi, like how hyped I am about this player. He was already on everyone's radar in CSGO and in fact, it's we got to know him here in Katowice. Remember 2022, he steps on the stage. This is where we get to know who Manasi is. And now he's even better. In my book, he's one of the three best players we have currently in the game. Like He took CS2 in stride. His very dynamic playstyle works for it. He, he does things with the AWP that most snipers are dreaming about in the game. So now that's the plus side. That's the romantic in me. The other negative side is looking at it like a chiropractor and thinking there's something wrong with that body. And this muscle of Manasi is doing way too much. The joints are hurting. The rest of the sort of scapula is isn't really working out, and he's gonna get tired. I mean, look at the numbers. This is not supposed. This is not a picture we're supposed to paint for Manasi. You're not supposed to carry Nico. Nico carries you. Nico should be the one that's carrying. And another thing to point out is. There's been so much conversation about the AWP in CS2 versus CSGO and how much harder it is and how much more difficult it is to get impact because, you know, you have to play it a little bit different and people can pop smokes with the grenades and all this stuff. Mm. But we're not seeing that here. We're seeing... Not with him. We're, we're not with him. We're seeing other teams not even running AWPs to, to begin with. We see other people that were really big AWPers not even playing anymore. And, and now we see Monazi getting better. Definitely. And we just had the numbers. We had the full lineup. And that's one of the topics I want to touch on G2 is like some of the inconsistency from the individuals that we've seen, and Nico is definitely a topic, Nexa struggles a little bit, Hunter struggles a little bit. The issue that I have is, it's been a minute since I found that G2 worked on their playbook. And as a team, and you have an experience in there as well, when your individual's output is kind of variating, you know, it's one day it's good, one day it's bad, you're kind of working on individuals, and you're not working on the deep playbook. What is your philosophy? What do you want to work on? You don't have that sort of stable base for Hooksy to work on, and I feel like they've been doing a little bit of stagnation in terms of Counter-Strike purely. Well, hopefully they been doing some preparation because it is a surprise to see Heroic waiting for them on the other side of the server. So let's get a quick check in with them ahead of this series. Hello, Heroic. How's everyone doing? Pretty good. 
Pretty good. Yeah, we're happy. Happy. We haven't seen you for two days. You qualified so fast. I didn't really expect it. What have you been up to? Just chilling. Just chilling. Doing some prep, some practice, some extra stuff. What? What is extra stuff? Uh, face it. Restaurant. Yeah, we will. Nah, it's fine. Wait, you can tell me. Restaurant? We, yeah, we went together to a fancy restaurant. It was pretty good in Katowice. I will recommend for you after. Good restaurant. Okay, that's great. Uh, but of course, you're going up against G2, which is a, a spicy start to the group stage. What do you think about them as an opponent? I think it's a pretty good opponent. I think, I mean, I think we can beat them. We looked at the way they play. They don't seem too hard to play against, so we're confident. Good. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. Sleep, face it, and pierogi is apparently going to be that the key works. to success for Heroic. Um, I think it's going to take a little more than that to take down G2. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, if you're a fan of Counter-Strike, you watched Katowice last year, and then you took a very long nap and you come back. Yes, this is the grand final of Katowice last year. Just with a slight twist, Heroic is absolutely not the same team anymore. <laughs> Shush and Tessis, and they just redecorated the interior completely. And I, I personally put a whole lot of conversation around Kixen as a leader, because I think when you're working with a team that is far from being finished in terms of playbook, he's going to have a lot on his shoulders to come up against you 2 Yeah, there's definitely a lot going to be on his shoulders, but we saw from the play-in, they did pretty well. They were surprising because, you know, Astralis, I thought that they were going to be like a really good team. And then next thing you know, Heroic's upsetting them, in my opinion. And then they yes. go on to, to beat Big in a pretty decent fashion. It was a 2-1. Big's not been having a good start. But then that's also going to lead to the question of like, well, yeah, they're beating out these teams that didn't even make it through play-ins and that's now a they're going against an elite team of Ooh. G2. So, you know, if are they going to be able to replicate that? And we see the strats coming from Kixen, we see the um, Nurt's play style where he's able to get really active, get around the map, get a lot of info and have the rest of the team play off of that. But this individual skill, is, it's looking like that's what they base their whole play style off of. Is that going to match up against G2? And I don't know if it will. Who do you look at then to be kind of the linchpin of this heroic lineup? Because Nurts, we knew he could do such disgusting stuff back in the end days. Do you think Kixon's using him in the, the, the right ways with this lineup? Well, I, I have to wait a little bit to give you a firm answer. I think the first signs we've seen from Nurts have been positive. Uh, I echo your sentiment. They've only really beaten teams who crumbled here yeah. in Katowice. That's a harsh truth. Not to take anything away from them, but you look at the destiny of both Astralis and Big in the dumpster. Pfft, they're out. But the rest of the heroic have done what they had to do. I think this video in itself is kind of an interesting uh, conversation yeah. because the overpass was going to get floated by G2. They're going to take away Mirage. No way yeah. they allow Kixen to go in his comfortable ground. And now, Josh, as a leader of a brand new team, you're going to start T side on overpass. Is, this, is it like life on the hardest mode? It's weird because I think CS2 overpass plays a little bit different than CSGO's overpass, but it's still one of those things where there's a few maps in the pool you don't want to start T side on, and this is one of them. But if there's any way for you to kind of get a win against a team that's better than you, I would have looked for a map like, you know, eh, maybe maybe do something else i don't know like new i feel i feel exactly new, I, see, like, I feel exactly how you are like looking at the map trying to feel like wait a minute but, but what is the perfect choice i don't know that there was a perfect choice i think the mirage ban is problematic for heroic and they and they have to go to sort of uncharted nuke territory pass, right yeah new i thought they would go for nuke but yeah. then you you also have to decide nuke there too right? exactly but th maybe you can since we've seen them against big i thought that kickstand would say listen we're gonna stick to things that we have done already that i feel comfortable on because let's imagine g2 take off in this game the eyes are going to be on Kixon to come up with solutions. I'm obviously, he's, he's surrounded by players and they have to feed him with information and ideas, but he's going to be the one having to craft solutions on the fly. I feel like Overpass is a really tough nut to crack for that. So is it sounding like a G2-0 already when we're looking at the maps? Yeah, it might be, but I mean, Heroic has a little chance to upset because they don't have a lot of footage on them on Overpass. They've only played a couple maps mm. and G2 is not looking too strong on that either, so... It could go, yeah, I mean, we could see an upset. G2! But G2-0, Machu. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm tempting you there. I'm yeah, yeah we, we're there, we're there. We have to be getting into this series. We've got Heroic, we've got Anubis, Nuke, if we do so require it. And uh, I want to hear what the next big Tricast is thinking. Yanko, I'm sure you're agreeing with the G2-0, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I have to now, don't I? But uh, I think it's interesting, though, with this with this map and the series G2 vetoing Mirage, right? They're yet to win a Mirage or a Nuke with this iteration of the lineup. That's crazy to think about this time last year. They had that legendary Nuke streak, but tells you how times have changed. 
Yeah, it really does. Uh, you know, I, I like I like the Vita, though. I like what we've gotten out of this one. I think it could lead to a pretty competitive series. Oh, and already a hot start out of Monacy. I like what I'm seeing there. He swings himself out in the middle. It's day one of the group, so let's get into this, shall we? And Heroic. Ooh. We had some choice words out of Nerds before this. He said, maybe I'm delusional, but I think we can play in the spot X. So let's see if they'll realize that delusion now. Sees hold of it. But G2 seem to have this pistol in the bag. Look at the flank timing for Nexa. Be completely open. Maybe Heroic realize with this much room, they've got to be right behind. And that's a lovely goosh out of Tessa's. Nexa pushed back. Hooksy low as well. If Heroic can get good positions established, this could be a round worth talking about. That bomb is a little wider than default, so maybe Shush can play from the heaven. But Nico taps him out of the round. Two players left and really call it one because the health is diminished. It's almost gone. Nico gets every single kill. And it's going to be a round for G2 to start the series. And it is interesting, right? We, we talked about it like last year as well when it came to G2 and the Prima ban of Overpass. It's a map that should suit them, right? With the players that they have, uh, probably more so than some of the other ones in the pool, like Vertigo, which also became really good for them in the last couple of months. And something that you need to point out is, you know, people talk about, oh, everyone's going to go B against them because Nico and Monacy are on A. It's not that simple, first of all. And the second thing is, like, Nico is new to playing A on CT side. In his time in phase uh, throughout, he was playing B, uh, the, the monster role, since Rain was the one who was playing A. I do have a question about the Vita, but we'll have to hold it off because we have a B rush. Yeah, straight in, out through Monster. Nexa toppled immediately. Now it's on this MP7, closing the distance. But oh dear, Hooksy comes out with a double, and Hunter's still here to offer his helping hand down at B. Deagle, one from Nika does. And now they go quiet just for a moment here. Monacy falls Ooh. out, but that gives the fight to Nico. Monacy with the swing will regain control down at Ooh. that lower site. It starts off well for G2. Hooksy opens up with the double. Heroic able to make it close, but no cigar here as G2 will stick the landing on the conversion at least. I love the rebuy straight away as well. At least Nerds gets an AK. They might eco around this, but that's a lot of damage done by Heroic. And Nico does on his redemption arc as well, right? Underwhelming it felt at times in Fnatic, especially in the big important matchups, but in that game against Big to progress them towards a group stage here at Katowice, Nikodos had a lights out performance, a 1.31 rating. He really put Heroic in his backpack when Nurt had a quiet BO3. So I think that's a great sign to see if Nikodos can keep up. What we saw, you know, from those Flames days, from those major runs, a very flashy orb when he's feeling it, and he's got the scout in this round. I think definitely a second opportunity for him. What that last round tells you, despite Nexa not getting a kill, that's like a good protocol that they have to open up around against a monster rush, right? There's a flash behind them. He goes, he swings, he pre-fires. That's something that, for example, I remember in the Cloud9 game, you know, they, they lose a round on match point to that because they don't have a good protocol uh, to prevent it. So G2 focusing on the basics, getting the basics down on overpass. Let's see if they can not get headshot by yeah. the scout up mid. We've certainly seen some Nikodaz moments from here. True, overpass, famed map for the scout. And Nurtz's rifle yet to be known about. Yeah, that's kind of the the big ticket item, the, the surprise waiting in store in this round. It's the AK on Nurtz. Right now, they've heard the scout, they've heard some pistols, but now they learn about the AK, and Nerds isn't able to get that opener. Hunter's taking great real estate down here towards short. That's freed up an extra player to go and help on the top site. That's now moving in. Oh, kicks on. Oh, Hello. my goodness. He's, he's touching Nico. He's giving Tony him a back throw. run, but it's just the Glock. What? And shot in the back. That's the end of the line for this A play. Tess says, bomb plant denied. G2 respond to that one well, considering just how in their face heroic were. The hero AK gets nothing done. What that could have been if Kixon found Nico, you know, not the other way around, because Nico goes ahead, gets two kills on the site. That could have been a way in for heroic, but an eco to forget about as the first full buy comes in. How do you feel about the maps though, Yanko? Because with G2 insta banning Mirage, leaving this open for the taking, a map heroic want to make a mainstay of their pool. Obviously, it's something new for G2, maybe influenced by Nexus somewhat. Yeah, I think it's 
all right, you know, they at the moment seems like almost have a seven map map pool. They're playing around with all these different maps. Vertigo, they found success on lately, even though for me, I, I didn't think it suits them all that much. The players they have, you want to play a little bit more open maps, right? And also where your star players are the most comfortable, it, it seems a little bit counterintuitive with Nico and Monacy on your team to permaban Mirage, right? But then you look at yeah. their three Mirages, they lost 13-5, 13-3, 13-3 ah. with this lineup. So there's something clearly wrong. Nico uh, in, uh, at Blast had that terrible uh, game on Mirage. I think he only had one kill on the CT yeah, side, and he's the, connector. he's the connector player, right? So they need to figure out uh, their Mirage, I feel like, for the longevity of this lineup. Deep mid molly, which is harder than you would expect in CS2. See, a lot of players miss them nowadays. We also just see the playground molly uh, coupled with nades. But G2 have done their homework on overpass. Hunter once again getting aggressive, led by Nexa. MP9 first as they take B water. It's good real estate for G2. It frees up Hooksy on an early rotate. He'll be needed on that top site. Monster's a big gap. He actually doubts it. Goes back with a flash. And Nico waits for the shadow advantage in this toilet position. Oh, Tess says, we'll catch Nico going for a little check through the crack in mid. Drops the smoke in, but Tess says is already ahead of it. Now, I really wonder, does he try and do much with this, right? Oh, Knowing what? he's ahead of the timing, he's going to turn <gasps> back around oh. for now. Nico will deal with him. Cleanly done on the MP9. And so an early advantage for G2, secured from Nico. Good flashes to find Hunter over on the short side. Now this B side's about to get pressured. Bomb waiting on Kicksand's back outside a monster. Oh dear, Nikodos has just oh given G2 a big helping hand. He's smoked off short. A double agent. They're gonna have to go out monster now. Flash is good. Hoopsie swing is very delayed though, and Nerds will just get the blind spray. It's so blind for everyone. Nikodos even comes through the smoke, but that won't stop him. Another entry for ne uh, to Nexa, who finds zero kills on this behold, and it's too hot to handle for Nico from heaven. Heroic on the board early, despite smoking themselves off. A great entry for Nerds there. That was a difference maker in the round. <laughs> you know, it seems like a terrible uh, situation for Heroic. That was a great flash. Having the presence of mind that G2 could have taken water to re-clear it and the B defense crumbles. And that was a massive round. All those kills that Heroic was getting despite losing rounds put pressure on G2's economy and they go for the force buy, but it's just pistols and a scout on Monis. Kicks and already bringing in some good energy to Heroic right now. A one of the more unproven in-game leaders with a big project and a big opportunity and strong players behind him. So I'm very excited to see, uh, excited to see what Kixon can cook up with this amount of firepower. And he's a player that's not quiet himself either when it comes to performing. We've seen him you know, frag highly in big games. So I'm actually very excited by this heroic project. I think it would have been easy to expect less but Katowice group stage will be a true test for this new team after an underwhelming time in Copenhagen just last week. Getting destroyed by Cloud9. Ooh, nice shot for Nerds. Bopping Nico in mid. Shadow gives Monacy a chance, but there's two players here. Somehow, made of something sterner, falls back to the site. Hooksy's here with a deagle, but there's everyone coming in. Hooksy deag. Will he be able to do anything? The flashes Ooh. do make life a little easier for wow. Hooksy, who puts up two. That's what he had to in the round, but his teammates start to fall around him. And so this one, there was a glimmer of hope there with the 2K from Hooksy's Deagle. But having it just left on Hunter now in this one on three, Bomb getting planted. There is a world where he can attempt to sneak out through the bank, right? He's only got one player fighting him here, but CZ versus the AK. The AK comes up top trumps for Heroic. And so far, good default play from Heroic, right? It's like taking some map control, seeing if there's any aggression uh, from G2, trying to stifle it. And even in the late round, if G2 has a decent read on where Heroic wants to end, still the utility usage and the execute is really polished and they still take care of business. So a couple of rounds in a row now, they're building up their economy. G2 now has to be on the USPs. And one of the things about this 
you know, G2 lineup in CS2 really has been Hunter, right? The sort of his drop off in form in the new game. And even at Blast, it wasn't looking great up until that series against Liquid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he really showed up and we always talk about him that he's a big game player. So maybe he was just saving, yeah, yeah. saving, saving it all in the tank, you know, waiting for it to be the big game. And he is crucial. His style of play as well, really fearless. You know, there's a lot of swinging and taking fights in, in uh, crucial moments in the round. So G2 needs him to be on point if they're going to be able to make the playoffs here. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is where for Heroic on the other side, right? They've kind of had the, the run through the play-ins as their kind of chance to, to feel very warmed up and in tune at this event. Obviously, no issues for them there, right? They're able to run through it flawlessly. So a good look from Heroic put forward. G2, meanwhile, having just arrived. And so this one, this round isn't going to get exciting. It never should. You're just trying to get a kill or two, mm. keep a little bit of pressure on the economy. Kickson might even just go for a little bit of aggression here. He has a Mac 10, he can farm those kills. He's looking to make some money. Two kills from the man, not too shabby. Any more kills out of the USPs would be nice for G2. They are at least kind of swarming over Heroic, but yeah, they're going to get out of this one scot-free, only losing the MAC-10 and an AK, of course, as Monacy makes a bit of extra cash and even gets out with an AK to boot. So honestly, nice way for that to end, considering it looked like the USPs weren't going to do too much. I feel like Nurse is shocked. How is he there? <laughs> he just My whole it. team's at long, man. Like, <laughs> he just booked it. But this is actually massive because Monacy now has enough money for an AWP and armor and a couple of nades, you can drop over that AK to Nico and in MR12, every dollar counts, Harry, every penny counts and to be able to now have uh, a good buy with nades on everyone, that's going to go a, go a long way for G2's defense. Oh, will it be goodbyes and will it be hello from the Monacy AWP? Oh. It's instead next set to kickstart this round. Through the lip of that smoke, he just spams them out as Kixon's trying to go up tempo through Monster. And so this is going to trigger a bit of a slowdown from Heroic. Give some time for Tessas to try work the extremities. Oh, yeah, Nico, all the way up through middle. So he's kind of allowing for this heavier lean down towards B with this position. But now that they lose a player over in con, that could serve to complicate matters just a tad. I love this slowdown, the four on four. They're even holding for the T-spawn flank. They have connector. They know the G2 will have heavy numbers at B. So they're hoping a flank comes in early before they commit to their execute. Monacy will stop nerds in his tracks though. And now heroic. A man down with nothing on the flank yet. Have to group and go for the hit. The exit route is available up connector, but they just have so little control or knowledge that it would be dangerous to do right now. They're wondering if Monas is going to stay or leave, right? He let himself be known on the B bomb side. So if they, if they figure he stays, going up con is a good idea. But Nico... What a reset. That's a read on it. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is a great read on the situation from oh. Nico. Oh, it's they fine. see him. Element of surprise got on the flank. That could have been everything for Nico, but he at least confirms that this A play is coming through. Rotates moving up for G2, but Heroic are going to beat them to the punch. Already up close in the bank. Hunter is here, but he's very low. It's going to be Monacy chiming in on that AWP. Good for the double. And one more man still to chase down. There's a couple of kills with the MAC-10. Gifting him the promise of this AWP. And it might just be the difference maker here for G2. They'll finish this one strong with Monacy and Nexa rising to the occasion to lock in that lead for the G2 squad. Nice little change of pace from G2 with the aggression up A that really made all the difference in the end. But also good patience from uh, Monesi and, and Hunter not to go deeper into bank or, or uh, upstairs. Instead, wait for the push from, from Heroic who felt like they needed to take more control knowing that there's a flank from Nico coming from somewhere. But still plenty of money for Heroic as Saw takes his first time out figuring out what it is they want to do. Oh, I like this shot. It's like being back at Cologne, we are able to just stand above the players, get that full POV, see every screen, hear the comms. 
do love the Hall of Heroes here at Katowice for that very reason. Not too much screaming going on yet. G2 coming in pretty stoic to start the series and start their tournament run. They have a very important few months here with this new roster. RMR's upcoming. Chengdu quality, uh, or invite as well. And the ESL Pro League after that. Nowhere to start the year like Katowice. Honestly, back in toilets. Nico will begin con, and it's a very spread default here for Heroic. Yeah, looking like they want to try and aggro short, right? Take away some of this real estate. We've seen this be a pretty standard protocol for G2 thus far. If I had to guess, you know, last time the aggro monster play didn't work really, so I think they're actually playing for this. They're starting off slower, understanding if they give G2 space, G2 is going to take it. And after, you know, throwing some utility on mid, um, smoking divider, you know, maybe mulling uh, banana, I think they might come back and retake water. Oh, Nico's trapped there, above there, below there, everywhere, and he can't land a shot, blinded, out middle. Heroic, a huge opening kill, forcing a rotation back towards that A site. Will that tempt them into lower? They know Hooksy's on the move. And so, as Kixon's left to lurk in the long toilets, the bomb is trying to make up its mind. It is actually the B fake back up to A. A late call here for Heroic, and it seems to be the right one. Monacy solo in the bomb site fighting out in the open. They know what to expect, but they've only got one flash. It has to be perfect. Monacy peeks in, fully blind, and that will give Heroic space with 20 seconds on the clock. Yeah, the one flash having gone out, though, and you're not going to wipe him off of these sidelines anymore. Monacy, open season. Ooh. He's good for the double kill. Ooh, missing on the third. They're getting closer, and Kixon will eventually find him. Monacy did all he can in that round to turn the tie, but now... It's on the rest of G2 to try and pick this up in the retake. They'll go fast through the bank. Good trade out of Hunter. Nikodos left up in this one all alone. Sat right on top of the bomb like a mother hen right now. Here he is trying to nice. lock out these predators moving up through the dumpster. They will get the trade. And it's some fancy trade work from Hunter to kind of facilitate this round in the first place. I like that reposition from him away from the bank, joins up with his teammate. They double swing out of the dumpster and it's all kickstarted with that nice little sequence from Monacy to even tip the scales yeah. into a retakeable round in the first place. It would have been three kills for Monacy if it was CSGO, but you see this slight change in the default box here comes back to haunt him, that muscle memory as he tries to re-peak long. There's a slab of the box that comes ah. out. It gives the advantage to the heroic player out long, but still there's some you know, swift shots for Monacy to find two opening kills. He's 13 and three right now on this A site. Absolutely. Heroic still with enough money to buy. Now going for three guys down connector. Quickly want to take that control. Ooh, oh, Nico's speaking of aggressive. quickly, yeah, yeah, I mean, Nico all the way up through mid Whoa. and all the way down the slide. Hooksy at least going to keep this even in the four on four. And him and Monacy kind of slink back in towards the A bomb site after leveling the playing field here. But Heroic aware that that one kill early. Likely going to stretch the defense just a little thinner. Hone in their sights on the B site. Next set needs to deliver. He has support from Hunter. Oh, oh. goes for the trade, and that leaves him open. And Nikodar's over it short. G2, a man down. Nate would win you the round there. Could have blown up Tessa's on the plant. Instead, he'll come swinging solo. There's a trade, it's late. And Monacy's not ready for the close player. Shush runs him down. It's not the prettiest post plant for Heroic, but it certainly gets the job done. Awkward for Hunter, couldn't pick his target. Held on so long for short, and then moved right before that player comes swinging. <laughs> Peekaboo, four health on Tessa's as well. Gun diff. Oh, tough situation for Hunter there. I mean, that was the frag that really swung the round in Heroic's favor. I also, you know, Nico with the aggro play, MP9. I think there should always be a swap with the A player for the MP9, right? I mean, the B guy can play close monster. You have plenty of setups where it can actually be a, yeah. a good gun to use. So, you know, that play may be a little bit forced by, by the fact which weapon he has. And G2, this whole half, I mean, their money has been tight.
they get reset once again, so back to the scout, MP9 and pistols. Yeah, I mean, in that regard, right, it feels like Heroica kind of had them right where they want them constantly at this at this breaking point on the CT side. Another B-Rush, the spawn, Heaven Smoke, the fast short molly, they're sending it. Just straight in with the MAC-10. It's Heaven Smoke. Look at a farm, he's got support, everyone swinging out behind him. And so now it's only Nico, but they shouldn't be ready for this fourth man. Spam on the smoke, but that only further sells the idea that no one else is here. Nico might just have a golden opportunity. Got a flick, though. It's going to be wild to get out of this with any more than one. And on that smoke fade, they flush Nico out. Monacy never even gets a chance to play here. It shushes Mac 10 It shuts G2 up. Perfect round to go for an execute like that or a speedy rush. We've seen Heroic already try it in round two and almost get away. This time they had a little bit more to work with. Rifles on four players. Didn't matter that they missed the Heaven Smoke. G2 started with four in the bomb site, And still Heroic are hunting, trying to get rid of this last little bit. Knowing if Monacy doesn't have the scout in the next round, it will be a full eco for G2. Well, they're not going to be able to find him, it seems, so... Something to worry about on that A site next time. 5-5, five, five, already a fantastic T half out of Heroic, but these will be the deciding rounds, more so the last of the half, as G2, seemingly at best case, can only split it 6-6. Six, six. Teething issues. Yeah, I like the call. You know, when there's no utility, it's hard to stop that rush. You just need to scale well, and uh, Heroic did exactly that. So now G2 on an eco, the best they can do is tie it at 6-6. Six, six. Oh, or not a bad star. Or, <laughs> not a <laughs> bad Monis star. Monis is on the server. He is not missing right now. 14 and 4. They come running through Monster, but this is not clean for Nikodos, and he actually needed to stop them picking up that gun. That's one of the ways could, this could go wrong. It could get worse. He's getting rushed right now. The spam oh comes through, God. shipping away. Wood chipper. Nikodos, he's just hoping, praying, and the help is here. But they'll just keep spamming What's him. It? What's he going to expect? This is he the bomb. Yeah, he puts the rifle to, to death, and Kixon has to run away with the package. This is stressful. Kixon went back to try and help to try and help his teammate there trapped in the corner. Nikodos fed to the wolves eventually. At least he will get away with that bomb in tow. Shush has cracked open the A site in the meantime, and right now G2 very spread out all across the map. These rotates in gonna take time. Hooksy's just been holding W the entire round, it feels like, all the way up behind them. And maybe here a little faster than they're ready for. I mean, Heroic, no, they don't really have a whole lot of control. That's why you see them trying to push their way in through bank. Look to take something over towards CT. G2 largely all coming in on this flank. Oh, they go hunting. That's a great chase. And even though you've got these two AKs, a lot of time has ticked off this bomb already. Heroic now set up in a post plant. There should not be a way back in. Smoke goes out. That's certainly going to add a little more pressure here, but Heroic aren't feeling worried yet. Tap on the bomb, even kills on the spam, and Nex is going to get out with the AK at least. He killed Nico all the way back here, no? I think he yeah. was just holding, trying to save the AK, and some random spam <laughs> hit him all the way in the Through back. the bank smoke. That's actually crazy, yeah, because as Monacy's pushing in with a USB, or, or whoever that was on the site, Hooksy, yeah, yeah Hooksy, the other two rifles are actually pulling back at the same time. They wanted to keep those AKs for last round. I guess Nikodos is calling, run away, let me die, to Kixon. That's why he doesn't swing. It's the smart call. But I would have loved to just see Nikodos go for a, a you know one shot, get one kill there, take someone out with you uh, instead. It's a bit of a disaster on the B push. Yeah, but you can't even be mad at that yeah. one if you're like, yeah, okay, of course, of course I die all the way gonna, back at long. Are they going to rush me again? No. Oh my God, it's just nerds. He's done this before, but he's got a lurk smoke to play with this time. Oh, uh -oh. good flash. Excellent. Swinging on out does deal with the man that's already up and through these smokes. And so those nice protocols to try and deal with these faster monster plays being deployed by G2 again. It's just not like they've thrown that Lurk Smoke all T-side, so to use it in the last round, like, of course G2 are going to flash peek it. They know you're actually going to make a play with that smoke, and Nico's been set up perfectly, but he doesn't get the kill. Teammate baited for him and everything. Good check from Tessez, and Shush knows he's got Monacy trapped on the long side. No guarantee with this kill. Monacy flashes and peeks, and he obliterates oh. the entry. It just makes your skin crawl, doesn't it, how good he is. 
crazy awareness to be ready for Shush up deep and then to actually nail the shot. I mean, that is just a headshot angle there from the AWP. <sighs> Look at him go. And around this smoke as well. Monacy doesn't feel content with just that one kill. Gonna have two players coming his way down the long side, but he likes these ranges. Might just look to go through that. They're not up into the site yet. That pressure isn't on just yet. And so Monacy playing right on the edge of this smoke. Hootsy takes the contact. Monacy fires off a shot, but won't commit to the push. G2, a man up. Bomb still not planted for Heroic, and the pressure is on. They're pinned in at the truck. These two players from G2 keeping the pressure applied on the back lines, and it's Monacy's AWP every step of the way on this CT side that's been able to deliver the dependable piece. Leaves it all on Tessa's 1v3. What? And Monacy what? never even sees him, man. What? What's going on with this guy? This is absolutely wild. Another 3K from Monacy, and that's how G2 to tie up the half. Monacy Madness has manifested its way in the server. He is looking lights out right now. A stellar first half from the G2 AWPer. And even that shot there, that was the kill that closed the half 6-6 to tie it up. He is having a field day. 
And will he be the difference maker for this G2 squad here on Overpass? At almost 20 kills deep, he's making a very convincing case for it. We'll have to see how aggressive, you know, Hiroko going to be on CT. It's a lot harder to get away with that kind of madness on T-side Overpass, but I'm excited to see that all come through. A lot of utility and P250, so that tells you slow crawl on A and, and wanting to do an A execute, but there's three players in connector from Heroic. They're going to start clearing this on their own, so... A bit about timing. G2 is going fast towards A long, though. Yeah, this is quite a gamble to make when you don't have a kit. I always find that dangerous playing solo bomb sites with five armored players. Heroic don't have any room for error in this pistol round. Tessis has looked solid right now. It's a team effort across Heroic. He's going to be met with the brunt of G2, but instead pulls back into the safety of A. Execute coming in, a two-sided smokes, and G2 going to explode. Shush up first. Oh, full blind, but still good for the first kill. At least leaves them even in a four on four. And now this fast flank out through Ooh. the connector gets activated. Nice kill from Nerds. Any more in the tank? Oh, God, Monacy. I don't know if that was just a kind of misread on the situation there, but caught running out into the open. <laughs> gives that one away for free. They trade places in this smoke at bank. But Hooksy now teed up to play around the bomb, takes oh. out one, but that's the end of the line. It's a pistol round secured from the heroic camp, and it's Nerds providing the bulk of it, a hat trick from him, as he finds a lot of success coming up through the con. Yeah, these rounds are always so good in theory, right? You buy more nades and you can do a proper execute, but the CTs now and these players are just, a lot of times it's an aggressive setup and they will find the information, and here it was the quick flank where G2 started losing players before they could even execute. I mean, Nico jumping out before the flash pops. Uh, depends where the CT is, you know. And yeah. this, this round is going to be super important, obviously, for G2, right? They invest fully into the force. We saw Heroic do it in the first half and would make their life a whole lot easier. And yeah, they made it a 1v1, but they couldn't complete it with a B-Rush. Let's see if G2's slower pace round is any better. Three rifles gives them options. In this T side, Nerds has an MP7. He's pushed up on long A, completely on his own. Honestly, it looks like he wants to go clear this. Will there be a supporting flash, or will he even look? If Nerds waits patiently, he can find a great flank timing. G2 looking to walk the walk just down middle. And oh, Hooksy, knife out. It's always scary. He's going to get heard and dispatched off by Nerds. The rest of the team are farther, further than Nerds is ready for. And because of that kill, he might not flank. But this jump spot is everything. Nikudos gets the info. And now Nerds can start to activate. Yeah, another backstab from Nerds. Found a lot of success from it in the pistol. That's a nice, easy kill from Nikodos onto Nico. Oh, they heard that. And now Nertz arrives in the back line, but flushed out by Monacy, who finding a lot of success still. Two kills from him on his AK, so that's something dependable for G2 at least. That's what they need right now. If they want to keep this round competitive, Hunter is in a really nice spot here. The fact that he hasn't tried to make some crazy play, he's just kind of biding his time. The longer he goes unchecked here, the more damage he could do, but he's just lobbed out some util. That should Ooh. give it away. A kill from Nexa, but he's caught crossing onto the van. Left all onto Tessez now. Another one of these backstabs that Heroic are relying upon. Honestly, the one responsible for planting will get Ooh. spammed out. Ten and with seconds. so little time left, Hunter's got to go for the kill or the plant. He can't do both, and well, he will try to plug in those digits. He gets away with it. So now we get into some real awkwardness, what? but it's Tessez with the flick back around to send Hunter packing. I don't know what G2 are doing there. They have they have Monacy holding the con flank, but Nexus still wants to cross the truck. They have default. They have a guy front bank. Why don't you plant default, Yanko? Why would you try and cross truck when, when the whole fear of planting default with the flank being open is covered by Monacy? I wish I had an answer for you, Hugo. I think it's just a little bit of chaos and, and miscommunication as to what's open and what they need to do. You know, you see it on Nico's reaction. So a huge round for Tessis to clutch a 1v2, but similar situation as in the first half, right? Their economy is still pretty poor. They get all five M4s, but not full utility, only one kit on Kixan, and G2 goes into another force buy. Maybe just a desperate B rush here for G2, at least out water. Four starting lower. Mid util comes in for Nerds, but he will go back to A. And we keep four on B with 
A solid passive defense. No one dedicated to monster, just barrels, jump spots. So Hunter's going to contact in. He might be able to catch someone off guard here. Look at those CTs moving out of the bomb site. And Hunter has gone very far in, but the turn timing could be worse. And the uh, players peek off the back of that contact. Four on three in an instant. That's a good flash. And Hooksy makes it work. He's even got an upgrade here in the pit. Yeah, maybe a bit of a slowdown once they get this bomb planted. The pressure's no longer on. They can just look to get set up and play around it. Heroic have to go slow. It's a G2, a moment of composure here. And amidst a pretty chaotic round, Hootsie still trying to get involved, but ends up giving away this advantage. Left on an island after the plant. Monacy silence now as well. It's all eyes on Nico, but a far cry from the numbers you would need for this guy. Doesn't give you faith in the one on three. He's going to try and play around for the swing, but Nertz is quick to deal with him. And so it's another triple kill from Nertz, yeah. who's really been having a, a hell of a time since getting onto this CT side. He's crept up the board insanely fast for Heroic. And that's a big problem because now you're kind of getting this, this real team unit vibe with Nertz coming into his own, with Nikodaz having got a couple of swing kills over towards that upper site. It feels like everyone switched online for Heroic right now, whereas for G2, it's Monacy or Bust. I feel like G2 should have taken a timeout here to calm things down. That's a second clutch in a row in a 3v3 now that doesn't come even close. Even in the end, Monacy and Ego could still play together, no need to take that fight immediately. But yeah, now a change of pace from Heroic. Kicks him with an aggressive play. Yeah, he does not care, does he? And hearing the steps coming back, this might be a freebie. Oh, the turn, what's he looking at? I swear, half of this game's death oh. has just been like people suddenly looking away yeah. from the intended target. You have it. Oh, Great volley for Monacy. Monacy and Hooksy. I was going to say as well, this is the third buy in a row for G2, and it was mostly Galil's. Ooh, they were making God, it work. Hang on a second. They were. They no longer are. Off the brakes, guys. A three on two. They have to go back for the bomb, and that allows Heroic time to adjust. Watch G2 lose this. <laughs> but I think. But Hooksy saw. But he saw both players. He heard the M4 and the AK. Oh, nerds, they're up close. And he's been missed to 3K, but now getting it's silenced. Monacy. It's Monacy's yeah. time to shine. Finally. And Monacy is shining now. Just Tess says over at Dumpster, and Monacy's going to put a stop to this for sure with the round he's having. Oh, oh, hang on a second, man. He's a smoke, so he won't look I don't, don't want to look, you know, you look away from your screens. They can't look away from theirs. Pick a plant. Oh, yes. Yes, nice. Might have heard that as well. Surely heard that. So they've got the info. And stop being paranoid. There you go. It's fine. And it's one. And it's all Monacy. D2 luckily, <laughs> luckily they, they, they shined them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> luckily they signed Monashi. But it's just crazy, you know. You're right, Harry. I mean, this game, a lot of rounds, it happened to Hunter a couple of times, uh, looking at the right or yeah. the wrong way. And Exit uh, crossing the truck. A pretty messy game so far. Obviously for G2, crucial that they managed to actually win a round with all these constant force bites. There's not too uh, many rounds left for them to play with. Yeah, they had to win one, because if you keep bomb planting, you're going to keep buying. You're never going to have full AK util. You're never going to have the orb. I think, though, this time around for Heroic, it's a little bit of a different situation. Unfortunate for Kixan here as well. Yeah. Could have been a 5v4 early on. Honestly, just on point with the rifle, with the scope guns. Whatever you give him, he's going to find kills and find impact. I was going to say, Heroic doesn't have to. Force by they could have potentially also just ecoed, maybe bought in the in the next round with more utility. But in reality, Nikodos still wouldn't have had an op. So is it really worth it? Some guys wouldn't have had a lot of utility. This way, if you do lose this round, you could still eco. There's still you know the game still hasn't gotten away from you. So we'll see. I, from a lot of players that I talk to about force buying in the second round, right? After you lose pistol. Everyone gave me the same answer. It's it's fine, but you need to have a play. You know, you need to yeah. have a plan. You can't just buy pistols or scouts or whatever and just get out of spawn. You know, you need to know exactly what it is that you want to do. And if your idea doesn't work, how are you going to adjust? Are you going to save and all that sort of stuff? So let's see if Heroic has something special for us for this force buy. Nikodos looking like he wants to get involved early with this scout. Perhaps the bait and switch. Yeah, we've seen this quite a lot over here towards long. The tree position feeling 
uh, a lot more powerful in CS2. And so Nikodar is going to try and bait them in with that scout. And the real goal in the round is for Nertz to be the one to get the glory. Meanwhile, this take of short water comes in for Heroic. So they've kind of staked their claim to a few key areas of the map here to open up this one. And G2 have obliged in giving it away. Now, Hooksy, mm. he is being held here and he'll start running. Oh. Nertz overwhelms him. Now that double setup over at Long gets dismantled and G2 are going to start moving out through the B site. Smoke in heaven nullifies this scout, but Shush is 5-7. Hello, that's Monacy and Nexa both dead. This could be a flawless force by round out of Heroic. They could take this one all the way to the bank. This might be that back-breaking round. G2 snuffed out with not even a kill. Double digits locked in for Heroic, and it comes off the back of Shush's 5-7 down on the B site. It's just such a nice utility combo because he drops the smoke, forcing G2 round one side of the pillar. He throws a nade, he hears damage, and then he calls the flash. Thank you, Captain Kixon. Both are blind. The 5-7 tears through G2 on that B walk. That's a disastrous round to lose. And G2 are so laid out of spawn. They're figuring the out what time? to buy. Yeah, they are They are tilted at this point. What are you saving them for? I mean, if you're going to, okay, now it turns out it's a half buy, but I think just a little bit of heroic has a hot hand. You want to maybe stop, compose your players a little bit, but let's see, Nico finds that entry kill 5v4. Yeah. Just this runs is still through doable. a smoke. I think he's had enough for yeah, I was gonna he's say, the last right, guy alive. Enough. He has had enough. He is the, well, not the quietest player on the team, but with the expectations we place, we need a Nico round now, or maybe never in overpass. Heroic's map pick, G2 on the harder half, and the economy on the line. I mean, the second best player on, on G2 on this map is Hooksy, without a doubt. They need more from the rest of their players. Mm. Hooksy felt like he always went one for one at B. He was very active on rotations on CT. Oh. He's not loved this duel versus no. Nerds in the not second the guy half, I'd though. Fight. Yeah, fair play. Nico opened this round with that kill out through middle. And it's going to have to be him that looks to close it here. Is he still the one with this big ticket item of the AK? He said he felt like he'd had enough. Well, let's see if he can be. That hero figure for G2 creeping up into this smoke, trying to use it against Heroic. Flash goes out, no one blinded yet, and in they come. Nico, one more from him, but that quick pivot won't happen. And Nexa is mopped up as well. Heroic able to withstand the G2 hero gun round. It's just been a lot of walking into bomb sites, right? Is that round, they, they get a lot of space, but Heroic have the info. They've spotted them coming up. They've got three in the site. The round prior, it's G2 walking out through Monster. What do you think of that, Yanko? I think it's all right. It's a hard, but they don't have much utility to begin with. I think we need to praise Heroic a little bit more. You know, that's a 4v5 where they just play three players on A, and they just leave Tessis to play retake on B, right? A calculated gamble that works really well for them. And still no timeout for G2. And the first AWP of the T side. Not to say the Monacy's had trouble with the rifle, though. He's been, he won their one round on the T half of the AK with a 3K. Little pop, they get spotted before. Tessis does get blinded by that flash, though. However, Hooksy fell back. He'll self flash himself in, and Nico helps as well through the smoke. So that's another opening kill for G2 and a must win round. Another opener for Nico. True. This time, they kind of have to find success on the back of it, right? Last time they had the excuse of the fact that it was that low buy, the one gun, the lack of util. This time they've got everything going their way. And considering the score, this is where Heroic might go for a stack, right? Like they have a couple of more rounds to play with, their money is depleted. So if you stack and you're wrong, you could still buy in the next round. Tessis has enough money to rebuy, even Equidos can drop if someone else dies. But they stay split, they're going for the search with Nico does, and now Nerds is moving towards B. Which is great, because when you see the op, you're thinking that might dissuade you from going to that side, and three li rifles on the other side, but feels like G2 wants to end A no matter what. Awkward timing for Nico does as he backs up there right there. Yeah, they're way the closer than he's ready for. Oh, uh, knife pulled as he gets back behind the dice box. See ya. 
Gets there, but doesn't survive for long. The Monacy Orb just bearing down upon him. And you're dead on. That stack down towards B comes through for Heroic. It's not a bad time to save. I mean, if you look at the money on Nikidos and Tessas, rebuy coming next round. So Heroic, uh, it's not the end of the world by any means to get out with these guns. They need the save, but so do G2. No economy established on this T side. Uh, it's going to be a stalemate in this post plot. 11 to 8. And G2 should not hunt here. Uh, yeah. They should just try to save all their guns because Heroic isn't on match point yet. And although they have 1,400 loss bonus, that will be enough for Tessas and Ikodos to rebuy, to buy, for Tessas to buy nades, for the three players alive to rebuy their nades. So they will have a strong buy coming into the next round. But if they lose that, then it's going to be an equal with 1,900. This was better from G2, a slower, methodical round, sort of reacting to the aggression in water, making a mid-round call, finding that entry kill on Tessus. Just letting a little bit the, the, the game come to you instead of always trying yeah. to, to make the move, right? I mean, you know, I think that's kind of the most heartbreaking thing for, for G2 right now would be that they've certainly had rounds where they've had the potential to win it, but then they've kind of squandered those early advantages that they've been able to take. So, yeah, the slowdown is nice, and it's exactly what they needed. Monacy with this AWP takes it out through middle, but he's just holding the line over at long. The rest of G2 fanning out. Gonna deny any control over here towards short for now, but this boost is in play for Kixan, and he needs the what? smoke, but Nico's gonna win that. That's now his third opener in a row. Nico cracking rounds open, but now they've gotta follow through. Look at the reaction, immediate speed up towards A, they know the op is on B. Well, maybe not the speed up now, Hunter doesn't know where the rifle is. Oh, no, uh, just turns, checking right. long. That's awkward as hell. It's no AWP here in the site, though. Hunter's taking full advantage. They're going to need the smoke. Look to peek through it. Tessa's in at the truck, and he's got a mammoth task on his shoulders. Flash goes in over the top. Team Flash even hits it. He's left fighting for his life, and he can't withstand this hit for long. One man versus the full brunt of G2. And so it's looking like another G2 round. Hunter even comes in with the backstab, and it's just Nikodos left saving this AWP. So the gap is closing, and slowly but surely, Nico might not be blowing us away with where he is on the scoreboard, but he's certainly having a lot of impact in the start of these rounds. As mentioned, three entries in a row now for Nico. Nikodos dead at the end. You would assume he's got to fight Nexa, who can just contain him here as his team come in to hunt this AWP. He's blind, he's burning, he's dead. It's G2 with back-to-back -back rounds, looking to make a late-game recovery here on the T side, and they finally cooked the money of Heroic. This is not a, you know, not a guaranteed game by any means for Heroic now. It felt like they were ready to run away with it, but some crucial entries for Nico. It's just CS, I mean, that's a perfect sort of call and play from Heroic, but Kixan just doesn't connect on the kill, right? If, if he gets that, they're basically 5v3 because, yeah. you know, Hooksy was starting to pick up um, short, but that's just how it goes sometimes. And yeah, you could tell as soon as the op is on B, they want to go A, try to get into the site, right? It's easier to close the distance. Nerds is worried about the player lurking out long. Instead, Hunter's coming from Banana and... That pretty much seals the deal there. Do we count this one as well, Harry? Uh, the I mean, yeah, you know, he still yeah, got so it. Four rounds we don't, in a row. He kind of stole it from Hooksy. These are confidence boosts. Yeah, exactly. You know, this we should all be, need them. This should be for Hunter. <laughs> I think also you need to understand, you know, Hunter has played like. I don't know, maybe six overpasses in the last four years. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> it hasn't really been a map that he's played too many times in his career. So I think there's going to be a period of kind of getting used to the timings and the position and how things work because he's such an instinctive player trying to find gaps all the time. Come on then, next. Get your confidence up. Let's go. Oh, oh, no. oh God. Oh, no. oh, God. Oh, got hungry there. Okay, confidence down on that one. Bad skill check. Back to the drawing board. Uh, oh, let's just, you know, let's just respect the USP in yeah, this one. Yeah, let's stop hunting, boys. Or if you're going to do it, uh, yeah, gun out. Go on. Yeah. Bring him back into the fold. Three kills yeah. in the round.
It's 4 0 in opening duels in the whole map, and it's all from the last four rounds, this included. But this is only a means to an end now for G2. They've got to take on the Titan by coming for Heroic. Everything they'll need in the next round. And if Nikodos can save the AK, that's even juicier. Maybe he'll be able to get an AWP after all. Here comes Hooksy. We'll clear this. And the jumping yeah, Max I love it. Is so annoying to play against. Nikodos, one more kill would have had him enough to buy an AWP. And look at him laughing over it. Yeah. That's Nikodos, you know, teammates from Copenhagen Flames. But uh, another timeout from Heroic. I think, you know, we're joking around next and all of that, but it would have been big for Heroic if they were able to save that AK. Not just because a player would get an AK in this gun round, but for Nikodos' money potentially right in a round towards the very end of the game, that extra cash would possibly give an um, AWP over, yeah. you know, an M4 or a different gun. So at, at this point in the game, again, every little thing counts. And curious to see what the call is from Saw here. It's not like they've necessarily strategically been doing, you know, poorly. I think they've been getting pretty good reads on, uh, on G2, right? So potentially just some minor adjustments for some aggression in the mid round, or maybe just full on aggression from the start. There's no AWP, right? So that's always going to make you mid to late round. That's gonna make you claustrophobic on A, right? Because you can't really even jump spot as much. You know, you're in the danger of Monesty just tearing your head right out. So let's see what Heroic does here. Monika really feels like his fortunes have changed across these last few rounds, and he approaches this one with a good deal of confidence, crossing immediately into the playground. He's just watching for any sort of aggression out of Heroic. They're not going to attempt any. Not yet. That's for maybe a little bit later on. G2 get away with this con control as well. So nice bit of real estate owned all across the map here. And this is where Monesi should have a little bit more freedom right with the AWP. I don't know, maybe they're concerned. They don't know exactly the money of Heroic if he could maybe have enough for a glass cannon AWP, but only two smokes left on the side of Heroic with one minute. And they're going for the smoke fade in Monster. And Nexus is passive enough that he won't even be able to kill them instantly. They should have a guaranteed Super trade here. React to this. All the time and it's heard they line up. Nexus are one for one. It could have gone worse. They try and pop in B and Hooksy gets caught by kicks and even Monacy's missed shot on A. It's gone from bad to worse for G2. 40 seconds to make up their mind and they're going to risk it all back at B. Oh, that re-smoking at Monster, that's devastating. 30 seconds left as that goes in, and you see the effect it has. Hunter just turns around, walks away. They only have this one angle up through the short side. Tessez and Kixan should be able to play this one together to try and withstand the might of G2. Util starts to rein in now, but Kixan not made too uncomfortable from it. Gets nice. away with a one-for-one. One. It's left to Hunter and Monacy. They still don't even know about this player at Monster. Tessez never even spotted, never even needed. As Heroic run away with a 12th, Hunter's left combat saving. That one, oh, no. just shy of them, and even the kill after time. It won't affect money, not this late in the game. G2 have enough for these two buys, but Heroic have map points on their pick as well. So a massive buffer now. Two opportunities to shut out this map. This will be the best one, right? Their money is certainly on the line. But a nice shutdown on B, considering that's a 2-2 split in a 4-on-3. Sure, they still have the player advantage overall, but kicks and going one for one against Nico is a damn good sight. More importantly, Tess has picked up the op for Nico, though, so now he has the big green as well. Oh, oh honestly, com combat orping up through short. That's one way to root. And Nico also finds an opener. G2 will not go down this without is, a fight. This is nice for G2. Good return back into it. Nice way to try and... All right, so they killed the two A players, right? But obviously, they're far away to capitalize on that. Um, plenty of time left on the clock. So here, time is a, a resource, just like utility, just like a man advantage, right? And at this point, they have a lot of it. The pressure is on Heroic to make a play, and that's why G2 is just holding, right? Yeah. For a re-aggress on B. But you need to be careful. Overpass is a huge map, and you don't want to get blocked with these two smokes late into the round. So soon, G2 will have to start moving, gaining some information. Oh, I like this. They're gonna go prod with Nico over towards A. Just give it a little look in. 
see if he can draw any players around the map. Shush left alone down on the B side. That smoke goes out, so he will slow down the short creep for now. 35 seconds. Kicksan now moves in to join him. G2, none of the time to go back. They will be running into this double stack. The oh combat boost coming in. Shush going up, Nico. but not looking at Con. Not looking at Con. Nico's not checking the boost. This is weird. Right now, they know that if G2 are here, they're already up through the short side. Shush has to keep his wits about in so many bodies. And it's a good try, but just overwhelmed by the numbers of G2 down on that B site. It's hard to say if that would have even helped, right? If they kill Nico off the boost, all G2 do is immediately spill into the bomb site and they probably line up both kills on the tower. So it looks more awkward than it really is. G2, play that 5v3 perfectly, Yanko. For G2, yes. For G2. <laughs> G2. G2, don't lose a 5v3. Ugh. I consider that perfect. Let's see now. We, we already see them lose around to pistols earlier on where Hooksy was counting towards A and then they just went out to monster. Now it seems a bit more of a standard round default towards A. Hunter has spare nades dropped to him in connector, so not only mollying once, but mollying twice. Forcing a smoke out of kicks, and there's still another player in the corner. It's also giving the impression of there being multiple players uh, in connector, so probably a different sort of a default to what G2 is actually doing. Nikodos does not have the scout. The Deagle have to hit heads here, and Monacy goes for a quick shot. He's got 30 kills as we enter the last round of regulation, and G2 gunning for overtime here in map one. I dare say they should have it. But it's G2 after all. Nothing is guaranteed. Yeah, I think, you know, as well, Heroic have been... had a lot of cool ideas for how to approach these sorts of rounds, right? They've always had this tendency of making them feel very competitive, and they've won a good few of them, too. Late back to B, and as heroic, they feel like their hands forced. They've got to make a gamble. And not only that, they've got no kit. So four stack on A means G2 should win this round from position. Oh. Shush gets a spot. Let's see how panicked that rotation is. Heroic start to pull men down. G2 need to go quick. And kicks on arriving, but with Shush dead, the numbers now turn against heroic. Firepower not on their side as well. There's no shush. 5-7 heroics this time. Nerds up close is spammed out by Nexa. And this one's coming unraveled. The force bite not sticking the landing for heroic. And so overtime is on the horizon. Tessas and Nikodos, not really much you can expect them to do here. Even getting spammed by Hooksy over a short. Clean shot from Monacy. And for Tessas, that sinking feeling sets in. They had their chance to get this one done in regulation. But it's not going to happen as G2 grind out an overtime. It takes Monacy dropping 31 kills to get them there. And countless openers from Nico on this T side. But eventually, they do stumble back to their feet. And at bare minimum, lock in OT. Oh, a sigh of relief, if nothing else, for G2, who were definitely on the back foot. It was all kind of spearheaded by those four rounds in a row where Nico's getting opening kills. And after the first one, G2 picked up a bit of a streak. They send us into bonus play with all the money here, but that will give heroic options once again, no longer relegated to pistols. Nikodos has had a decent game as well. 18 kills, nuts right above oh. him. Goes That's... for a risky fight, and he'll swing back with a second flash. That's the clash of the titans there in mid. The two top performers trying to face off against one another in Nerds and Monacy. Monacy gets out a little wounded. Yeah, Monacy's 4-0 at openers as well this map, so... That could have been his first death. Just standing on 38 health. Oh, Hunter didn't quite spot Tessas tucked in down towards short. And so right now, not really aware that Heroic have all this forward info over at B. That's freed up a third player to come and support this top site. They flash Nerds in at long. He tries to get involved early, and Monacy gets the better of him. Bear in mind, it was them two skirmishing right at the start of the round. Monacy was the one that got away, and he goes on to punish Nerds just a little bit later. Now the execs coming through, the util flooding on in. Hooksy leads the charge. It's Nico to pick up the next double. The top site cracked wide open. 
Wow. And that's more like it. Hooksy's he's been shooting today, man. Say what you want. He has been getting a lot of kills on the C side. His CT was solid as well as the rotation player. A very important role. So he's got a fall here, but that's a nice en uh, double entry from Nico, supplemented by Hooksy, which denies any possibility of this retake. It's also Hooksy who's anti-flash on long, but somehow Monacy gets the kill with the AWP. He was looking right into it. Yeah, he, he saw it coming. The presence, no, the presence of mine to be anti-flash for that sort of a play. Um, he saw it coming, yeah, that yeah. turn back. And I think just tells you how difficult it is to hold day when you don't have long or bathrooms control, right? With with the T's having utility. And Nikodos was close long. It looked like he wanted to repeat, but I think he remembers that round where he just crouch peeks into Monacy and you just lose that fight. Um, even hit with the peaker's advantage, Monacy's quick. So there's that in the back of your mind. They try and make a flash play, G2 remove the round from their hand. So I think here the problem is for Heroic, right? If, if for these late rounds, if they don't have A control, they had three players there, it still didn't matter. So I think for me right now, my call would be, I would start heavy B in case G2 because of this timeout wants to change a pace with a B pop, right? But then in the mid round, I would send that extra player A and have Nikodo sort of try to search for kills or do some sort of mid round re-aggress while my B guy still has a smoke clap so he can block at the time we're making that play. Something like that. They're giving up. They had water control, yeah. but it didn't really matter. You know, those two guys had to maybe push connector together at some point to get more information. That was... Oh, my goodness. That's one way like to do this. it. A little run boost. Some cool moves to get Tessez in over the Molotov. But it is still being considered. Exa waiting outside of Monster. Hooksy right. walking Fish. in, but hang on. That's a lineup. That's nearly the double. Monacy will facilitate with a trade. Bought down really low, but they just can't seem to finish the job versus Monacy. Still very much in the picture here with eight points of health. It's going to maybe force him to be a little more respectful, but he's been able to find impact at low health before. So G2 slow it down. They at least flush Heroic out of short. And so once again, that info flow that Heroic had gets cut off. This time they do have Nikodos in a more proactive stance in towards the toilets. He's holding this close line up through short. So if they go sneaking in, it should be a nice, easy layup for Nikodos. Can he escape, right? Are their players close enough to trade? Because he'll want to get back towards A. That might not be allowed here. Repause. Molly down. Nika Doz looks for the kill. That nade almost finishes Monacy's life. And even with the shadow, Monacy finds that kill further from the angle. Tucked behind the smoke is nuts. He kind of has to be heroic, literally himself. One man in the sight comes through the smoke, does drop the first, but the bomb crowd sprays its way to a win. G2, bomb plot, but with low players, heroic could consider this. They need to consider this. It's going into last round of the half and they can buy. There is no excuse. There should be no save. But do they really prioritize nades and orb over a possibility? I think it's tough because the Monacy HP is unknown to them. That came with a smoke yes. spam. They know one player is low. Monacy with an orb bomb planted. How are you going to with no utility? Yeah. Get rid of him. It's just, it's very painful to save here. Uh, but the round is actually super difficult to win. So I think, you know, I would hate it standing behind and seeing it happen, but it is actually the best call. It's more like you watch the demo back as well and you're like, damn, Monacy had three health, the and opportunity was there. But yeah, I mean, man up, no smoke for bomb. It's insane how much Ouch. work Monacy has been doing this game. I mean, yes. This trade kill on Tessis, now finding Nikodos. And even when he, those few rounds at the start of the T side, before he had the AWP, because they force bought like three and rounds in a row. He was on the rifle. He was on the rifle. He was winning. He won their first round with a 3K on A site. Like, he was winning rounds on the AK and Galil. And he's kept it going. 34 oh. kills. And now, and now, you know, this maybe feels bad for Heroic because they came into this matchup as the underdog in spite of a, you know, a very impressive run through the play-in stage. They felt like they had this game in the palm of their uh -oh. hands. Uh -oh. But it might just get away in OT. Nikodos trying nice. to be the hero. And he will stand tall. Good for the double kill. Nico on the receiving end of one of those for a change. Keeper tries to reroute out, and he's got Nerds backing him up every step of the way. This tag team of Nerds and Nikodos has locked G2 out of middle. Will one round on this CT side be enough for Heroic? 
First, they've got to get it. Next uh, attempt is oh, walk out three short. Just the one kill, actually. And now it's Monacy, 1v4. And don't get me wrong, he's not missed a beat all damn day. But he should never be able to get away with this one. Coming through Monster, the trade will be there immediately. Surely smooth oh. to try and make it happen. But there's Kicksang swinging it wide. And so Heroic at least find one round on this CT side. That's so crazy because I feel like G2 was ready for that play. That's why you see the the molly and everything, right? But I, I'm not sure really how Nico completely yeah. whiffed on Nico those here. Um, he yeah. Also, stop. He didn't really continue the spray. I well, he tried to cancel the spray, but then he's just running. He doesn't even like start a step. He's just running the whole time. Didn't even get another shot off. So sometimes the simple play works the best and Heroic wins the all-important one round on the CT side. That gives them a chance here. It was 6-6 uh, in regulation. Oh, That's going through the smoke again. They don't have the flash this time. They're caught out by one. Kicks and finds him blind. It's again the Monacy trade. The orb starts B. And thank goodness it does. But that will elevate the pace towards A as Heroic comes back up connector. And we saw this happened to G2, right? The opera is on B. How are you going to respond? Heroic slows it down Ooh. a little bit. Boost on boost. Wait, that oh. boost but Monacy's up there just a little faster. And dude, ah, oh, you, you just can't explain the, the, the impact that Monacy's had in this game. Whether it's openers, trades, or clutches, he's had everything come up in his favor, it feels like. Or poor rifle, whatever you give him, he is giving G2 all the results right now. Still decent utility on Heroic, but they have no map control. That's the problem. So most likely going to be a B execute. I feel like that gives them a good chance. I mean, G2 is split 2-2. Two, two. One smoke on Hooksy. He's gonna, I think, put down a defensive smoke as soon as something starts happening. And Nico is re-clearing yeah. now bathroom, so Monacy might be there in time. Yeah, the re-clear from Nico might be big. It just gives Monacy that extra few seconds. Hunter at least good for the trade here. And so G2 get to head into this retake, a man up. Monacy, not a man, more of a god right now. A third kill in the round from this AWP, and that leaves it on Kicksan. Big brain on his shoulders, but... A lot to do here, and Court looking away at the wrong time. It's all Monacy. Nice one, Ilya, as G2 would say. It's 15 on the board. They move on to map point. 37 kills. I mean, he's close to a 40 bomb if you go back to MR15 in regulation, right? Incredible work from him. And also, I think what's impressive is it's not been that many crazy Monacy flicks as it's just been him mm. position-wise being yeah. like at the right place at the right time. Again, in the first round of the overtime, we're opening B site again, right? I think that's a, a great sign, right? That his feel for the game has been really, really good here on overpass. I love as well, we see him there in the player cam. He is just motor mouth, 100 miles an hour. Getting all the info out there. He can feel the game right now. There's no denying it. Nico teed up over in middle. Will oh, get out wow. with the double. And so he's done exactly what he had to do in this round. A 4v3 immediately provided on the back of that flash play in mid. And if you try to go B, oh, if you try to go B, you'll go running into the big man upstairs. It's Monacy with this AWP. Of course he doesn't miss nerds. And this one is looking done. One overtime, all it takes for G2. A return to form across this map. Monacy active throughout the entire thing to even keep G2 in it. And then slowly but surely, you had folks like Nico start to find his groove, start to find his footing. For Heroic, this is a punch in the gut. They felt like they had this game in the palm of their hands. And it gets stripped away from them at the 11th hour. There's nothing to do. Kicks and weights a flank that will never come, but they could flash peek this. They can swing this together. At worst, they will trade. He walks into his inevitable demise. And G2, they wait, they wait. And then they strike. 16 to 13. The reigning champs of IEM Katowice are back in the group stage. And with a recovery here on Overpass, it's a damn good start. We move to their map pick. Anubis up next to see if G2 can get it done in two.
Hey future pros, Heaven is a pesky location to deal with when attacking the B bomb site. Let's look at an easy smoke you can throw to smoke it off. To throw this smoke, wedge yourself into this corner. Aim in between these two posts where the wall meets with the floor. Then jump throw the smoke. Simple as that. The benefit to the jump throw here is that the smoke will bloom a bit earlier than a normal throw. Good luck taking B. Hey future pros, a classic smoke for you today. This is a smoke thrown from CT spawn to block off monster. To throw the smoke, stand in the corner next to this bin. Aim right at the end of this train line pole thing. Then jump throw the smoke. A fairly easy but powerful smoke, which if thrown fast will land before the T's even make it to monster. Overtime required to separate Heroic and G2 in a first map that was probably more competitive than we gave it credit for. Heroic coming in, looking incredibly well prepared on their map pick, but it does come down to that G2 recovery match. You see them sealing up in that first OT. Yeah, listen, I think we need to give a couple of props for Heroic. Before I introduce you to the Monacy fan club, which I'm, I'm sending my uh, candidature as a president, and if people want to come to me, we can organize a group, we can talk about him every week, I can introduce you to our Lord and Savior Monacy. But first, Josh, maybe, just maybe, we legitimize overpass for Heroic because that wasn't too bad at all. Yeah, it was a really good start for them. Obviously, not winning piss around and then not being able to convert that meant that they didn't get the greatest start. But they were actually doing a really good job. And obviously, as we were talking about before the show, starting T-side overpass, you better have a good game plan. You better have your... You're going into a hard side mm -hmm. on a hard map. You want to make sure that you know what you're doing. And we saw even the rounds that Heroic were losing early on, they were actually doing really well. They were getting three kills, four kills. They were taking G2 down that eventually they were able to break G2's economy mm. and then run off with a few rounds. Absolutely. So we're going to see one of the rounds here, for example. Nico is getting really pushed up. And He's that happens quite a lot. Yeah, that right? happens a lot. He he goes down pretty early. And we already see here, this is after um, Heroic's actually done a lot of damage to G2's economy. They lost a 1v1 clutch. They lost like a 1v2 clutch as well. So going into this round here, they win this round. G2's economy is in shambles. Mm. They have to do a force buy. Then they have to do an eco round. And this is where Heroic is able to string a few rounds together. But the problem is, this is a map win needed for Heroic. Yes. If they want to actually win the series, like this was their chance, take it to a third map nuke because there's no way that they're winning the second map. And I feel like this clip really sort of immortalizes one of the main issues that G2 had early on was that Nico was playing extremely aggressively. Yeah. He was very aggressive on the map. He was far forward. In this clip that Josh just showed us, he was literally in the party, like close to the T spawn, right? He got caught off guard. That worked at the beginning of the game. Nico mm. had a few rounds where he had information early. He allowed Monacy to rotate and Monacy did what Monacy does. But when Nico was being found, and that happened, that happened a couple times, once in the door, once in balloon, once in party as well, here in that clip. I think Kixon did a really good job at realizing we can find Nico and then we can just reset. We can go back to the B side just like that clip we saw. And this is one of the reasons why they had such competitive half. Yeah, and it ended up with Nico, you know, struggling, I think it's fair to say. Very much Basically, struggling. in the entirety of regulation. And then the antithesis to that uh, is Manasi. And thank the Lord, if you're a G2 fan, that this guy has just been looking incredibly consistent because it was weighing on his poor little shoulders. He had to carry G2 over the line in this one. I mean, that's unhealthy at this point. It is unhealthy. Honestly, the amount of work that Manasi had to put into this game, he is. He's got his banner here in the Hall of Heroes down far line. I can barely see it from here. You better give him all the massages he wants. You better give him all the coffee, whatever he needs, whatever he asks for, Manasi should get. Because he solely, single-handedly saved G2. He was the one stabilizing on the CT side. AVP on B, AVP on A. Basically, anytime Heroic were trying to face him, they were losing. And even then further on the T side, when G2 is 
running dry. Who the hell is unlocking the counter for them? It's Monesi with a triple kill on the Galil. And that's how G2 find some sort of footage, some sort of momentum, and then he pushes them on. Then he puts Heroic into a sort of a complicated situation. Actually, that was the M4. That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, you better wave at them. You destroyed them. <laughs> he earned it. Like, holy hell. I, I get fascinated by it, but what, the, what, what am I watching? What, what are we watching since when is Monesi supposed to solo carry G2 like this? He, he's not. And if Monesi wasn't present in that game, this would be a very different ending, wouldn't it, Josh? Oh, it'd be a much different ending. Monesi is a brick wall for these guys right now, and Heroic can't break through them. They need a bulldozer. They don't have one really, really right now. And, you know, going into a map like um, Anubis, is that what we're seeing? I do yeah. believe we're going, yeah, Anubis. We're going Anubis, Anubis, and it's yeah. like, that's also a pretty good playground for Monesi. So for him to keep G2 into the game like this and carry the, the people that haven't maybe woken up, now G2 is probably feeling really good, and Heroic's like, damn, we had our chance, we let it slip, we lost in overtime, we let it get to overtime, mm -hmm. we, we lost in overtime, and now it's like, well, now we have a really tall order, can we even do this? They're probably feeling a little unconfident, like, we had it in our grasp and we let it slip. How are we going to do it now? But this is where I do get a little bit worried if you allow me to sort of jump back on the uh, G2 train for a second is that you said the sleepiness, right? That was obviously evident in this first map. But has that not been a little bit of a symptom throughout the last few months? We haven't seen that same Nico transitioning into CS2 as we knew and loved in Global Offensive. No, it, it is a fact that Nico is in a rough period. That there's no way around it. There's no way to sugarcoat it. I, I don't exactly know whether there must be some sort of element between he and CS2 and what it is and whether or not it fits his place. Style, but I also think in a game like that, the way he's being used, like he is, I think we're looking back at the Nico who was forcing the issue and overcompensating at times, and then not putting himself in positions where he's supposed to shine. And I think he is probably on, on a confidence scale, not exactly at the very best. And so you lose a little bit of lucidity and you force a couple of these fights, you, you try and grab that extra meter, you would have that extra second that cost you, and then you start getting into this sort of negative downfall that he is in. I, I still have trust in Nico, but I feel like the, the spirit is getting a little longer for me. Like, listen, we, we put Zaiwon across after four maps. Why are we being so lenient right now? Like, what's happening? It's a very good question. So maybe they can reinstate your trust. Coming on to their Hopefully. map pick. That will be Anubis. So let's check in with the G2 camp to see how they're feeling going into this one. Great. Thank you so much. Well, uh, I just got talking to Taz and uh, I said to him, well, congratulations on the win, but it was a hard fought one. What was going on? And he said, well, Overpass is their play playground. It is not our playground. We had a lot of difficulties there, but Anubis, that is our playground. And I think uh, the moment momentum rather is turning in our way. The mood was much better by the end of that game and that is going to be necessary. I also got to listen in a little bit on the other side to Heroic. And in the beginning, a lot of energy kicks on feeling really comfortable, but I think the pressure got to him just a little bit. I heard Saw saying, you guys have the right idea, you have the right plans, you have the right beginnings of the rounds, but then it kind of falls apart. So we'll see what happens on Anubis. Yeah, I think fairly so. The pressure of Monacy would be enough to break anybody's back, as was evident on that first map. But surely we have to be looking at a bit more from the wider sphere of G2 coming onto Anubis, which is a map that obviously Taz Apple said they're way more comfortable on, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I Im imagine, I assume they would start on the CT side, right? The, the T side probably picked by Heroic in that equation. And then I think there are two players who individually could be a little bit abused in their positions. Like next on the A side, we know it's a bit a little complicated for him, and Hunter in Cave. I feel like if you're kicks in, you try and find some of these kills. The issue is, Manasi right now is literally duplicating himself on the map on the city side. He literally just Pokemon wise just zip like becomes illusions and goes everywhere. And so it's very reminiscent of, of the simple days where he would literally his position is not a position. He's wherever he is needed. And I think as as a heroic player, you got you start into a round thinking, okay, where the hell these mofo is going to be? Like, how am I finding my way out of Manasi? The problem is he changes a whole lot, as we could see on Overpass. Yeah, and I know that I spoke to Manasi actually about Anubis specifically and I like their game plans that they have on their CT side where they get a little bit aggressive and they have some like they have plans that have built-in stages to it. So we're going to go for this aggressive thing, and if this happens, we fall back and we do this other thing off of it. And just knowing the, how he's able to start here with an op, he's like, okay, I'm going to go to this position, I'm going to go to A, but first I have this one, I'm going to go for this mid-peak first, and then I'm going to go into it. So it looks like he has a little bit of just like freedom to go wherever he thinks he can make a play, yes. even though he's going to end up somewhere else. And then wherever he ends up, he has a plan with his teammates, and they have layers to it. Well, we did see our first map of this series on the A stream going to OT, but we also have some action going down simultaneously on the B stream. So, Banks, how's Falcon's Eternal Fire looking? 
over here on the B stream, Falcons are going up against Eternal Fire, and Eternal Fire have come in strong. Now, Vertigo has been played a little bit by the Falcons already at Blast. It wasn't looking like a great map for him, and Eternal Fire love it. They did manage to get the win and march on forward, and the hype is continuing here on New. Both teams have played a little bit in here, but I will say for Eternal Fire right now, the synergy, the teamwork gets working out from where Falcons, there's still got a lot of work to do. Map two coming up next. Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. He's still young. He was young two years ago and he's still young. It reminds me of myself when I was very young playing, like a lot of raw skill, could flick everywhere, like, and he's already has a, a very big understanding of the game. I think it does help that he's playing with Nico, you know, one of the greatest all time, probably trade a lot of knowledge with him, so he knows what he should be developing and ways of thinking about the game. So he's in good hands. I would say that he's probably like mechanically the best player in this time. His mechanics is what separates him. Like he's really fluid in the things he does. Flashy over. He's always making the right picks. Every game that I'm watching him play, I see him always improving. Like from event to event, he just keep improving and improving. And for me, it's really hard to play against him. I think he's still gonna be top five this year. Like so strong individually. And he's always looking for or new tools that's gonna help him in ways that no one else thinking about. Like he's always finding some new bugs in the game because of that. He's always finding interesting ways of finding cues where people wouldn't really see the opportunity. So yeah, he really putting the hard work. He's at that age where only CS matters. In this current time, I think Manusi is kind of like dominating the, the vertigo. <laughs> um, both sides on CT and T, I think he, he's really good on that map. Good at uh, like all maps, I think. I mean, vertigo for me is where I see him being better than other of us. The only thing that I feel like he can improve on and like he can be like the best in the world, if we'll be in the, in the right time, in the right place. Returning G2 champion, technically. Technically, yeah. Yeah, uh, is that something you guys have talked about this week? Obviously, I mean, it's it's been a year, uh, completely different squad. Um, is it something that's on your mind? It's huge shoes to fill. We got to be real, right? Yeah, of course, it's uh, really big uh, shoes to fill. Um, I think Katowice in general is one of the special tournaments even for me. I think my first S-tier event that I made the grand finals of is actually Katowice back then with G2. And I know for the guys it meant a lot because they played I think three grand finals, I mean, at least Hunter did before he actually got to win one. So coming back here, I know they, they want to defend the title and I'm going to do my best to help them. Are you a little jealous of the teams that got to start with the play-in to kind of hit the ground and warm up? Or or what's your mind of that? Have you been keeping an eye on the play-in? Hell no, hell no. I've been through play-in for yeah. Katowice and Cologne for the last two years. I'm not jealous at all. Okay, so you got the life of luxury. You're coming in as the returning champion. Yeah. You're coming in straight to the group stage. Uh, life is good for Nexa. Yeah, exactly. Vibes at an all-time high? Yeah, of course. That's why I'm here, for the vibes. Yeah, all for the vibes. All right, we're going to find your other teammates, bro. Good luck out there. Thank you. Look good. I don't know how it's come to Don't know how I could resist. I took a vow to never sin, but I saw the darkness from within. And if the sun can't break through, just let.
The one-man army of Monacy proves to be enough to keep G2 in the picture. They move a map up in this series now, and with Anubis around the corner, their map pick. I want to get the lowdown on if we think this is going to be a bit more comfortable for the G2 squad. Is it going to require another 40 bomb from Monacy for the win to come through, or do you think they got activated in, the, in that last map, Yanko? I don't think it's necessarily about activation, more so about comfort level on the map, right? On Overpass, a lot of the guys, some haven't played it for a long time, some are playing different spots. Just as a team, they've introduced it into their map pool. On Anubis, that seems to be their go-to pick with this lineup. So I think you'll see everyone looking much better. And yeah, I mean, just for Monacy, man, even if you go this time last year, there's a good amount of kills that he's getting by correcting his aim. He's a little bit out of position, over peaks, but he's so fast mm. that he still gets away with it. And on overpass, there wasn't really too much of that. It no. was mostly just mm. great positioning, being at the right place at the right time, good decision making. And that's extremely scary for yeah. everyone else out there. If he can add that element to his game, you know, if, if he's constantly improving at that too, then he'll be very difficult to stop. And what more to say about it than you have Device and Fallen, two of the legends in the role and legends of our game sort of singing his praises. Yeah, you know, in that little content piece in the break as well, Nerds was even saying like, yeah, you know, uh, he's he's really hard to play against. And if he nails down his positioning, he's going to be like this unstoppable god. And well, it felt, it felt like Nerds was dead on in that prediction, actually. Yeah. I, Overpass is a little clearer on positions. So, right, there were reads, rounds where he would start B, get a pick, but most of the time you're going to be sitting behind dice box. This is a map at least where, sure, there are plenty of options open, but you definitely could be left in the wrong position uh, on Anubis. And I don't think I've ever seen an opera with a combination of movement and quickness yeah. when it comes to shooting ever since Cirque in 2016. That's, <laughs> if you ask <laughs> Kassad, right? No, but mm. I think that's what's scary because his way of getting information without dying with the jump peaks yeah. and everything, right? So you see his shoulder, your natural instinct is to sort of shoot at him, obviously, and then he, from the sound cue more so than the visual cue, just peeks you right after. And even though he doesn't exactly, can't exactly pinpoint where you are, just the fact that he's so good mechanically and his aim is so great, he can still land that shot. And that's actually, you know, so frustrating for the rifler because you can't get a headshot on him because you don't really see his head. You can do some damage, but he's just going to, on the second, on his actual peak, going to destroy you. So it can be very demoralizing to play against, especially if he's feeling it like he was on overpass. Yeah, and now on Anubis, we have a good track record for G2. Only teams they've lost to in the last three months are FaZe and Na'Vi, two uh, Anubis aficionados on this map. So I think uh, all expectation of G2 coming in 2-0 right now. That being said, I'm not disappointed by the level we've seen from Heroic, not only in the play-in, but even in that map previously. It's a new team. They're going to have teething issues. Right now, the stars of Nikodos and Nerds have been showing up in this series. I think they're playing really well, even if you go back to the play-in and here on Overpass. Like, sure, it was their map pick and you're maybe expecting them to close it out but it took a heroic <laughs> performance <laughs> from Monacy. No, you pun no pun intended. Oh, it's intended. I'm so sorry. Um, to the mic. To really, you know, deny them that win. So yeah. we'll see. I think it's important to be able to mentally reset and keep fighting here on Anubis. Well, let's find out if Heroic can. They're going to start things off over on the T side and immediately they are running everyone over here towards A. G2 have stacked B. So... If they stick to their guns on a little A-side walk, this could be a nice spot for Heroic. It's Prove the haters wrong, Nexa. Yeah, it's big. Right they, here. It's big they don't use the flash as well, because now Heroic don't even hear the flash on the other side of the map. They don't know that G2 have taken this space, and although it's only Nexa alone in this smoke, he's got the jewelies. They're pretty good. Here we are, Nexa. Oh, no. None and done, wow. as that's the end of the line for him. <laughs> oh, I like nice that. Nice flash play through oh. camera, but Hootsie actually blinded himself in the process. Sick. So this one's not gotten off to a rip-roaring start for the G2 squad. 3v5, and the backstab looking to get dealt with. Nico oh. suddenly emerges, and Monacy dropped out. It's got to be all Nico here to open up the pistol for G2. Dropping down into the site, he taps the bomb, hoping this baits a peak. He was relatively quiet back on overpass, but trying to start this one strong. The three kills is the end of the line. 
as it will be Heroic pulling up with a pistol round in their back pocket. Nice shots for Nico, but I will say Nico Dos is a very strong P250 player on these pistol rounds as well. It's uncomfortable for Nexi. You think even one kill would be enough. And I love that idea for Hooksy, right clicking the flash in the smoke, but then he runs backwards looking into it. Fumbled the execution, and Hiroa come through with a pistol round. Unfortunate for Nexa, you know, great timing to put down the smoke, playing behind with the duelist, just can't connect on the kills. If he got at least one or maybe bought a little bit more time, the flank was coming in from G2, but not meant to be. And we have this flash play with the USPs. Gonna look to try and deal with Shush. G2 just waiting for the uh, kind of mental timer to kick in on this one as they hear that util coming out. Heroic are looking to take some space over in main, so it's not a bad idea. They're gonna be in the right place with it. Hooksy's flash in the last round might have let him down, but let's hope this one tees up the rest of these USPs. Ooh. Smoke now fades, flash goes in. Here comes the peak and it is an absolute massacre. Everybody falls for G2 and the vanilla pistols don't get anything done. And that's par for the course. If they threw it on the fade, maybe, right? Couple of kills at least. But good clean anti-eco from Heroic. Nerds has given the MP7 bug to Shush as well. Kicks and Mac 10. So let's see if they go maybe for an A rush, some fast B execute M4s on the side of G2 all around. Next of it, no utility. Has A anchor as well. He would definitely need support. Ooh, Nikodos fearless through the smoke and with a break as well. He gets a lot of info. It almost seems too good to be true, but it's not. No one is here. He won't commit. It's very early in the round, but supporting smoke down on Temple. Nikodos is getting set up for yeah. success right now. And as they're hearing all this noise, right, with the three strong lean over towards A, they're going to be tempted to have to take some real estate back, right? They have a lot of resources dedicated over here towards this A site, and so they flash themselves into main. They at least get a bit of a foothold here. That mid area still conceded. At least Monacy gathers the info. Molly is so huge to block the camera play. They're about to commit and just go into A right there, but it's going to be G2 blocking. And as Yanko points out, not much utility left for Heroic as they try and bail back to B. As I say this, G2 are second guessing themselves. They've lost mid info. And so while rotating beach, they're also pulling out of the yeah. B bomb site. This is perfect timing for Heroic. The thing that's scary here, right, is because you lost mid for a good while there and you didn't have any eyes on it. They could even be in CT. So there's a lot that G2 are having to worry about here. Hooksy and and Hunter both rise to the occasion, though, with a killer piece on this B-hold. And things are looking good for G2. On plant will come in. Another kill from Hunter okay. through the smoke. So this one looking nice and clean thus far. They've got Tessez and Nikodos left to get through. They learn about Tessez over in the connector. Nikodos is still a big question mark, but he is all that stands between G2 and this round. They'll deal with him cleanly. And so G2 pull up with the rifles and they get their first on the board right away. I think also that first kill from Hunter really describes well who he is, right? Like when, when I talked to an overpass about going for some aggressive peaks and like this is it, just there's three players there really waiting, but he just goes for it before the smoke pops, gets that one kill, he'll find one more through the smoke. So great job from G2 to just sort of hold play defensive, wait for the smokes to clear before they go for the retake with the numbers advantage. It's such a high risk peak, but given the fact that they have no one in the site, getting out with a five on four is perfect for G2. And they played for the sites uh, in the previous round, so yeah. now let's see if they put a little bit more focus on middle. There will be Nico starting there. Deep nades, smoke to block, but very supportive. We're seeing this little uh, wolf pack on the A side in most of these rounds for G2. Three players focused as Nico lines up a Molotov. Might be uh, burning out the rugs as they go for a push together. Oh, he's just dropping it below in the little right-hand corner. It's going to force a repass. Flash is good, but Nico does. Comes in with the saving double. Massive entries. They know a third man's here. There was Util coming through, and Monacy waits back in heaven. One kill for Monacy. Oh. Accidental jump, but he controls it. 
Tony Hawk in the building, man. Little kick flip there as he brings it back into a three on three. The backstab is in from Tessez as mid is left unchecked and now Heroic can slow it down. Monacy hungry for even more. He's left up in this clutch. Three kills to his name and a 1v2. This has got to be the ace clutch from Monacy if he wants to keep this round safely in the G2 bank. Wouldn't be his first on Anubis. Smoke out over towards Temple. Heroic move in, the site conceded. Monacy gonna try and play through this. He teed this up for himself, gave himself options if he had to retake this B site. But Nikodos, just a little smart, a little faster on that one, comes up behind him and will flush Monacy out, knowing what he had planned to do with that smoke. Great game out of Nikodos right now. That double entry, he saves his teammates who are mollied and blind out A main with this double kill. And then goes on to shut down a red hot Monacy. Three kills into an ace. The recovery there to jump, to go full Yabby, to still land on your feet is admirable for Monacy, but it's still heroic leading the board. 3 1 T side Anubis. It's par for the course, but it's also G2's map pick. So you don't want them to go too deep down under. Well, they haven't been since Sydney. Just pistols now, a couple of digs to give you a fighting chance, but Nikodos has already walked all the way through A. Might just be the round. Might. Yeah, it should. Should Weird. very much so be, right? They uh, only have these two players trapped down over towards dark, and Nico's knowing about in middle, so Heroic have got this one teed up. Kicksand just getting some target practice at range there. And Nico's just going to slink his way out of middle. Heroic kind of looking for this. It's only the Deagle they'd be looking to remove, and they'll do exactly that. Kicksand. Lights up the eco from G2. Orp going to get dropped over from Nico. Setting up the star here. Oh, and you see uh, Taz getting involved here. G2 calling in a timeout. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that last gun round, it was just they, they, they called the play to be aggressive outside of A, probably weren't hoping for three guys to be there and Nikodos coming in a little bit late, shutting it down. So not too much to talk about. Perhaps maybe just uh, calling for a more passive style, sort of wait for heroic to, to do something right and then maybe play a little bit more reactive instead of being proactive all the time. We've got the James smoke for Kixon. That's going to land inside of dark, but spread just enough that you can't peek. Or you can't hide, rather. You have to peek or go back to B. It takes a while to bloom, though. Hunter sees it. And wow, OK, it's off a little bit. He's got a nice gap there. So this was some early B utility from Heroic, probably wanting to bait out the counter utility from the CTs in case it was a B pop. So. They might go back to it or just end around on A. Well, Monacy is here. here with this. Ooh, a missed shot, uncharacteristically so. Misses again and then burns alive in the molly on the site. Shush, double opener secured. And on the back of that, the round might just be unraveled for G2. This save call should look to come in. This just in. Monacy is human. <laughs> That's one of the first misses all series, and it is consequential here for G2. It just loses them the round with Nexa falling with only one. Monacy needed to hold the line. Nuts is hunting. He knows exactly where they're going, and he will deal with them well. Oh, the reswing back in as well, but Hunter denies it. And that will be allowed. Two guns at least for G2, but not enough to rebuy a round fully. So Nurtz's job is done. A nice utility behind the bomb site as well, getting mollied out. And no BS call there from Heroic, right? Yeah. What I was talking about, let G2 think about all the possibilities. We're just going to keep it simple, right? Group towards A, go for the execute. Great utility, great execute. One missed shot, and yeah, that's the problem. Like, 
in executes in general, that one shot in the round is pretty much over because the players gain so much ground, like with scaling, he can hit the second shot, he's gonna be traded immediately. He, he might have he might have gotten a, another <laughs> shot off, but they needed the, the molly anyway. So like that smoke could have saved him, but the nade lands and yeah, he's ticking in the molly anyway. So it's a, a done deal and heroic. They're just keeping it simple. They're going for another peek out B main, looking for a kill. Nerds with a lurk smoke. It's actually the CT smoke used against them and he's in the middle of the site. They have no idea right now. He's just waiting for a kill to present itself. Testers will take it. There's two T's here and shots rallying down range here for Heroic. A little awkward on the fade, but recovered well. And Monacy, mortal man right now as Heroic get rid of this eco. Yeah, Nico's still back here in spawn holding the cross, but unless he gets like one hell of a multi-kill here, this is not a round destined for G2 on that swing out through the cave next to just a footstep too far leaves him in the prying eyes of this Nikodos AWP <laughs> and he'll even land that tag down range onto Nico ending Nico's round here and now. Yeah, he looked frustrated. What can you do? Nothing now. Dead man walking and Heroic will make it so. 6-1. Yeah, this is scary, right? When Nikodos having great form out of the gate, he's yeah. at least, you know, looking to try and measure up to, to what we saw from Odyssey in that last game. Then you've had Tessez and Nerts, I feel like, playing very in-your-face Counter-Strike whenever it's been demanded. These were the two that crept through this smoke out B main in this round. It's a really good T side. I mean, just also in terms of calling nice changes of pace. The executes are good. And another sort of early group towards A. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. G2 throw in deep stairs smoke to signal they're going to take A control. They won't. They actually just have the orb sitting back and Monacy will connect his. Bucks next from the, or nerds from the ranks rather. Next is still supporting on the A side. And Heroic, whatever they wanted to do, they've got a bail. Tess says once again, deep middle control for Heroic. G2 got to use their smokes wisely, only two remain. Cycling them out in the dark room. Kicks into Molly with force that he runs through with it. A lot of pressure put on Hunter, but the smoke will be respected after all. Actually, did they just, they just burn two smokes there? A one went in A main rather. So no blocking utility left now for G2 at 50 seconds. Heroic have done their due diligence and they're going to go back into the A site. The AWP is no longer yeah, here. The, the paranoia has really crept in for G2. And even though Nico is going to have a real hot on their heels flank here, it all kind of hinges on Nexa being able to do something. He gets out with a one for one and Monacy now arrives through middle. They learn about Nico in the back lines for Kixan. This one is too far gone. 1v4 required. He's going to try creep up onto Monacy, but the trade is immediate out of Hunter in middle. So G2 do a great job of kind of wrangling Heroic in there. It looked like they were going to peel too much away from that B, uh, from that A site over towards B. And that's where Nico really helps out, just getting activated very quickly on that drop through the window in mid. And some nice trade work from Hunter around camera. I can see the timeout use from Saw, right? Another reset round. If they win this one, Heroic, they've won the half already and have a chance for a couple of more. Plenty of money in the bank. Not even sure why. Okay, Nerds just had 1700, so he actually doesn't have money for more nades <laughs> despite getting a drop. But he has such great teammates that they dropped, dropped him nice. some more nades. You know? I mean, it would be. Heroic classic to be leaving nades for later. Of course, the old roster, very fam familiar with doing that on CT sides. Uh, T-spawn on this map is so far away, man. All right, instant left side side smoke goes over towards B. Now it's looking like he was gonna try and peek that early, but you had a flurry of flashbangs come out to deny the aggression down through long. I'm learning so much util just by watching this map and I'm going to forget it all the second mm. I'm in the server. Very cool B pot flash thrown by G2 there. Hunter again in a pivotal position. The bomb is coming his way and pressure is being put on B. Yeah, now we saw this hold of Hunter and Hooksy be able to kind of withstand it the first time around. They're going to get split on again. 
Still a full belt of Util for Nikodos and essentially for Shush, so... Some Util can come out here. Tessa is just peeking over that smoke, deals with Hunter. Now they see a second man in the fray. They slow down for a moment here. They even have Shush kind of exploring the back lines, just checking out this A main push, making sure G2 aren't making an info play. There's plenty of time. Heroic is just waiting out this utility before they go into an execute. Monesi left on A, perhaps a quick A fake before going B, but Monesi can have some early info here, maybe even a kill. Oh, good flash. He's forced back and the hunt comes in. Shush is going to chase this, but he doesn't need to. 25 seconds. Hunter makes a move. Or Nico rather dead down in dark. And Hooks here at the back of the side. The soul hold right now. Ugly spray. Nexus saves the day. It's a plant for Heroic just in time. That little fake out into a main pulled the wall over G2's eyes and made them walk into the trap set by Heroic. It's a good grenade, but nothing will come of it. Heroic win the half at worst case. Man, and when Heroic go and fake the A side like that, they used the, the last of their util in, in doing so, right? They kind of had a good bit of faith that that was going to throw G2 off a bit. Their patience over towards B would work wonders, and they had full faith in getting the openers. Uh-oh. Oh, he's so quick. That wasn't even an old scope. That, no. that was a quick scope. And he's looking the wrong way. For crying out loud. And I think this round is a good example of some of the problems the CTs have on Anubis, right? Like, if, if, if you don't go for some aggression in the mid-round or in the early round, it's very hard to hold the sides, you know? It's, it, it's so claustrophobic. And I think now, you know, G2 might be a little bit sick of it, so perhaps trying a quick B peek, right? That's what they faked the last round with the three flashes, but if I'm heroic, that's sort of to be expected at this point. So let's see what the de decision is. Oh, well, it seems like Heroic have already got their mind made up. It's another super heavy alien, and they're going quickly here. Next, uh, I hope you've got something up your sleeve. You're going to need it. They are flooding in through main, and Nexus sends them packing. Multi-kill to open, traded after the fact. But there's more players here now. Nico supplements this hold over towards the A site. Honestly, dead. Brutal. Lovely openers out of Tessas. He's cracked that A site wide open. Goes for even more, and will get knocked out of the round. But they know where Hunter is now. They've got all the info. Heroic can move quickly here. And even though Hunter is just as fast in his decision to rotate over, he's not going to beat that first man in. Nikodos already in the sight, but the kill is given away. Hunter is in with a chance. Smoke down for now. He's going to start creeping through yes. it. And Nerds peeks out in the open, or plants rather. That's nice and easy for Hunter. The red carpet rolled out in that 1v2. Uh, yeah. So anyone want to justify one? the plant spot? I thought he was going to fake it. Or at least stick it behind cover, but damn, that is a disaster. In the open, blocked by the pillar or the box, whatever it was, the rock, the stone, couldn't even see. Yeah, that was strange from Heroic, especially with, especially considering it's Hunter. I think that's the big one, right? Like, he is more of an aggressive player, um, but yeah, maybe a little bit losing track of the round for Heroic, and that's honestly a gift for G2. If they end up losing that round, yeah. I mean, Heroic already at eight, probably nine at the very least at that point, but still a, a tough buy for G2. That's a 1v3 for Hunter after, you know, Tessas turns that round on its head, gets a double entry, and they don't commit into A anyway because they killed Hooksy on the big flank. There's no need for Nikolos to go so deep, right? I mean, he can just cover Temple yeah. for Nerds while he plans the bomb, and then you play the 2v1. Just that feeling that you have good timing and it costs you everything. So a mistake, we'll see how costly as Heroi keeps pushing the pace. Oh, I like the pace change. Aggressive into dark immediately. And I don't think G2 are ready for this. They push themselves, but Monacy provides the much needed cover. Tessas is through this smoke here. This is getting scary as Nerds fires back. But luckily enough, with Monacy finding two kills down below, G2 can chill. We talked about this B aggression, when, it's, when is it going to happen? And I think a great call to do it now after the lost clutch. Heroic probably still thinking about it a little bit. So G2 in a 4v2. This is where you don't want to give any, you know, free kills. If you die, you may want to make sure that it's traded. Like in this case. 
So either just shoulder peeking, right, playing for information. Nikolo's now in a 1v3. There's no one on A. Yeah, Nex is given a lot of room here. I mean, mid's been open, so it's understandable to be kind of worried about CT, but it, it will allow this bomb plant to come through for Nikodos. He's likely not to expect them to have just up and left the A site. <laughs> Taps on it. He is Fair determined enough. that someone is here. He's like, there's no way they're giving it to me. But they are. Nikodos sits up top of the board for Heroic. We're letting him get this bomb down. BG2's undoing. Not today. As Nexus swings on out just a little later from the heavens. They're fine to concede the plant. G2 just wanted the round. Great flash from Amonesi as well. Finds three kills. And they're hyper important because he's stopping that dark split while Heroic are taking P-Long. And then he goes in with a flash to completely ruin Nikodos' chance to dance in the clutch. G2 looking to recover here in the last round of the half. 7-5. Not too bad on CT Anubis. You kind of you're, you're still holding some expectation of G2 with this being their map pick, but given how this game started, to get out with five by the end of the half would be nice. And we have heroic on, arguably, what, you know, very dangerous buy if you play your cards right. Three Mac tens, and we've seen some aggressive executes from this team. Uh oh. Oh, they're going to walk that. Nico, you thought that would be something for him there. They even lined up in the smoke. Nexa again will get tested here. They're coming in through main as well on a timing, but Nexa controls the spray for two. Meanwhile in mid, Nerds find success. This one left even, but right now G2 are trapped behind this smoke in Temple. They go right through it. Another smoke in their way. This has sucked a lot of the pace out of the round for G2. They need the smoke, gives them an open veil to know that no one was close, but Nerds is still floating around here at the stairs. Been a nuisance that these players trying to rotate in on the retake, but a good flash. Monacy nails that shot. It's all eyes on Shush, and Monacy trading out to the AK, puts up another multi-kill to find five rounds for G2. A rifle or an AWP, Monacy can do it all.
A lead for Heroic settled into as they're up 7-5. It's with commanding performances from Kados and Tessez. We have Monacy on the other side of things, the one from G2 to try and match them in that regard. A stellar 3K in the last round and a multi-kill in the one before that. I think another 3K actually on the back of the Famous. So he's certainly still in a, a similar groove to overpass his Monacy. And this time, I think, you know, the, the supporting cast has looked a little more there around him. So as G2 embark on this T side, let's see what they've got up their sleeve. It's a very heavy lean over here towards A early on with Nico left back outside of B. Waiting to see if he can catch any aggression from Heroic. Julie's for Nexa did not work out in A main. How was Shush fair? Kicks and baits for him, and they're about to explode. The nades go over. It's all util in middle, though. So no one will shuffle. In fact, Heroic even moved further forward inside of A. Shush knows it's coming. He hits a jump. They both jump. Bit of a disaster. You only want your first player doing that. And look how it hurts, G2. They get folded up like clothes in luggage. Hooksy. Not ready to pack his bags yet. Still wants to give this 1v4 a go. One kill for the man. But he is getting flanked and two players lie ahead of him. Oh, Hooksy is bullet. suddenly alive. One oh. bullet and it just falls short. But hell, he's taken it this far from the 1v4. He's going to start moving out of there. Running around with the bomb on his back. He is ahead of Nikodos in the rotate. Oh my goodness. Two ex-teammates head to head. Hooksy with the plant. Nikodos slow on the approach, topping the charts for Heroic. And Hooksy, it's an awkward oh. first fight. He can't complete it. A mini <laughs> death slam, but a damn good try from Hooksy in the 1v4. And as that glass goes down in the Hall of Heroes, you know they make eye contact there. Stared down, a near sick clutch. If that one bullet in the mag landed, would have been beautiful. Nice try from the Hooks. I mean, still an incredible round from him just to get the kills, plant the bomb, right? That enables G2 to buy. And you said it, Hugo, on Anubis, you don't need necessarily the AKs and full utility. You can mix something up with the Mac 10s But this is a crucial round for G2 to gain some momentum. Like you said, round two force, you need a, you need a plan. You need a play. You can't just willy-nilly run around. However, G2 will run them down in A. It's only Shush here. He's got nades over the top. It will do a bit of damage, but the Galil entries, and we know Monacy can do it with whatever he's got. Hunter in behind him, Shush. Dead immediately in the A side. All right, pack it up, pack it up. Just save, let's get out of here. It's over. That one kill is all that's needed for G2. That's a surprise. A rushes are so common on this map and so telegraphed as well. You can hear the footsteps coming. Sure, they went rugs, but even so, you get a heads up and Heroic just don't have anyone near the site. It's just Shush throwing a nade and then getting caught in no man's land. Unprepared for a round like that are Heroic. A bit surprised they didn't even try to, not necessarily push through the smokes, but maybe some spam, maybe you get a lucky kill or two, maybe you can poke around a little bit, but, you know, on the other side of things, you've just lost one player, you have three M4s, you can rebuy all the nades, Shush can get a pistol, we saw him do work with the 5.7 on overpass. So the A-Rush call works wonders this time around. And for Hooksy, he kind of gets his vindication there, right? It's the bomb plant that enabled that buy, as you pointed out in the first place. With his brain, if not his aim. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of both. And also, I, <laughs> I'd say a lot with the aim too, actually, in that little 1v4 attempt. Damn. But all right then, G2. This is a golden opportunity to suddenly really feel like you're back into the swing of things here. Are they just going to run it back again? That's what it's looking like. I love this. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Ooh. Shush. Oh. He's ready this he's, time. Uh, he's learned from his mistakes last time. He's here, ready to fight, but not able to overwhelm them. Kicks and tries to oh. support and try really is the operative word there. Spammed out by Hunter as he continues this reign of terror in towards the A site, G2. They find success twice in a row on the back of these fast A plays. They're even a little more prepared this time, but it's still not enough. So now how crazy is Hooksy 
Is he going to call it for a third time? That's all I want to know, right? Surely not. Because for Heroic, it's, well, they did it twice. Surely not for a third time. They'll Surely save these not. three guns. Mm. They won't rebuy on the two players at this point in time, but... Two M4s, they can do some work, right? Where do you send them? Do you send them A? Do you think he's that crazy? Or... Do you just repeat the same thing? You leave it there and maybe play for mid, try to go for, for some other place to find an entry. That's always the mind games. It's so, yeah. To me, it's always so intriguing, right? Well, because I think up until now as well, Heroic have had good reads and they felt like they've had like a good idea as to what G2 are doing. But for, for my money, I would slow it down now. Like they have two guys with no armor, two M4s, one MP9. You don't need to gamble on being right again if you're Hooksy to win this round. You can just play it slow, see what it is that Heroic is going to do with those two guns, right? And then use, let's say, in the next round, sort of the same nade just to bait out the utility from the CTs, make them nervous. That's going to make it easier for you to call in the mid round. WWJD, what would Yanko do? <laughs> A segment coming soon. We'll have to see if the Hooks is really loose today. And it is, I, I feel like that's why Overpass, Anubis works much better for the way Hooksy calls. He's a momentum caller and, and he understands when to change the pace and how to change it. On Overpass, you can't do that outside of a monster rush or a monster or a B pop, right? And that's sort of also easy to spot. On Anubis, it suits his style a little bit better. I see, uh, I see a lot of bodies going towards A, yeah. but yeah, they're not going to commit to it again. And, and this time, crazy. look at what Heroic have done. Double A main immediately. And the pistol sends it. They're finding out what's up here. Nerd supports with rifle. Pistol goes even further forward. And behind that smoke on the stairs, Hooksy couldn't see him from the window. He's going to burn in the molly. Tessa is avoiding disaster right now. Oh, Shush is like super deep. He's gone all the way through. And he's now flanking them with the USP. Not bad. This might be a free I have no kill. idea. Oh, next oh. Uh, comes back around and puts a stop to Shush in the back line. But this is still a good start for Heroic in spite of that, right? They've dealt with the mid push cleanly. G2 feeling like they could be in hot water here. They're going to recommit to the mid creep. Hunter and Nexa. Walking in together, that bomb just a little bit later on the back of Monacy. Tess says up close in middle, it's some damage, but it's not the killing blow. And so G2 at least get the mid control they were looking for. They've cut off the info here as well. And it's not like Tess has really got to see everyone there. It's not like he saw the whole picture. And he gets to spot that one man fighting him in the door. The two M4s are still alive with armor. So there's a chance for Heroic here. We'll see if G2 just tries to creep up B, it looks like it, that they won't use any nades so they don't give away their intentions. But the crossfire is really nasty and Nikodos has been the hero of Heroic in this series. Kicks in just to draw them in and he's eviscerated. Nikodos, some team damage they line up. He finds two kills and now it's Monacy versus Nerds. Quick drop down below. Monacy needs a reposition inside of the smoke. He looks away. And Nerds gets ever closer to the round. Heroic find it with only two M4s. Disastrous round for G2. They slow it down and it's their undoing. I mean, the fight in mid, we, we didn't catch it, but that's what really went completely wrong for them. Oh, that lineup, they, oh, and they're shooting each other, everything. A very important round for Heroic to have picked up there, right? Especially after kind of uh, Hooksy's gambit earlier on, right? Of the of the back-to-back -back A rushes. It felt like maybe he was going to get in that point where he's in their heads a little bit. They go for a, a slower, uh, more traditional round, you could say, and they end up getting punished for it. Nikodos and Nerts, the two to really stand and deliver four kills between the two of them. And so now they're going to come back, try to take oh, some of this A space. Oh, okay. Monacy, using the AWP like it's a MAC-10, just runs up through main. Nico and Hooksy in the meantime find their successes in mid. And wouldn't you know it, Hooksy's called another blinder with the return to the A play. That's my in-game leader. Whether it's Hooksy or it's just Monacy, yeah, you know, calling the, calling the play and then Hooksy calling around and for him yeah. and Nico to be aggressive on mid. That's a call where 
they're in a position if Monesi finds a kill, they can just speed up and sort of try to end the round immediately. And if not, they can still reset and play it slow. And it's always tough. I mean, for Heroic in this situation, they've lost three rounds in the first 10 seconds of the round. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have all like these, these kind of protocols for like going out and gathering inf info and and whatnot, but when it's so fast, there's there's none of that, right? It really does just hinge on winning that opening fight or slowing down the push or oh. taking a gamble so that oh. everyone's in the right place. How did he live? That's wild. Nikodar's getting out with the AWP is something at least the player, more heroic. The player in spawn did kill the other CT and beach, so, you know, it, it came at a cost. You saved the best gun, but no one else lived, so. I mean, that's a tough one rifle, no situation for heroic because they their loss bonus is at 1400 right so nikodos saves it that's why the timeout comes in they need to make the decision are they forcing here or do they want to eco and obviously probably the force but how do they want to approach it so i think an important timeout even though it's their final one at least when it comes to regulation but this is the beauty of i mean for hooksy winning rounds in this way he hasn't really given anything up, in a sense, right? I mean, the rounds were all won fairly quickly. So I think there's still a, a lot in the playbook that uh, they can call. And obviously, you know, what do you say if you're heroic? Guys, let's just, you have to use utility earlier. You have to make sure, you know, you stop these aggressive plays and you get to the mid round. That's been a mission even. Even in itself, Monacy creeping around this long smoke. They'll need it open, but timing just eludes him on that player that was tucked in at pillar. Tessez now slings back into the position once that pillar molly fades. Nerds up close down in con. Is able to deal with Hooksy. It's going to fall to Monacy next. Missed shot from that AWP. And now that Heroic know it's holding this line, they don't have to fight him. Uh, trying to get him out. Good Molotov with the left side smoke fading soon. He's got to be careful. Because he's going to go for the clear here with oh. Shush and they find Nexa. Disastrous. This is an issue because you just lost all your kind of map control over towards A, right? So essentially you've been spotted at B. Everywhere you go now, you're going to be clearing like it's the first time. And so they'll recommit to middle, sending in one man there, Nico. Moving up through the mid lanes while the rest of G2 meander their way. Down towards A main. Tessez deep on this angle. Well, Monacy check for this. I think he's seen him, but just a second too late to save Hunter's life. Tessez goes one for one and gets the info that two players were crossing A. Nico trying to act on the fly here. Starts to flank through Temple, but time is of the essence for G2. Nico can't really be the one to play first here. And with the double setup in at the back of the site, you're going to be real hard pressed to win this one. Nico storming his way through CT, Sorry. taps out the first man. He's seen the barrel and he's going to follow up with another. Nico, fast as lightning on that flank through the spawn. And he's cracked this one open for G2, giving them a chance where there was nothing before. This one looked done. Instead, Heroic throwing in to a 2v2 retake. Bomb planted for CT, and they didn't have this real estate earlier on. That's how Nico moved in. They are cautious. They are scared. Every corner could harbor a G2 player. They've only just cleared CT Bye. now, and Monacy's retaken the temple. It's a done deal. Nico does, even though he lands that oh, shot. Wait, wait. The bomb planted for Monacy. Oh. He can't win this, and he knows it. Runs for the hills as Monacy and Nico cook up a 2v4 for G2. That's I mean, a 2v4 and a 1v3 from Hunter in the first half. I'm not really sure the positioning from Heroic to be too plat. I mean, they knew Monesi was water outside A and they spot Nico in mid. I mean, you can go to Con, right? Try to isolate the fight with one of the two. Instead, they get pinched. Yeah, it's the reroute beach with 10 seconds on the clock, right? If he goes Temple, both players can fight him, but kicks in at the back of the site. He, he was spotted. He can't even see Nico, uh, Nico in that position. And it's the rifle that gets found out. Monacy hunts down the second player. And just the way they play off of each other, even with that bomb tap and no one playing for it, Monacy runs in, but it's Nico who gets the kill while Heroic are distracted. 
What great synergy from these two. And even better shooting from Nico, who's had a quiet map, but shows up when it matters, breaking the money of Heroic at nine apiece. And with no timeouts left as well, Heroic are in hot water. Got the AWP on Nikodos. They're trying to boost him up for an early peek through main, but that just feeds him to the Wolves. Monis is actually the one to get that over the smoke, and Nico finds success in middle. Kicks and gets whack a mole out of the round. This one's over. The A site play works wonders for G2. Just that AWP to worry about, and it was the first thing to fall in the round. They now retake the lead, and you can see Taz is very happy about that. He's liking what he's getting out of the gang right now, and with good reason. Five out of the seven rounds and a half already go in G2's favor. That's after losing Pistol, winning a force buy. And of course, the one round they lost was Nikodos getting a crazy 2K spray down in dark and, and Nerds clutching Monacy on a timing. 10 to nine, G2 looking to make this a quick day in the group stages. Oh my god, man. Yeah. Monacy is absolutely mad. Oh. Mental. And he what? wins that! Nerds dead! Monacy, so quick, <laughs> follows up on the Glock. It's written in the stars that Monacy's meant to be doing this. He just doesn't care, does he? He does what he wants, when he wants it, and how. Doesn't matter if you're holding, if you're mollying him, he will go through it, and he will Glock you. Monacy in this form, I mean, he's already made runs to the Katowice finals. He's already picked up that trophy. He wants to do it again. He glocked the second. Yeah, I don't know, man. He's he's literally like on his Matrix story arc. They're in the lobby. He's just dropping guns, pulling out a new one, taking heads off. So four gun rounds, two of them you win by kind of rushing A. Okay, the anti-force by. And then two of them, you win by just Monacy being unleashed and finding an entry kill or two entries in this case. Yeah. That's four rounds that are over in the first 15 seconds where it's you know completely done. Nothing for heroic and that's to, a full buy. to do. That's a full buy. It's not even a full buy like they lose the A round and then they just save. No, it's a, it's a full buy where almost everyone falls. With, with how like commanding he's being First. right now, it's not, it's not even Hooksy saying Monacy go kill, it's Monacy telling Hooksy, I am gonna go kill. It's I crazy, kill. yeah. <laughs> this is mad, oh, he's doing it again, the Come mad on. man, he's mollied main, he's gonna try peek behind it this time. It has to be a little bit slower, the molly's there, he's meant to peek around it, they're gonna blow this smoke open, try give him a line. Nothing presents itself. Everyone is terrified. If you're inside of the site and you're even still for a second, you are so scared about this orb just bearing down upon you. Hooksy around the smoke down in dark. He's been betrayed by this before, and this round's no different. Ooh. Hunter dead. Monacy with the reply as they push this smoke through B main. The alarm bells go off for a moment, but Kixan could alleviate that right now it's with bomb. this mid push. No way. Monacy, he did turn around to check it, but a second too late to that fact. And so heroic okay. with a nice re-establisher here in that round. They come through with some aggression. Kixan takes that upon himself to shut Monacy out of the round. And that was an eco. I mean, the players with the rifles didn't really invest into nades either, so helps their economy a lot. That's why they play as aggressive as they do, right? They're running down mid and sending quick flanks. That's the round winner. If Monacy can get the bomb into B with his teammate lurking out as well, could be a G2 round instead. You have to give Heroic uh, the due diligence, the respect here at this point. Well, who's in the oh, front again? Oh, no, you're kidding. Monacy, yeah, that one, one step too far. He had an orb, a different story, but now it's unraveling in front of our very eyes. G2 jumping the gun, a speedy pace, maybe too fast. Well, Nico at least gets his revenge on that mid-smoke walk, but it wasn't before they lost Nexa. He does still have ownership of middle, which kind of cuts the defense in half at 2-2. Heroic does have the man advantage, but they're split, so in reality, it's a 3v2 for G2, depending on where they choose to go. Nico and, is telling them to wait for him. And this time around, you can see Heroic reacting towards Dark and are actually going to go for an info play. Oh, 
both peak on either side. Nerds makes it out alive, but barely. And remember, Nico the entire time has been creeping in through middle. They didn't hear him tick on the Molotov, but Nico hears that. He knows exactly where Nerds is, and he will contain the problem. Tell his teammate just to plant. I've got you, buddy. Nowhere to go. Nico hunts mid rotations. They're all coming from behind. Hooksy needs a kill here. Nico can't win the entire round on his own. Yeah, Nico's going to potentially oh. get avoided, but Hooksy wins that one, and that gives them so much more freedom here. With Nico having confirmed that no one was rotating Temple or CT, it's become clear to G2 that they've got Heroic trapped in a box down in dark. Nico, it's awkward at first, but he recovers nicely. Time is of the essence, but the bomb is not planted for Nico. Kit on Nico does as he swings out oh with the my. 57. He's going to find Nico, he's and he's got time to hop on that bomb. The clutch denied. As Nika does versus Nico comes up in favor of the Danish Orb sensation. My oh my, 11 apiece. At least you two get plan. That's relieving for the money, but man, a nice try for Nico and Hooksy who play off of each other's contact, but Nika does balls of steel. It was about time that one of these goes heroics way, right? Yeah. With the amount of clutches that they lost, but Thanks to winning that previous round with, you know, still money in the bank, they can rebuy with all of their utility too. G2, of course, from all the consecutive rounds they won, plenty of money left for them. Manasi is an all right spawn again, but in these last few pacey attempts, he hasn't been able to find that same success. And he saw Hooksy doing a lot of talking there in that timeout, so I feel like this one could get a little more, I don't want to say convoluted, but I don't think it's going to be as much based around pace. Let's see. What does Monacy want to do with this forward spawn? Yeah, far more passive from the start of the round here. He just posts on middle. And so G2 going to delve a little deeper into that playbook. I mean, it's been good to them. They've got a lot of real estate, a lot of control here off towards doors. They just haven't always used it. That goes for both teams. CTs are more aggressive though. Flashes through, kicks are so blind. He cannot do a thing there. Nico with another important opener at a crucial part of this match. He was doing it near the dying stages of overpass. And G2 want to end this with a bang. Shush will put out the flame. Hooksy out of middle. They're going to fall towards Dark. Nerd doesn't even see his opponent. Nico needs his trade. Nexa will find it for him. Three on two. G2 have the sight and Heroic have a decision to make. Yeah, their money is not in a good place. I mean, this probably has to be a save at this point unless Nico finds a kill on Nexa. Oh, Ooh, no. Don't give him yeah. it. Oh, it's fine. And see so, yeah, how that save call comes in for Heroic. That's purely on the back of where the money's at, right? If they were a little more well off, if there's a world where saving these two guns isn't the make or break of this entire game, you might see them give that a look in, but never destined to go for it when they're not fed a kill in the two yeah. on three. Big round for Nexa. Haven't really had to talk about him all too much. He had a couple of nice moments on that CT side after kind of getting bullied over on the A site. Here he gets that gnarly double kill out through dark and facilitates the, the entire B play coming through for G2. Just hurts for Kixon who, I don't know if he self-flashed himself or if Nico flashed him. It was one of them. Uh, they might have been bouncing flashes on the left wall as they scaled mid, but he pops out that door full blast and it's just an easy entry for G2. Unravels the round, and now the series comes down to this. Is it a 2-0, or can Heroic drag us into overtime and look for Nuke as the decider? Well, they keep the same pace to the way the last round started. Monacy just holding a line this time. Waiting to see if he's given any aggression out through main. This MP9's worked itself up into a close corner as Kixan lies in wait with this kind of double layered peek out of him and Shush. Same again. Oh, Nico doesn't need to respect it. Tessis doesn't even consider that Nico will go through. Kixon's close, and it's perfect with the MP9. Oh. He chews through a couple, and that bomb is firmly in Heroic's hold. 
Nico's trying to get activated out through middle, but you're going to need a miracle from Nico. Can he do it? Kicksand just dancing around, proving to be a nuisance. Nikodos with the backstab in the meantime, nice. and Hunter's caught looking the wrong way. Next, uh, he's getting pincered on. He needs to pick a fight forward or backwards, oh. and even though he wins the one into main, it's all left on to Nico. 1v2. They know that he was cut loose from mid, moved into this A site. It's all about trying to oh. find him, and Nikodos will do exactly that. A big round from Kicksand and Nikodos as they offer up two apiece. That first double kill coming off of the MP9 and the crunch that occurs over in main. Heroic bring us through into OT. Much akin to overpass, only it's this time them playing catch up. Going through the smoke as well because Nico gets his mid entry, so he's putting pressure. But they still, I feel like they still go a little bit early. He has so much room and time to get towards camera. He can't even assist. He's only there trading late. And well, gray screen into an MP9 goes about as well as you can hope. G2, another overtime. Monacy, tamed but not muzzled, holds on to the A push again. Still looking to bite and bark his way back into this game. Not wanting three maps. Now it's in the smoke to avoid giving up the position. Good flash play. Modesty's out of there. Nexus is going to have to attempt this trade, and he will find it. Meanwhile, Nerd's dead and dark inside of that smoke. So G2, a man up. Need to take a breath and regroup. Hooksy versus Nerds has been this kind of like background head-to-head -head yeah. that's been going on. It was happening on Overpass and some of those long fights. Now we've got the Duel of Dark and Hooksy started winning that out across the last few rounds. This has put a lot of pressure on Heroic, right? Being a man down and it's where they've lost these players. They have to spread themselves pretty thinly here. I'll take a bit of an educated guess by leaving two over towards B. They don't losing know Nerds down in Dark has put the fear in them. But that leaves mid wide open, and G2 have found this gap. Oftentimes, when they've secured this temple control, it's led to great spots, and no one from Heroic is even considering this. They just left middle. That kill comes for free. Tess has tucked in at the back of the site. Ooh. Delivers the double. Can't quite make it the third. Hunter will snuff him out. And so now it is just Kicksand coming in late from all the way around. A day at the beach. This clutch will not be. Nexa and Hunter set up to play around this bomb. This is going to be real tricky for Kicksan. He doesn't have any util to try and make his life any easier. They can just peek on the tap. They hear the footsteps now. They know he's in the sight. They've got him right where they want him. First kill secured. Nothing oh from my. Hunter yet. No. The stick comes oh. through and Hunter will deny. Doesn't leap out for the trade, plays the long con, plays around that bomb, and it does well by G2. It's been a while since we said his name, right? Uh, but steps up in the first round of overtime, and yeah, difficult spot for Heroic in that 3v4. Again, you feel like you need to be a little bit more proactive. There, there was just such a huge gap in mid. Perhaps they thought they had a little bit more time to just hold. And G2 wins the first round of overtime. Honestly, he's taking some liberties here. It's by no means the W holding or quick scoping entries that we've seen out of him in rounds prior. He's just holding that line, but a bit more aggressively over towards middle. Smoke's come out of them. G2 kind of settle into this split across the map. Once again, you'll bet that Nico wants to work this mid control. He's been doing it all T side long. Oh, heroic this time. They will stem that bleeding. They deal with Nico early. And that's a real tool from the toolkit of G2 removed. It only gets worse with the death of Hunter over here at B. Think about some of the moments that Nico's opened up in this game with his lurks in through middle. Now that you don't have that, Hooksy's job gets that much harder. Nerds, he didn't get flashed. He just walked the entire way through B main. So he is on a big flank. He is closing the net. Kicks in. Oh, he didn't need to commit to that. But he gets away with a frag. Dropping in is a bridge too far. And Monacy cuts him down. But he is left alone in the impossible. A 1v3 now. Monacy. I'm not banking on it. Not with 17 health. But this kid has shown us everything. Anything is possible. He's got timing, he's got a window to plant this bomb. 
question is what happens after he goes back. Oh, oh. got to see. Not another ace clutch on Anubis. He's super low on health, and he never knew about Nerds having pushed all the way through long, but you are scratching ahead a bit when you haven't seen him yet. He's usually down in dark. Still, timing gets the better of Monacy on his way to that 1v5. Shush puts a stop to it, and to Heroic tie this up in OT. God. And the switch up there from Heroic was the double up, right? Shush as well uh, on A, and they stick with it, so let's see what G2's response is going to be. Usually, it's the utility heavy rounds that work great against that. You don't want to be spread out, searching with the AKs. That gives the Ops an advantage. Been a while since we saw that to A-Rush, boys. Hey, oh. look, they're going to run it back again. It's tried and tested for G2 at this point. I do love it. Though Shush has an orb. Is that going to be to his benefit? The smoke comes down, they jump through, and this time he can evade capture as he takes two. Shush finally headshot, but they are in the sight. Yeah, still not for long. Kicksam moving in to rein them in. It's just Hooksy left standing here. First kill goes his way, and that's when Nerds pops up to trade. Heroic were ready for that one as they very quickly flood players in to assist, uh, to assist Shush on that hold. A flash would have gone a long way into <laughs> helping that rush. It feel, felt strange um, to just be running at him like that. I feel like in previous ones, there was an extra flash there, but yeah, yeah great two kills by uh, Shush. The rotate is there really fast from Kixan, and they shut it down. Heroic. This, this game is intense, man. Yeah. I mean, first map overtime, second map overtime. Heroic playing some really good CS. I mean, off of name value alone, it was the grand final of last Katowice. <laughs> of course, only with you know, two of the heroic players. But still, Heroic have a lot to prove, and G2 have haters to silence, doubters to displease. And while Monacy was trying his best to do so, we need someone else to carry the logs. <laughs> Sorry, that really came out now. Here we are, Nika Oz. All primed and ready to go, posted on dark early. A bit of spam go down range there. A three-man start over towards B. Hello, Nerds okay. has worked his way out through main. Heroic trying to use G2's own trick against them. They pop out A, only that's not where this play was looking to end up. And look at the rotate it's drawn. G2 wow. have completely up and left the B site. Heroic use G2's own look against them. I love that because even if it doesn't go well, you're still on your default. You're not committed by any means if you're heroic. But if Nerds gets a kill, you just know you can walk into the bomb site. And they, yeah, so much utility. Cycle Molotovs towards Temple. I don't know how G2 are supposed to win this. Smoke the bomb. Smoke the bomb, yeah. <laughs> Hope. Ray. Here we are. Nico a long ways out, takes a little while to rotate on in to G2. This retake is late. Smoke on the bar might be their best option, but they don't have them left anymore. Molly start to rein in, and with that Molotov on the bomb, this should be a done deal. Monacy doing all he can, but they oh. to that bomb. And it's pigeon shooting for Heroic. They'll clean that one up. The bundle of G2 knocked down as Heroic soldier on to map point. Yanka, you said that this one's been intense. First map, overtime. Second map, now overtime as well. The third map was the big question mark, and Heroic are just five kills away from taking us there. Two chances to do it, and you got to say, you got to give you know some props to Kixon in this series and inside of this team. What he's able to accomplish with you know powerful pieces, he's uh, he's right now doing a damn good job calling out G2 in these two rounds. I mean, that's a pretty cheap round to give away by G2, you know, of course there's chaos, Nerds finds the entry kill, there's still util utility flowing over, but it's kind of a fundamental rule that the anchor from the opposite side is not supposed to leave until you see the bomb or they're planting the bomb exactly for this reason. It's not like they saw too many bodies on the side of G2, so probably just the intensity of the game, yeah. sort of annoying that Heroic has a couple of rounds to work with, making them over-rotate and once Heroic gets into B, it's a very, very difficult retake for G2. 
Left side smoke in. Oh. Takes contact first, and Hunter late to getting into dark. Pays okay. the ultimate price. This one might Get be done, out. and it's all on the back of this guy right here. Three kills from Nerds. Monacy 1v5, a phrase we've said a lot throughout this series, yeah. and even though he's always given it a go, he's made it exciting. He's never won them. And so here we are, watching Monacy in the dying light of Anubis. Heroic have done it. They've longed this one out. A three-map series we have on our hands here as Heroic stand tall in that overtime. And it's signposted with this beautiful performance from Nertz as we break into OT. Hey future pros, running into B site on Anubis without util can feel a little rough. So here's a couple of smokes you can throw from the same position to help with that. To throw the standard left side smoke, get in line with this brick. Aim in the middle of this brick and hold mouse 1 and mouse 2, then jump through the smoke. This will cover off the left side of sight. If you prefer a temple smoke instead, using the same starting position, aim at the top of the wall in line with this brick. Then simply throw the smoke. This will block off that pesky temple angle. If you throw either of these smokes, you might as well get some flashes off to help your teammates enter into the side too. To throw these flashes, aim at the top corner of this brick and jump throw. I hope this helps with your B takes as you will need all the help you can get. against all the odds heroic standing tool. And this was no easy storm to weather. We're talking about some crazy clutches coming from the side of G2, a Manasi still standing tall, an incredibly aggressive T side as well, but still heroic somehow managed to push us to three. Yeah, I was not expecting that either. I was, once I saw, you know, this is as many rounds as they're going to get. They're going into their CT side. They're getting bulldozed by G2 right now. This is not looking good. Anubis is very T-sided, and it's going to be very difficult to stay in the game. But somehow they get to overtime, and then from there, two CT rounds on overtime, it's like, wow, okay, there's a chance now. Yeah, I mean, getting to overtime was the, the hardest task, I think, for Heroic. And I, I, we walked from the green room to the studio, and I was mentally ready to congratulate G2. Wow, what a turnaround situation. And all of the boxes were ticked, right? You're talking about incredible clutches being won by G2. There's, there's 1v3s from Hunter. There's 2v4s from G2 as well, where it, when it comes to the late round and the map awareness, they feel ahead of Heroic. It looks like Heroic is a little bit lost. They lose track of what's open and what's not. G2 feels superior, but actually you go to overtime, and this is where the AWPs, which have been an issue for G2 to handle the whole game long, become even more problematic. Nikodos on one position, Shush with the other. Like, what the hell is going on? Shush is a secondary now. Shush with the double. Got a little complicated for G2 at the end. Should we tackle this in a linear fashion, gentlemen? Should we start with the T side of G2 to show what Heroic, you know, had to be contesting with? Because there were some, some really mean rounds coming out of G2 uh, in that second half, right? Yeah, the, the bulldozing from G2, going the really fast A splits, going into A main, coming up middle at the same time, getting into the site, that was really powerful from them. The only thing that they were lacking, and as they kept doing these rounds later on in the game, they were missing that flash for A main. That's where we saw Shush getting the 2K with the off on the to stop the rush. 
But what we're seeing is very explosive rounds from G2. Here we're seeing Hunter getting a. a we almost well. saw Hunter's clutch. Are we going to yeah, keep I'll that redacted? That's going to be for later. Yeah. That's the flash you were talking about. The aggressive into a main. Yeah, so this this was huge from Munizzi getting into A main, Hooksy coming in, in mid at the same time, and they just crunch A through camera, and they actually abused this a couple of times, and it was working really well for them. They kept doing the same sort of play, whether it be a, like a five-man with rifles. They did it on round two as well. After losing pistol round, they just swarm into A main, four Galils and a, a nade set on Nico, I think, just throwing the nades out, and they just ran into the site and took it for free. That's how strong T-side is on this map. Yes. That's why you need to have a really good T-side, because CT side gets really scary. And what you talked about earlier, about leaving those gaps in middle, and then G2 finding the timings, they won the two versus four with Nico being able to get around the back, they came from the beach as well one time. It's so important that you move around on the CT side and continue being aggressive. And if you let your foot off the gas just a tiny bit, that's when, like, you're going to get abused. That's why I have the feeling that maybe G2 played themselves in some roundabout way at the end of this game, because some of the clips we've just shown, there is, there is superiority that has been displayed by G2 in these games, either with the, the fast play that you just showcased here, but also in the ability to take mid control and just have your little lurks get in with the lack of movement from Heroic, probably not really used to play the map. You have to, you have to imagine, as they're going live, and, and we are going from the idea that this is not a team that's completely ready on all the maps, they have to spontaneously come up with, okay, what's What's happening? Mid is open. Where can we go? What can we push? What can't we push? It's very complicated. G2 abused all of that, but still, like we're standing here. We're talking about map three coming up. It had all of the markings of a G2 2-0. That's how it looked like, and that's how strong and resilient Heroic went to the end of that game. It's kind of crazy that we're talking about this in the context of Heroic taking Anubis, because you were saying, you know, the only opportunity that you saw for Heroic was if they take Overpass. That one got so damn close. So maybe we should go into OT and take a look at one of the more impressive rounds coming out of Heroic and just how they steamrolled over G2 in that OT. Definitely. We'd be remiss not to talk about the T side of Heroic. Like, they also yeah. started this game in a very good way. They put a whole lot of rounds on the board, and sometimes simplicity is all you need in Counter-Strike. Look at this nurse just running through that smoke, finding Nexa as an opening, and then the defense is in disarray. There is there's a panic rotation because you in the fog of war, you lose track of how many players are there, and then suddenly I could hear from the studio, damn it, it's B! And then they realized the bomb plant is on B, but that's already it. Heroic, even though they have arguably not played the map a billion times together, they still have plans on how to play that post plan. They have strong positions, they have util on top of that as well, and even though Monacy is going to do what Monacy does here, crazy little flick through that little gap, it's just a matter of shooting through that Molotov, and that was very telling of some of the weaknesses maybe that we painted from G2 on their CT side that came through here. Yeah, that ties directly into what we were talking about, where you need to be a little bit more active and, and aggressive moving around on the CT side. You can't just stand around static, so as soon as this A play comes in, you gotta be moving right away, and then that gap is what let Heroic get into the site there, so not looking good for G2 in that round, especially with how explosive and, and good they were looking, it was like, oh, this is not the same team that was on overpass. Yeah, no, I think we need to give some flowers to Kixon, not only in terms of, you know, uh, the mental that he was putting across, but he was putting up some numbers as well. He's making real impact for Heroic uh, on this map of the new Definitely, and, and honestly, when you have a T-side as strong as that, it's only fair that we give credits to an IGL that's also been fragging, right? He was up there in terms of numbers, uh, nothing to be shy about at all. He had a bunch of um, assists as well on top of that, so his ADR. I know, I think it's probably the IGL syndrome. Like, you can ask Apex about it. He knows all about just spraying <laughs> the knees and having that ADR being really high, 10 plus assist, like we've all been there, but it was a good map from Kixon. Well, after an incredibly impressive performance on G2's pick of Anubis, let's check in with the Heroic Camp and see how they're feeling heading into map number three. Want it there. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank good you. luck. All right, just got talking to Saw here in the midst of uh, everything. I asked him about that win, and he said, well, yeah, it was very, very difficult, but he said, I figured out after a while that most of their T rounds were pretty gimmicky, and we outlasted them once we, we thought about that in that manner as well. So he's feeling pretty confident going into Anubis. I wasn't able to catch anyone from G2, as you can see there, walking past me right now, and you can understand why they weren't that willing to talk. Yeah, G2 must be feeling pretty dejected after having that in the palm of their hands. But are there brighter signs as we move on to the ground of Nuke? We have got a very small sample size of Heroic, just basically two games mm. versus big and two different results at, at that. And do you think that's better than the 0% win rate of G2? Four maps played, four maps lost. Yeah. Some, I mean, there were some CCT losses. I'm not going to hold it too much against. I know how complicated it can be online, but still, usually one of my go-to when we're talking about G2 and the CT side is the incredible work that Nico does outside, 
not Nico, Nico, not Nico does, Nico does. There's a bit of confusion here. Nico, the actual Nico, and the work that he puts outside. Uh, I feel like today, uh, ex exceptionally, I'm not really ready to to put that for credit. Like what he's going to do outside. That's a question rather than an, an affirmation. Yeah, it seems like the only person really doing much and pulling their own weight is Monazi right yes. now. There's been flashes of brilliance from other players, but as you talked about on Anubis, we're going to look at the attackers finding the weak points on certain maps. You pointed out Nexa on A on Anubis, for example, that's what Heroic's going to go for. Are we going to see something similar? Are we going to see it happening from both sides? Nuke is a really weird map right now with uh, being able to break the smokes and see the secret cross. It's not like the same as CSGO where you can deny info as well. So maybe we get to see people moving around or not moving around as much and setting up traps. Very quickly, gentlemen, are Heroic going to reverse this series oh. on its head coming onto Nuke? Damn it, no, I stick with G2. I refuse to turn around my jacket, mostly because it would destroy it, so why would I do that? It's probably G2, but as I said at the start, there's upset potential. There certainly is. I don't think any of this us guy. saw it heading to Nuke the third and final decider between G2 and Heroic. It's going to be going down after this break. A special update for you guys because Magic sat here and his game's already finished. They dealt with Falcons 2 0. And I want to just touch on even on Vertigo, where you started off 5 1, they fought back a bit into the game. You guys were able to adapt and change, and you had so much confidence. I keep saying this to you guys, it seems like we've got the best eternal fire ever. Yeah, like I told you already, like I think every team has its own history, but uh, this team play really great. Like I told you yesterday, I have a good role, so I'm very happy with that. Um, and yeah, we are. I'm happy with uh, the performance of my teammate today, uh, but we need to stay cool, we need to stay uh, uh, chill because it's not over. We're playing good CS, but tomorrow we can't play bad CS. <laughs> so just to tell to my teammate, I tell them, guys, it's okay. We, we just do what we do in practice. Yeah. Uh, just be good individually and let's go. And you just don't want to get too excited yet, right? You want to yes. keep things calm until you can get to the, the games where you go, okay, this was a tough test. Do you think the next game, though, is going to be the real test for you? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like today, Falcons is a great team, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we did beat them, but the next match will be, I think, phase. Uh, I think, no, it's yeah. phase. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember the bracket anymore. Into, I think <laughs> we're playing the winner against FaZe Rebels. I'm not sure, but I think that it's FaZe come. Like, we will see. We will try our best, like I said every time. My objective as a leader here is to make my team play good CS. Uh, I'm now playing since 20 years, so I, I know how it's going. Today we play good, tomorrow we can lose. So just chill and try to do our job, and that's all. All about putting themselves in the best position possible to get the win. Let's see if they can when it comes to the next game. My man, thank you very much. I appreciate you.
This has truly been a wild series. We've had overtimes on both maps and each opponent taking each other's map pick as we get ready to head into Nuke. Usually third maps reserved for a kind of happy middle ground for both teams. However, G2 have had a string of rough results here on Nuke, a map that was formerly a real strength of the squad back in Go, but they've struggled to get it going here in their armor CS2. The fact that they ban out Ancient, though, the fact that they leave Nuke in the pool, does that suggest to you, Yanko, that they've been cooking? Well, not just cooking, but that the fact that the results they've had recently, you know, a couple of those losses came from, you know, online play, um, and the loss to Navi was Ima just playing out of out of this world in that game, if I remember correctly, especially on the T side, really having Nico's number on yard. So I think just sp speaks of their overall confidence. Perhaps there's a little bit of you know, situation of what happened in practice, but definitely interesting and they'll have to start on the T side. Yeah, it will also be their debut on Nuke in this year as well. So it's been a couple of months now, or at least one, for them to get it ready and raring for a new season of play. The series is bound to end with a bang as we go into Nuke. An overpass did go into, uh, Anubis went into overtime, but there was a 2v4 and a 1v3 in crucial moments from G2 in there. So it was a much tougher game for them than the score shows. Heroic could have closed it out earlier and let's see what happens on Nuke. Oh, G2 going to start off rushing ramp. Tessa's here. Dual Beretta's getting nothing done. Kicksam rotates in and makes out like a bandit with a trade kill there to find the 4v4. Dropping down lower. They want to try and fight for B. Clean shot for Monacy. And he will secure the second as well. He can really do it all. Will that be enough to keep G2 in it? In the 4v2, things are looking good for them here in this pistol round at least. What was it? 17-win streak that we saw broken back in the first season of Pro League last year. It was Fnatic to break it. G2, though, need to return to their former glory. And right now, this pistol round is going swimmingly. Nika Doz has had a fantastic series. There's no doubt about that. I think that's, you know, we knew Nerds was the real deal when he joined this team. Hoped he'd be able to keep it up with his uh, previous coach, Asaw, but I think the question was Nika Doz, and he has delivered in spades. Surely a dead man here at the end of the round. He's taking them all out with him. Oh, oh. my, Nika does. It's only for style, but style is there. Honestly, he's like, guys, please. <laughs> you know, can we just, can we just not? <laughs> One more shot. Oh, he just guarantees he dies at the bottom. But I think it looks sort of easy for G2 up until the very end, but I can't stress how difficult those two kills for Monesi and how crucial they were. Nerds goes down to B immediately, so they're not really expecting him to be behind Silo, and that's a pretty strong fight for him here. Luckily for G2, he doesn't hit the initial shots onto Monesi, and Monesi is able to dispose of both him and Shuj. You can see he knows he had a great chance there to save the round for his team. So G2 get away with one early on, courtesy of Monesi. Rushing towards ramp, and this time you've got jumping Mac 10s to worry about. So a whole different ball game for Tessez, but hell, he's bought the mitt out. He catches that first one. Next are dead. Nearly the follow-up on Hunter as well, but just cut down. Instead, it's going to be Kicksan and Whoa. Nerds making quick work of this. Monacy falls, but Nerds is still backed into this corner. Surely gets away with nothing more, and Nico will deliver the trade at least. 2v2. The dust settles down on B, and G2 are given a moment to breathe. Molly displaces that bomb plant for the time being. Hooksy won't be able to get that plugged in. Are they leaving? And if they are, I think the read is already there. They went back into the vents. A heroic and a pre-rotate. When it goes quiet, no, they won't. I mean, here's the thing, right? G2 already lost their kind of Goliath player in Monacy right at the tip of the round. With that stack down towards lower, Nikodos still very much in the picture, and he's sporting that hero M4 here. He's not even had to fire a bullet off yet. Nico shouldn't be able to lose this round if he's staying heaven and Hooksy's planting for him. He's got a Molotov. He will be up in the rafters. Hooksy's going to wait for Nico to be taking the fight clearing position. Molly goes for Hut just in case there is a pre rotate, but this feels unlosable right now for G2 given the position. And I think Heroic have accepted their fate. Saves on all sides. Two AKs get out of the round. So could have gone worse. Take it into what will be a full eco. Although, no guarantees. We know how big that blast radius is on the new nuke. And, pff, timing is not great there for Hooksy, but 
They just want to live, really. If he allows it. And there's a reason why Heroic is also doing this. It worked wonders for them on Anubis, right? I mean, it yeah. was all the saves early on that uh, net them the first round. And then also it meant a lot for their economy. They didn't have to go for as many half buys or ecos. Um, so they're going to be... They're, they're not going to feel as bad about this round. You know, you just want to put to keep putting pressure on your opponent's economy. That way, you know, once they win a round, eventually, it's going to mean a lot moving forward. And even here, you know, they reinvest a little bit on some of the players, giving themselves a chance to steal one away from G2. Oh, and they're stacking heavy over towards ramp. They've noticed that G2 have got a bit of an affinity for it at the start of this game. They're going to come through with the pressure. Pulls immediately with Huck conceded. Kicksand's given free reign in lobby. Next to tucked in, but they're already up on the roof. They'll be able to calm that down the line at least. Right now, they should look to maybe chase down Kicksand up here. Just work on isolating this one player who thinks he's in the back line, but in reality, he's playing right into their hands. G2 stabilize. 3v2 given over. And now it's Tessez and Nikodos. Similar situation of the last round. This time Nikodos down at lower. They split the defense 1-1. Low HP on Nexa in the back of the lobby. And even though he's got teammates nearby, they're not here to trade just yet. Only now arriving. If Tessez can muster up another magic deeg shot, that might help massively, but no love found for Tessez. They're going to go ramp right into Nikodos. They're playing right into his hands. This guy's having a phenomenal series, and they're about to discover him on the ramp room. One kill, no more, as Monacy cuts him down. Next the two giants of this matchup clash over at the ramp room, and thank goodness Monacy's there to keep that round in check. Next was knife out and didn't check him, so I think if, if obviously you don't want to risk it because that angle is so tight, but if Nikodos held his shot, I think he's guaranteed the first two there. That was very, very close for G2, but they will take their anti-ecos in their stride. 3-0 and oh before the guns come through for Heroic. Gonna have a yard take, a boost up. Monacy looking for a pick, but that deep smoke means anyone could be close. Nico, a rifler to be feared in this position on both halves. And they're actually playing wider than the smoke. The spam is perfect. He even sees the AWP on top of the box. So nerds, no need to reface. He crosses back garage. Powerful position. Even allows main as an entrance. And G2 are kind of milling around in the yard now with no real util but a smoke on Monacy. And no opportunity presented. Yeah, can at least use that to smoke off main. Try give them an isolated fight onto Nerds, who's still lurking around in the back of the garage. He'll swing out here, and Hooksy is on the receiving end of that. There's no chance at a trade. Really, all the real estate they have is just kind of hinging on getting down secret. Nexa even spotted back in the lobby. And Monacy will just cross out with the bomb. Still has to worry about Nerds, who's been a real pest in the garage. Just pushing and prodding G2 as they tried to make moves out in the yard. He bides his time. And with 20 seconds left, G2 are going nowhere quickly. This one is written off. They do not want to even attempt it. Nerds doesn't give them a choice. He's going to go hunting for these kills down in secret. Dropping the AWP, but Hunter will be able to retrieve it at least. That's something for G2. It's a very good round from Heroic here. All kind of hinging on Nerds as the one man to accomplish it all outside. And that's a massive kill for him to get in the end, right? It, it makes all the difference because from having an AWP and two AKs for G2, now they have one AWP, one AK, three pistols. It's a completely different round. But I'm not sure here if Monacy was holding him, if he could see it. That whole play seems devised to punish that peak, right? Like, I mean, that's such an easy peak for nerds to, to uh, an easy spam for nerds to go for. That smoke almost looked like it was in the way from Monacy's POV when we first saw that peak. Yeah, because if, if that's not the play, then it's just sort of a very easy way for nerds to punish. But 
three, two pistols, SMG on the side of G2. Heroic taking the time out here. Yeah, I mean, you feel like the, the last thing you want to do is make life any easier for nerds. And we always talk in these rounds, right? Like when you see this, what is the fastest way to lose a round if you're CT? Okay, it's an upper rush, but even some upper sort of pop, like throwing smoke. So the, the thing you want to do as CT, use your HEs in HUT immediately, use a deeper molly so you delay the timings for them. So you figure out if they throw smokes outside, are they actually doing something with it or not? Are they going to go out ramp? And that enables you to sort of solve the puzzle bit by bit if you're heroic. You can imagine, especially in a round like this, Monacy is feeling pressure to be involved early. And don't get me wrong, he's had no issue with that across the series so far. But his peak will get denied in at ramp. Instead, they're going to let him work outside with the AWP. Now it's uprooted their entire life last time. Will he be able to do it again, or will Monacy get the drop on him? Break. A good time, but no kill for nerds. Just a bit of light damage to Nico, and a player gets by. They know about it. The possibility is there. Heroic send kicks him down the vent, but he's barely surviving from that early spam. And there's a little more later on. Nico does the third nade to break the smoke will be the lucky golden ticket, and he'll take two with it. Want to see a flick? He even hits the zoom again as he takes Nico Doz's head out, out and off. Three on four, G2, they're still uncomfortable, but with Kixon so low, he can't even play for information here in B. He just has to tuck in, try and take one with him on a last ditch attempt. 30 seconds, G2 will be going for this one. Yeah, even one kill for Kixon, there you go, that's worth nice. its weight in gold. The fact he gets away with that, Monacy's taken into the trade at least, but Tessez still lurks inside of this site. One more man left to get through, gonna hold him. the vent for the rotate, but Nurse is already down through secret. Tessez might have been spotted, but they're not able to deal with him, and Monacy gets boxed in as the last man standing. That fast flank through secret, the move down the vent, Heroic were all there, primed and ready to go. Locking Monacy out of another clutch attempt. I mean, that's really nice team play from Heroic, right? Like, that's a third day chi that you use outside. No way G2 is expecting it. They make a conscious decision to sort of fight for yard, be weak on other uh, spots on the map, ramp. And they force G2 on a uh, Glock Eco. They even delayed, like, after the first two nade, the first nade, they wait, the second nade comes in, they delayed. And of course, it's the third one. Heroic well prepared for the wall, and Nerds will put them to bed outside. Ready two kills. Oh, he's really hungry for the Ecos. Don't worry, Nikodos is here. Someone's got to have him. And really, you want five alive, but Nico has denied that. Don't give him too much room. Hunter jumping to his death, and Nico with a chance to break the bank. I was a bit surprised that last round with Monacy on the AWP that he's not just waiting for exactly the break and sort of getting the the frags, right? But sometimes it's hard to nail the timing. Also, there's so many angles you need to watch out yeah. for when that when those smokes do break. He certainly will be now. Oh, Nico's oh. been spotted, presumably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big Sam knew he had that one playing right into his hand. And so Heroic tie this game up now at three all as they brush aside that Glock round. Sure, you get the one kill out of Nico. But Heroic still make money on the back of that round. Smooth moves from Monacy at the start, but actually then caught by the nade. <laughs> having fun. <laughs> all right, then. Oh, the shadow. That is such, this is one of the more... Annoying shadows in the game. Uh, new Gradio. Got to watch out yeah, there. Yeah, Nuke is a fair few, right? Oh, oh I love it. Lobby aggro. Let's Rest go. of Heroic moving in with him. They try to offset the pace early here. They know the rifles are coming back out for G2, and they look to get in their heads. They disrupt whatever game plan G2 might have had with instant lobby aggression. Monacy left in the clutch. How many times have you had to say that today? Nails the first, but where does he go from here? Lobby conceded, bomb controlled, and Nikodos still roaming out in the yard on this AWP. There's no free real estate for Monacy here. He's got to earn every inch. And so as he makes his way around, 
or oh, bearing down upon him. He's not to know that yet. He favored Nikodos in this one without a shadow of a doubt. What's he trying to do? Make some steps forward and go back. This won't be heard. And they're moving, no muscles, holding that bomb. You ask Yanko what the fastest way for the CTs to lose the round was. Well, this was the fastest way for the Ts. What a layered attack into the lobby. Honestly, waits in the smoke fade. But they've already pulled back. 30 seconds, they've got the bomb site. You can have the bomb. What are yeah. you going to do with it? He's going to waste so much time just trying to pick this back up. Yeah, right. I mean, he's fully expecting them to still be kind of hanging around and fighting for this. And it's only now that the penny's starting to drop. OK, they've given me the bomb, but that means they're playing back within the sights. As he moves in, you've got this orb watching outside. Nikodos makes quick work of Monacy and locks him out of another clutch attempt. Heroic up in the lead. And for G2, while they're trying to catch their bearings back in the lobby, while they're listening to whatever Hooksy have planned, Heroic just move in and lay waste to whatever the game plan was here. That is a devastating way for your return to the rifle rounds to go. Yeah, this is just a really, really good CT side from Heroic, right? Great change of pace for them to go aggressive, catching G2 off guard despite the deep molly and Shush sort of showing himself that he's advancing. And because there's no bomb plans, I mean, this is just a pistols and armor for G2 trying to hit some deagle shots, but nothing to be found. And from this point on, the goal is to just win a round or two, right? Because Heroic is dominating so much, they're out of reset territory. Probably for the remainder of the half, depending on how many guns they lose in this round. Just the one. And Nerds retrieves the AWP at least. So yeah, once again, it's another money-making round for Heroic. G2. The last time they bought these guns out, their round ended abruptly as hell. So this time they're going to be cautious. Earlier, we mentioned that G2 Fnatic game where G2 17 win streak got broke uh, on, on this map. And that was at the start of last year. You know who broke that win streak? It was Nika Dos going 23 and 5 on Nuke and coming up with a 12 round CT first half. Right now, he is on the money to do that once again. Well, here we are. Pace change out of G2. They try to bring the heat to Heroic and no scope from Nikodos. But it's not without its own setbacks. It's just the one and done. A two on three in the retake here. Money available for Heroic so they can justify giving this a little look in. The Util's going to burn Nico out into the open. Oh, no. And he even perishes in that Molotov. G2 might get the plant, but now it's even odds and suddenly Heroic are interested. Now it's waits back in main. There's a re-smoke in his face and he tries to react off the back of it. it won't be given anything. Molly misses, falls down the ladder. That could be a bit of a disaster. Heroic might have just looked to save if that Molly came in, but instead they throw themselves out through wow. heaven and it takes Monacy with a swift double kill to keep that round in good standing for G2. Monacy as the one consistency they've been able to rely on. It's great that he's able to keep it going here in this third map. But this one gets real close considering the success that G2 have early. I don't know what happened here. I mean, I know he's worried about getting swung from heaven, but just dies in the fire. Oh, Nikodos aggression out in the yard. Yeah, he's aggression across the board. And he's now on a very deep angle. He even takes oh. that swing, but it's just the tag to Nico, who counts his lucky stars, because for the first time, one of these Nikodos shots doesn't just wreck the round from the get-go. He gets out with his life intact, and now Monacy even steps up to the plate and was given a chance to extend this lead here. That's only the second opening fight that G2 have won in the map, and both have come from Nico. 10 rounds into the game. Spells disaster, but it's also impressive that G2 still have four rounds despite that. But look at the disparity in utility, right? Only one smoke left on kicks and so much utility for G2. One minute on the clock. They have a lot of options here. They're going to fake out A and walk back to ramp. It's Tessas in this position on his own. Holding down with a nice headshot angle, but they can pop out of nowhere here. It's going to get a lot of dinks off. Hooksy dead, no trade. Tessa's coming back for more, but his teammate gets mollied. He's, is he still going to commit? No. That would be ballsy. 
No help from hell. Tess says must retreat. And G2, don't know where to go or what to do. Yeah, I mean, the fact they feel so fried here, when as you point out, Yanka, they've got all this util to play around with. They had the 5v4. This felt golden. This felt like a, a diamond in the rough type round for the G2 squad. And now they look they look real fearful. And with good reason, Nico and Monacy, the two players that are actually doing something for G2, Ooh. both softened up. That kind of takes the bite out of these execs as they move into the B site. Oh. Tessez could disrupt this here and now. Denies the plant. Five, Nico four, is out with three. one. Plant just coming in. They won't be able to stop it in time. But the round goes the way of Heroic. Just a few milliseconds too late to getting that bomb down. Oh, they had it. I'm with you, Harry. That felt like they had the plant just in time. No one even got off the bomb, but G2 a second too late, and it all comes from Tessez, who sits inside of that smoke and wins the round. I want to say there was a G2 smoke. They threw that for Decon Door, and they missed it. But look at this. I mean, if we can have the HUD here or not, it doesn't matter. But at this moment, before they go in, there's so much utility left on G2, right? Like, you, you could use it to fake up with more utility and then go ramp. Why are you just searching in a 5v4, right? G giving Tessis an easy kill. I feel like that was a mistake from G2 this time around. And it also, they need more time to clear him and everything. They end up running out of time. So with so much utility, use it. I'm shocked he gets away with that backside kill. And it's all off of a missed smoke from G2 as well. A bomb drop and they had time to stick it, but just a second too late. Heroic looking to rob this opening series of the group stage away from G2, and they're doing it in fantastic form right now. You thought you had the leftovers of that Danish squad. Well, right now they are putting on a masterclass. That was just such a huge round, right? Because the money was getting low for both teams. Look at this force now from G2. Behind the saved guns. Break is available. Two players very quick. And no spot. Monacy's over. He's looking for them peeking as the break comes in. It's a nice way of dealing with it, but he's not wide enough to find the kill. Sure, G2 get down to secret at least, but that bomb will not be with them. And it's hard now because exactly, they don't have the C4. So you have two players down. Either you're going to use them to draw attention and bait something, or you try to split with them through ramp, but that's an easy call for Heroic. Have an AWP as well, gotta be careful. Now they're opening for Nico. Early 5v4 given to G2. And as we've so often said, this has to be the one they capitalize on. Last time they almost got scared in this position. Freaked out by the Tessez kill at ramp, but Nico is looking to make it happen. A second oh, kill down at low inerts, trading places, and that's the bomb. Ooh. But a turnaround from Hunter, and a pivotal kill there. Bomb. The Tech 9 delivers. Hunter dies falling down, but the bomb makes it. Monacy no. even rings out with another, and now it's Nikodos giving chase to Ghosts. A lost round as G2 slip on in, thanks to a keen double from Nico and a quick turn from Hunter in the ramp room to save the day. Monacy's already hunting. He went silo to hunt down this kill, so he knows that Nikodos has to get out somewhere, and Hell is not the place to be right now. And you can see the frustration on, on Nerds' face. He knows yeah. he had this round for his team. If he maybe even just gets one kill, it's enough. And, and then Nico Dos is there at hell and he drops a bomb and he can play it. So, yeah, that's I, a disaster. I feel like I want to see G2 do like the the wider smokes outside, right? Because we've seen Heroic have like this, this real sense of always wanting to blow those open and fight through it. And I think you get given a few more angles to kind of ease your way into when those smokes get blown open. Instead of, as you pointed out earlier, like when Monacy's trying to scope on the uh, on, on the smoke wall for outside, when it's this close, there's just so many angles that you don't get to like pre-adjust to before that smoke blows. I think though this was a good adjustment from G2 when it comes to exactly that because they saw Heroic didn't necessarily immediately destroy the smoke. So if we throw them and run, we'll get into secret before they get information. And I think that helped Nico find the entry on Kicksan. Nico does has to be the hero now. He's throwing himself forward. He's been left to the wayside in a back-to-back round. So it's time for Nico does to have his say. 
We have a tight angle for Nurt. They're just going to walk this. They have all the utility in the world. We need smokes for the cross or there will be casualties for G2. I mean, surely not. They know there's an op in the round as well. That would be really risky. Nice. I like how they throw these on the fly as well. They've got actual lineups for them. Monacy goes over. Nurt's reads it. He saw that last time. He's going to deal with it this time. Five on four. Mm. And Heroic have that AWP pre-rotated. It goes Ooh. for the re-peak. It's in the molly. Nikodos living for now. And his ex-teammate won't even hound him down. They want to reset and go main. Nurt again back garage. Yeah, I mean, you know, this could all come tumbling down the way it what? started if Nurt goes on a tear here. But... Hunter with a clutch shot once again onto Nurtz. That's now twice in a row he's put a stop to that multi-kill potential from Guy. And so now 4v4 G2. One man down at lower. That's Hooksy locked in this fight. The rest right. of the gang taking some real estate over at Hell. They want to try and join up with Hooksy. He really wants his kill because he knows he's legged him as well. The pistol was out, 20 seconds. They're rooting ramp down to B. They're trapping Nikodos in. He thought they were going heaven. Now he's got to deal with this, and he knows he can stop that bomb and win the round. Going for a crazy move, but Nico's going to catch him on the rafters. Doors covered, Hooksy kills rotations, and just when you think Heroic have everything they need, it all comes crumbling back down. Low HP, though. Nico still taps out a second shot. Tessas needs this kill instantly, and Hooksy is too far away. He he could just stick it for all it's concerned. Smoke fading. He gets off. He freaks out. He fears it. And Hooksy comes in for the kill. The captain clutches up for G2 at the end of the half. It is an absolute heart beater of a round. And G2 hold on 6-6. Six, six. himself a little deeper, nearly at the vending machines. Casey's holding for a ramp push in total. Rops is intelligent enough not to push forward until the right time to strike. Yeah, Rops hasn't seen a whole lot in ramp room. Double kill when they can there the one time, but other than that, now he's in a position, if they go ramp, I mean, it's at least one, but he's got a really fast turnaround to get involved in action towards the upper bomb site as well. This is a perfect position for the AUG. Carrigan cannot make it work. Olim comes in with a headshot. Now Rain detecting the players coming out of squeaky and trying to draw a distraction to allow Rops to flank around the back, and also the player inside of the site up in the rafters. Well, it's got to be Frozen because all of his teammates are dead, and Frozen leaping off the top rope. He is destroyed destroying them with acrobatics, and now it is just play on the AWP, and he gets it done. Rebels with their first round. Yeah, but Frozen almost brings that back in the 1v4, and you can just see it. Uh, he's got to be sitting there like, come on, just stay alive. I'm up in, they're not on the upper bomb site. Nobody needs to move. Everybody just chill. They had to win that one, Jason. They you did know, have to win that one. You, you couldn't leave it down to frozen alone in the rafters and, and lose the round from that. Yeah, you can start taking advantage of all this stuff kind of in a way, because I think phase up 7-0, I think, you know, you, everyone's probably starting to get a little bit horny looking looking for uh, yeah. all the kills they can find, knowing that they, they, they feel very confident just challenging. Nice quick scope. Brokey especially. Can't hold him back. Brokey's one of those players... Uh, when he gets yeah. in a certain mood, you just, you just kind of got to unleash him. Yeah, you just got to let, let, go. let him go. He's his own wild yeah. beast. Send him out. Let him do what he does best. Sometimes it looks amazing. Sometimes he misses five op shots. But that's that's the broke you love. It's the nature of the beast. Round number nine. Nick brought Carrigan down to a 5-7. Don't really think that'll matter too much. But uh, let's see. Smokes go out towards the top side again. Rebels willing to use the utility very early on in these rounds. Just trying to establish some control. Carrigan feels emboldened, only having a pistol. He can go for a risk, push through hut, and get information. Yeah, a little bit of information. He spotted at least two, maybe three players that he can call out towards lobby. There's not that wall of smokes outside. Rain and Brokey are both pretty committed to the outer yard. And Brokey's going to start sliding back just as there's not a whole lot of attention that warrants his presence. Here comes the attack for Rebels into the top bomb site. Carrigan 
The first play up on Tom Putney's got... Nerds and Nikodos continue to find success for Heroic. Looking like a real backbone package between these two. They've been able to uh, get them off to a rip-roaring start with a couple of clutch rounds coming in for the G2 squad. They have at least salvaged a 6-6 scoreline. The last one coming in from Hooksy, even though he sits down bottom of the board, headed into round 12 with just one kill to his name. He finds a 1v2 to secure an even scoreline for his team. The real talking point for this G2 squad has been Monacy's performance. He sits at, I think it was plus 34 in this series. Insane numbers from him. And he finally has one teammate switched on in Nico. So let's see Hunter run out on the top side. Monacy battling for control of the door and he will secure it. Next are out from heaven, lends a helping hand and Monacy chases down that last kill. It's a big triple from Monacy in the pistol as he continues to put his best foot forward here to open up the G2 run in Katowice. Monacy unchained. I think he almost lost track of that player in door and he ends by just leaping into the hut to finish the round. Knows he needs to put his team in his backpack sometimes and he carries them all the way home from school. Seven to six, G2. Don't even have to deal with the typical second round force by that has been pretty pacey on these T sides for Heroic when they do come in. This is the first map I think that we've seen CTs even win the pistols. Yeah, a great moment for G2 to win both pistols. Eco from Heroic just with the smokes. But to G2 it looks like it's a force. Ooh. Now the Monacy 3k. Easy. And next is just here to mop up the remainders. So one death in the round, but the M4 at least saved out of it. G2 stick the landing versus the Glocks. Let's see, I wouldn't count Heroic out yet. They've been playing some really, yeah. really good Counter-Strike this series and, you know, for Saw and um, Nuke was one of their better maps, right? Definitely a lot of set pieces in there. So they can do this still on the T side, but an early round would mean a lot. G2 with momentum, one of the scariest, scariest teams out there. That is true. That kind of combo the nade with that molly off the roof. Catching any player falling off of it. The hoops here is, or rather Hunter is up on top anyway, climbing. Gonna cross outside, do we have on the fly smokes? There are two available here. One of them's back in spawn though. That will be the wall for Heroic to allow them to cross down. Monacy is there though. Wouldn't want anyone else right now. He's gonna take a quick pick and block. Yeah, I think at this point in the game, if this wasn't a strategy already after how this series started, you see Monacy, you look to go elsewhere. And the point here is like they've already used a lot of utility. G2 should keep track of this, right? So now there's no need to challenge anymore. The pressure is on Heroic. They used almost all of their utility. They couldn't get into secret. So it's going to be difficult to end this round. Perhaps just a smoke main flash and try to go out A or create some, put some pressure so that Nikodos can play on yard. Oh, they just walk. Spotted by Hooksy though. And death comes swiftly to the nerds. There's the push out from ramp. Bit of aggression in from Hunter as well as he creeps the smoke in the door. Shush, one kill, end of the line. Nikodos never given the room in this one. Lost to the hands of time out in the yard. And so the first rifle round also goes the way of G2. But what did we talk about for Monacy on overpass, if you go back to it? Decision making, positioning, choosing where to go at the start of the round. Now he just goes straight secret with the rifle, or maybe not straight, but he goes to secret. Nico is the yard player and, you know, Heroic is trying to put some pressure, A, before they do the smokes outside. He's in perfect position to punish that, as you see here. And at that point, the jig is up for Heroic. They don't have utility left to really gain control somewhere else. If you didn't get yard and you spent all your utility, those narrow choke points on A and even ramp, 
it's very difficult to turn the round in your favor. Nerds tries to make a play, but gets killed on A, and now it's looking pretty grim for Heroic. No bomb plant either. They have this hero AK. It has to be a half by at this point behind it. And Nikodos, he's been playing well this series, but really needs to step up now and find some kills to give Heroic a lifeline. Yeah, there was a point where Heroic were 6-4 up in this map, and G2 have won every round since. A hot streak of five. Heroic have got a lot of nades here, so they're going to try and rain those in at the start of the round. I imagine over towards main. Is anyone unfortunate enough to be on the receiving end? No. Nico knows better. So that early attempt at kind of cheesing their way to an opener falls on deaf ears. And so now it will be Nikodos with this hero gun having to open up the round. I do like these on the fly walls people are throwing. They're just taking their time. They get towards red. It's not, uh, you know, clear as well. They missed one <laughs> in this round. G2 are nailing them. You know, you don't see the smokes flying over the top. You get time to prime your nades, get in position. Hunter, headshot. You needed Nika Doz and you got him. A big kill down B. Hooksy looking like he wants to make a play, but they're double door right now to cut that rotation. The bomb is down on ramp. Ah. For Heroic, so that makes this round pretty awkward. It's not ideal. Oh. Hooksy has just slipped this timing past them, and they're trading places with him, crossing out the door into the site. <laughs> Only time will tell who this fave is, but Hooksy just peels off and goes and rejoins his teammates in at the ramp. Tess says with one of these scavenged guns, 30 seconds left to make a move if you're heroic, and this one is going to be living and dying on the hill of this bomb. Nerts and Shush both eliminated by Hooksy. And for Nikodos and Tessez, there should be no win in this one. They've got 15 seconds and a full ramp stack to get past. No more kills for Nikodos. It's all Monacy all day, 21 and 9, as he is putting in a world-class performance across this series. And I think, you know, that, if anything, speaks volumes as to both how quiet his team have been and how well Heroic have been playing. I, did Kixer just not know he had the bomb? That seems like the only way that happens, right? Like, he just runs out alone with a Glock. I think it's because Nexa threw the molly, right? So his teammates didn't really follow through with him. He had the bomb and yeah. really unfortunate for Heroic. Monacy, plus 34 for the series without this map. Yeah, oh, it's dear. about to go even higher. Plus 46 as of right now, just an incredible performance for him and Heroic needs to start putting some rounds on the board here. And what's most impressive about those score lines is like he's in single single digit deaths, but it doesn't feel like he's not, he's not a Shiro, you know? He's not a hyper passive AWPer. He'll happily throw himself in for opening no, I mean, kills. Remember that's how, gets, that's how he gets most of his picks, right? He's, he's, you know, the opening piece on the CT side. So, yeah, it's even more impressive when you think about that. If you think Monacy, you don't think passive, but the numbers, well, they disagree. Right, nice little flank in the lobby. There's a quick A split coming, though, so they've got to be fast on this ramp side. Hunter spray is ugly, but don't worry. There's a back line, and there's a bomb dropped as well as the round. Nexa finds a big spray, and G2 continue this massive streak. And, and the celebration is huge there out of G2. They know how important winning that round was, right? They can feel the momentum picking up. You said G2, when they've got a bit of momentum behind them, so hard to put a stop to. And critically there, after more rifles getting brought forward, this is the, the back-breaking of Heroic, a, a team that have been able to long out these games in OT, have been able to compete in OT. This one might get cut short on the back of the money alone, and that's why you see Hooksy just exploding in celebration at the culmination of that round. So sad to see Heroic go out with a whimper in this way. They've been hyper-competitive all series. Nerds has had a fantastic first two maps, but this third one, we've seen some issues, we've seen some whiffs, and we've seen some rounds that Heroic will regret in the long run. And this is why it's so hard to play from behind, right, Tonyu? Because you haven't won any rounds, you haven't conditioned your opponent. Every play in the book is open to them, and G2 with another good setup, right? It was the aggressive ram play that really saved them here with Nexa on the flank finding the kills. Oh, oh Nico arrives on the scene out in the yard. He's here. Only the one. Nico does, tries his hand at the double, but Hooksy 
Able to drop that hero gun outside. Nerts will at least gain some real estate, but this is something G2 have to be considering in the back of their minds. As to whether or not Nex is going to be prepared for it, that's a whole different factor. He's creeping forward out in the yard, and so this player down low is still not even knowing about. Nerds now arrives. Monacy's not considering this. A flick will be required if he wants to locate this man moving out secret. And that shot sails on past. This is awkward for Heroic, though. They've got one smoke to try and ease the burden of crossing past Monacy's AWP. I don't know if it's a one smoke kind of cross game right now, boys. Not with the game that he's having. He nails Shush on the cross. Hooksy already down at lower, and it's all left on to Kixan. Heroic having to come to terms with the fact that this game has well and truly gotten away from them. Double doors swing open. Everyone watching on, their fingers crossed, praying that Kixan can offer up a 1v3. The weight of the world on his shoulders, and that weight might be too much to bear as Kixan whittled down and moments away from getting finished off here. Hooksy will be the one to do it. He's had a lot of high impact kills in this series, hasn't Hooksy? Three right there and then, and G2. Not that he's you know going to leave the server, leave the series as the savior of G2. That's no doubt Monacy, but it's felt like a very good day in the office for G2. I think it's also the small things. Like after his uh, after this kill, he falls back. Even though yeah. G2 is rolling and they're winning grounds, like they're in a three v one. Like he doesn't give any freebies to his opponents. Always aware of what's the best move for his team to win the round, and that cannot be underestimated. From six four up to six twelve down, will this be the ninth round in a row for G2? If so, this series is dead. And G2 continue their group run. In fact, start their group run here at Katowice. Heroic coming hot off the play-in. Yeah, and I think, you know, they, they can have their work cut out for them, honestly. Like, you know, Monacy has been fantastic, but really that's been the main talking point here for G2. It's another round where he looks to get tested with this AWP. Hunter wins a fight in the hut, and Monacy succeeds on the ramp side, ducking and weaving out of danger. And now he's ready to become the danger. In with the ramp swing, he is the one who knocks here, and he's knocking down Heroic. Just Nikodos left standing. And even though this guy's given us star-studded performances in this series, <laughs> it's Monacy that we'll be talking about. G2, 13 to six victory, and it's spearheaded with a world-class absolutely mind-boggling performance from Monacy. What else could you want from this guy? He's in fighting form, back-to-back -back grand finals at Katowice G2, looking like a team that might be able to run for another one. They've still got more group stage to play, and we'll have to see heroic fare in the lower bracket. I mean, take a bow, Monacy. What a incredible series from him. Heroic played great CS, put up a good fight, but Monacy just wasn't going to be denied, especially if you go back to that first map on Overpass. He almost had 40 kills. And G2 stays alive, goes into the next round in the upper bracket. Watch out, Zaiwu. He's coming. Yes, I'm going to be talking to Monacy. They're waking, uh, making rather their way back right now. If you want to at least. Hello. Congratulations, uh, I'll let your teammates pass as well. What a performance out of you. What a way to start Katowice. I don't know, I just played my game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> nothing really special. I mean, I played not bad, it can be better still, but uh, my team helped me to play like this. I think you played absolutely out of your mind, but still, I think uh, I, I know what you're getting at. As a team, that seemed like a, a frustrating series to start Katowice, right, at some moments, because you played overtimes, you had your own map where maybe you should have done better. So what are the things you might have wanted to improve on? I don't know. I think we, I don't know. I think it just, I don't want to go in details, mm -hmm. like, because like, I, I think we played really long best of threes best of three, and uh, maybe they, were, they got tired as well, and uh, maybe we got tired as well, but uh, on Anubis we could just fix some mistakes and it could be better, we could play better as a team on Anubis, just making some uh, plans as a team together better, and just nothing else. I think as a team, I think individually like everyone is playing good, so 
yeah. But uh, see you next game. I still have one question, so unfortunately. No problem, no problem. <laughs> no. Um, the final question would be uh, about, of course, last year is where you really had your breakout performance in Katowice and everyone was looking at you. You start the tournament in the same way here this year. And of course, you ended up winning the title with G2. Um, how far do you think you're off of that level and what kind of a peak can we expect out of your team? I don't really know, but I think like uh, we had different lineup before and uh, coming in this, into this tournament, like we still need to improve like so many things, you know, but uh, we will just try to show our best. But I don't know, coming coming into this tournament, second, third time, just feeling for, I, I don't know, like staying here and playing and sitting in here and playing, just feeling for me, f feeling really good, you know, I don't know, maybe some spirit here flying, you know, and helping our team or and even me. To, to win, but I just feel really nice as a team and individually as well, but uh, we can play even better. Thank you. Good vibes here for you in Katowice is what I gather. Back to you. 65 kills over the series. I don't know about you, Manasi, but I think that's pretty well, unimpressive. He's such a humble king, isn't he? You know, you just made a small mistake, but that's very on point because he actually had 90 kills. I also thought this was the full series. I almost I made the same... I refresh the HLTV page, did And I? you would have been remiss to think this was a whole series, right? Oh I am right God. there with you. I was about to tweet it, and let's just put it out there, right? I'm holding my phone in my hand. I know that's not really broadcast friendly, but when Monacy is answering questions to, from FIA saying, you know, it's it was a team effort. It wasn't necessarily me. My team was helping me. We are looking at a total of Hooksy, 38 kill, Hunter, 43 kill, Nexa, 40 kill. Um, we have here Nico, 51 kill, Monesi, 90 kills. Oh. It comes a point where you can be humble to a point, but bitch, please. Like, you are actually an actual hyper carry. What the hell was this performance? This was a great performance from Manazi, and if he hadn't had that performance, then Heroic could take the series because we yes. saw really impressive team plays from Heroic. Actually, I would say that there was no one necessarily standing out for Heroic. It's everyone taking turns. One round it's this one, one round it's that one. And it was mainly down to their team play and their initial plans that were getting them any footing into the game. And every time G2 slowed down, that's when Heroic had a chance. And every time Manazi was alive in the late round at clutch, <laughs> uh -oh. that's when G2 had a, a chance. I I'm kind of, I'm a little bit disappointed by the last half of this game. Yeah. I, ha I have to be real here. Mm -hmm. uh, from what we had seen from Heroic on the T side versus Big and their ability to sort of create mid round, create like power guard solutions, I feel like G2 really constricted them super efficiently. Like mm -hmm. the aggression that G2 brought to their CT side, yep. Nexa with timings radio, round after round. Hunter with the fate of the smoke in the door as well. The hot push outside. I mean, this was very aggressive from G2 and somehow they, they kind of woke up. They woke up throughout the last map, of course, carried by enormous Monacy. We'll always talk about it. But I feel like as a team, the vibes picked up and you could feel that propensity for aggression coming through on their CT side. Yeah, and I think it's an apt point that that is the G2 we want to be seeing going forward, right? Josh Short took them a little bit of time. They obviously had to lose out their map pick for us to even get to Nuke. But that's a G2 that we want to be seeing turning up here in Katowice. Yeah, I, I would say like even in the second half, it, it was like an inverse. Like when we see their aggressiveness on CT side, it's almost like on T side, whenever they went slow, they were not aggressive. They were giving so much space to Heroic and then that's where they were losing rounds. So I wonder what they're going to do in their, you know, preparations for mm -hmm. the next game to tweak those things a little bit where it's not just a Munizy show and everyone else is able to provide some impact. I, I agree with you. I, I think that whenever G2 slowed down, they were really saved by an incredible ability to turn out clutch situations. And like the amount of uh, power play they reversed against Heroic, the 2v3s, the 3v4, where you'd look at the map, you'd take a snapshot of radar and you'd say, well, Heroic's got it. Like they have all the positions, they have all the timings, and then you can call it brilliance from G2, maybe a bit lackluster from Heroic, but they were able, able to turn these around. I think that saved G2 in, in the slow play. They're going to have to sort of fix that to go deeper in the tournament, because obviously you cannot just play on, on roller skates. Sometimes you have to slow it down. But here they had the individuals to bail them out of these clutches. Where does that leave your taste then of Heroic obviously going down in the lower gr uh, bracket of Group B? We don't exactly know who they're going to be facing. It's uh, up to the loser of Ents versus Vitality. How do you see kind of the fortitude, the resilience of Heroic that we saw here today, albeit them losing out? Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to play in their favor going forward? I think it is. I think they had a really good showing in the play-ins. 
we touched on this earlier, taking out Astralis and Big. It's like, oh, well, they didn't make it through. But we saw the resilience here in this match against G2. We thought, oh, overpass, maybe they have something planned. They took a lead. They ended up failing. But then they come into the second map, and it's like, oh, okay, well, we expect a G2 2-0 now. And then next thing you know, you know, Heroic's taking it ahead of like, wh what's going on here. So we saw the resilience going into the second map, and we saw that they were able to keep their mind focused on the win, and we can see that later on in the tournament as well. I think we are we should stay hopeful for them. So for G2 on the other side of things, you know, if Logic is going to prevail, they'll probably be facing <sighs> Vitality. They are world number ones after all. That's going to be sense. more of a test than what Heroic put up if, you know, Logic would prevail in that. It, it is going to be a test. I agree with you, but I'm also at the same time terrified by Monacy. Like, I'm actually terrified in my in my bone. I can feel it come in. And, and we'd be remiss not to mention, like, maybe Nico eventually is going to, to come back to life. You know, I think Nuke had a few of these moments where we, we could find like the one tap ability, the cross replacement of the good old Nico that we like to see. But there is a music for the future, of course. We have our bracket up here. G2 Esports one step further onto the upper bracket, waiting for the winner of Vitality. And I love all these modifiers. Like, it should be Vitality walking on. Actually, it should be Vitality. Yeah, let's just say it how it is. If it is. isn't, I'm gonna be hella pissed. Do you know something else terrifying, Matthew? No. We've got a very, very scary gentleman waiting on the other side of this break. His name is Mr. Donk. This is the biggest test we will have seen for Team Spirit thus far in this roster's history. They're going to be going up against Na'Vi after this break. Place simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. A young player, obviously, Donk. Um, somebody who's so influential, I think, in just like everybody's kind of hyping him up. Everybody wants to see great things from him. Um, do you see a little bit of yourself in him as an older man when it comes to such a young, fresh player? He doesn't remember. I, I think I think, he doesn't remember. I think it looks uh, a little bit different when yeah. I was streaming. When I was streaming, it kind of was more like uh, intimidating. Okay. When he's streaming, it's more like... Hey, yo, bro, just chill. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how it looks for me. It's because your stature's changed, bro. Maybe, maybe. But it's also his size and the screams. Like, the screams are bigger than his size. And it's yeah. kind of like, yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool. It's cool. If, if it helps him, then, then I'm looking forward to playing against them. Obviously, we've been seeing the play in. Yeah. Donk is here, right? Yeah. Donk is a player who I think is looking up to somebody like you. Young, when you hit the ground, obviously different styles of player. But what's something in terms of advice that you would have for a player like Donk? What an advice I would give to him. I think to not stop playing like he's playing, to not uh, overthink, and he will continue destroying people. He's, he's playing really good. Just do not, don't stop and uh, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, yeah. Because if you, if, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody can believe in you. Is that good advice? Yeah, don't go away with this confidence that you have right now. and. Uh, Everything will be good. Uh, all right. <laughs> Does he make you a little nervous? No, no, of course not. But, it, but I mean, he talks so much smack, man. He's always yelling, all right? Every single round, from the start to the end, he's loud, he's rowdy. It, it kind of feels like Donk is showing up and wants to take people out. Don't you feel like you're on his list? I don't know. Sometimes it's funny to hear what he's scream screaming because I understand what he's, he's screaming. And uh, it's also funny that he's screaming like this, you know? <laughs> you cannot just look at this without smiling, you know? I don't know. But people, some people saying it's annoying, some people saying it's too much, but I don't think it's too much and it's annoying. It's just like, it's good that players are scream, screaming, you know, like it's uh, eSport. So don't bully him.
Yes, indeed. That is right. It is the Intel Extreme Masters. It is the 98th installment as well. So just in case you were keeping count and you lost count, here I am to help you. Also, guiding you right into this matchup that we do have on hand. That's Navi taking on Spirit. That's what we're going to be kicking off things here with our second BO3 of the day on the A stream. And uh, yeah, I've got some pretty pretty wonderful faces with me. We also have one oh, in the server. Nice. But uh, yeah, okay, so we've got Steel, we've got Maniac in the middle, I go by Trace most of the time. So, uh, guys, how are we feeling about this? How are we feeling coming right into this in the full-on group stage? Now? I'm feeling hella excited, honestly. I think Dong is the most anticipated player we've had in the circuit for quite a few years now, and you and I have been around, you and us, Thor 3, have been around <laughs> for many, many years. I mean, you take a little bit of time in the shadow. It's, it's a okay. little hiatus. We'll, we talk about it in a different place, different time, but Donk here, Donkey Kong. Oh, come on, man. You <laughs> took my thunder. I just, oh, just said that out loud. That's what I get for That's my mistake. ideas. Yeah, he asked me, you know, who I, who I paid for my notes here, and I actually saw that I have written down Donk Donk. Donkey Kong, and we'll leave it right at that. So perhaps we can nope. get into an interview. You guys cool with that? Or I'm cool with it. I'm having cool. a good time. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and hear. Uh, let's go ahead and hear from that side. Alexi, you're about to uh, get your start here at IM Katowice. Uh, I first would want to get a temperature check about from the last couple of months. Um, overall, how do you think you guys are evolving and progressing? I think uh, the best thing we did was we started this year early. We know where we, le where we left off last year. We made the playoffs in the Abu Dhabi finals and unfortunately lost against the Vitality. But they were for sure the number one team, at least in my books. And we know where we left off. We started this year early and we just tried to improve on all the small things that we faced last year. And thus far we've been doing really well. I mean, the results speak for itself. Uh, you're on a six-game win streak as well. Blast was absolutely phenomenal. So I'd love to get some specifics from you uh, as the IGL about why you think you made that step upwards. Uh, I think the biggest thing is that we just uh, have been playing a while together now because uh, at the end of last year, we obviously made a huge roster change. It's not easy to replace a player like Simple. And... We were kind of just finding ourselves still. And now this year, it just feels like, as I said, we kind of knew where we left off. We, everyone, everyone kind of knew the style we we're going to play. And now we're just getting more repetitions in, more matches under our belts. And yeah, I mean, it's going great at the moment, but obviously there's been some tight matches that could have went both ways. So we were for sure are taking uh, like all details into consideration. We don't want to think that we're the best team or anything like that. We're just treating every game uh, one by one and seeing how it goes. And uh, a nice start for you, or an interesting one, I should say, up versus Team Spirit. Donk has been playing lights out, so I'd love to know what you think of him and about playing versus him. Yeah, I think he's a great player. I, I found it so funny when I saw him scream, uh, scream on, the, uh, on the first game they played. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I, can, I can imagine now when uh, playing against him that he's going to scream again, but I just find it funny. Like, I, I feel like he's so innocent. But yeah, at the same time, I feel like he's a good player, obviously maybe lacking some stage experience and I, um, he's going to get there eventually. But yeah, it's going to be an um, interesting game because there's not too much data on how they play. They just played the previous tournament with academy player, with their coach, so not too many maps, uh, recently at least, but we have something. Uh, we practiced them a couple of times as well. Gonna see how it goes. Okay, indeed. looking forward to it. Thank you. So let's do that. Let's talk about Wonderful. He was a player that emulated the sort of style that we saw in the former Navi Opper. Uh, and now I want to know what he brings to the table. What do we have to show for it? Hey, yeah, I wanted to contextualize a little bit uh, the information we get out of Alexi B, right? These are the results ever since Wonderful joined. Now I want to direct your attention to this little box over here. That was the fall final. That was the first event with Wonderful. So it got a little bit dicey. There's a loss to complexity, granted. But from this moment on, the improvement has been marked and clearly. First information, Vitality is literally the only team that has has been able, oh, that was a great circle. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> I just took an S, you know, I didn't want to go over the little pose button. You're just saying like infinite times. Exactly. Ah, yeah, the infinity. To infinity. Yes. Also the only team that's been able to beat Navi, but the rest has been quite clear of a record. Not only did G2 actually falter three times to this Navi roster, but there's another bit of information, which is this Navi right now does not 
lose three map series. Whenever you go to three maps, they always have this resilience to beat their opponent. So the improvement has been marked on the side of Navi, and I think we've been maybe slipping on, on them just a little bit. They don't really have the superstar factor, the one that really gets your attention, but as a team, the improvement has been very clearly here ever since he joined. Yeah, they do look pretty strong, and obviously they are in the top 10 for the rankings, but we still only see them against a handful of teams, right? We see them against Vitality, and they lose both times. We see them against G2, and as we've been talking about, we just saw G2, and they're looking kind of shaky themselves. They just dropped the map to Heroic, and you're telling me that's not a really good result to be G2? Too. Is that what you're telling me? I'm, That's what I heard. I, is Yenko around? I'm, yep. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, I'll be safe. So it is still, you know, up for debate what we're going to see from them. They're obviously a really strong team, but they aren't looking super strong yet. But on the flip side, I mean, we've got Team Spirit. Team Spirit has been looking mm. really good in the play-ins. They've been looking really strong with Dunk. Yeah, the whole world is talking about Donk at this point. That, so. is, that is actually the only thing that there is to talk about. I mean, you look at this team spirit, right? And I, I see uh, a lot of things that's going on within this lineup and it's, a lot of positive stuff. You want to play a highlight reel of Donk? I feel like we'd already feel like a cinema for about two hours and it would just be like a Christopher Nolan movie and he's just out there multi-killing everybody. Uh, his arrival into the top scene has been something that was astonishing for everybody and he continues to make history and we are going to follow his first steps with great, great uh, interest for sure. Well, let me let me pose that question here before we jump into the next bit. Uh, you know, when was the last time we saw a player that really kind of came onto the scene and really got everybody's attention? Like, what are some names that jump out? To that level, only Zaiwu has had that kind of like magnitude when coming into the scene. Okay. In terms of expectations straight off the bat and delivering on that, he was the one. Monacy a little bit, but now it feels like Donk is just stepping into these uh, steps. Yeah, and speaking of the steps, I see some here on our, our beautiful Telestrator. What you're telling me is there's steps to this. There's layers. There's not so many layers right now. What we mainly see is just the confidence from Team Spirit. So this is against Mongols from the play-in. And what we're seeing is Donk and his team. It's not just him. They're running around. They're not afraid to take fights. So we see here at middle on the radar, we get to see that they're just like moving around together as a group. And then as soon as like that team fight's done, instantly we have a flank coming along. But at the same time as that, another team fight happening here. And they're just not afraid to keep swinging, to keep fighting, to keep dueling. But is it the same thing for Spirit to do this against teams that, mm. you know, maybe aren't the strongest teams? What's going to happen when they actually start getting shot back at? What happens when an elite team like Na'Vi is able to stand there? What's going to happen with all their energy, with being so aggressive, with being so hyper? What's going to happen? Are they going to keep shouting or are they going to start crumbling when the going gets tough, what happens? It's a very genuine question and honest question because when you look at Dong and his LAN results, Virtus Pro is the only team from the top 10 that he has ever faced. Now, granted, his, his performance against VP, stellar, but there's still a whole lot of uncharted territory that we are trying to explore True. when it comes to Dong. And I will feed you this little bit of idea as well. For the rest of Spirit, Let's imagine, let's entertain the idea that Dong is having just a normal game, no, not an extraterrestrial game, just a normal game. How does it affect his teammates? To look to your left, to look to your right, you see your star player and you're like, oh shit, he's bleeding. Like, he's, he's human. Yeah. And, and see how this team is going to evolve because from now, they've been having fun. I know what it is to sit next to like a, an extraterrestrial playing Counter-Strike. Kenny used to be like that at the time. And I would just be like, cool, Kenny, you want an AVP? <laughs> there you have that one, I'm not gonna play any. And then when he's having a bad game, you start second guessing all of the things that you think you know. And I wonder if that's gonna happen to Spirit here. Look, I knew he was from outer space. I knew it. You just, oh, did I just... Me, you just confirmed everything I needed to know. Thank you very uh, hey, much. Knows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, how about a vibe check, guys? Let's just do a vibe check. Check this out. Well, I found Team Spirit, and they're about to play Navi. I'm just gonna scooch in here. Hello. Hello. I, I love that. Last time we had an interview, you were hugging, and you're still hugging. Uh, he's the only one who's hugging right now. Nobody else hugs you? No, no I mean, oh. at, at the moment, yeah. Okay. You're not hugging him, I see. Hey, um, tell me about the upcoming match, Navi. Uh, what do you want to know? Are you going to win? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. It, like, it depends uh, on them getting donked or not, so we'll see. Yeah, okay. I'll just watch. So I should ask Donk. Donk, is Navi getting donked or not? I have no idea. Also no idea. Nobody has any idea about anything, so I guess we'll just watch the match. 
I mean, I'll tell you about some people that got donked not too long ago, and that would have been Apex. Yes, that is right. That is uh, Apex, not the, the team. vitality the team. side. Yeah, We're talking team. about the team itself. 13-0 through the play-in stage. So, yeah, there's some so there's some weight to what they've got here, which is why we need to find out what maps we're going to play in the meantime, Maniac. Yeah, and we are still kind of figuring out where this Spirit team is going in terms of maps, but I just wanted to quickly put it out there as well. We have a man on our screen that we haven't even heard the name of, Shiro, moving in from Cloud9 to Spirit, and he's kind of the donk effect as well. He's kind of a, a Quasar, like a black hole who just sucks up all the energy, and I think maybe, in a roundabout way, it's good for Shiro. Not be under the spotlight. We, sometimes it didn't really go that well in Cloud9. Nobody's really worried about him. No one is talking about him. He just gets to do his job, be a passive, punitive opera. He's got Dong to do the, the dirty work, which he loves to do, by the way. Maybe that's just what Shiro needs. Just leave the guy in peace. Let him snipe around. We can talk about Dong. Well, it looks like the, even during the vibe check, they're just like, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> so I, I wonder if that's just like a facade. Like you're, they're just putting on a show like, yeah, yeah, we don't know. We're just seeing it. Or if they're like coming in with like, they're hiding their confidence. But we're going to see uh, an ancient pick. This was the aggression. This is the aggression. But this is, yeah, they, we'll see them just being really aggressive on CT side for sure. But this is the map that they 13 0 Apex on in the play -ins. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely did. Uh, you know, obviously the 2 0 against Mongols, they had a pretty dominant performance there on Mirage over them as well. And then, you know, Obviously, with the Mongols, they go out. Guys, uh, you want to put your, your eggs in the basket here? You want to tell me where it's going and why you think Spirit's going to win? Yeah, listen, uh, <laughs> I, I, I made a decision this morning, which it is, either is going to be one of my greatest ID ever or one of the worst, but I've decided to go against Donk and, okay. and hush my way to Navi on this one. Uh, as Again, as we said, I'm still very curious about how Spirit would react if, and that's a big if, Donk is not having a plus 70 kills a game. And this might just be the day, so uh, I'm going on Navi with this one. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what they can do without his blowing off performance, right? <laughs> Blowing up performance. <laughs> yeah, I said blowing up. Yeah, whatever. 15 seconds. Tell say, me something, Josh. I would say Navi probably here, Spirit, to run it through the lowers. What? That's You asked, I told. Yeah. He yeah, spoke. I, I, you definitely did spoken. that. Well, look, uh, you know, high fives all around here, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time. Again, the maps are going to be Ancient, Anubis, Mirage, should we need it. You're looking at Navi, Spirit. What's going to be their first set of games here within the group stage itself? So, without any further ado, let's get it on. The most anticipated player in some time for Team Spirit graces the land circuit. And here in Katowice, after storming through the play-ins, we get Donk and the boys taking on one of the best teams in the world. It's Na'Vi. There may be no simple here, but don't sleep on this roster. They have been picking up some fantastic results with the newfound, wonderful, and Alexi B-led international lineup. Man, this is going to be a banger, no matter how you slice it. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, you know, this is this is the, uh, the the big matchup of the day, really. This is kind of sick. So Donk is already leading the charge, pushed all the way up through main, and he's got the rest of the boys in behind him. You already heard from Magix earlier on. They kind of want Donk to approach this like the tip of the spear. They want him starting strong. I think also a bit early on with that information peak, right? Um, they have no reason to move yet, and I think Spirit needs to show themselves somewhere else before going for this A execute. You can see Navi didn't really move an inch, except uh, Alexi moving over towards mid to spot for information. And now we see that smoke for red. Let's see if that causes any movement, but Ima and Bit are just staying there. They have a smoke as well. Ooh, attempted the chance spam from Alexi, but it won't find anything. Ima forced off of Donut. They might want to try and take a bit of space back after losing this control over middle. Alexi moves in, trying to lend a helping hand, but it's Chopper, whose head's Ooh. on a swivel. Good for the openers. Goes down after the fact. Donk falls immediately, and now it is just Shiro throwing into the clutch. Not a name you should ever forget about is Shiro. Oh! It's CT and it's wonderful to fall down. Now Fine. just bit left in this. Ten seconds. Time is of the essence. And Shiro gonna need this plant. Taps on it. Tries to bait oh! the Shiro lights them up. Another clutch for the clutch king here in Katowice. Look at him go. What a way to break into this series. It's a one on two or a one v three out of Shiro that absolutely decimates Navi. The jump check is one bridge too far when you're up against this guy. I am mind blown. Server breaking headshot. No one was ready for that. 
That was almost the perfect play to jump and check that is almost the best thing you can do. But Shiro comes in warmed up. Donk who? <laughs> Shiro reminds everyone oh. that he's still on this server. Wow, what a clutch. And what a way to begin the series. You want to believe in the favorite, and for good reason. Spirit aren't proven. This roster hasn't taken on the titans of CS. I think also, you know, to talk a little bit about the veto, I think them getting Ancient and Mirage as the decider, we were discussing yeah. whether Navi is potentially going to not give them Mirage, right? Try to play something out of their comfort zone, but Navi is also pretty good on Mirage, so they're willing to go to that map. As we see, Chopper gets two kills. The Mac 10s a little bit labored. But, you know, with all the hype surrounding Dog, it's obviously not about one player. And, and Spirit has been playing great. I mean, opened up with a 13-0. You know, in that game, sure, Dong played well, but so did Magis towards that B ramp. That's something Spirit does a lot when we go to their CT side, crunching that area. And there's not really a way, you know, if someone's saying, oh, just avoid them or counter, you know, like... Players with an aggressive play start, they're going to go for fights and it's about punishing them. The thing that makes them great is even if a fight is not in their favor, they're still able to win it. Yeah, you know, and I think something that someone even like Ishiro had to learn was when there's a lot of hype around you and then you kind of have those games where you fall a little quiet, dealing with that is like a whole different, you know, skill in and of itself. And so for someone like Donk, if he does get put off to a a slow start in the series. Maybe, you know, the usual peaks aren't panning out. Does he have that sort of resilience built up yet? Especially when the the stakes, the tier of competition is so high. I have one of my monitors on a permanent Don cam here for the duration of the series. Expect to see him hanging around the jungle side a lot here. We, he was doing a lot of late pops, sometimes solo, pushing through this mid smoke up against the Mongols. I'm not sure if Na'Vi will let him get away with that. Wonderful is trained in on the angle right now. Smoke going to red, but you need a molly to break this position and Wonderful awaits. There's that Molotov. Oh, it breaks well. It doesn't even land correctly. It doesn't matter. The threat of it is enough. Wonderful reposition. No heaven to worry about. And he gets donked. Open up into middle. Five on four. And the AWP is gone from the round. Still it swiftly equalized thanks to Alexi B up in the cave. Chopper falls. Donk with the trade. So two kills for him here, but caught knife out. And that's a nice, easy kill for JL. Donk thinking he's a lot more room than he did, and Na'Vi have just full adjusted, moving over to play around the bomb. Team Spirit, they can't win this run. So Shiro and Zontix will just back out of there and hold on to these guns. Na'Vi, get on the board in the third round. I think that was a bit strange in terms of calling after they get the kill, right? Not even trying to put some extra pressure. Donut really showing themselves towards the A bomb site before you try to make that uh, play in the cave and then also going one by one here, right? Like not, you want to be at each other's hips, so to speak, right? So you guarantee that trade kill and two very important kills from Alexi B. Team Spirit still enough for a buy, but really had a big advantage in that round. Straight up heaven and a break as well for Ema. But Spirit are relegated behind the smokes, behind the Molotovs. Yeah, and I think, you know, Ema is uh, an interesting talking point, right? I think we've definitely seen his level like creeping back up, which is a good sign. Obviously, when he was brought into this team post the, uh, the Paris Major, he had a phenomenal performance there. And I think it was always going to be hard to, to replicate that, but it feels like he's started to, to settle into his own. So going to be someone well worth keeping an eye on in this matchup today. Probably the team as a whole is in the same mm. boat. It's just getting output from, let's say, Ima and Bit on a consistent level, right? Well, we have Bit here. 
in the temple side. Wonderful jiggling from Donut into full A execute with a couple of lurks out mid. Ema gets killed on Heaven, and they're going to come in on this Donut split. Loads of time. The pressure is not on Team Spirit, and they await the kill. Shiro is given it. Dunk doubles up, and that might be a save forced here for Na'Vi. Overwhelmed by the A split. I do like how much Spirit have been taking delayed mid takes on the T side of this map. You can never truly get comfortable when you're on Heaven, when you're in the cubby. They will come through with 30 seconds remaining a lot. And you could see even in the first gun round, Navi is ready for it. the perfect counter. There's the op waiting. But Wonderful misses his shot, Don kills him. They can't find the op for him uh, for this round. And another entry from Donk. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's what makes it so terrifying, right? Is when, when Donk is running it, yeah, and I know it's still early days, but uh, the idea of like, if you miss, you know, the one thing everyone gives him credit for is being ludicrously fast. And so he's got that to fall back on. There were kind of two chances there to find him in that round. And if you don't get the instantaneous kill, you bet he's going to be able to return that the other way. Now V, their money now broken. They just have this one gun on JL. So curious where they're going to try and put him, how they want to play around this. It's very tough because their loss bonus is going to be, you know, 2400 if they lose this round. That's not a lot. They won't have an AWP. They won't have all the utility if they want M4s. So probably the goal would be to save the gun on JL and to steal one more for a teammate. That would go a long way to helping Navi's chances in the following round. But we've seen crazier things happen. I think it's a really, it's really cool for me following, you know, being around for a long time and remembering Chopper from Vega Squadron days, right? And getting some of those underdog teams to majors and causing upsets and whatnot. And it was always the case of having, not to sound rude, but inferior players to some of the counterparts in the CIS region, right? And now having guys like Shiro and Donk on your team, finally having like some of the sharpest yeah. tools in the shed. Oh, this is this is getting interesting. Yeah. yeah, with wonderful finding that he's suddenly primed over in main to try a bit of say over how this one plays out. Even the nade retrieve goes on him, but Donk will dodge it, and with nothing being given, nothing gained there. Navi head for the hills. They just want to get out with this AK and check. But just to finish that point, you know, finally having like really good tools and now being able to show what he can do as an in-game leader from this position. I think that's really interesting. We shouldn't forget Magus, also only 20 years old, right? But I mean, he's been around for two, three years now yeah. in this Team Spirit lineup, g uh, gaining experience. And it just seems that the the vibes are at an all-time high. Yeah, no, you, de Spirit. you definitely get that vibe. And I think, you know, actually, Magix is a, a super interesting one because he's survived through, you know, like, iterations of, of, of the Spirit roster. But one of the things that was clear about him from when he first joined this team is, like, he was very kind of pliable, it felt like. You know, he kind of adapted to the, the Tier 1 level very well. It felt like they put a good deal of faith in him. And I think you've you've seen him have to, to play in a variety of, of kind of spots and just accommodate that as time's gone on. I think for someone who was very young, one of the things we would always say early on was, yeah, this this was cool when he first joined this team because he's kind of a blank slate. You know, you can mold him to be whatever you need him to be. And that's very much what Spirit have done over the years. Yeah, and you know, on top of that, obviously under talked about in this team for good reason, but Zontix and Donk both coming up together from the Academy team and into this main roster has to feel like a nice linear progression, both moving at the same time, clearly like playing with each other, sat next to each other as well. So I think, uh, yeah, when you say the vibes are good, I definitely think that's uh, a, a note worth taking for Team Spirit. I think if you see Hooksy or Kerrigan in this situation where Team Spirit is, they call an A rush or a B pop, like something like that now to break because they've won a couple of slow rounds. But let's see what Team Spirit does. Chopper needs a gun first. I don't know where that's gotten to. He does. Might be back in the water or he might have to wait for one to be dropped over. Now nah, he's got it. A little delayed by. Right, That's dedication. Late. He went and threw the mid-util and then ran back to spawn to buy the gun. 
Donk moving up ramp this time. There's no one even watching this. It's just a long player. Jail's tucked in, but you can win the round off this kill with Alexi so deep in the cave and not coming back anytime soon. Donk, oh, he's heard the steps. Jail knows what's up. Donk gets that entry, and that is a very difficult situation for Na'Vi. As long as they plant for the long side, there is no stopping this. Through the smoke goes Zontix as the break comes in, and Na'Vi are pushed out of their own bomb site. That should already be the round, right? Like, Na'Vi, sure, they've got Alexi kind of trapped in the cave, but that's that's not a good thing by his book. He just wants to get out of here with the M4. He could even look to give chase here, and Donk will. And these are the mind games with these timeouts, right? So Spirit was winning rounds, playing slow, taking mid, delayed, right? Splitting A or just showing that and trying to go cave, whatever, right? So, and Na'Vi's losing, obviously, so Blade takes a timeout. The call was apparently, you know, hey, let's just make sure we have mid and let's play heavy mid and, you know, a bit easier on the side. So team spirit, that's why I said a rush could have been good, but this is also just a bit faster, yeah. you know, going up ramp, just letting Donk uh, search for a player. So a perfect counter from spirit. They knew, they predicted correctly the adjustment from Navi and were one step ahead. And that's what we talk about, like when we're on the desk or we talk about conditioning your opponents, that's what Spirit was doing. And now the game is, you know, it's pretty tough for Navi because they tried different things. It's not working. Again, going for the heavy mid play. Yeah, we've seen Ima get up here a few times. Trying to help out in this fight for the lane control. This time he's got wonderful backing him up in middle. So it's nice that Na'Vi kind of, you know, recommit to that idea that that thought of trying to hold on to this mid control heavy and not expecting a, uh, a repeat that kind of faster contact up through B ramp. And for all Chopper's teams over the years, I feel like this is a roster where he feels most comfortable to actually play these really, really delayed rounds. We still see the rushes and the contact plays up ramp, but like I've seen a lot of rounds of Spirit are more than happy to sit behind this smoke at B doors and really drag it out. You know, Na'Vi are doing a great job right now of holding their utility at the minute mark. Two smokes, two mollies still available, and but Spirit will be able to take B lane late and Na'Vi will no longer be here. And look what happens with the time, right? You're just sitting still and they have to sort of fall back because the utility has passed for them to hold those close positions and close angles and Spirit by just chilling are now in a really good spot. We've got an A execute fake into a B walk and right now there is almost no one at this B bomb site. If they keep creeping, Na'Vi might pull JL back once again. Will they fall for it? It's not looking likely. They're gonna start to walk up now, Donk. Tip of the spear, first man in. Alexi's Molly gonna force a reaction and they go swinging into it. Donk perishes in the Molotov. Comes after Alexi's death, but he's done what he had to do in the round. With 15 seconds left, these kills matter as they lock out Team Spirit. Chopper will deal with JL. That bomb's still in no man's oh. land, though, and there's no recovering this one. Even as Chopper picks it up, there just isn't time to plant. And so now we know they've done it. They don't even go peeking in. They don't give up those fights. Great call for Na'Vi to not rotate out, right? Not only does Alexi uh, stay in the cave, he throws his smoke and that draws Spirit, thinking that maybe we've maybe we've forced the rotate out of JL. They all focus on cave. JL's able to swing out and not look in his way. And Alexi provides the perfect distraction for JL to drop the bomb. And Molly is excellent as well. And uh, Na'Vi just win it to the time. So not falling for a little bit of fakery in that round from Team Spirit. That was a really good round from Spirit, just a great individual play from Alexi. Also, you know, because of the lack of pressure from Spirit, he was able to save his smoke and his incendiary until late in the round. And if it weren't for that, Donk, you know, could have had a chance to kill yeah. JL as well. And that would have been probably Spirit's round from that point in time. So still only two players left alive for Navi, no AWP. Spirit still with a lot of options. A lot of money in the bank. And they might just go for something up tempo here. That's a cave smoke being lobbed out from spawn, courtesy of Chopper. Gonna nullify the amount the Na'Vi can look to get involved in this lane fight early, and that gives room up through ramp. Magix and Donk will open the round. It's Alexi back in the cave. Might have been able to reel them in last time they attempted this B play, but this time it's a whole different kettle of fish. Trapped on the other side of this smoke, even getting spammed down. 
Oh, a nade. He's borderline out of the round already, and with Ema in here with him, it's crazy to me that Na'Vi are even hanging around right now. They'll get silenced by Donk. Bit starts to back up. Ema still floating through the cave, and his journey back is not guaranteed. So this two-man save that they're attempting isn't even a guarantee. And suddenly they get all the wait, kills. Hang on a wait, second. Wait, wait. Hang on a second. Spirit went hunting, but they're too far away. Oh, Bit's like so indecisive, and I think he never he even tried running back in. I think he could have. That's wild. Not Bit, but maybe Ema. No, but Bit had the kit. It had to be Bit. He wasn't that far out. That's so weird. I mean, I want to go play to Navi. Like you're not expecting what? the round to end like that. To suddenly get given all three fights, win them all, and still have some time left. But I just, I don't know why Bit wouldn't. I mean, it was close. It was definitely, you know, maybe, maybe not. But he was not that far out. He We're was gonna need the, the scientists to, to yeah. break that one down. Someone get the demo on a metaphysical level. Yeah, you know, run back. Yeah, that bomb was. Definitely over halfway, but my god. Jump through the multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> See like all the possibilities. In an, in an alternate area. reality, they did win that round. I mean, I'm surprised they just didn't go for the save straight away. You know, that they were lingering around yeah. because it was very difficult, but now, I mean, you, you could see they can't oh. go for a buy. It's just going to be a couple of pistols, most likely for Navi. I mean, Spirit just playing really, really well. The calls have been good, so, you know, it's not about a donk or doing something incredible uh, outside of that Shiro clutch to kick off the game, but they're just in favorable positions, right? You can see JL, I think, was completely caught off guard by how close um, Spirit players were. Now, V is still playing very weak uh, numbers on B, right? They're not putting stacks there yet. We've got a fast mid rush and well, there are the kills and there may be the round unless Na'Vi can get back to that A site quickly. One player already crossing past red and JL will join him. Sontic. And those were the two rifles as well. Yeah. Sontic's through the smoke looking for more. You could see they were not putting any early, going for early mid control. Now they do it. Mm. Navi smoke A main, but they go back to Gamble B in hopes that Spirit overthink this, but doesn't look to be the case. Now they're scared, it's a little bit quiet. They want to go for info in mid. Ontix is Dude, waiting. I love how Chopper just like uses these creeping silences at moments. I think, you know, the round started at like a hundred miles an hour on that mid play, but then there's an instant slowdown and you just kind of let Navi stew in the awkwardness of it. Any route that they could try to go down to gain info back was being considered by Team Spirit. And so now we just kind of, you know, they fell out of this round from the moment it started, really. Once those kills went down in mid, there was no hope. Alexi, surely dead here. Find Shiro, is in the site. Everyone else is a little far <laughs> away, but he doesn't have a kit. So no crazy ninja defuse at least. He'll get spammed out. And Spirit pick up that round, 4K from Zontix to make it happen. Yeah. And obviously Donk running out mid alongside him. I want to see if we start to see more than two players at that B bomb site, right? Because Alexi is deep in cave on his own and JL is long also on his own. So it's not even just the fact that there's two players there, it's that they're always separated. Uh, so when Spirit keep walking up ramp with two, three players, it's very hard to contain no matter who's on the other side. We will start with 3B now for Na'Vi. They're going to block ramp immediately. Donk oh. denies everything in middle. Despicable headshots. Oh, it's, uh, that's just wild. Emo bit. <laughs> Those are, that's a star power of this team. Yeah. Those are the stars of the team. They're dead. They did a combined 47 damage. He's just better. <laughs> I mean, it's intentional. They are going for that fight. That's yeah. why they don't smoke it. Uh, they want to find that entry early on instead. It's just a uh, abyss. It doesn't they find Harry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they're probably feeling that way on Navi right now. Dying like, dude, this guy's actually good. What? There's probably some element. You know, you're coming into it. You're under no illusion that this guy's good, but. He's there's, maybe, there's maybe that part of you in the back of your mind that's like, nah, but come on, he's just kind of running at people. Like, we can beat that. And then he starts running at you, and it's like, oh, God, this is terrifying. <laughs> it's actually it's actually horrific to try and deal with. 
coming through. There's smoke. There's no respect from Spirit in these post plants. It's almost lost them one, but they have got Na'Vi trapped out in CT. Another smoke, another push, says Zontix, as he goes gunning for the end of the round. Eight to two. Donk sent his regards. <laughs> and he's giving fist bumps all around. Big smile on his face. Insane impact right off the top of that one. Once again, the round just kind of won or lost based on these mid fights. And it's all Donk all day. Dude, I mean, you know, we were talking about Chopper earlier on and how like this is the, the best pieces he's had. But I think one of the things that's so sick there as well is, you know, we know this guy is someone that loves to play around with the pace of the game. You know, he, he, he likes his faster up-tempo rounds, and now we see him, like, taking these slowdowns more and more, but this is very much a team that will gladly embrace the chaos of a, of a, of a quick round hinging on a few fights. This is probably the worst way a game can go for you, right, if you're Navi, because it's not necessarily that your players are failing or making mistakes, right? What's happening is either your opponents are out calling you, like, they're putting their players in better positions and you're just, you know, outmaneuvered in rounds or they're just like getting the frags, right? Even though your players have the advantage, they're just playing out of their minds. So for mm. Blade, is there's not really an adjustment that he can make, something yeah. that can call, because even when the call is good, they still can't find the kill. So for Navi, it's just about potentially, you know, trying to get around, you know, this round or at least the last gun round and maybe get, get some momentum of their own on the T side. Even now, man, it's just bit over towards A and these rotates are starting to peel around, but he's fed to the Wolves. Zontix in main will find him. And now they learn about this split out through the donut. Donk dealing with Ema. Shiro already has his eyes on the prize back at middle. So this flank should get denied. And Spirit have often been when the bomb's down. They play like the round's already won most of the time. It is. And so... This one far safer by comparison. They just group up back at main. Look to have a nice clean five alive round when all is said and done. Now view have looked really solid as of late. And I think it is a six series winning streak. Yeah, and very stable performances for the most part. Legit wins as well. Two yeah. BO3s over G2. Uh, you know, they dispatched a VP in the RMR quals. Took down complexity. Hey, man, I mean, considering this was like the spirit level check for Team Spirit, right? This was us kind of gauging what it's like when they face one of the big dogs. This is an, an absolutely incredible way for it to have started. Yeah, it's not even competitive right now. And Na'Vi have not had their foot in the door. If they get it in there, I fear their toes will be severed. Early nades in mid have been a frequent focus for Team Spirit. It does do a little bit of damage, but Donk waits for the fight and he's going to get it. Sending his team in with him. The missed shot from the orb. At that point, it's not even Spirit. Wonderful just doesn't connect. Luckily, there's a second player hiding in this cubby. They don't know about Ema and they might not molly it for a change. We've actually got Na'Vi putting focus on fighting in middle. It's going to be spammed through the smoke. Ema needs a multi-kill. Oh, this round's dead in the water. I love that swing through the smoke. He only gets one, though. Donk equalizes and looks to get that bomb back under control. Oh, Magic's trying to hit this timing up through Ram. Nearly awkward, but able to adjust back in time. He catches Alexi, smokes off CT. Na'Vi kind of needs to go through this. They want to oh. try and fight for the B control, and they take it back. A minute left to play with here. Chopper and Donk still up for Team Spirit, it's and running. Na'Vi are grouped. They're, no, not grouped, rather. They split up. JL's aggressing down the ramp alone, and he'll catch them both to salvage a third for Na'Vi at the end of this first half. Regardless, it's Donk and the rest of Team Spirit leave Leading the charge with a massive lead heading into this second half.
Dogs to fight with, so a couple deagles picked up, upgraded pistols. Olaf's got the hero M4. Yeah, he does. And he's going to try and get an action immediately, but unfortunately, FaZe is rushing the B bomb site while this M4 is pushing out of A to see if he can get a cheeky kill. Kerrigan, if he's stuck at that angle, might have been able to have one or two. Still has that chance, still alive, but it's Raven yeah. that's coming through with that kill. Now the AK-47s have arrived, and that MAC-10 ain't going to get anything done. Frozen cutting off the flank through elbow, not expecting the second player, so Olimp with that M4 salvages a kill, but it should be the save now for Olimp with that M4. He's off to save it on the A bomb site. Phaser through to eight rounds. And we head into the last round of the half with Phase ahead by a significant margin. Yeah, strong lead. And it's going to be interesting now because the T side of this can be so tough. I want to see if how aggressive Phase is going to be in middle. If they're going to be pushing up and challenging at ledge down the B lane towards double doors, if they're going to be peeking cave, well, we know rain is an absolute menace in that position. And if you can't control that B lane, this map gets real, real small. Yeah, you'd and have we, to imagine that's the style phase will bring as well. And we haven't seen Rebels do any of that, right? They, they've pushed down mid a couple times, but they're not really willing to stick around and, and fight for anything. I'm very curious, because if, if FaZe are going to run that and Rebels can't stop it, it's going to be a quick second half. Might only be a few rounds here if they get a 9 through half and convert a pistol one in the second. Might not get many gun rounds. Rebels just having a chat over things. And it'll be an invaluable experience coming into this tournament with the lack of experience they have and then being able to play into the group stage of Katowice up against one of the world's best. They'll take away a lot from this, but they want to give a little more too. And Frozen is pushed out through middle. Control of mid already taken by FaZe and they've got B lane with it. They've got every part of the map you desire in the early stages of this round. Brokey posted up on top of the boxes. Wedding on an overextension. There's a bit of a push going on though, Jason. Look at this. Olim's taking some space. Yeah, he's probably getting a little bit bored. Ooh, good shot. I, mean, I want to go back, go back to flight. Let's see this off in this position now. We were we were scratching our heads. Spirit are looking like the real deal right now, up nine to three. That's thanks to a hot start on the back of Shiro's 1v3 clutch. From there, everything comes up in their favor, whether that's Donk rip roaring out through mid, joined by Zontix, some nice cooling out of Chopper, some fantastic pace changes to enable this scoreline. Na'Vi looking lost. Is there any hope for them to bounce back now that they move onto the T side here on Ancient? Don't give him a smoke shot. Don't make it easy for him. They're going to run him down. Doc hears this and gets a good retreat to keep his round alive. Oh, he's got to run all right. Realizing oh, fighting crazy. is his only option. Zontix from afar falls as well. Three on four. Magic does get that spot, but now knows his rotation is cut off by Bit, who comes hunting and gunning. No connections from these USPs. Firing nothing but blanks here for Team Spirit. And Na'Vi have that B site. Shiro cracks his knuckles. Another <laughs> pistol round needed. Let's see if he can do it with the dual Berettas. This time it's one step harder oh. and Bit locks him out of it with a hat trick to find the pistol for Na'Vi, doing what maybe he should have done all that time ago in the first round of this game. That's a crucial round for Na'Vi, obviously with, with the momentum the Team Spirit has had winning the pistol round. I think Donk does a great job of escaping, realizes Zontix is there, but instead of just holding with him, yeah. kind of goes back to search for the fight, and he was by himself there, so couldn't really do anything. Yeah, I, I chuckled a little, you know, the, the, the only option is to fight, I think, is what Hugo said, and maybe in Donk's mind, but uh, throwing himself back around that corner did feel crazy. Yeah, I think he's just realizing if I run all the way, there's a chance they're going to catch me, pe you know, with my back turn peaking. So, you know, sending it, that's Donk's speciality. But mortal in the pistol round. Spirit have to take a full eco and come through in the third. Na'Vi definitely considering something here. Don't count them out of a comeback. Absolutely. I mean, you know, if they win this round and then the first, 
gun around as well. They're right back in it. That's going to give their players some confidence. And on the T side, obviously, you are the one who dictates the pace of the game. You are the one who, to an extent, chooses where the action is going to be. You can use your utility, right, to isolate opponents, give your uh, players some favorable fights. One thing to expect from Spirit on this CT side is a lot of B aggression in gun rounds, right? Popping through cave, coming down ramp on simultaneous timings, uh, you know, not even necessarily fighting for mid every single time. Sometimes it's just Dong spamming red smoke, but that's all donuts. Spirit and do like their B pushes. It's always a little bit tricky when you're down a considerable amount on T side, right? And you win pistol and they eco in the second round. Do you call, do you open up with a faster round to sort of condition them and maybe get a free round, so to speak? Or do you start with a default so that later on you can change the pace, right? We'll see what Alexi decides to do and what's the game plan from Na'Vi. Because absolutely, Spirit puts a lot of focus towards that B ramp and just that whole area. So at some point, you you count on seeing Navi with that A rush or a fast A execute, right? But hitting the, the, the timing for it, that's key. Well, let's see what decision will be made. What's Alexi cooked up for this first round versus the rifles? Instant beat the all smoke goes in from Team Spirit. We were promised some fighting here. Could end up getting it straight out mid, oh. Navi. Trying to keep the pace high, and Donk is caught, trying to make his way into Dona. It's a lovely opener from Ema, who gives Team Spirit a taste of their own medicine. Yeah. With this faster play out in the mid, he's netted a five on three for his Team Spirit. Already, this one feels rough. You're relying on some individual heroics here as Na'Vi are kind of shuffling their pieces around, trying to group up, and Mashira not finding that one. Spirit just take a bit of a gamble. They bring all these bodies over towards A and mid. It was flashes there amid. That's what absolutely ruined Spirit's day. Some early ones that you avoid already, and then delayed flashes that Spirit uh, got caught completely off guard with. Nice mid-take from Ema, getting a, a crucial double kill when he's had a fairly cold game. So getting Na'Vi back in the swing of things here on the T side. This will be another round. Magis is looking, but unless they throw themselves at him, there's no way Spirit are given the satisfaction. Bit holding the extremity, he knows that Spirit are going to try and save. The question is, can they? Shiro can drop a gun over with that Galil saved. But they need three rifles into the next if they want to consider a full buy. And more importantly, he can buy an op in the next round mm. uh, if he saves his armor. So let's see, JL, they're slowly trying to search for the Navi players. Ooh, no guarantees. And he will lose his armor. Still by Kevlar or? if he's feeling naughty, but... Thanks to that one kill with the Galil, yeah. Yeah, the money is... Okay, Donk buys full nades and kit and armor, so he's expecting a drop. Spirit planning to buy up. Great flashes and great finish from Na'Vi. I mean, you said it earlier on, you win the pistol, you win that first rifle, you're you're feeling back in the game, and Na'Vi certainly are, just three between them and Spirit. If they break through this force, uh, force up now from the Spirit squad, suddenly this is a borderline neck and neck game with Na'Vi chomping at the bit to get back into it. Yeah, I think it's really important, right? Because they were not even close to winning rounds in the first half. And obviously the players are not going to be feeling super confident. It's just bad situation after bad situation. So now you're starting to roll a little bit. It's going to feel better. Okay, we can actually do this. You're, you're gaining some confidence. And we still might have a game on our hands. Fake A rush. Lexi gonna try and sell it. Oh, the flash, flash. blind Shiro, but he wrestles with that M4. 
And oh, we'll no. secure the kill to Alexi. Chopper already makes it down the ramp. And that's the bomb tumbling away from Na'Vi. With it, maybe the round. Ema and Bit both perish at the hands of Zontix down here in middle. Don't know what Na'Vi were really ho hoping for after Alexi dies with nothing in A, no fake sold. They walk through a B smoke, they walk through a mid smoke. It's optimistic at best for Na'Vi. It's a little bit of an all-in call, but if you go back, like you can see how it caused a massive rotation from Team Spirit, right? It's just that Chopper with that uh, deep banana, with the door smoke, can play close to it and gets two really massive kills. Obviously, shuts down Navi completely there. And the jig is up also, since Shiro was playing deep or Zontex, he gets that kill on Alexi. You know, if they're playing let's say even from Temple or Site or CT or Donut, they don't get that information so early in the round and then there's a higher chance of the round working for Navi. And it's also, you have to sort of call something like that. You know, you can't expect to go all the way back, mount the comeback with just playing default all the time. It becomes a little bit predictable. I mean, this tag team, we, we've seen it deliver before for Spirit. It's, uh, it's Zontix and Donk in tandem, right? They can sometimes feel very, very similar. Donk gets a lot of the attention, but uh, I think Zontix has given us some great games even throughout the play-in. The Zonked duo. Darby are look, looking a little zonked right now. Need to wake up in this round or this map will be over. Rifles on all but one. And maybe a bit of pop through the smoke. Chopper getting aggressive on the cave as expected. And here's that flash. Fantastic Shiro wasting all his bullets, but he won't live much longer. Donk does in two, but everyone falls around him. And Na'Vi break their way into the B site. Bomb has to make it. Oh, if Zontix had his gun out there, could have been something. But Na'Vi will get a path to safety and a plant. I mean, I think once they heard the spam on the lane, Alexi's rubbing his hands together right there. They're ready to pop through that mid smoke. And even though Spirit had a lot of bodies dedicated towards mid, they knew the attention was being put more so on taking that lane control. But there would have been some opportunity here, and Na'Vi realized that opportunity well. A nice way to restabilize themselves here, keep that hope alive of pulling this game back. A needed round at a critical juncture here goes the way of Na'Vi. Oh. They're even looking to remove this gun right at the end. Zontix gets out and Na'Vi cool off the hunt. At this point, they're thinking about their own money. More than that, Spirits even removing this M4 wouldn't have had, you know, huge consequences. Spirit would have still been coming through with the buy, so they just give Zontix that respect. What it does do is allow for him to drop an AWP over to Shiro, who can now have nades with it and, you know, just playing longevity here for Team Spirit. Navi are right behind them. Three rounds is the difference. Oh, with a full buy coming right through for Team Spirit. The frag onto Magix from Wonderful was round defining, really. If Magix win that, wins that fight, they still have a chance, but that pops open to be bomb site. Navi with another fast mid take, able to get control one more time. Donk breaks window, smoke and fights for it. Meanwhile, Spirit continue this aggressive man. posture at behind the spam. He's selling it. Magic is just setting Chopper up to walk through that smoke. Meanwhile, Donk does the same and connects his spam as Na'Vi get locked off at the door again. Alexi goes through. It's a very deep smoke. And Spirit are fine with that. Five on three. As long as they don't forget that this ramp timing is open. Going to check cave. Chopper... Oh, there's no spot. He'll see it. Molly comes down, but they're up ramp as well. Yeah, they're in behind Chopper, but he just oh. focuses on this cave fight. Not worried about ramp yet, and his teammates rotate in wow. and make quick work of Na'Vi. That round is all Chopper and Donk making aggro plays. Down through B ramp is Chopper. That's how he opens it. A nice retreat back to cave and good prioritization of those targets to tee him up for all three kills. Donk, meanwhile, gets one off of this chance spam in mid and then is in the right place when the round culminates over at B. It does feel like we're getting Chopper's best fragging yet in this team as well. Like uh, through all the iterations of Spirit and his previous CIS squads that have made runs that Yanko talked about, felt like we get more fragging out of him now than ever before.
started the year off with some very strong maps in Copenhagen as well, with a mishmash roster, without even the the big pieces there for Team Spirit. So. Yeah, that's just another problem to deal with. I mean, there's a lot less pressure on you when you have guys like Shiro, Donk. I mean, everyone on the team, right? You know, we have very capable players, so it's not on you to frag necessarily. So you're playing with more freedom. And Navi here basically conceding match point to, to Spirit would have been a really poor buy. So they want a little bit more. Oh, Shiro. Shiro is all, the, yeah, all the rotates are a long way out considering oh, they have right. all this control at lane. And that shot only being a tag, at least he gets back into the temple. Worst case scenario would have been losing that AWP. Now the rest of the guys can make their way over oh, from mid. Yeah. And it's a mow down. It's a clean up. The danger of the round dodged when Shiro retreats. Spirit onto map point. Plant denied as well. Goes from bad to worse. If you thought last round's buy would have been bad, well, this one's not that much better. You won't have full util. There's certainly going to be no AWP uh, for Wonderful on this T side. And this may be all said and done on Spirit's map pick. Na'Vi pinching pennies in the final or potential final round of this game. Important bomb denial for Team Spirit there. Got a very fast beat by the jail. The Molly kind of forces him in and he will take that opportunity. He's been the only one fragging in this game for Na'Vi, but that will come to an early end. And they're trying to bully this behold of Magics and Chopper, but Chopper is just not yeah. giving them an inch. <laughs> Nothing for free. Bit smoke dead. And now he's going to smoke off the cave. Get a bit more passive with it. Zontix, in the meantime, has taken all this space. Spirit still remaining active in spite of being in the five on three. They know this means there's holes in the Na'Vi default, and Zontix is well aware that he has found one. Oh. This backstab will end this surely. Just the one. They turn back in time. They deal with him on the A push. But for Ema and Alexi, it might just be coming to grasp the fact that this one has gotten away from them. Well, not even, they were never even in it. The comeback denied. Such a dominating performance from Spirit. They've been one step ahead for the majority of this game. And even there, Magix just probes for a second, gets the info as to where they are. And Spirit ease back into the bomb sites. They're gonna double up over towards Cave. Now that they know it's not there, they spot them coming up ramp. It's all become clear to Team Spirit. The rotate's coming in, and Magix, who has been quiet here, locks Ema out of it. Team Spirit looking like the real deal. Na'Vi were meant to be their first proper test yet, and they get through this first map with ease. Our consciousness level against Spirit is pretty high. I don't feel like they've played good CS. They shoot good headshots, but I don't think they're at tier one level yet. We had a couple of practices against Spirit. Um, both of them went at the same scoreline. Uh, I'm not going to leak the scorelines, but it, it were not tough games. I feel like Dong's biggest attribute is his relentless aggression, um, his aim, mechanical skill. And also on line events, he has been shouting, screaming. It didn't feel like he has felt any pressure. I feel like it's a cool sight to see for some people because it's so young and is also dominating on the server. I do feel like Shiro has uh, joined a better team. If you take uh, Team Vibe into consideration, I feel like Team Spirit has been very supportive of their players. Tonk has been really hyping, Chopper is there to support. I feel like Shiro is in a good environment for him to perform at his best. The scariest part of going up against Spirit is you don't know what to expect. I mean, you know you expect uh, aggression from Dong, insane hopping by Shiro, but you still have to counter them, even though you know it's gonna happen. You still have to 
make a plan on how to play against it and sometimes the plan doesn't work, sometimes you don't hit the headshots and they play their best when the opponents are scared of them, scared of their aggression. And if you face it head on, uh, with good plans, team play and it should be enough to beat them. I'm really curious what they're gonna do against the real tier 1 opponent. I feel like Bonk has lived up to the hype, uh, but I haven't seen him play against the best of opponents and uh, we'll see how he does against us uh, in the upcoming game. Wow. Uh, a showing of force, I think, is one way we could put this down right here. It is Navi that have been putting down on the side of Ancient, the first map of the series, and the Donk Show continues. Let me go ahead and just welcome you right on back to the Intel Extreme Masters. It's kind of it's a year being 2024, and the score being 13 to 7. Maniac and Steel here with me on the case. Uh, my name is Trace. Hey, oh, Trace. Let's get into the space. Indeed. Uh, listen, one of our main questions was, how would Spirit fare if Dong is being shut down, right? If they have a bad start, if Navi is taking control. Mm. But none of these conditions came to fruition here. Nope. None of them. It was a beautiful start from Spirit. Kicks off with an incredible clutch from Shiro with the one shot mid-air with three seconds left. That's literally the best way you can kick off a game. And then just Dong, just Donk them, destroy them. I'm going to have to find another word for donk them, but it is what it is right now. They got donked up. Absolutely. I don't know. That was kind of a stretch. We're all stars now in the donk show. <laughs> okay, that was a reference I, I wasn't ready for, but I, I have to appreciate and respect nonetheless. Just like this young man in the server. I mean, we've been talking about him, and every time we talk about spirit, like, this guy is obviously going to be there. Hell, I don't know that anybody in Katowice is talking about anything else. I was at a coffee shop earlier. They just want to talk about donk. But it was Polish, so I didn't know what they were talking about anyway, but... You know. Honestly, I'm not really a bandwagoner about anything except for, like, hate bandwagons. Oh, of course. But yeah. I think I'm gonna get on the Dong bandwagon now. I think I have to. And honestly, Na'Vi, I think they got a little bit shook, like you said. Yes. After losing the pistol, I mean, five seconds left, the fake plant, the jump spot, instantly one tapped out of the air. Maybe they could have got some footing into the game, but... From that loss, it looks like Spirit just took a huge lead and they had so much confidence, they won all their gunfights. But on the yeah. other side of it, Na'Vi looked like they weren't hitting shots. Like, there were people coming into the crosshairs they were whiffing. It's not like Na'Vi was playing a poor game. They were still playing with teamwork. They were still trying to achieve map control. We saw them doing the splits, like two down mid, three taking B control. But then when it came to winning duels and mm. gunfights, it's not like Spirit did anything super special. It's not like Na'Vi did anything bad. It's... <sighs> Oh, you say they didn't do anything bad. I think we have a few examples where they oh, please, yeah. looked shook. I think shook is the term, right? Round eight, we can roll it. It's it's a weird situation. It's a strange situation, but also very symptomatic of the Navi situation, being a little bit caught off guard with what is happening. There is a diffuse that could be going on, but we're going to yeah. go through this round once again. So it is here. We see Spirit trying to catch them off guard with that very quick B pop. This is the power, the penetration power as well from the offense. Here we see Donk as a second line. Bam, you heard it. I heard it. Never mind. Let's move swift. Leon, and then as the bomb site is being taken, it gets a little fuzzy, it gets a little complicated. I think Navi here are playing with, with the right amount of patience. They're trying to get frags through the smoke. They're just waiting. And we are all sort of understanding, well, this, this retake really ain't happening. Spit is going to poke a little bit, but that kill should really seal the deal. And then Spirit is going to get a little over aggressive here. That, that peak from Dong is not ne necessary. And Bit on his way out will actually find two targets while Ime finds another one. And there is a split second. There is a moment, and it's going to about right now. Well, all of the targets are down. Bit's got a kit, and we are looking at fingers while we would like to look at the bomb, but no one is defusing. And this is very symptomatic of a team that is a little bit in apnea, not really thinking straight, because if you're winning, let's imagine the scoreline are reversed. It's a 5-2 Navi scoreline right now. Bit just runs to the bomb immediately, defuses straight up. They were shook. 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 I mean, you, you have to diagnose this round in some way, shape, or form. Josh, what do you take from it? Well, I think shook is apt. I think they Thank were you. in the they, they were in the right positions. Uh, they just weren't really ready. We missed a duel. But then what we saw in the second half as well was that Navi, they I mean, when they were explosive, they were on point. When they slowed down, started walking through smokes, that's when they kind of like fell off a little bit. So I don't know exactly what was going on there because it didn't look super characteristic of them. That's an example right there. You're talking about Navi playing slow and being shook. Be oh, I have to stop with that word. Being taken off guard. It's now it's in my brain now. I kind of have to get it out of it. This was one of the examples that you mentioned, Josh. Like they, they start pretty quick. They get caught off guard, and then there's risks being taken. Like what the hell is about this? Yeah, just walking straight through the smoke, huh? I don't like that at all. Uh, you like that? 
it, it's a it's a risk. It is a risk. <laughs> it's a risk. I think when they were doing like their more methodical controls of the map, such as they would take B lane first, they would take the highway control, and then as they were getting ready, bottom of middle by elbow, and they were going to go and take it together. Basically, they would flash the people out mid, and then the guys from highway would also come up and they would converge on middle together. I think that's when they were playing their best. And Spear, they tried doing... I mean, it's not like we look at the CT sides from both teams and there's like much of a difference there. They both pretty had much had the same start of round mm -hmm. with taking mid, taking B, but it's just like Spirit executed a little bit better than Navi. Yeah, uh, plus, I mean, Spear has a feel right now, right? If you're a team in a, in a groove, in a rhythm, yeah. I think Spirit's got to be benefiting from that a little bit. I agree with you, but I also think... Uh, Whatever momentum you have or don't have is going to create your own luck in a way. Because okay. when, when we saw these like cro uh, smokes being crossed, mm -hmm. more often than not, it was Spirit that was getting ahead of it and getting on top. And I don't think it's coincidence, right? It happened a couple of times. Here we had an example, crossing of a smoke, but they are not, Navi is not exactly in a crossfire, which means you, you offer your back to a potential target. We saw down the line Chopper as well was playing with the smoke in the B ramp. And there was, I believe, it was Ime on the other side. And then Chopper catches Ime off guard and backs off. All of these moments where Navi were taking risks, which I don't believe were necessary. You could have been a little bit more team play oriented, just like the rounds you described, but these moments where they were rolling the dice, they went to Vegas and just, uh, they got cleaned out. Straight up. Craps, they call it. Like, craps, we lost it all. Uh, no, but for real, let's talk about maybe Anubis. That's a pick of Navi right here. They're going to regret that. No, no, I don't think they will regret it. I, I think it's a pretty decent map for okay. them. I don't think this is how we should be looking at it. Okay. Uh, but we should probably have a look at how they will handle their defense now, since obviously mm. Spirit is going to lead the charge on that T side. But I should not be worried. If I got worried right now for Navi, then my whole narrative for the, the whole game was going to fly in, and I don't think that's the case. Yeah, I'm, I don't know what to expect. I know that Navi, they've played Anubis a few times before. Actually, like, their losses to Vitality, for example, were on Anubis. And part of, like, what they did that wasn't super great was they were in, like, these super static defenses, like these 2-1-2 setups, and they weren't really moving around that much. They weren't taking a lot of aggressive pushes, which isn't really how you want to play Anubis. Maybe they have a right. different game plan coming into here because they played pretty much meta style on Ancient. So it'd be interesting to see if they still stick to that 2-1-2 static style. But if Spirit continues with the same momentum and the confidence in their peaks as they did both in this last match and also in the play-ins, that's going to play into the Anubis style really well. I agree with you. And someone that is supposed to be the absolute counterplay to that explosive style from Spirit is, um, I was going to call it Momentum. Wonderful. Wonderful. With the AWP, right? Which is something that we have not mentioned at all on map one. Well, it's, that it's against him. Exactly. <laughs> like that didn't happen. The first round that he had the up, I think on his CT side, he was out donut holding to bottom mid. A guy swings into his crosshair, no flashes or anything, misses his shot, that's it. That is really a bad example indeed, yeah. I would like to see more of that, or more of him not missing, actually hitting shots on the second map. You can get more of that after this break. We do need to go to a break. We can come back. We jump right into Anubis. We're going to see Spirit versus Navi. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024, so don't you move a muscle. We'll be right back after this. I think about Dunk, I think about like hyper aggression and confidence in duels and he really has a good 
grip of the mechanics of CS2. I feel like he's played better than when I played him in scrims. I think that he's just been dominating so far. I think it's going to be really interesting to see him play against like FaZe, Vitality, like any of like the really top tier teams. From watching him, he just has like so much confidence of everything that he's doing is right and has like a lot of... He doesn't try to overcomplicate things is what I'd say about Donk. He's just like the most simple thing and he just does it like super well is what I'd say about him. It's not afraid, never crumbling and I think the way that they're using him in spirit, you know, with, with Chopper, they are playing for him, which you also shoot and, and I think he's the uh, biggest talent we've seen for, for quite a while. I think that has been off. so funny for me to watch. <laughs> I think that you'd expect that he'd be a really quiet kid, you know? I think that most people expected him to be quiet, so for him to like come out of the gates just like screaming every round, I think is, is really funny. He always has this like dunk round where he just lose a round because it's him. I think it reminds me a little bit about Saiwoo as well. He also has those rounds, especially in official games as well. So If he won't be like top five next year, if Spirit will be coming to all the all the top tier events and Donk will not be top five, I will be surprised. I think the main difference with Donk is that he is a rifler and it is harder to have like that type of consistency and high rating as a rifler just because there's so much variance. So that just means that he's way more versed in a lot of different options that could be happening and he's way more comfortable in a lot of those things as well. 16, 18, 19, this is exactly the, the time for, for you to pop up and show your potential and this is the best uh, moment for the pros and those people has nothing else to do than playing the game, right? I mean, I also know some of the really big teams out there has been interested in him so, and so to see for him to stay, I think that's the right move. I think it will be might be too soon for him to, to go up on the big stage, spend a year or two in spirit, see what they take and they also have a very strong team. Let's not let's not consider them being this, you know, tier two team who, who sometimes does well. I mean, they are, I've said it before, they are dark horse to, to winning the major if they keep up the pace. Navi delved into the unknown as they faced off against Spirit in the opening map of Ancient and they didn't like what they saw. Now the goal for Navi is to bounce back on Anubis. A string of good results here for this squad and so hopefully that determination's kicked in. Now they know what they're up against and they can look to stabilize a string of good results here. Most recently winning over G2 back at Blast. I mean, Spirit won a map on Anubis over Liquid, and that was with a coach and in another academy standard. Not to say academy is going to hold you back. Spirit are one of those many teams that have used the project well. And now they've got to see if they can finish one, this one in style or if we want to take it to Mirage. I hope we go all three just to see if it can keep up what we've been seeing from Spirit on that map. With them having not played an official with Shiro on Anubis, there are questions to be answered today. Yeah, I wonder how much different their Anubis is going to be compared to that Liquid game because that's the only time they played it really and, you know, without Donk. Does that really count, Harry? Yeah, right. I mean, you know, I, I'm very excited to, uh, to to get to see him popping off on a, on a kind of a new map at a new level. And on another, on another side of things, Navi has played it, I think, 10 times uh, or, or definitely like plenty of games uh, so far on Anubis. So a lot of 
information there for Spirit to process. We saw how great their T side was uh, on Ancient. They were one step ahead of Navi for the better part of that half. So let's see if the game plan is as strong on Anubis as it was on Ancient. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm just excited that we're all kind of, I don't know, like I think you had fair enough if you were apprehensive of when you kind of test this spirit team up against the the top level opposition, right? Like, because other than VP, as we've seen, we haven't really seen them face off. I mean, we haven't seen them face off against top ten teams. So, going into this one up against uh, an RV squad that that are in form and and have looked good as of late, as mentioned, it's a six series win uh, win streak for this squad. This was the this was kind of the taste test, right? This was the vibe check, and Spirit yeah. certainly passed it on the first map. If they're able to do this cleanly, I think suddenly we're looking at Spirit as, you know, more than contenders to make that run into the playoff. Even not just the level of opponents, but the fact that you're back on land, right? This is only Dog's third land ever. Uh, so you've got to keep that in mind. And he's not flustered by the cameras and the people waving in your face and the players that should be screaming on the other side, but have yet to do so. It's going to be fast towards dark for Donk as only one man sits on that B bomb site. It's Ema. A bit of aggression from Na'Vi come through A, but Spirit are very spread right now. They're far from committed. Oh, clean opener from JL. He was the guy laying down the pain for Na'Vi on that last map. He starts this one off nicely, claiming a 5v4 on that pick in mid. He even goes back in for more. Double dipping is JL. Oh, his risky business. Team Spirit, in the meantime, have gotten out in towards B. There's only Ema here in a kind of retake setup, watching it back at the cave. He's going to get smoked off, so won't be able to play into this till that bomb goes down. Na'Vi will just look to group here, 5v4. They pull everyone over. And now they look to begin the retake. One flash on Alexi, smoke as well. That can either be used for the bomb or to lock off one of these angles. More likely the former. Flash comes out, Donk swings and falls. Zontix now from down in dark, tries to thin the herd, tries to make life a little easier for Shiro. 1v3 with a P250. He would have to do it again, just like how he started Ancient. And this time he's locked out of it. It's JL with a commanding pistol round, four kills strong to find that first for Na'Vi. Yeah, first blood in middle and then the reroute back into B with the P250. Very nice work for JL. He was the kind of only guy that was shooting for Na'Vi in that previous map, right? It took way too long for Ema to get activated and uh, didn't really get many orbs for Wonderful either with that T side. Yeah, two nice one tabs there, perhaps for Spirit, a little bit more aggression, trying to take some extra control, maybe peak temple, something along those lines, but they play it a bit more passive. Navi hits the shots, and another force buy here from Team Spirit, trying to equalize immediately. Yeah, Galil's on four, but already Util gone, just three smokes remain. So it's going to come down to Navi giving them the fights. Can Spirit hunt them down? The Zonk duo being left to work through A main. Bit tucked in the corner here. JL close by, ready to assist should he need to. He's tucked in behind the fountain. Bit takes contact, dropped nice. out, and that's a double opener from this dastardly duo. The Spirit have in their back pocket. A site cracked wide open, and Spirit also win the fight out towards B. They're in a position where they could assault either side, but this leaves them Ooh, spread nice. thin, and Wonderful takes advantage of that. Two kills from the heavens as Spirit tried looping back over the way. They lose control of the site. It's still fine. They just need to group and go together, right? The fear is that both players are here, but they heard Alexi recently smoke B, so there's still good timing for Spirit, and uh, Na'Vi have actually gambled wrong. They move both players back to that B bomb site with Spirit going cold, and that will be the round, the force buy, picked up by Spirit. They're yet to realize, but we know. A little bit awkward for Zontix and Dong. Zontix, who's trying to climb back up on Fountain and pull back after they get that double entry on A, but probably weren't expecting the heaven swing from a third player nearby. 
Either way, it's not going to cost Spirit much. A peak in tandem. The problem is also JL sort of trying to cover camera and a main at the same time to, to bait for bit. That was always going to be difficult. And he, he also had no utility because of the M4, so... Mm -hmm. and, and he spent it early. He doesn't have to be super close if he maybe has a flash to help him, something along those lines, but... Yeah, just good entries. If this is gonna, sorry, if this is gonna be our uh, little A main taking duo for Spirit, I'm very excited to see Bit on the T side because he is extremely lethal when he's left solo A on on the T half and just walking into main and finding those entries. He has nice utility combos, you know, the deep smoke molly that you often see, and uh, it's just a very good aim duel area A main. So Bit will certainly be doing that in second half. But now, Na'Vi playing with the economy against them as Spirit find their force buy. Yeah, three strong lean over towards B early. In the mid round, might look to make some aggressive moves, try to get the info here. It's a lot of early resources dedicated to this side of the map. Instead, they're just going to peel Wonderful back. Waited to see if any sort of faster play from Spirit came through, and when it doesn't, they dismantle the 3B lean. Nice. Late nade onto the T-stairs is nice. Shiro is not expecting that. They know how slow Spirit are probably going to play on these defaults, and that is a very common position, very nadeable. So nice move from Na'Vi. Spirit. Still not making it clear where they're going, but this A-Main take is coming in again. And a trade for Wonderful. The FAMAS can't live to tell the tale. Donk gets that four on three, and they can peel back to B where only Alexi sits. Well, this isn't going to be easy for Alexi B. I don't want to have to say it, but he's in a bit of a rough spot here. One versus four as they're moving into his bomb site. Deals with the first, but is insta-traded from the donk. And so the save call made for Na'Vi. And we're ready for the A play. If it ended up going B, you were just hoping Alexi had time of his life there. When that doesn't happen, Spirit will at least stick the landing versus this force by two Famuses saved out of the round. I don't know if that's enough to get Na'Vi interested in putting too much into this follow-up. Yeah, it's tough for Na'Vi. You know, good patience from Spirit, and then they win the duels in a main. From that point on, you know, Na'Vi has to risk something, and Ima slides over to A, leaving Alexi all on his own. And not much he can do in that situation. Where can Na'Vi go with this? Put their rifles together in A-Main isn't a bad bet. You feel like guaranteed fights are coming there eventually. They're definitely going to need to figure this out. Spirit will keep exploiting it if they can keep getting favorable trades. They don't even need to commit if Na'Vi are going to give them those fountain fights. Lots of smokes bought on this eco. Na'Vi still have some faith that they can drag it out with the rifles. Don't gonna head very quick towards A-Main yet again, just defaulting. Oh, Ema, hello. Fast run out through dark, and he's taken a lot of space. Ooh. He's gonna phase through the smoke. It's being held by Shiro. Unlucky. So that's one of the guns lost. Ema trying to make a play, trying to be that spark that ignites this round for Na'Vi. It ends up being a dud. I respect it. I've Alexi, seen this movie. Yeah. <laughs> 1v4 at the B site. R2. He's getting wrapped upon. And he will falter. It's just very basic for Spirit right now, but it's working wonders. It obviously helps a lot that Navi, since round two, or the loss of round two, haven't had the economy. So Spirit know they can just outgun. And they're just splitting B very easily again. Shira holding on to spawn, ensuring that. This is a clean round, and if Na'Vi show this FAMAS, they'll fight it. It's been the, a similar situation as it was on Ancient, right? Where Spirit gets a good start early, gets control of the economy. 
calls from ahead, right? And then they're dictating yes. the pace, and that makes it very difficult for Navi to play. I mean, it makes it very difficult for any team. I do wonder what will happen when Spirit eventually start on the back foot, right? Because it is inevitable. They can't win forever. Uh, let's set, temper our expectations, right? I know we love this team right now, but they will lose eventually. And I will say, in that Mongols game, the, the second map of Ancient, they looked beatable. They were tilted. They talked about it in the uh, interview afterwards. It went to overtime. They lost some silly T-sided rounds there after a dominant first half, and you could see it getting to this team. So by no means unbeatable, just because we haven't seen it, doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, it, it's bound to happen and, and just, in a way, just playing, for, having to play from behind on the T side. It's completely different. Yeah. The, the things you can call, you know, how your players feel. We've all been there, right? The confidence you have being up and knowing that even if you lose the round, you can buy again with all the nades. There's less pressure. The arm, the hand is a little bit more loose. Harry, at least for you. <laughs> Got a loose hand, Harry, or a firm grip? Uh, loose. Your mouse. Always loose, mate. Calm. Just feels better. Okay. On the mouse. Here we are, Navi. With their rifles out. Oh. And that's not the start. How's that? It's not oh, only dude. a wall bang, it's also a headshot. How's it either of those things? That's, CS2, man. Yeah, that is a wild way for this to open. JL just trying to get the info, man. Just a little jump check in middle, and that's all Shiro needs. The first rifle round is off to a rough start for Na'Vi. Moves have got to be made, and they're trying to make them now. Aggressing up through main. One man there, but... It's going to be over in middle where they look to stake their claim, actually. They group up here, flashing bit out into mid. Going to look to re-clear this, make sure that Spirit haven't taken this real estate after that pick. But again, the patience from Spirit, right? Like, they're just waiting for Navi to make these moves. They're gathering information, plenty of time left. Now they can retake mid. Let's see if Bit can do something here. Ooh, on the swing, just decapitated Chopper, swinging it around, deals with him. And so now they go into this double stack. Sure, if they commit to the A play, they will be going into the more stacked of the two. But options are still open as Spirit. They throw this in as a bit of a fake. They're going to go back and rejoin Magics over at this B site. And with Ema getting smoked off, that spam really does just signal the end of the round. Even a kill from Shiro over in middle on that AWP on a player just taking a peek out from camera. And Na'Vi don't know what just hit them. They get pushed, they get pulled all around the map. And with the openers coming up in favor of Spirit every step of the way, Na'Vi are playing from the back foot in more ways than one. It's obviously the freedom that you have being in that advantage 5v4, 5v3. They have Spirit have a player at B and a player at A, but when Spirit set up to take mid and split that A site, Magic sees Ima rotate, so he just calls, guys, come back, like pull, pull out, drop, dog, let's go back to B, and it's completely empty. Spirit are afforded the ability to rotate out. Some nice exit kills here for Ima, but it's still a very strong start to this this map for Team Spirit on the T side of Anubis, 4-1 up. Could I'm it, loving the calling. You know, it's a little wild that Shiro's a part of the hunt at the end, right? Passing that AWP along, and now Wonderful's got it heading into this next round. Okay, dude. Yeah, please slow oh. that down. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, oh. that's, that's the only face you can pull, right? Oh, dear. It's more or less textbook from, from Spirit when it comes to playing a man advantage situation, right? You have players on the sides ready to punish any reactions, get information. The only bad thing is the fact that they did give the AWP away. So wonderful, maybe going to be able to make something happen here. But the way Spirit is playing, I mean, they've just been shutting down Navi on Spirit's T side completely. Dong setting up a nade for the break. They're going to pop through this smoke into the Molotov. Just like that, Dark becomes Spirit. A good follow-up grenade. Navi flashed their way in, though. Oh, that could have gone a lot better. There's still a chance. But coming through the B-Long smoke, Alexi fires back. He's got something to say. Finally, with teammates on this B-bomb side, the captain can put up a double. He upgrades. Two on three, and Team Spirit bail. These footsteps are heard by Alexi down in dark, but Spirit don't have the time to go slow and cut off the info, right? They're trying to rejoin this bomb up with Shiro. 
So now RV going to go and grab these guns down towards the connector, and now they can even look to catch players crossing. Shiro is not on this angle, so as Chopper crosses, if he gets stuck in that fight, would have got very awkward. Oh, go repeat again, Shiro says. But he actually just moves. That timing couldn't be worse. All of Na'Vi coming in on a big flank. You're not going to expect three players. And if anything, there's incentive for Na'Vi to bait their teammates here just so Spirit think they've killed the flank when, in fact, there's even more. Will they take space in this post plant? Scared about heaven more than anything, but a loud flank for Na'Vi. Two already spotted. They're coming in. Yeah, and they see the util now as well. They know oh. that there's another man here, Shiro. 1v1, and he knows that Alexi's coming main. Someone was throwing those flashes, and it's Alexi eliminated. Shiro adds another clutch to the tally. This AWP just keeps racking them up. Team Spirit, 5-1 lead. Yeah. And they're able to regain control versus a, a low buy round around the saved orb that was getting out of hand very quickly. Na'Vi may feel like, you know, we're, because we're making noise, Spirit know we're all here, but if Alexi's not throwing that util that was ultimately you know, inconsequential on the retake, Na'Vi would have had a far better chance of winning that round. Spirit were very scared of that heaven rotate. But yeah. regardless, 5-1. Absolutely, and it seems no matter what Na'Vi does, they just can't win a round. I mean, they had four players on B, they get the kills, right? Uh, 3v2 situation in the end, and yeah, they could have slow played it, you know, maybe even send one or two guys, like you said, sort of, I don't think Spirit would have expected the third player there and bait for him to try and win the round in the end, but... Chopper and uh, Shiro recover yet again. This was a timeout from Spirit, who have a lot of money, but Halley wanted to get a couple of words in. Just got to keep it composed right now, because Spirit, no shaky signs yet. No reason to stop believing. Got the AWP in A main now, and this is a nice change. Set up with Bit in the corner. Here's that A main take utility. It's not going to change much, though. Bit still playing anti. Zontek's on his own. Should be a dead right. man here. Yeah, he's got to hit that one. And yeah, wonderful will. Do they just pop into B now, knowing where the orb is? Oh, no one fires off that flash. Spirit are ready to go. Chopper smoked off, but that Ooh. opener, uh, I, that is wild. Oh, oh, just lays waste to the B side. Oh. One man army, I was going to say, if he can get the kill, Chopper can suddenly come through dark, but man, Chopper's not needed. Donk just deals with them both. Wonderful's holding the cross, but the bomb's been thrown over. He'll get you the two entries, and he'll plant the bomb as well. Sick. Sickening. It's not meant to be this easy. Dude, I think, you know, the, the part that just must really hurt for Na'Vi is they don't... They don't feel like they're doing lots wrong. It's just they're getting absolutely demolished by a very informed team spirit. It's a 5v4. They've got eyes on B main and Donk with no utility, with no help, just walks in and headshots two players. It's not supposed to be that easy. Yes. Yeah. I feel like I play against a Donk every face of the game. <laughs> yeah. IQ, that's what, uh. happens. that's what happens to me. But yeah, just, I mean, incredible. Completely dismantles the defense on his own. I don't even think, you know, the, the B players had any utility left in terms of an incendiary or a smoke, something to buy time for help to come in, right? Because once Wonderful shows himself and gets the kill in A main, you know that the reaction might come on B. Alexis shoulder peeking, kind of. Yeah, you know, right. Like, like he's not looking for that fight, but don't worry, Yanko. You know, don't. Oh, dude, that's the face of someone. Like that. Yeah. That is the face. That's my face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like he's literally not even trying to fight the guy. Don't worry, Yanko. Face and players are built different. When Dog was our, on our team, we got four rounds. So you know, <laughs> I'm, not even, I'm not even joking. Yeah, even true. he couldn't do this against you know random. Eastern European players. But he can do it against Na'Vi. He's an on Lana. Oh, out towards Dark, the Molly. Somewhat stifles the aggression, but not really. It's allowed Zontix to slip in there all the same. Still, Team Spirit don't want to get put in a box. They up and leave that after applying a great amount of pressure. They know they've done damage. They've used a lot of this B-Sites util and a cash-strapped round for Na'Vi. 
And so Spirit, they, they can feel how in control of it they are right now, this round and the game. They know they've whittled through basically everything Na'Vi have. They're going to split this site again. Resmoke up B-Long, that's big. It's again up to Donk. Oh no, what a shame. He's going to have to run through this on his own. There's a lot of damage done through this smoke, though, and forced out. Donk still finds that headshot. Nima's out of the uh, picture, backed up his Alexi, and Na'Vi must be considering save. It relies on Bit and the big flank for JL. They need to find some success on these flanks. Bit waiting out that smoke, soon to fade, and JL already saving. It's dead. It's done. He steps. He's gone. Bro, I feel like... I feel like Dong's like just breaking the game right now. He's 17, like last week. He's he's a week into 17. Oh, oh. Ah, it's awkward. He's a week into being 17 and he is destroying right now. That's all you're going to get, Na'Vi. Exits. Have them. I like this from Na'Vi, though, in a sense of, you know, it would reek of desperation if they tried to go for that retake. Still 7-1. They can rebuy here, uh, and they have, it's their pick. They have faith in their T side, right? Obviously, if it ends 11-1, not much hope going into the second half. But hey, if it ends 8-4, mm. you win the pistol, all of a sudden, 8-7, yeah. you're on T side of Anubis. Like, that's what Blade is saying during timeouts, or possibly how they're encouraging each other, right? It's looking pretty grim now, but we've seen them get some momentum on Ancient a little bit before, sort of that one final round that they needed to win to break Spirit didn't go their way. And it looks bad from the outside, right? But when you're on the server, you have to keep that faith, right? You have to believe in, in, in victory. And it's tough. It's not necessarily even Donk. Okay, that one round, he, he kills Alexi Jiggle peeking, but more than anything else, Team Spirit is playing mm. great Counter-Strike on a macro level. Yeah. It doesn't have to be Donk. You can put any other player there who's just going to go in when you need to go in. He doesn't need to get those two kills for them to win the round. Yeah. If he just creates space and dies, the trade is going to be there, right? So yeah, no, I mean, that, that, that was what, even what, you know, we were kind of saying in the moment was like, just kind of fighting the guys in the site was already enough to start drawing the attention away to allow the rest of that play to happen. No, I mean, you, you could just feel that, like, Chopper's having a whale of a time, man. He's loving it right now. <laughs> It just feels like there's no weak player on this roster when there has every reason to be, you know? An older in-game leader, inexperienced academy players. That's the thing also, you know, sure, they, they need some experience, but, you know, the fact that young players need, I don't know how much time to sort of get good or, or whatever, I, I don't really buy that too much. I think there's good and bad players, not necessarily young and old players. Mm. And you can tell that from, I mean, okay, Donk, let's say he's out of the world talent, but even Zontix, incredibly yeah. solid for such a young player in a sort of a tough role, right? Left to his own devices a lot of the time as an anchor. Yeah, he's only 18. Another B split. Yeah, that smoke goes into block and Na'Vi bit breathe a sigh of relief. Chopper tries his hand at lurking up through dark again, and this time is silenced now. That's all the util whittled nice. through. With Zontix falling to this main push, this looks more like it for Na'Vi. Three players left to get through. Magix, Shiro, and Donk lie in wait back at main. But for Na'Vi, this one isn't much of a guessing game. That push is allowed and freed up Whoa. an extra player to rotate on in. Gonna need something special here. And what's got oh. up for us? Just the one. Magix gonna get the trade at least. Two on three. Time. But very little time. They're not going to be able to oh. do this one. The clock will elude them. Na'Vi finally put another round up on the board. Oh, my God. At what cost, though? A shame. It feels like they could have tried to swing that together. And, and you know, if you both get the kills, the plant is available. You win the round. Na'Vi play it very well to line up in CT spawn, layered peaks. I, there's probably no chance Spirit can actually jump across. They have to fight their way, but they don't even give it a go. The time decides, and still Na'Vi lose almost all their players at the end of the round. So just getting enough to buy one more, but they are on the edge of reset if Spirit can continue. Considering that's a three on five, damn close. And I think this is where the 
game in its sense is decided if Spirit wins this round and, you know, there's not a massive save from Na'Vi. At that point, it's probably 9-2. And even if Navi wins this round, there's still buys there for Team Spirit. Mm. So they absolutely cannot afford to lose this round if you're Navi. And that previous round was great, you know, taking main control and then blocking. That's what Alexi was missing in that round, like a, a smoke to block that reaction that we saw from Spirit. And it worked much better this time around with Wonderful finding a kill in Dark. So they finally connect a good round on the side of Navi. You can see how Spirit immediately try to adjust to this though, right? They've got Zontix being far more active over towards main. He's kind of denied any idea of a push over towards yeah. this side of the map for now. Na'Vi still could go back for it a little later, but Spirit still keep it low and slow, burning through this Na'Vi util. We've seen this round. It gives Spirit both options. They can end A or B depending on you know what their Lurkers find or what their mid-presence finds. Right now, it's still stacked over on the B side, and Donk dies. It's more likely going to be camera to A. If Zontix dies, we're in trouble. But he takes two with him, and they can just run through the camera, eyes to the sky, Spirit can plant. And just when you think Na'Vi have put down the player that matters most, it doesn't. Spirit are in for another. Magix, even though he was loud on the rotate, still holds this line and is just able to delay Ema. Zontix then comes back in with his third kill in the round. The real saving grace for Team Spirit here when they lose that prong over towards the B site. He stands and delivers Ooh. on his own over at A. Wonderful. This save is not guaranteed. And they might even remove Alexi as well. You said a big save would be needed for Na'Vi if they were to lose this one. And they might never get the chance. It's just Alexi left. And Spirit are going for the throat. They're going for the jugular. They want to try and remove this gun. Ooh. Alexi, they're right here, but they're going to bypass him. It's it, it's whatever, you know, it's whatever. You're saving one gun. It's not a. It's not going to win you the round, given the way that Spirit are playing right now. And I don't just mean as individuals, but as a roster. I love that. Again, the options are just so open for Spirit with these defaults, with these really late mid takes. Na'Vi have tried playing aggressive mid. JL's been sniped. Bit's been cleared out at double doors. We're seeing Shiro screaming alongside Donk now the energy yeah, is infectious that's something that you definitely have to notice with this squad is it feels like uh, the the sort of energy that these youngsters have brought to the table is very much rub, rubbed off down the line right yeah. like you kind of when you bring Shiro into this team you're getting someone who's had a, a rough few years as far as it goes or you know at least a rough few months you can say and uh, and it feels like he's kind of embraced it magics has always felt like he's been a a good vibe kind of guy, if I'm honest. Him and Chopper are very chill. You know, yeah. there's plenty of room for uh, some screamers on this team. I think that was, though, a dream round from your T anchor, right? For Zontix, like putting pressure. And then when the CTs want to re-aggress, he just shuts, shuts it down completely. And I like the timeouts from Hell. It's, you know, even though they're up a lot, being able to finish them off, so to speak, means a lot like these rounds we see how fast they can get away from you with pistols so nothing left unsaid for team spirit here the play-in was swift and the group stage starts strong can they destroy navi that's the question these next few rounds will decide the answer I mean, it's it's really impressive in a sense of how few gaps there are in their game. Yeah. You know, like you're, you're watching this game throughout and you're not really seeing, oh, if this guy only pushed here, there was only an opening there. Mm. It, it seems that they're, they're ready for everything. They cover each other really well in round. Oh, oh this is good. Mid. Could get out of hand, but Shiro repels it. And so you needed him to deliver something like that. This round kind of hinges on him doing that. And he manages it, bit with the dual barrettes, oh. an immediate dink, but a trade from Donk. Well recovered. Alexi on the M4, swinging on out. The round's not done yet, 30 seconds, and Shiro is a long way away. He's wounded as well. Magix, who's had a bit of a free ride throughout this so far, hasn't been required to step up. Now thrust into the limelight. 
Has some util coming in that's going to cut off the camera rotation, or at least that's the design, but straight through it for Na'Vi, and only damage done. Shiro, 10 seconds, low on HP. He can't go for this. Yeah, I think the biggest incentive is not giving them the AWP, to be honest, this late in the half. Just keep it yourself. Of course, the bomb's still back at the bomb site, and they knew Alexi was close. Oh, nice shot on the way out. Got one gun saved at least, but you could tell from Magic's crosshair, even when he did damage to Ema, you know, didn't get a kill, immediately flicked down to the smoke. He was expecting the rifle, he knew it was behind it, but he just couldn't find either of the kills. If he could take down Ema, maybe Shiro would attempt. So, uh, yeah, the t you know, two of the three rounds, Navi won the pistol, the other two rounds that they win are rounds that are decided by the clock, but Spirit are very close to winning, 2v2s that they don't due to the time. So, bye-bye, well, not quite. It's Donk dead, actually. That's a change. I mean, Navi will take anything at this point just to give themselves some room to breathe in the second half. We were saying 8-4 yeah. on a pistol, mm. different story. They set up wonderful well there, with, or Ima rather, with a flash. It's a nice trade out for Alexi, making sure they're making moves, but eyes on the A site, that's where they need to be. It had great impact in that last round, but this one, he's just kind of missed the timings, right? Just looks away from main, right, as they creep in, and so he's already low. Suddenly, the emphasis is on JL to stand and deliver, and he just bows out of there. They're going to have to tee up for a retake here. They have the man advantage, so they've got that going their way at least. For Team Spirit, they can't just afford to dig themselves in here. They've got to take a bit of space, and they're looking to work that now over towards heaven. Where this crumbles is if Shiro isn't able to withstand the fights through camera or they lose the heavens and Chopper at least holds on, oh. but no reaction on the camera player. Shiro's got to hold on to main. He's got to keep his eyes about him. And there's one kill. Looks up to the heavens, but Alexi's played his hand and they know he's coming in through main. There just isn't time for Alexi B. Surely hops on the bomb now, but right. Chopper is here to deny it. And so it's 9-3 for Spirit on the back of the captain's 3K to close the half. Trust anyway. All the thieves dress as sheep tell you they know the way. So bite the hand that feeds you to the wolves as prey. on the page now they're pleading on the fifth and last mistake but i know that dirty secrets the game keep us all the keys to the gate only open for the pawns who sell their souls just to play i don't keep up with the fake we are not the same so go take your lies it's plastic and products left in the box with nothing to promise
This was supposed to be the toughest game that Spirit have had, not only so far, but perhaps on this side of the bracket. And right now, they're making their way through it without even breaking a sweat. 10 rounds for Na'Vi total across both these maps. As of right now, only three on the CT side of Anubis. As they move on to the T side, you're left wondering just how much more hope is there for Na'Vi? Will Spirit run away with this convincingly? They're looking pristine right now. You know, we I think we could guess that their ceiling was going to be high, but I'm impressed by high, how high their floor is already. The aggression spotted by Ima. And Spirit pulled back. They got three in mid right now. Looking to make a move in the mid round, perhaps go for a flank. RV will be coming back to them. So the fact that Spirit even keep this setup for this long is maddening. But as I say that, they peel away and Na'Vi move into the void. This is great timing for Na'Vi. It's going to be down to Donk, though, on a temple rotate. Think he's up for it? Let's see. I mean, he's certainly more than willing to throw himself into the fight here. Fake Visually from Na'Vi. Ema trying to sell a bit of a, a B-fake with Temple Smoke, support. A lot of flash. movement. Yeah, panic. Spirit really react to that, and there's no push on the back of it. Shiro going to rotate. I didn't imagine he would wow. up and leave completely. This is crazy. They're realizing, surely, they're realizing there's not a single, there's just one smoke. That's it. I can't believe he runs back out in the middle like everything was going to be fine. There's a trade back from Zontix, but more men Ooh. in mid. Ema oh. fires off immediately and Donk taps back. We somehow end up at a three on three, even though that fake looked like it would work wonders. It still gets close, but Na'Vi will take the pistol. Drop a cooling for an uh, immediate rotate around or... Whoever for Team Spirit, and that one leaves them very out of position as Na'Vi move in. And I think if you're Na'Vi, you're even surprised at just how well that worked. Yeah, that's like still deadly close on a retake. Comes down to a 1v2. You wonder if Shura just anchored. We've seen a couple of those today. If Shura just held his spot in the A side, he could have definitely gotten away with a multi-kill with Julie's and close A main. We've seen that a thousand times. But Na'Vi, hey, it's basic, but it works wonders. They pulled the wall over Team Spirit's eyes, and we may have a game after all. T-Side Anubis is a very nice place to be. And that seems that, like, maybe the one thing that you could punish Spirit for is over-rotating. We saw that on Asians as well, even though they won uh, that round. And in general, you know, when you're losing big to an extent, the other team that they're playing with a lot of confidence, they are going yeah. to move around the map more. So you have to use those mini fakes or just, you know, fakes in general to get them out of position. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the other side to it, right? It's like, would that call have been the same if this was a far closer game? Probably not. Please win this one, Na'Vi, please. Zontix is Deagle, is already making Na'Vi nervous. It's really the, the only big ticket item here alongside Donk as well. Zontix gets that spot out in mid. There's the mow down. Ema restores a bit of normality. Some damage done off this dig, but can't finish the job to wonderful. And so now for Donk, it's just kind of a damage dealing mission. Backstab is in for Magix. They try to give him time. They've whittled Ema down so low over here in the mid doors. Ooh, the spam makes you nervous. But Ema oh. should be good to withstand it. Ooh. That's God. nearly a collateral. He I mean, he them. did hit him through the doors. Bloody hell. Stop. There's even luck going his way now. What happens when that's the case, man? Ema must be terrified, but at least he gets out with his life. And Na'Vi successfully withstand the double deeg of Team Spirit. 
I, I mean, that was Zontix was spamming his Deagle. One more bullet connecting would have been wonderful dead. Like, that round shouldn't be even interesting. It shouldn't even be worth talking about. But Spirit find a way. Na'Vi closing the gap. Baby steps one at a time. That's all you can tell yourself. Got a full buy coming through for Team Spirit. It's lacking the orb for now. Seems like a mirror game to what we saw on Ancient, right? Like yeah. a lead for Spirit, but Navi wins the pistol. Perhaps there's a chance. Psych. We'll see if the ending can be different to Ancient, but so far looking pretty similar. Oof. Yeah, lovely nade early on. And a great candidate to have been hit by it as well if your Spirit JL softened up. He's the one who's actually had like a a good series across the board. Taking the pep out of his step is nice for Team Spirit. They're double layered here with Zontix and Shiro. Flying two towards main and they are about to have a test come their way. Bit usually very proficient here. And he's even got support. A second man in Alexi B. Oh, these nades. It looks to move in, but ends up getting locked out. Bit usually fantastic here, but it's Zontix to get the better of him. And so now Na'Vi need answers elsewhere. Donk down in dark. This smoke a little ways away from fading. Spirit, I feel the pressure to go on any sort of aggro here. They have this one man pushed up in main and he just drops the smoke. Big. Zontix, very smart with this real estate man. After winning this double, he's kind of longed it out for as long as he can with no util net down. And now he's dropped this smoke in. He slows the push. They're going to try and break it to get past him. Only damage to JL. But now they know this play's coming in at A. Well played to break, right? They don't wait. They don't allow Zontix to play that on his own timing. They're in the sight now. Shiro waiting for the big flank in no hurry to force these kills. Magic's will. Bomb's going down, but this smoke is actually a problem for Na'Vi as they get spammed right through it. Wonderful needs a clutch, and he might be good for it. Five in the back! Oh! Four kills for Wonderful. Navi are here to play. A name we haven't had to say much yet, but what a way to arrive. Wonderful has landed in Katowice, and it's on his back that they find that. Oh, for Spirit, that one's like a gut punch. They thought they'd won the round. They thought they'd done enough, but dancing around default, Wonderful. What a display. That's sick. It was about time. Absolute filth yeah. from Wonderful. I mean, those are the rounds that can Ooh. sometimes re-energize the team, right? They remind you kind of what you're capable of. And so if we get Wonderful switching on, if that's the late activation of Na'Vi, this one could get a hell of a lot more interesting. They've still got a partially bought spirit to go up against here. We've seen these rounds get close before. Will that be the round that re-energizes Na'Vi and brings them back into this series? Rage by for Donk, I love it. M4 around pistols, but it might be avoided here. It's rotating through the temple. Na'Vi are taking a main. Alexi's got a lot to contend with here in mid. He may have the gun for the job, but two players tucked in, plus that M4 range getting closer, and it spams him down. Guns gifted to Team Spirit, and a round worth considering, even without the kits. Brutal. That made is brutal. Softens them up as they move through camera. And even though there's dinks down range, it's looking nice and clean for Na'Vi. Alexi, the only casualty, the late lurk up through mid from Ema. Really does drive this one home. It's a Na'Vi round all day long. And so back to the drawing board for Team Spirit as rifles await them in the next. Shiro will be able to afford an all, but not too much utility to go along with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that round from, from Wonderful really rejuvenates a squad, right? Like a big moment. Usually it was happening to you. Now you're doing it to them. And this is the last time out for Spirit. You know, I was praising Halley for uh, using them in the first half to make sure you get a lot of rounds. But this is going to be it for regulation. The last time he'll be able to speak to his team unless Navi takes a time out of their own. 
So we'll see. I mean, so far, nothing really to talk about all too much, right? They had a 4v1 that they just didn't convert. They played the round well. So perhaps at this moment, just sort of reminding the players about what they talked about in the pregame, you know, what is it that Navi likes to do? Make sure they're still focused and able to close out this game. It's so great to see those rounds from Wonderful Man, especially with, you know, the, the boots uh, that he has to fill. Zorping has been incredible. And his rifling is as well, but Donk will show up on Ema outside of the B site. <laughs> Alexi just eats that flash. Takes a certain intuition to know which flashes are info flashes and which ones are opponents pushing with them. He doesn't fire to reveal his position. Bomb is still outside of B. It hits the smoke. He still gets away with a kill. Something to be said for that. Zontix has been solid in A main yeah. on both halves. I mean, that's a fight that's so often been going Zontix's way, right? So do we even kind of see bit approach that with the confidence? Like he thinks he can win it instead of going slow. He doesn't respect the smoke. He goes straight through, looks to challenge the guy who's been kind of the, the, the bane of his existence on that side of the map. And so now Team Spirit, desperate Please. times, calling for desperate measures. Oh, he Storm. Set in the back of the site, and one more player here, but Chopper's smoked off the nades. They might think this is clear now because they get that kill. Magic's one from him. Can he find any more as he's trapped in this smoke? He oh. spams out another. Chopper reigns in from CT, and now it's Alexi's time to clutch. Swinging on out, Chopper dead. Magic's low on health. He sees the barrel, but Alexi's gone, and it's Magic's from nowhere with three kills in at the back of the site. A smoke. Spam, his fingers crossed, and that's team spirit on double digits. Donk's death has never been so helpful in a round. It's exactly as you put it, right? They molly, they'd only seen one player, they nade, it kills, and everyone looks away. Everyone pulls nades out, the bomb in hand. Magix is able to spam out a second as well. Three kills to close it for team spirit. And right when you think Na'Vi are energized, invigorated off of a massive clutch, spirit put them back down. Lethal injection. It really is like ancient, isn't it? Because now, <laughs> like, we've hit that point where Na'Vi started to build hit back him. into yeah. it. And, and now, they're, now suddenly we're at a real turning point round. But like they're all in here. If, if Na'Vi lose this one... If we're truly ancient... Then they'll yeah. equal the next. Then yeah. And then and then what? Then they're buying they and they need five in a row. Yeah. If it's we're truly, probably a done deal. Yeah. Spirit have to win three more and it's and it's over. And I... Win. Yes. yes. I, that's, that's how it works. Yes. But that was breath. <laughs> but then it'll really be like ancient. Uh, right now, I feel like nothing's going to stop that. We need another heroic play out of a Na'Vi player. Could it be this tag team, bit and wonderful, back in A main, B stack. And wow, the fake has worked against them, but I don't think they'll bite twice. And they're even going to get aggressive. Chopper, if he clears this completely, as Ima pulls away, I think he got spotted there. So now Na'Vi know their fake hasn't worked. And how will that change the outcome of the round? They're still going to pop in A main. Zontix dodges the flash. Bit still wins that engagement again. Here's the split. One man on the side. Shira's got to hit some bangers. They're getting closer, and he is overwhelmed. Donk throwing himself around the corner. Has to save the round. Ooh. The shotgun from across the map. And Magis closes the distance as he jumps away. Oh. He can't close the round. Na'Vi barely, by the skin of their teeth, find an eighth. Yeah, but the dream is carried forward, right? The, the, the embers of this game are not yet extinguished. Na'Vi are now in with the chance. And once more, it's Bit, who really across these last few rounds has found a lot of impact over here at main. Magis his clutch with the, with the auto shotgun just cut down in its prime. I mean, these A setups just haven't been working for, for Spirit outside of that first gun round yeah. where Zontix got a double kill, right? That's where Navi has been finding an advantage. Even though Shiro is there for a double setup, it's just not been that great so far. And Spirit will have to have find an answer for that. You know, I, I wonder if in the next round the call will be a fast B play from Navi, right? I think that would be a good change of pace. 
But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Still an M4 on Donk in this round. Shiro with an MP9. A kit on Donk as well. <laughs> Trying to be the guy peeking in. Oh, he almost gets it. Lexi jiggling for a reaction. Good check from the in-game leader. And Donk going back, Chopper going forward. Passed with this one-on-one. -on -one. There's no util supplementing this. So he's got to win it out on the close range. He can't. And now this A split comes in. Just Whoa. a solo rifle. Surely no chance for Donk. He'll take a kill, but this is still Na'Vi edging closer and closer to an even score line. I would love a, love a kill here in middle. Make that orb money. Lost bonus is maxed. He's going to have it regardless. Magix is here. If only he had a kit. Or an auto shotgun, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, turning it back to Shiro is ballsy, but this does mean Magix is dead. I guess that never gets calmed along. Shiro, good for one in mid, and now can look to grab that AK. That's a nice little save for Spirit, at least, but this gap is well and truly closing up. And so we had some questions, right? You wanted to see Team Spirit, when they're getting tested, when the game gets close, are they able to dust themselves down and pick themselves right back up? Because right now, Zontix, while he was stellar in that first half, and he even found some early successes over here towards A, as you highlighted, Yanko, he's been a kind of persistent opener for Na'Vi, and this A site is starting to crumble under the weight of the Na'Vi T side. What's the adjustment gonna be? The task now falls to Chopper to try and piece this one together. And Na'Vi are becoming more and more aware as to this A main position being a problem for Spirit. So this is where the mind games pick up again. And it's not going to be a fast uh, B play from Na'Vi. Magus can donk her there, just opening default. Instead, it's a more heavy alien from Spirit because of all the A main problems, but it's a delayed B hit from Navi. The Uto with Niska out soon. Donk's in the open, they come swinging out of main. Magic's blinded, also the same problem, and this is a brutal execute for Navi. They take two heads and they take the round just like that. Very well done, akin to how Spirit did it as well on their T side. A lot of pressure on Dark, players looking the wrong way, and then just running out long. Yeah, just a delayed B hit, right? It's to be expected that Spirit was going to put more focus on A side, A main, right? Also because most most of the times when Navi hits A, there's also players mid, right? It's never just like a full four or five guys going A main. So a great way to change it up from Alexi B. Spirit does save three weapons, though. They will be able to buy in the next round. That's oh. a sick play for Hima. Two weapons, and it's maybe even going to get worse. Shiro just tuck in, resist that voice in the back of your head telling yeah. you to peek, and he will get out with the AWP. Double digits, even game now. And Na'Vi certainly favorite, just given off of the momentum they have. A fantastic T-side. One round to show for Spirit. To think this game might have been over if it wasn't for Wonderful pulling out that 1v4. So now I think Spirit is going to try to do something aggressive, right? Like them laying back hasn't really worked. So let's see if Na'Vi is ready for that. I'm getting stressed. Oh, run boost. Wonderful uses it to drop down Donk. Crazy. He's here so much faster than yeah. anyone's expecting. And so Donk, timing's throwing off. That peak goes the way of the AWP. Shiro at least reigns out to find an equalizer, find the 4v4. They're going to leave JL down in dark. Meanwhile, Wonderful did leg it back, and he did that loud. So Team Spirit can't go thinking dark is clear, or else they're going to award JL with a kill. Oh, dear. Those footsteps appear to have really sold Team Spirit. Bit now waiting Love, back in yeah. main, and another one of these kills going his way over Zontix. The head-to-head -head between these two having flipped around massively. Chopper likely already calling for a save here. Wants this round over. He wants it done now. He wants three guns to get out of it. And not even that's guaranteed. That kill, yeah, I wonder if that entices them back in. It, it would feel 
a little desperate with how out of position they are, but the bomb's still not down yet. They're making good timing on this rotate. Hey, yeah, definitely look at this one now. Finding Alexi and Spawn looking the wrong way. Bit has won his fight with Zontix, but he has to do so much more. Tucked in in heaven, he goes for the swing. Chopper, the round rests on that kill, and he keeps it active. Two on two, Shiro was already saving. He's drawn back into the round, but JL has a powerful post plant position. Chopper's going to lead the way, low HP on the AWP, and he swings out heaven. It's an easy kill for JL. Just Shiro, oh. a missed shot from Wonderful, the hero that kick-started this whole comeback, now thrust into a 1v1. It's down oh. to the pistols, and Wonderful holds the line. Another clutch from this guy, and that sees Na'Vi now take the lead from a 1v4 to kick-start the comeback in the first place to now a clutch 1v1 versus Shiro to take the lead for Na'Vi and save the day in a round that felt done a long time ago. Easier said than done. That is the clutch king of Katowice, the second highest clutcher in Katowice history of Shiro. Only falling 10 behind Zip, who has double the maps played and a wonderful locks it in. I also love that run boost play out of spawn. He is so fast for after being flung over the mid molly, down window into Dog. That's quicker than anyone could have ever been there if they went the canal route. Donk is completely caught off guard. We saw him getting frustrated the round before. This one is slipping through Spirit's fingers. Wonderful cracks it open and wonderful closes it out. Oh, now we return to this horrific head to head over in Maine. This time, Zontix realizes the only way to win this game is not to play, and so he doesn't give up that early fight. Not yet, anyhow. Alexi, even though he kind of opened the door to that retake in the last round, he's been finding a lot of room over here in middle, and that's given Na'Vi so many options. It's made these A splits so lethal, and even in the B rounds, just the passing fear that he's doing this in mid has always kept players for spirit here. Oh, the spam, but there's two players. It doesn't matter. Chopper assists Donk with that kill, and there's still Alexi low, and they know about him. 30 seconds, destined to be an A hit, but this dark flank could be massive. The question is, how long does Wonderful hold on to it? They're starting to activate. They won't commit. And actually pulling back through Beach instead is Donk for that safe A rotation. Spirit know exactly what's going on. They've got no nades. They have to win every fight. Zontix on the swing. It's only damage as once again he's gained the better of. But it's Donk to lay them up with two. Concealed in at the back of the site is Chopper. Round in the palm of his hand. And with that kill there, it's stripped away. Equalized out at 11 all. A big 2k from Donk who delivers when the pressure is on. And it tees up Chopper to finish the the round yeah. a tie game again and that's the opposite for Zontix right he's feeling cr he's feeling like he's crumbling under the pressure another a main swing pre-fire mp9 misses completely thank goodness he's done enough damage for donk to recover a spray like that and a well-read situation by, by team spirit after navi amass a massive comeback in this game and the key there was just a main again right yeah. this time they're able to sort of delay the take do damage and we'll see this is the final timeout for Navi as well. So it will be up to the players in this last two rounds to get it done. I think critically as well, Spirit found a lot of success on the extremities to like open the round, right? Like as mentioned, Alexi's been very annoying over in middle and he had a teammate there to support him, but they actually did a lot of damage to Alexi. They dealt with his buddy over in mid and to suddenly, where they only have to worry about main, who knew it, but holding the A site gets that much easier. Well, nothing gets easier at 11 or one mistake puts you down in that lower bracket. Drags you potentially to a third map. Early B nades from Navi, but that doesn't really bait all that much utility from Spirit. So that gives them an early advantage when it comes to utility. Magic is end, uh, begging them to end B with that auto shotgun. But it's just been A hit after A split for Navi. The exception that one round Ema just busts in with two kills on that B bomb site. 
Bit, who the numbers are only 12 and 18, but the head to head is favorable without a doubt in this T side. Yeah, and it's the impact those kills have had, right? It's how often he's been able to crack open the A site. It's been so valuable to Na'Vi. How do they fare here going into Donk and the auto shotgun, even with Chopper with assisting utility on this B bomb site? coming in through dark. That smoke is yet to fade, but the bomb is outside of long as well. This is seeming like the end goal for Na'Vi. Yeah, Chopper still has a damn near full belt of util. He's missing the smoke, but the molly could prove real valuable as Main gets re-smoked now at the 40-second mark, and Molly to fall up in towards Dark. Donk's Molly down into the open, but that counter Molotov into Dark denies any immediate punish. And Alexi, you madman! He could have the round on a silver platter right here. With Chopper falling, this B holds down to two. Alexi's gonna break this smoke, but they hear that. Magix turns and deals with it. Donk, this is the moment. He has to deliver now. They're in his bomb site, and it's just the one kill. Shiro and Zontix in a two versus three. The him? money is on the line for oh! Team Spirit. And it just might end up falling apart here. If Shiro goes for this and comes up short, they've got nothing up against Na'Vi's 12. And so he can't justify it. Na'Vi on the back of this B play on the wings of a 3K from JL. They reach map point with the promise of sending us to Mirage. And Team Spirit will not have the funds to battle back. Keeping this AWP in play is paramount. It's going to be the best thing they have in this next round. And so they manage that at least, but not exactly size of relief on the back of that. Again, I want to say, like, it, all the attention was on that hit with Alexi flanking and the shotgun and Donkin backside, who can only get a kill, but Wonderful found a crucial entry, jumping over the smoke for info and spamming out Chopper, who had a rifle in the B-bomb site. That was the breaking point in for Na'Vi. Wonderful's impact in this game has been unbelievable. It's overtime, or it's a third map. It's Ooh. Mirage. And it's a complete change out of Na'Vi, straight towards B early. And I don't think there's a way that Spirit turtles again, right? They're going to try to push for info at some point this round. Well, there won't be long to wait, because Na'Vi look ready to explode. JL coming in from dark, no nades to be primed. Donk drops his Molotov, but they're ready to go. Yeah, once more, it's Donk and Magic, so I have to stand and deliver. One kill from the shotgun, one kill from Donk. But as we saw, one kill wasn't enough for this guy last time. Just buying time for the rotates is already big. Oh, Chopper falls, dear. Donk can't quite turn in time, and it's only Zontix left standing. His game started to fall apart in main, and now he's thrust into a 1v2 while he's feeling ice cold. He was the first wheel to fall off the wagon for Team Spirit. And so expecting him to 1v2 here, surely this is asking too much. If he's weighing out the smoke with no kit, he's hoping and praying. There's no way he's got to go through. Na'Vi, after a 9-3 down half, have clawed this game back well and truly. Mirage is our battleground for the finale, and Zontix is simply out of time and out of luck. What a game for Na'Vi, right when you're ready to write them off. They pull a monstrous game on the T side of Anubis, and we will have to end this on the third. When I see Shiro, was one of the tough opponents that I played against. Yeah, when it comes to Shiro, that's a completely different beast. Like, Shiro is so reliable. After the Vice, he's probably the second most reliable AWP there is. Every single move he does, it's a safe move. So I'd compare even Shiro with Jane, for example, but Shiro is a little bit more solid, in my opinion. When Cloud9 was playing super well in CSGO, it was absolutely incredible how many shots he was hitting. Like, there wasn't many misses in the game, and he's just a very, very smart and capable player. And now he's playing with Donk, so yeah, that, that's a 
a good combination to have right there. I think Shiro's move is a really good move. It could be positive trajectory in his career, playing with both Dunk and Chaba, who I also rate like really highly. And I also think it's always a dream to play around a guy that creates so much space as, as Dunk does. We don't really know how much of a gap he leaves for Shiro, but I think Shiro will naturally like float into that gap. I think he's really good at that. That's what he's done the best previously, is just like do what he needs to do and just play after plans on the T side like really well and trade really well with the off so it's gonna create a lot of good scenarios. When it comes to Shiro's emotions and how he's feeling during the games, it's very hard to say from outside, but controlling our emotions during a match, being able to let go of rounds you, you really wanted to win but didn't go your way, is a very important thing. I do think that Shiro does that pretty well though, even though he's showing uh, some emotions. He's such a strong player that you, I almost don't see him getting off a match because of it. I've always like had a belief in him and in, in how he does things. I think it's it's a good way of doing things. I think he's, he's gonna go do a lot of things in his career. He was like always stepping ahead of everyone. And if he will do it like in the right way in CS2, he will be like top three for sure. Yeah, sometimes it's a stumble, but uh, also sometimes just a trip. Either way, the trip was here on Anubis, and it does go the way of Na'Vi. Very close, all the way down to the wire, all the way down to the very end. Nonetheless, yeah, they stay alive in the series and push us into third, and uh, I'm, I'm obviously welcoming you back to the Intel Extreme Masters, aren't I, Josh? You are indeed. Yeah, that is us on the desk here. 13-11 um, for Na'Vi. Honestly, when we were looking at the first half of this, I did not see this coming. It looked like Navi was pretty flat. They were doing their static defenses that we, you know, anticipated on the desk at, before the match went live. And it didn't look like they really brought anything new to the table for this map. They were getting split on. There was so much map control for Team Spirit. They were able to work all these fakes around. And then it's just like, okay, a one versus four gets you guys off. I mean, you know, the start that, that's what started the whole comeback, right? We're, we're yeah. talking about it was a wonderful. moment that, that spins the entire game. Well, you, you go with that one? I didn't say anything. What are you oh, I about? see your face. I see what's happening here. I see a man who's proud of himself. No, I mean, he definitely did jumpstart the, the return. Changed the whole game. He yeah. changed the whole game, not just because he won this incredible round that kind of uh, precluded Spirit to be in that 10 to 5 lead position, but just that's the moment where Navi started to look alive on the server. That's yeah. the moment they started to get activated, to get animated. They cannot believe it themselves. And after this, you start seeing what we like about Navi like a little bit more working together, taking map control together, giving each other utility. Bit is starting to find a couple openings on the A side as well. The late rounds are well played from Navi, but it is truly in the head. Prior to this moment from Wonderful, Navi had not played this series, they had not effectively played the Garden best of three, but this started everything. Yeah, they were definitely flat before this, and this revitalized them, but at the same time as it revitalized them, it kind of deflated Spirit a little bit. We didn't see the same sort of spirit from Team Spirit. They were nice. a little bit more sad, they were a little bit more afraid to... They were missing. They were missing shots. Donk was, like, whiffing sprays. Yeah, sure, like, from backside to pizza, it's mm -hmm. a well, medium range or so, but... That's something that he's traditionally getting. Just say from backside to pizza? Backside to pizza, yeah. You wouldn't get it, like you, a cold you time? get it, Maniac. You it's, like a, it's like an NA call? Pizza. I think uh, I think you call it flowers or something. It's a close corner jail, maybe, perhaps. Pizza. Close All right. Pizza. It's say, in the shape of a slice of pizza. I've got, I'm going to be calling pizza with my friend, be like all cultured. Like, you know, that's how we do it over in NA. Cultured, yeah. That's how we do it over in yeah, NA. NA culture, culture, you know? yeah. That's what they're saying about yeah, the NA so players. They're just cultured. Very cultured. Let's look at the rounds. Let's get into the, the nitty gritty, Maniac. Let's start with about round 10. Round 10. Well, I think there's my buddy over there who wanted to do okay. it, but I can kickstart it. I mean, well. if you Just want play, to. Whatever. Like, but I don't it. think the piece of technology was quite working. So That's this okay. would be like a full screen over you guys. We're going to mm -hmm. cover your little eyes and talk about Counter-Strike here and there. Or I could also just mime. I could do it then. Just kind anyway. of draw it out verbally, and we'll just see. I thought you were going to um, tell me to do like mentally, like telepathy. Yeah, see what you're yeah, See, all I had to do was <laughs> just it. bring the telepathy. Josh, talk me through this round. Yeah, so basically what we see here is Team Spirit's got all of Canal's control. And what they're going to do is because they have control of Canal's and they've also pushed back middle a little bit. The static defenses from Navi here, right now they have 3B and 2A. We're going to see Spirit moving together. They're going to first do a little bit of a, you know, hey, we're over at B, come look at us. Maybe we're here. And maybe we're here. And then after that, they're going to be like, wait, no, we're going to smoke Psych. A main. 
we're actually A, <laughs> then they're actually going to move together towards B. But because we see Na'Vi doesn't really have any map controller space, we see right now in the middle of the map, Alexi B is like, oh, is it A? Okay, so he's going to pick up A. JL's coming. He's going to help clear mid. What's going on? They're just so passive across the map here that by the time they're able to get a figure of what's going on, Spirit's already moving to mm. towards B. They're all together. They're still keeping... Look, we see Alexi B still rotating all the way through the beach. This long rotation. He's super scared of mid being compromised. He doesn't know what's going on. They get info A main. Wait, it's just one guy here. It's too late. Alexi B is on his way back to B, but here comes the hit. Dong's coming through E box. He goes Ooh. down, but the rest of his team's here, and they're going to... Get rid. They're, well, Zontex yeah. is going to get these two at A, and then it's like, well, we're actually going back camera because we took mid and faked you out. And we talked about it a lot. Like, this is a very Navi-esque way to play Counter-Strike on the CT side. Could be Blade-esque, but I, I'm going to put a pin on that one because I'm not sure. But the whole, like, let's play default. Like, let's play default CT side. We trust in each other. We, we stay in the dark. The fog of war doesn't matter. We're going to do 3-2, and we trust that everybody is able to have that defense. That wasn't the case. It, it was really static, too static. They got faked out a million times, as you pointed out. Explain why we had such a very clear and one-dimensional first half. But explanations are what we like around here. We like to kind of explain and, for it. and kind of see what's going on here and also understand it. Maybe we get a little bit more of an understanding. Shox has caught up with Navi during this break. It's going to be close game. Yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, just got uh, talking to Blade there after that win. He told me, I actually thought that we were going to win 2-0, so a bit shell-shocked in that department, but he thinks they really found their footing now. They are fired up a lot more, and they are going to win that third map, but they, he still thinks it is going to be very, very close. So, Anubis, I mean, we talk about it being close. That did get very close. We also, we, we also have to, like, kind of culminate the series. We go to Mirage. And it's very interesting because on paper, I think it's an excellent map for Spirit. Right? I think Dong himself has already shocked a few people on that map, like wide swinging out mid, taking the duels the way he liked to do. But what makes this so tantalizing is the, the context. Right? We're talking about a Spirit who were about to win 2-0, mm -hmm. about to punch their ticket to the next stage in that upper bracket. And now suddenly you, you lose a silly 1v4, and suddenly you lose a couple of frags, a couple of rounds, and you're looking at map three. And then if you really look at Dong's POV from the very last, say, three rounds, it's a little less precise. It's a little less fierce. And he, he's a human like anybody, and he's got these moments where, hey, hold on a second, like, are we going to lose this game? And are we waiting to see what's going to happen on Mirage? Because if we see the full force of the beast, no problem for Spirit. They can handle it. But I, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Uh, you know, I, I want to say maybe unsung hero, but perhaps we can sing some praises there for JL, too, on the side of Navi. You know, I think he definitely did his part within that map, Josh. Yeah, it definitely few standout moments for sure, especially on the T side there. I mean, their CT side was looking kind of flat and, and looked like nothing was really going for them. But T side JL, yeah, he was Ooh. hand in hand with Wonderful. So we're going to look to them to do something special. He saved them a couple of times. I mean, yeah. one of the last rounds as well, they are frags who basically decide the fate of the round. We're talking about a, a half second. It's Dong finding a kill behind that pillar and then Jail who swings out finds him as well. That peak from CT spawn, Jail is the one striking. So even if he didn't have astronomical numbers, he like good ones, the impact was felt. So Josh, I don't necessarily need a long explanation. I just need to know who you have now at this point, at this stature of the... the uh, You're series. telling me you don't want a long explanation from me? Yep, that's okay. kind of what I was going um, for. I, I like how Spirit's been playing. I think they've brought the Spirit, and it's looking good. They've got the confidence, and this is the style that fits their map. That was a short that, answer. That, that was good. That, that, see, that, that was, was what I wanted. Yeah. That was what I was looking for, man. It's, it's like you've done this a lot. Anyway, look, let's go ahead and go to a break. And when we do that, we're going to come back. We're going to find out who settles the score on Mirage and who will be going forward in that upper bracket. They're going to either be stacked up against... Uh, that of Complexity or Apex, which is also going on, uh, I think, somewhere soon right behind me. Nonetheless, we go to that break, we come right back. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike! Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. 
Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Yeah, I mean, Katowice has got to be, have a very special place because that's where the... Uh... That's where the, the legacy was born. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, my career started, right? So that's... So it's just, does it always kind of feel uh, extra special when you're in that same hotel? You're looking at the same kind of, you know, the same bright yellow walls and the carpet. You're like, I know, I, this is where I make history, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, in, in a sense, yes. But at the same time, been like many months even, mm. like in, in this hotel, the same, same place True. and everything. I, it's kind of unlucky that we're always here at this time of the year where it's kind of like dark outside, zero degree weather. Yeah. Like it would be nice to have like a summer here uh, one time, one but I don't Just think one. it's going to happen, but yeah, yeah no. I, I'll, it's always like special this time of the year, same hotel, same everything. Yeah. It's like a kind of a ritual now yes. uh, every year. And um, when you think about Katowice as well, like is, is it kind of seen by everyone in that same way as like a kind of a, uh, a prestigious kind of major Cato Cologne. Do you have that in a different, in a separate category, Valerie? Is that in terms of tournaments you want to win, tr trophies you want to lift? Uh, obviously, major is like more yeah. than this one, but this is the very like high class of tournaments, mm. and uh, I didn't want the Katowice mm. from the whole IM. I mean. These big tournaments. You're collecting like Thanos stones. <laughs> you know, just yes, and they want to win Katowice, but I very like uh, the Cologne, mm. and I very I, I. My desire is to take like major in Cologne. I want Cologne major, but I don't know where, when it will. Be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Cologne's not. So you wait. Yeah. Okay. He's got his maybe, plans. Maybe someday. Felt like a full commitment. They're committed to this. They'd used all their Utsu, and they had. And it had forced that rotation, which opened the door for Sassanito, and that kill that he gets onto JT, coming back, understanding that that full commitment hasn't actually followed through towards B just yet, essentially winning them the round. So impacts right there as Apex get on the board with their first. Yeah, and I mean, as you... more difficult if it wasn't for that 20 seconds of time bought by the uh, scavenged JT smoke. So there's the first, Apex on the board. Well, with that save, you can see Complexity are playing the long game. Still with a bunch of residual cash. Halzo will bring out the AWP. But now they need to be very aware of these type of lurks throughout. We know Sassanito can do it over towards A, middle. We saw it to great effect yesterday against Big. And this time round, well, that's exactly where he is. Might even get himself a head-to-head -head against the likes of Grimm, who's just backpedaled over towards the elevator room. 2-1-2 two, two, split of the defences. But uh, the best flash in the world there from Grimm went behind the box. Still gave him enough to be able to go for a peek, but stifled in middle and... All right, they will deal with Sassanito, the hero of the last, down. Yeah, Halzerk, he's fired off a warning shot. Oh, and they clear the smoke. Find the ore part. JT very stubborn on this forward position. Slipping into short. Jacob trying to be the difference maker. Is Grim capable? Yes, he is. Lingers in the off angle. Jacob unprepared for it. Four for... Last map, Team Spirit have it all come undone towards the very end. On the other side, Na'Vi picking up some steam and now redetermined, refocused. For the Spirit squad, we wanted a test. And well, with plays like this coming through from guys like Wonderful, what a map he just had to put Na'Vi back on the map. That's where it all began for Na'Vi, and you have to give them props, man, for their resilience. It was looking grim in that first half of Anubis. It looked like ancient all over again until that clutch happened. Really put some energy back into the Na'Vi squad, and it was a great T side, great calling from Alexi B, great execution from the players. Another clutch from Wonderful against Shiro towards the end of that map, and we get to Mirage, and now we're going to find out a little bit more about Team Spirit, right? Like, they've been pushed to their limit. Do they have the stamina for this, you know? Do they have the mental fortitude after 
having such a big lead on Anubis and not being able to close it out 2-0 to still consolidate themselves and put up a good fight on Mirage. It's certainly an unknown quantity for Na'Vi, only having played this map twice with this roster. The last time they did prior was with Blade. But uh, the results are good at least. Wins over G2 and NIP. We'll have to see if that holds strong as we enter one of, well, the statistical best map for Team Spirit. Yeah, 10 wins on a row, uh, 10 wins in a row here for Team Spirit. So no strangers to the streets of Mirage. I mean, this series has been a roller coaster all over. It's just nice to see Na'Vi have some fight in them. And we're gonna get a restart on that one. So a little bit more time to talk this one over. Yeah, you know, they say the closest losses are the ones that are kind of the hardest to stomach. Spirit haven't lost the whole series yet, but there is a world where being within one round of it is, uh, is, is as close as it comes for this Spirit squad. I do like that we're going to have now some real emphasis from, you know, Hallie and Chopper having to try and Keep the keep the team in it, right? Get them off to a good start. Build that confidence back up because you could tell the, the wind had kind of left their sails a little bit towards the tail end of Anubis. I think for specific players more so than as a unit, right? I think you could tell Zontix was maybe having a bit of a rough go. It, even the way he tried to approach that final 1v2 back on Anubis yeah. was uh, just a little off compared to what we're used to seeing from the guy. I mean, he was coping, really. He was no kit, waiting behind two smokes, spamming the smokes like when Na'Vi were going to give it to him. But uh, never to be an opportunity blundered, fumbled maybe for Spirit on that previous map. So let's see how mentally they recover going into a third. And it's steely-eyed JL staring you down. Current top performer for Na'Vi in the series. He's had a great one so far, but there's more to do. And I think without a doubt, you know, for Spirit, more options on Mirage, right? We said, we saw how the problem is mm. for them on the CT side, that they were really turtling up in the bomb sites, not too many moves they went for, not too many that you can go for on Anubis, just the nature of the map. So I think they'll be more in their comfort zone on Mirage, right? Where you have a lot more op options, you can be always mobile. You can even dictate a little bit of the pace, even from the CT mm. side at times. Lest we forget Ima and his performances on Mirage, right? Like, this is his playground. He has been a little bit quiet, perhaps. It, it has been wonderful uh, stealing the show for Na'Vi, especially when it comes to Anubis. So this would be a great moment for Ima to sort of step up and, and, and lead the way for Na'Vi. All right, then, hopefully for real this time. It's the third and final map. Team Spirit versus Na'Vi and Spirit coming off the back of getting comebacked in that last one. They got to dust themselves down, pick themselves up. And coming to this with their heads held high, it's going to be an A lean in the pistol. Good chunk of util split between Chopper, Shiro, and Donk. And they'll go low and slow to open, but that barrage of util now comes out. Wonderful, their worst nightmare tucked in behind triple. Bit bought down low. Wonderful swings it wide and gets nothing done. It's Zontix making amends for a quiet end to Anubis. He certainly opens Mirage in the right way. Three kills and the pistol is as good as theirs. Yeah, no doubt on these T-sides for neither team, really. Na'Vi have had phenomenal T-sides with this roster, but Spirit comfortable as it gets and Zontix goes hunting for the final kill. Triple entry from the guy is certainly not a bad start to this game and it'll be him and Shiro to combine for the close. Team Spirit with a pistol round. Shout out to Alexi, <laughs> throwing his utility, you know, just throwing the nades in ladder room just so they can't get it off of his dead body. Every detail counts. Clean. I think that's just clean shots, but, you know, full A execute and they're not playing full retake. Like, that's always going to be a tough round to, to win for the CTs and see a full eco again from Na'Vi. Yeah, One flash on Alexi. Wonderful gets mollied out of triple. Not what you want on a pistol round, for crying out loud. So, yeah, that's a nice uh, bit of work for Spirit to start. Going to take their time in middle here. Try and figure out where the stack is. Almost expected at this point with... Full eco for Na'Vi, four players on eight, three take the ramp, but... It's also interesting because people point out 
you know, you could make, and you say pistols are random. Well, you can make them less random if you use more utility, but what if they played Rita AK? And you've used all that utility and not really being able to do much with it, then you're at a disadvantage when it comes to actually having to defend against a retake because you don't have armor. So it looks really, really nice <laughs> when it works out, right? But it's not that simple. I can't remember. It was a couple of months ago. We were sitting at the tournament, we were watching some game, you know, re-watching some game from the start of CSGO, and you see five CTs have nades in the pistol round. Can you imagine now, like all five CT players buying nades or you know, utility? Yeah, it was wild at times. Not just say cheese, but you know, smoke, oh, okay. flash, flash, sm smoke kit, two HEs, just throwing them at the start of the round, you know, like an anti-rush. Just lobbing everything in. Smoke at palace, smoke at ramp. Can't go through that. Instantly. Donk was three at the time, probably, or something. <laughs> It's All really right. not far off. First gun round, Harry, be serious. Yeah. <laughs> Donk's creeping up over towards ramp right now. Team Spirit kind of poising themselves over here like they want to run back this A play. Bit watches on from the back of Ticket, but we saw what happened to him here in the pistol. Na'Vi, pretty heavy mid setup early on just to make sure they have this control, that Team Spirit can't slip anyone through the back lines. But now they've got to be worried about the front lines. Team Spirit already out through ramp. No way of slowing this down, they're already in. Nima gonna rain out with a kill. That's all the way back from jungle. And then Vit suddenly barrels through this smoke at CT. Shiro and Chopper have given Team Spirit a fighting chance, make it more competitive than it was just moments ago with a kill apiece. But it will have to slow down. That bomb out in no man's land, the timer to get it is fast expiring for Chopper, but he gets his hands back on it. Got a smoke, he's got options, but he's not in a hurry to plant. Hoping that Na'Vi overread this one and over-rotate, they will not move a muscle. They know both players were here, and that's enough to stay in the sight. Unscoped timing couldn't come at a worse one. As Ima moves in, it's a trade, but that's all. As Na'Vi find their round, I love that re-aggression, double-layered. First, it's Bit pushing through the CT smoke to assist, and then later, Na'Vi go hunting for information and catch Spirit looking unaware. That round is on whoever threw the jungle, Molly. Yeah, I was going to say. Because it wasn't deep enough, and that yeah. gets the first kill, you know, for Rima. And it's not just the fact that he gets a kill. It's the fact that that's an angle that you're not supposed to have to worry about, that you now do have to worry about. You can't get the bomb down, and very frustrating first gun round for Spirit. Oh, for Shiro. That's kind of the exact peak he was hoping for, but the shot just sails past Ima. Donk was rushing B, looking for the entry on his own, but Alexi mollied it. After throwing a nade, Donk will go back. He's getting jump spot, but careful. Out on an island is wonderful with limited support. Maybe a run boost here in mid. Oh yeah, Magic's gonna get sent flying, hoping this throws off the aim of this AWP. Turns from the flashbang and then gets oh. right back on at the top of mid. Donk taps out too, but oh. he's dead on the jump. Fantastic reaction from Ima. And that alleviates a lot of the big worry in this round. If this was the two on three with Shiro and Donk still in the picture, this one has some legs on it. The fact that it's just Shiro with this bought up AWP in a round that Team Spirit were cash strapped in. He's going to struggle to find much with it. 40 seconds left and a long way away from anywhere. He He's saving us. They yeah. give him something, basically. He could look B, and if he catches Alexi jumping, that's a way in. But they're trapping him right now. He doesn't know it. And this is going to be the first time that Spirit doesn't go off on a you know 4-1, 5-1 yeah. start to their T side. They're going to have to most likely eco yeah. behind this op. I mean, I don't really love it if they force, they're only going to get 1900. So that's pistols, armor, and one grenade, one piece of utility. So a bit of a different scenario compared to what we've seen on the first two maps. Great spray transfer. 
Yeah, and it's a sick that, shot. That little reaction from Ema, right? Already some some promising signs, right? Because he has been, uh, I don't want to say a non-factor, but just, you know, a, a little quiet throughout this series for the most part. We've been looking at JL. We've been looking at Wonderful. Haven't really had to get too excited about Ema yet. But he's certainly not shy of giving some good Mirage performances. And so this start bodes well. You're dead on. Na'Vi going to have an early lead under their belts unless Shiro can do the unthinkable in a round where it's really only him with anything to do. Oh, it was so close. If he peaked a little bit earlier, but Lexi gets that nade and gets out. This round is a little bit more complicated than it looks because if Shiro dies here, I mean, he'll have 2400 next round, has to play with a pistol. Even if he lives, no money bo bonus, so he'll just have an op with no nades and the rest of the team will have 4,400. So not an ideal buy by any stretch of the imagination for Team Spirit. They need to set him up and a boost will be away in. Oh my god, I can't believe this is what they're doing with it. That's crazy. Orp now lost over here in mid and if you're Na'Vi, you really want to protect that. I thought they were going to do at least a back boost that lets him fight window, not necessarily climb in with the orb. I've never seen Shiro climb into window with an orb before, but they'll have to go back for it and try and grab it. There are no nades to stop this on location. And it's even more awkward. I guess you give, you could give it to Donk. He's got armor with his Glock, but they've run it away. Anyone oh, yeah, they're, 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 they're starting to kind of piece this one together, right? They've told Donk to go save. The two Glock players just want to die. Luckily enough, nice guy Na'Vi will oblige that. <laughs> from downtown, it's a nade from Wonderful. And Team Spirit get their wish, at least. They've kind of been able to jiggle this around so that it's not quite as devastating. But I'm kind of surprised Shiro's even still trying to be hyper-involved. Honestly, once he gets, like, naded down in the apartments, down to 40 HP, I figured he would just be looking to, to go on a save from the get-go. You watch too many VP games, man. I know. I think that might be it. I'm a little brainwashed. Come on. What, brainwash, brainwash to being right? I mean, look at the awkward situation they're in now. Sure, Shiro is given the orb, but Donk has no helmet. Look at the Had utility, right? AK. I mean, that's that. I think this is a, a very necessary timeout from Halley. They need to come up with a call. It's going to be hard with this much utility to play a sort of a default round take mid. Perhaps like a fast fake and a pop onto a site. Or maybe you use your utility to put a player in a forward position, and that's you know, putting a lot of your eggs in one basket. Let's see what it is that they decide to do. It's not just Shiro to watch out for. Wonderful in a CTAWP. We know he can do it with a rifle as well, but what's he got in store on short? Missed Molly, but JL's climbing up mid. Chomper on the other side, making it loud, and he just spams the smoke. Good understanding, good read, and a five on four, but it won't be for long because Wonderful is here. Nice reaction down, and they were going to pop A, but Chopper gone from mid. The smoke in the palace. Wow, Shiro gets an entry regardless, and they're fighting that, and they won't even kill them. He gets caught in the cubby, four on two. Na'Vi shut out of the sight, and Donk is coming for you. Oh, that's a, a rage-inducing way to go down if you're bit, right? Like, swings out at top of the stairs, just wants to give Ramp a little jiggle, and that offers up that initial pick. And from that moment on, like, already, if you're Na'Vi, you have kind of bad feelings about what awaits you there in the remainder of the round. He was kind of the, the, the sole defense over towards that A site, and you lose him on an info jiggle down towards the ramp. Still plenty of time left. Gives away that kill to the AWP, and the round just unravels on the back of it. And a really important kill from Chopper on the entry, right? Yeah. Like, if he doesn't find that one, the jig is up. They probably get blocked. Terrorists win. Wonderful does save the AWP, so now we will have a strong buy here. Oh, and an immediate attack timeout from Na'Vi as well. In Spirit had theirs. Now Na'Vi want to turn. Blade's going to weigh in. 
this is more what I wanted, right? It's not just, as you mentioned, Yaku, the 4-1, the 5-1 star for Spirit. A back and forth game out of the gate where money will be the object of your desire, where there's no clear victor. I'm sure, the comeback for Na'Vi was nice, but let's see how a team like Spirit do when I you're think trading rounds. If you're Na'Vi, you're just like really hoping you can actually push the advantage for a change, right? Like, they've had to play catch-up on every map so far in the series, even Anubis, which they do go on to close out, but it, it took them a while to get there, right? It took them a while to build into that game, and they were always playing from the back foot, even post that wonderful 1v4. So let's see if Na'Vi and that little chat with Blade have given them something to work with here. They're fighting for this mid-control, wonderful. In the connector with his AWP. Team Spirit, meanwhile, were working their way up through the apartments as a four-man unit, looking like they want to try and get into this B site. Chopper just harassing middle with a little bit of util now. Oh. Alexi keeps going for these jumps and has yet to be punished for it. Good info there as he sees Donk aggressing through the apartments. Oh, wow, the AWP rotates out. They don't believe it. The mid takes coming in, but it's all a short split. It's all a B hit. It's just Alexia, not for long. Donk finds him, and JL with his back turner can come through the smoke. The flash, but there's no play off the flash. JL gets a reload off. He goes hunting, chasing down Chopper on Catwalk. That could not have gone worse. JL somehow lives to tell the tale. Chopper, the opportunity to trade, will not take it, and Spirit have to fight the market side. It's up to Shiro. Shiro and Donk still in the picture here, but Donk spammed out. Shiro brings it down to a clutch, and now it's Ema on the other side. Not quite seeing the market, but creeping through. He's got two kills to his name, so Shiro knows where he is and what he's working with here. Dancing around the site, Shiro tries his hand at the no-scope, and again! Second time is the charm for Shiro, as he puts up three kills in defense of this B site, and adds another clutch to the tally. He's been full of them today, and that one, that one takes the lead for Spirit in quite a big way. It breaks Na'Vi's money. That's one of these early swing rounds, and they've got Shiro to thank for it. Is that in-game leader's brain, Yanko? Chopper just overthinking it, running up Cat, trying to get past that player instead of just taking the fight. Jail dropped a reload for crying out loud. Yeah, exactly. I think he was a little bit too restrained there. Not really sure what was the reason behind it, but luckily Shiro bails them out. Obviously a huge round, you can see the money depleted on Na'Vi, Eco, and just an MP9 on bit. But a great little, I don't want to say a double fake, but you know, the, the, the late utility on mid, that force wonderful to go back from B and great timing for Team Spirit for the B hit. Second time they've missed that smoke. Oh, worth keeping an eye on. Ooh, wonderful <laughs> Deagle. Swiftly deals death down to Chopper well. and even follows up. Shiro has been shot in the back. Wonderful. Giving a chance to Na'Vi in a round that they have no business making super competitive. Not with all the room that Spirit had over towards B. Not that all. And yeah, there's a big ticket item right here, right in front of you. Wonderful. Does he want to use this? Doesn't want to throw himself into a retake. Instead, he's going to take a boost on up. Boost on over. Missed shot from Donk on the AWP, but he follows up the second time around. So that orb was taken out of there. And with this B site firmly under Spirit's control, the victories are short lived here for Na'Vi. Lovely two piece on the Deagle, but no more past that point. Oh, Ema, just trying to make them die with a bomb, perhaps? Yeah, he doesn't tap it, though. He's chasing, and he might be the guy to fall to the explosion. Yeah, we won't see that smoke missed again, because this time Spirit realized it. They came up connector, and someone threw a follow-up jungle smoke. So, you know, a couple of mistakes, but uh, they're aware of it now at this point in the game. Five to three, some nice B splits. Good shots from Zontix coming up catwalk. And yes, a little awkward as wonderful catches and backs turned, but not the end of the world here for Spirit. For Na'Vi, it's a rebuy and another opportunity to level the playing field. I think Chopper's doing a great job of keeping mid pressure across these rounds, right? Like, I know he hasn't had the the most success once he's actually got down the catwalk, but in terms of just keeping eyes focused here, 
There's one man, he's never falling early. He's always kind of harassing with this util and giving the illusion that there's more in mid than really there is. And this time he gets that opener. The B site is spirits now, mate. It belongs to them. Na'Vi, the save call is immediate. And it's far from guaranteed with Magic's already deep in the connector. Flash goes in and a back turned for Ema, seals his fate. Bit wants his hands on an AK and he just might get it. Being held by Shiro Zorp. And well, there he is, gone, deleted by that AWP. Wonderful posted. He knows they're going to come hunting, and so he wants to try and deny that. Zontic's on some yeah. crazy rooting. Like, they've fully up and left the bomb. He's all the way around a ramp. Wonderful just drops off now, but uh -oh. conceals himself in the nick of time. Has Shiro here. If he's able to remove the AWP, that would have been lovely. But it's Shiro to deal with Wonderful in that head-to-head, -head, deny the AWP save, and really drive this one home. Na'Vi, they're on that back foot again. Yeah, this is going to be Spirit picking up a dominant T side of Ben. They're doing a great job. They're switching it up. They use the top mid smoke a lot and just a molly for Window, right? Because we see that Window smoke a lot of times. It's getting broken. People are jumping over it. Instead, they just smoke it delayed, and that gives them, you know, a different take and a better opportunity, really, to fight for that mid-control. And so far, Navi has been struggling to find a solution for it. Ooh. Here's a solution. <laughs> a bit tries to donk it, running it up mid on the CT side. It won't work. That one rifle is lost in no man's land. We also see when Spirit throw that top mid smoke, they keep spamming the close lip of it, and they found a kill through it already before. Another bit of aggression on the ramp side denied. And this round slipping through Navi's fingers. Although damage has been done, Chopper's a shot from death. He's been smoked, but Alexi has now left it. And Spirit is still pulling a slow one on this default, hoping more comes to them before they commit. And they're not wrong. Up in Palace, Sontix wins, and all is going to plan on this anti-eco. And I also like a change of approach to some extent for Spirit on this map compared to Anubis and Ancient. We already saw two faster B hits, you know, B splits. Whether that's something that they, in preparation, saw as sort of a weakness for Na'Vi. But perhaps in the next round, let's see if Shiro decides to, if they're going to play default, if he decides to go B apps with the AWP, because that might be an answer for Na'Vi to send Wonderful there to make sure they get early deep control of B apps, early information. Hmm. Alexi yeah. still flying around here. JL is moving around to join him. Na'Vi going to see if they're given any reason to go for this. Flash in. And Don gets the info that there's a man up close. JL still not spotted. Alexi swinging it, but can't best Donk in the head-to-head. -head. And so for JL, it's the end of the line. Just going to save this M4 if they let him. Big if. But they don't know. Ooh, yeah. He gets out with his life. So. Considering, you know, considering how this game started, right? Considering we got off to a, a kind of nice beginning for Na'Vi after winning that first one. They go on a three-round streak. They're momentarily in the lead. They even have Team Spirit kind of in this position where they, they can keep them on the back foot economically. And now it starts to slip away from them. <laughs> It's good for Spirit. The longer they can keep Na'Vi here, the better. Every round kind of hitting like a two for one right now. And so Na'Vi are feeling that pressure. That pressure of playing from behind all over again. Nades down into the connector. Wonderful posted with the AWP on shore, but no challenge from Team Spirit in mid this time. Not even Chopper there. Trying to just keep up appearances. It is a full regroup back towards A. And so often when this has been the case, when mid, you know, has only had one player in it, or it's been a little light, it's ended over towards B. So we see an early rotate from JL. That meant there were three players leaning towards that B site, right as Team Spirit move out onto A. Bit falls, getting nothing done, and the site is taken. Break of the smoke almost on jungle. They got more nades to do it. Magic putting pressure on. It's a good spam, but you need the kills right now. The clock is already ticking in Spirit's favor, and the util just keeps on flying. It's finally out, but the kills are not. Chopper finding Ema. Wonderful showing off the all in connector, and Don continues to put the pressure on. Navi falling apart right now. 
Wonderful just trying to escape through the con smoke, but he's still here in the open fighting. They'll spam him with a tech nine. Sure coming hunting. He Ooh, has ammo. On. His team are falling. Oh, this is getting awkward, but yeah, Wonderful's running for the hills. That is a scrappy post plant there. As Na'Vi, for a moment, looked like they were going to battle back into it. Yeah. Terrorists win. I thought they were going to save, but then all the kills come through from CT with about 15 seconds left as well. A lot of chaotic fights, you know, breaking smokes and whatnot. I think for Bit being in the side and when an execute comes in, it's going to be really hard. He gets a flash, but isn't able to find a single player who's blind. And I think it was Zontix from Apps who were just able to get rid of him. Another great T side from Spirit. We saw it every single map. Was it 9-3 on both Ancient and Anubis? Yeah, yes. I think you're dead on. Yeah. And all on T sides as well. And here's the B op duel. I think last round Wonderful had the best spawn, so, so he went for the cat jump. We'll see if he'll try his luck and go for the deeper angle. Doesn't look like it. Oh, Ima going to challenge under, and look who's here. He's got good smoke in his favor, and Donk wasn't ready for a player push through. They won't find him. Chopper's behind the box. Navi seemingly unaware, but it doesn't matter because they've peeled out of mid. Wonderful can still be tasked with solo B. Honestly, there's already been some good info here for Navi, right? Not just finding Donk down through lower, but even hearing the AK fire off from top mid. You're building a pitch that the Team Spirit actually were looking to take mid this time. Unlike in rounds gone by where it's just been one guy being annoying. JL now really confirms it with that spot. He sees everybody. Shiro's orb reclaims the 4v4. This smoke break for Alexi. Nearly gives an open sight line. But nothing found, nothing gained. It's Team Spirit running up through the short side. Wonderful right place, right time on this AWP. Once more, they're going to ask a lot of Wonderful here. Will he be able to stand and deliver? First kill connects. Any more in the chamber? Looking towards the apartments, but it's a dead angle. Everyone for Spirit is coming up through this short side. Nails the second. Wonderful. Can he keep this coming home for Na'Vi? Pushes up close. No scope. Just misses. And that's when Shiro runs him down. Eight seconds left. Tap on the bomb. There's no winning this no for way. Shiro. There's oh. no winning this. As just enough time, slips through his fingers. Na'Vi do manage a fourth. Boost for the Guardian fight. Ooh. Does slip off. Surely not dry. He was considering it, wasn't he? Floppy draws attention towards the B site. Halzog to jump up. And a lovely adjustment from Nork. Takes down his rival Orpa. Big scalp to post. Must win round. Sense is very forward with no trade potential. He's just committed to this angle. And the leash doesn't force the issue, doesn't investigate further. They do seem to be all maneuvering into B. But look what Sensor's position frees up for the rest of the team. B is going to be quite heavily fortified. Seacoat with Jacob and then Sassanito not too far away. Chip damage onto Stiko. He is just playing this one defensively. And it's Jacob staying active, staying Beautiful. deadly. So good from Jacob. He can play these tough headshot angles with ease. The round's over. There's the flank again of Sense. Yeah, JT's anticipating it, but Sense is going to be playing the long game. Trying to save after time would be miserable. Job done. Yeah. Round one. You've definitely felt like you're down in the dumps a couple of times if you're Apex. So seeing this just feel like a game that should simmer out, you need to kind of slap yourself and remember 
that they've looked like a team who's been on the way out the door a couple of times. And well, this isn't for elimination. This is just the opening stages of the group stage. A double elimination bracket now starts again. And if anything from yesterday's game, the belief in coming back must exist. The belief of winning three on five number disadvantage situation because Nork pops off with the AWP and the bomb gets stuck outside the doors on Ancient. You know it's possible. Don't remind me. First tack timeout. I mean, it makes Things sense. Things have been going very well. Yeah, I mean, there's probably no reason to be alarmed. The, these two rounds, however, pistols. yeah, these two have been a bit more alarming in the sense that there's only been one frag from complexity over the course of those two. CTs find themselves laden with some extra bonus AKs. In the third and final map of this series, Spirit stand tall after having Anubis stripped away from them by a Na'Vi. They got re-energized on the back of Wonderful's clutch. They do manage to hold their own on yet another T side in this series. Nine rounds and then eight on the third. It's been a class act from Spirit so far on the attacking halves, but now as they switch over to the CT side, We've been looking at Shiro as a real hero here on the third, and I want to see if he can keep that going. Will he get the supporting cast around him? Are we going to have more antics out of Donk and Zontix? These two love a bit of mid-harassment, but right now it's Shiro getting tested over at B. He opens up with the first. Ajax only with two kills in the map right now, but he's got a great position. It will go under cleared. He takes one with him, rotates it here. Donk flooding out the market with the rest of Team Spirit, leaving Alexi in the clutch. A little goosh, but there's more where that came from. They'll run him down. No fear for Team Spirit. And the knife is out to finish the round. They might regret it! They will regret it! But Donk saves the day. Almost a disastrous beginning to this second half. Could you imagine? There was a moment there where everyone on Spirit, everyone felt their hearts start to sink, that they would have given that one away, but Donk comes in right at the close, low on health, dinked earlier on, and lets out his war cry to let Na'Vi know that Spirit They've got it this time. How is it a kid? I was going to say not the messing around, kid. and then I realized, no, they I tried to knife. I think, I think Chopper was also oh. out of ammo. Yeah, so. Chopper was. So, so I understand player. that he's going with a knife. Why is yeah. Zontix pulling out a knife? You're just, <laughs> just get a trade. Just a bit Ooh. trolling. Just a bit of trolling, Yanko. I think Halley took a timeout and said, if you guys do this ever again. <laughs> how is the, I mean, fair enough. How is the kid the most mature guy there? You know, just coming in, swooping up with a pistol. He's gooshed as well. That really could have gone wrong. It was that one was bullet away one from bullet. dying. One bullet. That would have been. That would have been the end. You would have been like, GG, well, <laughs> GG, honestly. Oh. <sighs> well, far closer than it ever had any right to be. In Donk, we trust. And similar to our last series, this is, I think, the first time in this series that a team wins both pistols, and it's on the decider again. So Navi, without the bomb plant, goes for an eco just. Uh, Deagle on bit, wonderful Alexi. I think it's not impossible, but most likely gonna have to come back from 10 4 down. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's kind of been the narrative for now V across the entire series, right? So they've certainly got a couple of reps in, in practicing their resilience and their ability to come back, but you're dead on. I think it's the, the pistol round, the stick at the landing on the conversions if they do it. That should make all the difference here. They're going to be so close. It'll be one rifle round between them and essentially just running away with this series. Zontic says hello as he comes up behind them. In with the backstab. Lots of money made. $100 more than that knife kill would have been. And so now it's just wonderful. Ooh, just wonderful. And that's been enough before. Bombs down up in the apartments. Right now, both players for Spirit are playing around it. Wonderful moves in. Looking for the kill, but the smoke in his way. That surely seals the fate of this one. There's no going through this and winning it. 
He's going to give it his damnedest, but there's the double swing out of the MP9s, and it's an ace for Zontix up against just the pistols for Na'Vi. I wonder if he drops an op or two M4s. Uh, it's an op for Shiro. With the game Shiro's having, yeah, yeah, I would hope so at this point. Found the opening kill of this half. It was 18 and 5 coming into it. Ten to four. It's just about not dropping the ball now here for Spirit, but their CT Mirage is typically something to be marveled by. It's a ten winning streak on this map for Team Spirit. And that's one way to begin it. Donk getting his vengeance on Wonderful, who kickstarted the comeback on Anubis, the top performer for his squad right now, spam for a smoke. And they don't even know about the orb. They can expect it. Donk is not done, but Na'Vi may be. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, right? Like last time they kind of had that, that guarantee of being able to bully Zontix a little bit over towards A main back on Anubis here. When you get into the realm of middle and you've got a, a terrifying crossfire to try and get through, it's going to be Zontix harassing and Donk with him. Donk can pick and choose his moments. He can pick and choose his fight. And Team Spirit will often, you know, kind of follow that confidence through, right? They'll play around the fact that Donk likes to fight early. And this one, Spirit look all the better for it. Up five on three. And as mentioned, like, you know, this is really like the, the, the rifle round that Na'Vi Ooh. are meant to try and launch a comeback from. They've only got MP9s to beat. They do get up deep in towards the A site. Donk, a third kill in the round before he's silenced. There's still a man back behind Ticket they don't know about. Zontix dealt with over in jungle. This one's not done yet. Magic slips oh. through, but just looks away. And it's Shiro versus JL. Shiro what? spams him. What? And he has been full of clutches all day, but that one takes the cake. It's a random spam to seal JL's fate. And it's what it does to Na'Vi. The bomb plant gives them a little extra cash injection here. It means it's not... It's not all over. It's not over on that one round, but sure. they're left with next to nothing, man. And JL never even got to attempt oh. his 1v1. Yeah, that was a great reposition for JL to move over there, to get into jungle. That would have been the perfect way to cut down a connector, rotate, bomb for him, and he just gets shot through first bullet. It was the death cam, I think, that gave it away, right? I think uh. whoever was the last, but I think Magus communicated on death cam that he's moving towards bench. So that prompted Shiro to just pan the smoke. Great communication. Great, great timing for him yeah. to do it, right? But unfortunate for JL, really had a chance there. And that was a 3v5. I mean, Navi really needed that. Damn. I mean, this is like, this is your nightmare if you're Navi, man. Like, you, you kind of have all the pieces back in the puzzle for Team Spirit. You've got your openers, Donk and Zontix, down to make those sort of plays. Then you've got Shiro as this closer who you just can't seem to get past, keeps locking you out of rounds, out of clutches. I mean, yeah, Shiro and Magus have 24 kills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Team effort. Ooh. Team spirit. Painful nade to open. Bit's not having a great go at it either. And so to see him softened up when it looked like he was trying to kind of lead the charge out through ramp is just rough. 3 and 12. Someone who, in addition to Wonderful's clutch, like really helped drive home that, that previous map. He was having a lot of impact on Anubis. Falling silent here on the third. Bully down low to the util at the start of this round. He's going to try and make a difference now. It's a dink to open, but not a proper check onto Magix. And so if that last rifle round was kind of the, the final ticket, the bomb plant enabled them a second chance, a shot at redemption, but it might get snuffed away here with very little to show for it. Na'Vi are down to three. Ema lurking up through Con. Can he be the difference maker? He's going to have to go huge here. Backs turned as he makes his way out, but Chopper immediately silences him. And is it really going to be a flawless round that sends Team Spirit up on a 12? Match and series point is locked in. You could have had your doubts of Spirit when they capitulated in the second map. But those should be averted by now. This is an absolute statement win by Spirit.
if they can close it in this fashion. Frustrated on Na'Vi, dejected at this point in the night and maybe down to the lower bracket in just one round. Shiro has had a phenomenal series. Donk has been delivering as we expect and Chopper's T-sides have been called to a T, especially in the first two maps. Donk out in the, in the open in middle, but they flash their way back for a jungle fight. Alexi makes it up catwalk, but not for long. And this one starts to drip dry. Everyone's coming for the kills in middle. Ema won't last either. It's Zontix with a double kill. Bomb's going to try lurk back out B. It's JL against Magix. Yeah, no one's actually here for Team Spirit, so still a route in, but Magic's back at the bench, nails that opener, and now Wonderful arrives with the bomb, but he doesn't have a teammate, doesn't have any control over the site, he doesn't want to go pushing into this, but look at the minimap, look at what Team Spirit are doing, they are boxing them in, Zontix low on health in the back lines, offers up a kill, and so they at least flush that out. But you're looking at a 2v4 with Galils with one smoke, one Molotov. Major missteps would have to happen for Team Spirit here. And I can assure you they're not going for knives anymore, Na'Vi. This is looking like the end of the line. And it's not going to end in some blaze of glory. Some comeback just getting denied. No pep in your step. It is dominating. Complete dominion over this third map of Mirage is what Team Spirit have had. And as Na'Vi move in, it really is the great unraveling, the beginning of the end, and the start of something new for Team Spirit. We were waiting to see them tested, and that test still awaits them as they best Na'Vi in a convincing 2-1. They show up on LAN as they've been doing online, and it feels like Team Spirit are fated for the spot deck with Apex or Complexity waiting in their upper bracket matchup with FaZe or Eternal Fire for the semi-finals. Team Spirit are looking good to make it to the playoffs of IEM Katowice. And Shiro hasn't been on a team for almost, I mean, it's barely been a month that he's on the lineup. And they're looking so polished already, yeah. so in control, right? They're talking about high level of team player. Their floor is high. And obviously, with Donk, Shiro on your team, your ceiling is going to be pretty high as well. Yeah, man. I mean, I think this just proves Donk, he's looking like the real deal. Zontik's in there alongside him. And then you tie it all together with Shiro as the closer, capable offer. Man, this spirit squad's got it all. Yes, I grabbed Magix here as uh, everyone is passing as well. Congratulations. Huge, beautiful victory versus Navi. How happy are you with this win? Well, not really, because we should have won on Anubis, but we trolled it uh, pretty heavily. But a win is a win, so yeah. Uh, speaking about trolling, uh, can you tell me about the last pistol round where there was a lot of knife action and then... Uh, that was planned. Oh, it yeah. was all planned. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. I see. Okay. Um, you say it, you uh, wanted to win more convincingly. Now, um, I was wondering what would happen once you would drop a map because you hadn't dropped a map yet in Katowice. So can you tell me about how you feel the team did after kind of the first big defeat in the tournament in that map and how you b rebounded as a team? Well, basically... You can feel a bit bad or upset after losing map in that way, but it's just the feeling that hits you like right after the loss, but you do have a break between the maps and uh, you have a time to take a breath and re refresh and, and play the new map as nothing happened. Well, wonderful, fantastic victory. Thank you so much. Uh, all planned. Oh, F, yeah, that's Magix. Gosh, come on, man. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, Magix stuff there from the side of Spirit, and they continue on the path that they're on. Josh, what are you seeing? What are you seeing that you like? I think it's a bit redonkulous how they're doing right now. Uh -huh. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's really interesting gameplay here. We're seeing them full force, full confidence, and it's nice to see that Na'Vi is just getting, you know, slammed down because... Oh, you like to see that? Um, yeah, kind of, because... Tell us more, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about it. How they it got slammed a, down. No, I mean, you guys you guys cannot see it from here, but Penetrated the line, knife. Shiro is literally just lounging in his chair right now. He's he's doing that pose, you know, when you know you did a good job and yeah. you're chilling, yeah. but he's exactly what he's doing, and he's got a right to feel like that. He's got a Rob's right done. to feel like
like a bowler right now because that first half of Mirage was all that Spirit needed to just forget about the misery that was the end of the second map. They needed someone to step up, put them on the right track, and he had everything that was needed. He had pistol moments, he had openings with the AWP, he had clutches, famous clutches, 1v2, 1v3 on Mirage as well, 2v3 with Dong. All of the moments in which Navi were looking for that breath of fresh air to come back into it, then suddenly he stepped up, put them down, and we have to give it to this man. What a first or third map from Shiro. Oh, you, you're going to look at these numbers. They're going to kind of paint a picture, right, to a degree? Is that fair? I mean, I've What kind of paint is being used? Is it acrylic? Uh, or? No, like maybe like watercolors. Watercolors. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of more like permanent marker or something. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, that's very red. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, you're looking at wonderful JL, but then everybody else, you know, numbers wise, you might have won a map. But, you know, what does this say about the matchup at hand? I don't really know if I want to just look at numbers and tell you, oh, this guy was bad or this mm -hmm, guy was bad. Or, no, I, I do think that a man like Bit, for example, uh, on the on the city side of Navi should have done a little bit more. But at the same time, praises go to Spirit because they did a great, a great job rather avoiding him. Like It's not like Bit had to do what he loves to do, which is like multi-kill positions, handle an A, execute on him. Most of the time, Spirit were building through mid. They were going to delay B splits as well. They had great calls. They caught Alexi B off guard a couple times with rotation. So Bit is a man that you like to or would like you to take head on, but they kind of avoided him a little bit on that third map. So rough for him, definitely a little bit absent. Well, it's, it's more than just... Uh you know, avoiding certain players or hitting certain players. It just looked like Na'Vi didn't really have anything special planned for. I mean, even going back to the Nubis, it's just like they're kind of just doing what they normally do. And it, we really need to see them start to, I don't know, add more depth to their playbook. Because if this is the Na'Vi that's here to stay... On the CT side, yeah. On the mostly. CT side specifically. If this is the Na'Vi that's here to stay, it's kind of worrying. Like, you're bringing in this, these new people and you're not really changing much. Like, you're just doing the same thing. Are you yeah. going to have the same success? Uh, same, yeah, but different. Same, the but same, but different. But also, but also the same. The same. Well, I know that things start to look different now when we talk about the brackets. Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, we look at this and we see Spirit continue to to push forward. Yes, and I, if I believe you, might correct me here, Mr. Host, but they would face Complexity the winner Apex. of Complexity Apex, correct? Yeah, and so the, the next loser stage. faces. Loser faces. The loser of Apex and Complexity. No, Spirit would definitely be the winner of that. Yeah, I know. It said the the loser would. Oh yeah, yeah but right. It's like a, yeah, just. Yeah. yeah okay, anyway, yeah, it makes sense. Get it. Uh, so we, we do continue to march on here, and obviously, Smooth. yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, obviously, you know, for a team like Spirit, that question becomes more and more and more. I think Launders even tweeted about it, and it was, uh, you oh, know, really? who's going to be the first to humble? Well, I can tell you who's going to not humble Spirit is the winner of Complexity Apex. I don't care who's up there. I think Spirit punches the ticket to the playoffs. Okay. I mean, they're on one right now, right? Surely they we really are. We we kind of started this whole game off talking about momentum. Uh, does this help propel that case at all? Yeah, and even more than that, I think the reaction from map two to three gives us a, an element of answer to some of the questions that we had. Hey, Spirit, absolutely destroying everybody. Wow, they have momentum. It's great. Yeah, how about when you, you drop the ball on the map? How about you fumble the bag a little bit and then they bounce back? That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see a little bit of adversity that they had to deal with. Questions answered. That third map as if nothing happened. Well, it's a little bit more than that as well. It also showcases that even when Donk, we saw him looking a little bit deflated or defeated, even on the second map, coming into the third one, he wasn't even necessarily the one that's like, you know, doing most of the stuff. Shiro. We can see that Shiro is here. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's not all like, you know, G2 with Monazi. He's the only one there. Without him, what's going to happen? It's like, well, if Donk's not having a good game, don't worry, Shiro's here. He's going to get the clutches. He's going to get right. opening picks. He's going to, you know, change the tide of the whole game. Yeah, and you know, not every team has that sort of luxury, sadly. Um, you're not going to point any teams out. It doesn't quite matter. Manak, anything you want to say, or should we just get you out of here? I mean, I think if I don't talk, I might just leave. Yeah. So. You know what? <laughs> Let's try it. Don't talk. And by that, we go to a break. We come back, and we're going to be jumping into our last game of the day here on the A-Stream. We're looking at Vitality taking on Ents, and as you can tell, everybody's just about surefire, ready to go. So when we return, we're going to go through all the nitty-gritty. We'll get rid of Maniac, guaranteed. Uh, we will keep this ball rolling. Thank you very much, Maniac. And Bye. Right back after this.
Uh, let's talk a little bit about Katowice here because you guys have this this tournament. We don't know your your first game yet isn't isn't quite decided. Um, but you're in Group B, G2, uh, New Look Heroic, Monty, Gamer Legion, Mal's all within your group, and a couple more to be decided um, as as the play in stage completes. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, G2 is a dangerous team. We know they're a little bit up and down. Heroic, I mean, for me was surprising seeing them kind of go through 2-0 and qualifying. That team looked like it might go through some rough things. Gamer Legion looked really good against Virtus Pro the other day. Um, where do you guys see the danger in this group? Mal's obviously is always there. Mm. When I see it, I don't know. I feel everyone is uh, kind of the same. I feel like Mao's G2. I mean, everyone can beat everyone. Everyone can lose. Everyone can win. I feel like everyone is uh, at the same level. So, no, not really scared, I feel like. I think it's a uh, lot about ourselves. Yeah, so. yeah, sure. I think yeah. if we have the right attitude, the right mentality, awaiting our shots, I think we have a big shot to, 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 to get through. And uh, that's what uh, we have to focus on. I think when you are at the beginning of the year, I think what every team do, they focus on themselves. Yeah. Okay. They don't focus too much on the opponent or whatever because you have new thing. You don't have m too much data, so you have to focus on. And yourself. there's usually been some roster changes through the yeah. break as well. Yeah, exactly. And also we had the time to prepare some new thing, and people always have more energy, so come up with uh, new strats, yeah. new setups, new everything. So I think it's really important to focus on yourself and your basics and your DNA. I would say. So for us, it's uh, a lot with that. That's what we tried in uh, blast groups as well, yeah. being just ourselves, and uh, yeah. and also it just blast group helped us to show also like. What were our weakness right now? Because mm -hmm. we didn't play that good, and uh, we had like a Took rough tournament. Except show. this guy, that was really really <laughs> sick. The rest, like we had, I think you did. wasn't good. that good <laughs> as yeah. a team. I don't think we were that good. Sure. So yeah, it just, I think, it just like a, a shitty, classy thing to say. Uh, the biggest enemy is ourselves, but uh, I think it is. I think it is right now because we know what we have to do to to be good, and it's just all about us doing our best to to to, to show. Uh, our good face, I would say. Checking in for you guys and everything that's happening here on the B stream. We've got Complexity going up against Apex. And Complexity, they managed to get a win on Vertigo. It was Apex's pick. But this looks like a much more confident Complexity than we've seen in quite a while. Remember, they've been crashing and burning across their games. But this is hugely positive for them right now. And they're going on to their map pick of Overpass. But Old Complexity, Overpass was a go-to map where you can say, yes, they're going to win every single time. But Apex, in general, Apex's map pulls pretty good against Complexity. So we could still be going to a third. It could be going all the way. But if Hulls up plays like he did just yes, just earlier in this map, then maybe there's a chance for them to get the win here 2-0. That'll be huge for them. Let's see what happens. Back to you. Alors, bonjour, Monsieur Madesclair. Bonjour. <laughs> Comment ça va? Ça va et toi? Très bien, merci. But I think we have to continue uh, in English for our viewers. Um, welcome to Katowice. Uh, I want to talk first about your form. I mean, it's been pretty phenomenal the last couple of months, and it was actually great all of 2023. So people, I guess, are wondering, is this going to keep going? How are you going to make sure of that? Well, um, it's never easy when you've done such a fantastic year to, to continue in that way. Um, we talked a lot about that all together because we really want to, to make a second year uh, as good as, uh, as 2023, maybe even better. So uh, we had a lot of talk towards that and it's going to be a lot of work because you have a big target on your back. Uh, people want to beat you, people are going to work really hard. So for us, it just keep working really hard and uh, giving our best to, to keep being uh, the best. A great year in 2023, but I do have to ask, do you still wake up in cold sweats in the middle of the night thinking about Katowice last year, the quarterfinal versus like quite another overpatch? No, it's fine. It's uh, it's behind us. Uh, I think what's good with, with that loss is that uh, it ep it ended up going through uh, to win the Paris Major, which was a bigger uh, and more important event for us. 
so it just was in the process to 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 get uh, to get through it. So it's fine. It's uh, it's the way it is. It was pretty painful at that moment, but now uh, it's uh, it's behind us. I was just teasing a, a little bit. I like that you said that about kind of the run up to the major last year because Katowice is something that is kind of lacking for you in your trophy case and as a big goal. And I heard from a lot of other teams. Well, for us, it's about the RMR and the major. But do you have your focus fully on Katowice, knowing that it is such a uh, important prize in the Counter Strike circuit? Well, for us, uh, <coughs> Katowice RMR major are really important anyway. Um, we know that after that we're going to have a bit of more of a rest. A tournament will be not as big as uh, as those, so uh, with uh, EPL, etc. So we we know that we have to give a lot right now. So we're really motivated and hard working uh, towards those uh, three events. Um, when it comes to your first match, it's Ents and it's Glaive, and it was quite the upset from them. How they have been playing, pretty insane. And of course, you have memories of him when he was in an other era as well. So how do you think that's going to go? Well, I think they showed uh, some promising game. Uh, really uh, good mountain mountain things, I would say. I think they should have lost uh, on, on Mirage against Mongols, but they, they really played well and they just kept uh, uh, the momentum on the side, which was amazing to see. Uh, it's not going to be an easy game, but once again, we have a really good team and uh, with the individuals and everything, I know if we play our A game, uh, they, it, it should be fine for us. So it's focusing on us on uh, to, to this game and see how it goes. Yeah. But in this match, no access to F. No to what? No access to. Remember your tweet? No, uh, that didn't work. No, no, I don't know. It's no, no one is my ex there, so uh, unfortunately, uh, no sex tonight. Okay, uh, okay well, but hopefully some Counter Strike. <laughs> oh my God. Well, we wanted Counter Strike, so perhaps we'll just get a Mirage Etwa here. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, it is going to be Vitality taking on Ants. You know, advance, for Ants, they advanced to that play-in stage. There was a lot of a lot of lyrics going around talking about, you know, it's maybe too early for some value in the server. But uh, they did their part. Now, Vitality, on the other hand, we just saw them at the HLTV Awards, looking prim, proper, looking like they stole the show there, too. Two teams probably on the opposite side of the spectrum, right? Vitality, the best team in the world, uh, fighting for trophies every tournament they attend, and Ants, this new roster that's still figuring things out. For them, it was a big deal to make it into the group stage just so that they can get, at the very least, two more best of threes to see the things that they've been working on, the things that they put in, are they working, are they not working, and which adjustments they need to make moving forward. Yeah, we're seeing Ents just squeaking in through the play-ins, and really it wasn't like they were demolishing anybody. It looked like they kind of just like narrowly made it by. But we saw some glimpses, or at least I did, of kind of 2018-2019 era Astralis there with some of their rotations and movements. But then we also saw a lot of lack of confidence, just like slowly moving around, not really sure about where to peak, when to peak. And they were getting caught off guard by Mongols on, on Mirage specifically, where they just looked like they were flat completely different from how they faced off against, you know, Astralis on Ancient, for example. Yeah, and you know, I, okay, so we'll, we'll bring it to Ents, and we can kind of sit here and say, yeah, they lost their opener. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was a bounce back, though. I've got to ask, though, how many of the, you know, sort of doubters of Ents saying this is a new project, you know, were these people put on notice here, and will they continue to climb? Uh, to some extent, we'll have to wait and see how they perform. I think it's you know, unrealistic to expect from them to take down Vitality here, but potentially put up a good fight, maybe on their uh, map pick at the very least, and moving forward in the tournament, seeing how they square up against some of these other teams. Yeah, and, and it was that T side that they, they found a little bit of troubles with there, and obviously that speaks a little bit of a testament of a new team, Josh? It would be a testament to a new team, but at the same time, it's just like, you're going against Vitality now, and Vitality, they're not good because they do one thing good. They do... They're good, they're the best because they have lots of things going for them. They have really skilled individual players, they have really good protocols, they have really good rotations, they have really good set plays and strap book and depth. So it's going to be a very tall order. It's not going to be, you know, the quality of opponents that there were in the play-ins. The play-ins were basically a walk in the park compared to this. And even there, Ents was like, it's not like they were shutting everyone down. They were struggling there. They made it through barely. This is a true test. And honestly, in, until we see this happen, I don't know if we could, I don't know if we're going to see Ents being, you know, oh yeah, no, they're going to be okay. It, there's going to be doubters for sure. And most importantly, Vitality has discipline, not just on the server, but also in approaching a game like this, right? They're at the top of the mountain, but it's not easy to get there and it's even more difficult to stay there. So you can't take any game for granted. You can't take any opponent for granted. Uh, and I don't think that they're going to do that. So you have to start off strong, 
last year it was the quarterfinal against Liquid, right? Like you want to get into the semifinal if possible, if you're Vitality and start off strong here in the Hall of Heroes. Yeah, it is the Hall of Heroes. I've got two other heroes, though. They're not really in the hall with us. I mean, they kind of are, but they're also backstage at the same time. It's our commentators. Let's hear from them. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Believe your eyes. The red carpet rolled out for the one, the only, Launders. Welcome <laughs> to IEM Katowice. It's all about me. But it's also a little bit about Glaive, because he's going up against Vitality, and he has performed miracles already to get this far. Taking out Astralis on the Ooh. way to get here. Record performance. The Mongols, the guy to take down the Mongols, that's always special in some way. And now he has got to go up against Vitality. It doesn't get any easier. No, it doesn't, because let's be real, right? When it comes down to Vitality, and in this instance, it always comes down to Zywu. And, you know, we, we talked about Donk a little bit. Now, you got Zywu over here, right? Mm -hmm. they, but people just forget about him, or, like, what happened? No, I mean, we just had we had to hype up the Donk because we've seen the Zywu. The zywu has been... I remember when he was first coming out in, like, 2019, and everyone was like, oh, well, we'll see how he does. And, you know, he's still got his praise and everything, but, I mean, he... He won his awards now. Now it's time to kind of shed a spotlight on someone else. I think Spirit is the team that played the best Counter-Strike we've seen so far in Katowice, but we're yet to see the best team in the world Fair. play, right? And one of the reasons why they're the best is they have the best player in the world, but also, as Josh pointed out, so much more. And I, I think the main thing about Vitality is it seems like they're hitting that flow state almost every game. You know, it's not just Zywu bailing them out time and time again out of bad situations. It's that they're not in that many bad situations to begin with, and it makes it extremely difficult to face up against them. That's some creepy shots. Like, you see, you're seeing these replays, and you're like, wow, you hit this guy hits that? Like, what's, what's going on here? Overall, though, I mean, for, for kind of like check marks for this side of Vitality, it was Sydney that gave them a big old, big old heartache. Like, we're talking last place, Hardy. I mean, it was the first tournament in CS2, right? They had a deep run in Pro League before that as well. Everyone was still getting used to the new game. So I think people who were quick to judge them on that were, you know, a bit delusional about how things were going. It didn't take much for them to come back stronger, Trace. And they added Mezzi and won the first couple of tournaments they attended. That speaks volumes to their system and how good they are. Yeah, and that system, you know, it leaves a couple of questions. The system over here for the inside, we talked about Glaive and him running around kind of commanding this this Polish troop. Uh, it seems to be working too well, or pretty well, I should say. I think it's going to be a little bit more complicated than that. We heard it also from the interview. You know, he has his ideas. You have the core from Nine. You have Diha from Enz. You have Cuban, obviously. So it's trying to take the best out of everything, more or less, right? And, and figuring out the style that works for everyone on the team, not just certain players on the team. And we see here, right, ends with that Vertigo pick, um, ancient ban for Vitality, a map that Ents has already played a couple of times, and they go for that Anubis themselves. And actually, Anubis is such a strong map for Vitality. I love the way that they play their CT side especially, and we're going to see that Ents actually picks the T side here on Anubis, so Vitality is going to be able to show us what they've got. We've seen a couple of Anubis games today where, you know, there was a very static defense from uh, the team is playing it, but Vitality, I love how they move around, and it's it, everything that they have is layers and phases, so they'll go aggressive here, they'll play, push off of the timing, and then they'll instantly move to some other place on the map. They're not just standing in one spot waiting for things to happen. They're making things happen. I think T side is a little bit more potent, not just because of the peaker's advantage and whatnot, but also because as an underdog, if you come up with a good game plan and you know, you're able to win the pistol, let's say, that start, a strong start, can give you, you know, all the rounds you need, really, on that side of things, and you may be able to catch the other team, you know, a little bit on the back foot. Catch them lacking, I think, is the, the appropriate lacking. analogy this this day and age, nonetheless. Uh, for Ents, yeah, I, you know, it is an interesting project, no pun intended there, but it's very true. It is, uh, it is pretty nice to see them come this far. Obviously, Polish players playing in Poland, it could be a very cool storyline up to that point. But yeah, this is going to be their biggest hurdle yet, without a doubt, Yanko. Yeah, absolutely. You know, going up against the best team in the world, but hey, no better way to get tested than against the best out there. Sometimes things are working for you in practice because you're going up against maybe lesser players, lesser teams. You know, you go up against Zai, we're very quickly going to see what works, what doesn't work, where are some gaps in your game, and it will definitely be, if not anything more, a great lesson for Enz. So tell me, tell me what would happen here in an instance where Enz does win over Vitality. 
You know, does that solidify this idea and this approach more? Or like, what you know, who do we it's get the end of the to? world if that happens? Oh. <laughs> if honestly, like, if it goes three maps, I feel like it's going to be closed out by Vit Vitality. They're really good on nuke. But if there's any maps that you know a team could squeak out a win against another team, Vertigo and Anubis aren't actually a horrible picks because it could come down to a lot of gunfights straight up. I mean, yes, there's like a strat exec heavy map, but it's. For newer teams, you don't really need a lot of set protocols like you would on other maps, such as, I don't know, Ancient might have different protocols. You could get sloppy, you get skirmishy, and you can start, you know, getting dirty in the mud. I think we'll also see whether um, Ants decides to target B a little bit more on Vertigo, right? Because Mazzy has struggled there at the start of his Vitality career. Obviously, he's been working very hard to get used to the anchor roles and getting a little bit more support and whatnot. But yeah, I think it goes without saying, if Ants is going to have any chance of an upset here, it has to start on Vertigo. They can't afford to lose that map. So Josh, just backstage, you're saying, yeah, Vitality's going to lose this. It's not going to go their way. No, I'm kidding. You've got about 20 seconds to make a case for either side. Make it for sell it. Either side? Yeah, go Go ahead, man. Let's see what you got. Vitality is just so strong right now. I mean, I pointed out earlier that it's not just one thing that they've got going for them. They've got multiple things. And I think uh, even a map like Vertigo, where you have so many star players from Vitality that can get activated, like we're even going to see Sphinx getting active at mid on his CT side, getting in the faces, and he'll probably help out Mezzi at B. So that's not going to be too much of an issue. So, yeah, I mean, Vitality is probably going to smash this. Well, let me just say, Deha. That's who's on the other side of Vitality, obviously. Let's get in the game, guys. Uh, with that, we are going to do that by giving it over to the commentators. Gents, take it away. Yeehaw, yeehaw. Yeah, woohoo! let's get it going. <laughs> Steel and, of course, Stunna, our American representation on the... Oh, yeah, and Yanko, too. Thank you, gentlemen, for your breakdown. There's three of them. Welcome to game three of, of course... The group stage, baby. You ready for this? Mohan, you're finally back in the saddle. I gotta say, it's nice to have you back. They've had me trying all these different flavors of casting this week. You know? Fun to listen to. Ah, uh, yeah, but nothing beats Indian. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, my you're guy. You're good heads, though. You're in good heads. That's true. And so are we. Because tonight, we get the Team Vitality versus Ents matchup here on the A stream. We got the number one ranked team in the world versus the local heroes. At yeah. this point, We've all we've all accepted it. Glaive is Polish, Ents is Polish, and they've got a dream to try and create here in Katowice. Yeah, Vitality have everything except Poland. So we'll see how much that advantage matters as the first kill goes the way of the Poles. Up on Vertigo, this used to be the map that Ents could count on no matter what else went wrong in a series. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, not Ents. Well, nine. nine. <laughs> Quick fight out from Zaiwu. That one gets denied. They're, they're trying to charge at this before Bomb goes down. They want all the blood. They want the blood shed. And, well, they Ooh. lose their heads. It's Glaive. Of course it's Glaive. Coming off of his career highest HLTV rating the other day, taking down his ex-organization. It's been a great week for Glaive. And the way that he interviews, he's always just amazed when people are complimenting him. He's so gracious all the time. Four times major winner is sort of every day wakes up impressed at himself. He's very, he's a very humble guy. You know, he really does kind of take it. He doesn't look to the past. All he thinks about is what's coming up next. and doesn't like to think about what he's accomplished previously. And it's obviously a great way to be. Um, and it doesn't preclude you from having the dark times like in the past few years. Like he said, in Astralis, it wasn't great. So he does feel like he has to prove himself again. Um, and that's, that could take a lot of effort, that could take a little luck, that could take, you know, the right teammates. It's a lot of moving targets that you've got to figure out how to figure out. A shot for Mezzi, so Deagles not looking like they're going to earn anything here. Pretty quick tempo out of Ents to try and convert pistol, and I like that. You know, we're talking about, you said it right, Vertigo's the thing that would always go well when they'd struggle in a series. And by struggle in the series, we mean lose Ancient. That was the consistency of Ents. But the beauty of it, or, when I say Ents, I mean nine. Okay, for the record going forward tonight, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're really referring to the core that got picked up by Natu. Um, of course, this like, this like, Pretty off-the-cuff last-second signing when Ence's team started to dissolve, but it made total sense seeing as the nine core were going to be guaranteed a spot at the European RMR in the upcoming major cycle. So I think it was a good decision, and obviously you still had Diha on your team. That's just, I mean, Diha would have made a great addition to nine at any at any time. Keeping Glaive, bringing in Cuban. Come on. These are, these are smart moves, but it does boil down to 
two players in particular speaking English for the first time on a yeah. team, right? Um, in Goofy and in Kylar. Hades at least had already been with Entz. That makes total sense. I mean, it just, at first it took me off guard, but the more I kind of give Entz some credit, take a step back and give them a little time, they've left me well impressed. For sure. I mean, I think that's something that's been very nice from the offseason is Entz and Heroic are two teams that got screwed over big time. Mm -hmm. And they had to come up with rosters within a matter of days to make it for the RMRs. Not only did they come up with rosters in a matter of days, the RMRs, they came up with pretty damn decent rosters on paper. Yep. But rosters that even still didn't have that much expectations to show results quickly, and yet did. Yes, sir. So, Both of them having moved through the play-in, now playing at the group stage of Katowice. Full credit to them. They put together rosters that other teams could have taken months to put together yep. under way better circumstances, and we'd still be impressed. Well, circumstances looked good here in round three for Entz, and suddenly we're talking about a five versus three to Vitality's favor. That original ramp peak from Flamesy off the Galil, Zaiwu catching a stray down ramp as well, Sphinx hitting a deagle headshot, making it look all the easier, and uh-oh, the first speed bump of the night. Entz just losing out to a round that had two rifles at the start of it. And this is, I think, just another instance of the talent that goes from the top to the bottom of Vitality. Four players coming through with a frag, Flames getting caught out and figuring out what Glaive is up to. But we, we can't deny it, right? As much as we can sit here and praise Entz for making big moves quick, Vitality, number one team in the world. Bit of a scare to start the year versus Astralis, but a recovery already. Yeah, beating Astralis is, is impressive enough, and that's a, a nice memory for Glaive. Getting to the group stage by beating Mongols, that's also great. Not winning the clutch is, is not that great, but losing it to Vitality also is something that you can live with. And I think that the series will not be handed to them, and they'll need to be playing their best CS of their tournaments so far to take this win. And they'll have to probably also cross their toes and hope that Vitality are playing slightly worse than they usually do because that's the only way that an upset like this can happen. The bottom line is Vitality are that bar right now. Yes, sir. A bar set high in round three. Again, two rifles come in. All of Entz go down. Team Vitality with a quick, easy answer on the CT side of, of course, Entz's map pick. If we're talking about teams that are likely to win this entire event in order, it goes something like Vitality, and then who knows? <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? And th yeah. that just shows you how powerful Vitality are in a world where so many teams are good, but no clear favorites. Diha trying to make quick work of the crane play, but it's Apex ready to hold back. And Apex had, I think, a quieter start to the year in contrast to the end of 2023. He had a two fantastic LAN events to close out the year. And then maybe our, our, all our expectations got a little too high. So easy for him to get this opening duel versus Diha. You want a strong start from the, each of the individuals of Vitality. And I think we're going to see levels of confidence come out from Vitality this evening in this head-to-head. -head. Plays like this one from Flamesy, who goes down ramp, who's got great shadow advantage over the bridge. Those shadows casting forward and giving him all the info he needs to keep him blocked off. I'm sure Entz right now just feels suffocated here in the fourth round. Maybe they get Goofy out middle. Maybe Zywoo gives them room. But to ask for room from Zywoo, who the hell are you? Sphinx looks to tether off him. Nice coverage given out from Glaive. Zywoo Ooh. right back at it. That's God. snap. Damn. Mm, a little <laughs> flick of the wrist and uh, ça suffit. That's that. Tied up at two. C'est magnifique. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Apex kicks it off. Diha, you know, doesn't play Xbox with the headshot angle waiting for the push, but definitely, you know, climbing up and exposes oh. himself entirely. Oh. Sit down. Sit down again. It's just the beginning, I swear. <laughs> he said it won't take long. So a quick snap back to reality. Glocks for Ents. These poor guys don't even have a flashbang. And a round without a flashbang is barely a round worth playing, Mohan. I know, like 50 bucks? Because he could have been blind. Well, okay. Maybe they paid one of his teammates. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, oh, God, it's good. It's good. It's just pistols, but it's a nice sign for Mezzi, I think, to have an uptick at the start of this map. Uh, Mezzi is, I would put him in the same boat as Apex, finishing the year strong, giving us these high hopes that Vitality are untouchable, and then a quick dose of reality, as this year wasn't the best, but easy hold versus Glocks. Get Mezzi's confidence up, get that B site anchor rolling, and then Spinks, who's going to be found in middle more often than not, the two of them can tether off one another, and I think this defense becomes impenetrable. Yeah, he sometimes they just like vitality and history. And history in the last three years, like since 2021, mm -hmm. have had very high peaks and also just random troughs out of nowhere. Um, they've just been so infrequent now that you don't see it as much. But like that other game at Blast, uh, like last week, that was already sort of like, wait, what? They go that low even on a random uh, after the break event. But then we remember that they are still dealing with new players. Okay, Come Apex. On. Okay. Come on. Just a shot through the smoke and a quick chase from Flames. That's a team flash. Who threw that? It was a double agent, though. It hit, hit them both. Sketchy, sketchy. Mezzi leaning back beyond the fire. Supportive utility could be inbound. He's got a teammate already up front. And Ensel cool their jets. Kyler said, don't wait up, and then drop the bomb. Pretty consistent bottom ramp control from Vitality. We are early days in the CT side, but we've seen Flames prod it twice already, so, back to back. Something, something's wrong here. Kyler doesn't have any utility, and they don't have the bomb. So I don't know what his presence is going to do at 35 seconds, but yeah, unless they're coming back. Mm, yep, it got it. Likely, here we go. Bringing it back. So now Goofy becomes the solo on A. Oof, eats that flashbang. Barrels back slightly. 15 seconds. CTs, they are still very much in this B site. Sphinx holding on to close, but ooh, nice headshot from Kylar. Mezzi off construction gets the one. Goofy pulling a thread towards the A site makes things interesting, but that's what they needed. A kill that establishes the fallback from the site if needed. Apex, he's kept an eye on it. Can confidently assume nobody's back quad. Green, a high likelihood, and it is indeed occupied by Kylar. Support behind him from Hades. No more utility, but two rifles ready to hold off what's left of this retake. Nice, quick swing out from Apex, and Hades, he allows for them to cross over, hoping to catch him off guard. Krieg hits the headshot nice and swiftly, oh. and as he tries to keep his head down, Flamesy takes it off, coming through with Vitality's force. Ooh, got nervous seeing Flamesy be that tall. Decided to crouch, made it really awkward for his spray. Nice first shot from Hades, but no clutch right now. Vitality will take a fourth after a clean and confident retake in the 2v2. This is where we kick it off with the Apex smoke ramp spam. Poor Diha just in transition down there. A couple of the angles that are getting that got used in this round are like they're not really valid right now with the way CS2 is. I think like that, like generator position, for example, you're going to get it pre-fired so easily right there. You have to time your swings basically every fight at the moment. So when you see someone sitting dead on what used to be a really good angle, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, same thing with Spinks, so you can almost precipitate him dying. But that was almost for a different reason. Not just because he's getting pre-fired, but also because people are walking out clearing quad on that same line. So sure. you could get incidental, basically. Yeah, you're basically standing in the middle of traffic. Yeah. You could be invisible and still die, essentially. So he gets laser beamed. Luckily, Mezzi did catch one on the crossover, so it's not both B defenders down empty-handed, just the one. And luckily for Ents as well, the guns keep on coming. A few Galils with this follow-up in the Krieg. I like the trend of offers buying Kriegs. Glaive tries to take a peek off Xbox, will find Flamesy. Just like that. Opening kill, man advantage. Ents got something to work with. Still some utility, too. But will the B players get a little frisky? 
Kylar tucked in. He was on his own, but now Glaive has come to join him with a third player just behind them, and Bomb not far off either. They're looking to get into the B play, but this corner occupied by Mezzi nets them nothing. Wow. Perfectly pulled apart here in the B site, and an excellent round for Ents to add to their collection. Zaiwu thinking about middle, takes a ton of damage. His nade goes in deep. There's a dual one by Apex on the A site. Do Vitality take the chance at this retake? Whoa. Health has been chipped down low on two players. They don't know about all of it. As I would have been feeling pretty good about that nade, I'm sure. Knowing the bomb got planted right after. But this smoke should solidify. Yeah, incendiary as well, right? You want to push through that? There's a sea of flames that awaits you. And I'm not talking about your teammate, Zaiwu. Ooh, catches Hades. He knows the other one's behind the box. Here they go, oh. pressing in. And it falls on Glaive with his 16 health to swing. He gets the bomb diffuser off, and the time's going to decide this time. Apex, he could not afford to take that bullet to the face. Smoke comes up a little bit late. Glaive isolating the duel and winning this one out for Ents. I don't know how they got that close to winning the round. I thought they were just going to give up because of time alone, but... Uh... Kills kept coming their way. Leave it to Zaiwu to find a way. Was an effort right there, but it also costs Ents greatly. Escaping with zero players alive. And uh, right in the middle of a half, their economy is fragile. At least they have D side. Again, though, this ramp fight so consistent and more often than not to the favor of Vitality. Glaive, Glaive, I love it. Glaive's been consistent on this ramp fight in more than just this match. He's been very good on Vertigo for this. Dude, his individual level has, has taken me off guard. Man, 2018, he was a top 10 player in the world. But when we saw him play for Astralis before his departure, the fall off was hard to watch. Yeah. To come back into it with this Ents camp, to post that map on Ancient versus Astralis that he did. I mean, I, I never, I never in, I didn't think it was in the cards. I didn't think it was any, I didn't think it was possible any longer. No disrespect. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't know. I still don't know if it is. I think he, he's saying that he has a lot to prove and it's because he does. If he wants to say that, he, uh, he can say that, of course. That's just being real, though. The results are the only thing that matters. So... In terms of what we rate right now, I would never get excited about three months of individual level or anything. Zero tournament, you know, like, I made a video in July talking about like Navi and how I rated the roster was it was like not good, not good basically. And people are really excited about Navi like today because they've actually done so much better. And it's like, yeah, but they still haven't won anything. Sure. You know what I mean? like getting excited about like a week of form basically. Mm. So yeah, I guess it can be excited about Glaive and Ents right now, but in terms of his career, no one will be talking about this. It will only be the results, whether it's actually making it to playoffs, whether it's being a top 20 player again. Something along those lines. We'll give it more time. For now, it's a nice flash in the pan. Yeah, or any tournament wins. Mm. Ooh, Saiwu not allowed to hold on to his gun. There we go. Cuban bringing the heat to the Ents camp as this game gets tied up for a piece. Glaive's clean double entry around the side of the ramp smoke. That was in a 4v5. He offers up the solution. Takes back control of the ramp. Takes back control of the round. Ties things up and puts Vitality's money in question. A potential turning point for the first map in this series. Again, it's a glance down ramp, but much less here from Ents to be pulled on. Still got to keep showing this presence, and I think that conditioning is because of the consistency of Flamesy out of the gate in this map, of taking that forklift room, of not just looking down ramp, but pushing down ramp and compromising Enz's back line. So Diho's going to serve as the anchor as Glaive serves as the entry. Just dueling Spinks and putting Spinks down to a 1-9 score. Hmm. Glaive is uh, 
Well, he's right behind Zaiwu in terms of top performers right now. They try to shuffle that M4A1S into the B site ahead of the execute, but there is no follow through from Ents just yet. They've got a great amount of map control, comfortable positions, top, middle, bottom A, and of course, majority sat outside the B hit. No rush yet. And by waiting long enough, that M4 did indeed depart the site. Now just leaning on Mezzi, whose position gets predicted. Kylar, quick crack with the AK, and this one starts to slip away from Vitality. Big time. D-Hub, easy plant. Zaiwu's top mid challenge could have gotten him a gun, but him dying out takes away any real chance, and this is Entz with a one-round lead. It's very nice. And yeah, I mean, pretty much brought to you by Glaive and those X-Factor frags that he's gotten on entries. Though he does have a very good team with him. Five Polish legends over on Entz right now. I think he was excited about getting a passport, but maybe he's got to be a little scared they won't let him leave right, that's when fair. they make it to playoffs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're going to lock him in the Spodek for the next year. Yeah. Here you go, Glaive. Here's your new home. We're going to see a putt fighting Pasha next year. <laughs> you match it. <laughs> We've always said we wanted to see us boxing matches. And then he'll be biking to majors when he retires. It's all around the corner, folks. 2024 is set to be a hell of a year. I don't even know how that all ties together, but... But we're making promises. Leave it to Lukash. Everything I've heard about Cuban, and everything I know about Glaive, this does seem like a pretty fearsome combo. Mm. I mean, we were there in Abu Dhabi when it all went down. <laughs> and they basically lost their roster. And they, yes, had sir. To, they had 24 hours to find a team before the RMRs. And uh, they had to just go, oh, well, just got to watch a lot of, lot of demos right now to find new teammates because we don't have much time. Uh, but every step of the way, it seems like they've just been working their asses off to like not only find the team but then also make it good enough to work yes which that's the thing about results no one will ever understand how hard the practice or effort was before you won anything so when you see somebody win something in circumstances like this under maximum duress then you go wow they must have been working so with the open site down tarp but no peek around the corner yet it's a way low util buy. No op in play for Vitality. Big opportunity for Enz. Smoke fading exposes the one in the open. Flames, he just taking straight up duels. Zywu looking to trade frag this as Apex also goes down. That's two picks. He leads all the way back. Instant Woo. dink from Hades on the Galil, and Zywu sent sailing. See ya. That ramp setup gets completely dismantled, and now Enz are poised to take an excellent lead as we are just left here kind of scratching our heads, asking, where has Sphinx got off to? This B anchor has gotten a few kills at times. While the ramp control was working out for Vitality out of the gate, this has just turned back upside down. Mezzi, nothing. As three players try to face him into the B site, wow. it's going to have to be Sphinx 1v4. The right in front of him, he gets nothing either. Four strong. Ents uh, strong. Hell yeah. Was it the last half? Was it versus Mongols where they were 9 3 up? Or that wasn't even. That was Anubis, I think. They've had some pretty strong first halves, though, I've seen. Oh, that's gross. Oof, right now before the jump. That. Yep. That's good. That's justice. That was Apex going down right after Flamesy, who decided to take the open fight on ramp. That was actually the only. I think the only way Vitality could have won right there was the dry duels on the ramp while they were both peaking, so. Ants fought them on their turf and won. Ooh, Apex even lucky to be alive here. Meant to be the kingpin of round 11 for Vitality. That one MP9, the only primary in play. Kylar awaits the headshot to be given over. 
I think Kylar deserves some recognition. Obviously, there's two names that come into the spotlight with switching to an English-speaking team and him and Goofy. And while Goofy has left slack on the table, his individual level falling off after being the second highest rated player for the nine core back at, say, Cologne of last year. This isn't quite the same Goofy. This flank is crazy. I was not seeing anything. He's only going to find one on B steps. The rotations, therefore, are not coming in oh, just he yet. He doesn't even know about this one guy. Yeah, this works out very well for Eds. Just missed the timing. There could have been a deagle in their back. And instead, Zaiwu trying to chase the A-Ram play now. It's a little bit too late. Apex tries to spam through smoke, gets nothing for his efforts. Two deagles that are indeed in a position to pinch all this. Oh, <laughs> my God. Through the floor. Ugh. Hades takes it to the face, survives and responds. And Mezzi, far too much to ask of him here in round 11. Looking for something, a, a kill, anything to take Ents down a peg, but they are looking strong. And it all comes down to some nasty timing. Yes. Zaiwu, poor guy, chasing ghosts towards that B site. Yeah, could have got a little... I mean, it's the player who could maximize a flank like that with a pistol, that would have been him for sure. But i uh, got to say, Ents making fewer and fewer mistakes by the day, which you have to appreciate. Do I have to appreciate that? The running, side strafing, full AK spray headshot through smoke? I don't want to appreciate no, it. No, I don't think you have to appreciate that. Okay. He can take it. He can run with it. And Flamesy's going to try to put a quick end to what has been relatively consistent success out of Ents throughout the middle of this half on ramp. An opening kill for Vitality has been quite some time. Got to make sure they make the most of it here. This half has fizzled out after what was a pretty convincing start. 4-2 at one point. Five straight from Ents so far. But how do they claw back a man disadvantage again? Boost into B. Mezzi better not be on that same angle again. Plays this pillar pretty often, and I feel like it's gotten predicted at least twice. Flamesy set up and waiting for the crane walk up, but if Glaive comes around short, this will avoid him. Apex, nice headshot though. They disassemble the boost instantly. Trying to hold on to this 5v3 to close out the half. We've got 25 seconds left for Ents to get their eighth. And it's going to come down to the ramp pit, bomb included. Apex pressing along, gets his thing. <laughs> sketchy. He doesn't get that kill. It's kind of weird. And oddly enough, it still leaves the possibility of the round win here in the hands of Ents. There's a trade frag from the back line as Hades gets one and survives on a single point of health. Kylar, what does he do? He's got to plant the bomb. No other choice. They go for the spam. They deny it. And this one just gets a little wacky. Mistakes were made. Hades survives the half on a single point of health. It's a fifth added to Vitality's tally before they take to the T side. running away does get run down by grim good frag but i mean yeah it's uh it's a not a particularly appealing retake i think with these upgrades right so there's a famus that hauser can get into instead definitely go back for the famus son you've already got the adp in the hands of grim i would love to see hauser find the rifle instead of having the scout in play You've got time to do so as yeah, well i'm just gonna see if i can go and find it because it shouldn't be that hard to find one of his teammates just had it so hopefully he goes back and looks to pick it up. 
Yeah, it's in it's in the monster pipe. It's huh. just it's just there in front of him, in front of that little cinder block. Well, I mean, yeah, kind of, perfect, Jay. It's kind of running out. Is he gonna go grab you? Oh. Okay. Maybe yeah, I'm just uncomfortable on the on the rifle after that previous round. No, but he's gonna get the ult from Grim. Uh, so it could be so, nice for someone. Famous, yeah, then yeah, they yeah. Could, you know, and, th and then at this point, you've got the AK as well. So you, you could have had two rifles and an M uh, and the AWP, sorry. And you, you don't really need to upgrade anything else. You could just maybe get to a 5.7, a, a P250, something along those lines. Now Grim's going to hold on to the AWP. Hazard's going to wield the scout. Maybe it'll work. 10-10. Grim's trying to connect a plate. Forced away. By the flames, that's Anito hearing this. Space conceded. Staying active is Grim, well aware of the power position he currently occupies. Jump spot out of Sats. Anito goes a step too wide. It's Grim, first blood. Apparently it's Grim and Elijah having to do everything. Oh yeah, they got these boys in their backpack, 22 and 23 respectively. Well, they're rotating towards B, away from the AWP quite swiftly. Denied towards Monster with the smoke. Grim's joined the party. Floppy is here with the AK, and this would be a time for him to get a multi. Now I'm in a dialogue. Nork shaking his head. Three members of Cole on this side of Jacob taking a closer look at his AK. Now was not the time. Two left. It seems like Cole making it work. That may be, Chad. It hinges on Nork. Can he disrupt? 20 HP. Sensors hit a great shot. JT's the down. Entz making the group stage with a Polish core after years of no Polish representation, and they are not wasting this opportunity. A good amount of A ramp control coming out of Glaive, and a turnaround from the start of this map as Vitality started strong. They are now up 7 5 and beginning the CT endeavor with Glaive at the top of the scoreboard again. Polish, Pol. Polska Goro, baby. What's that Polish cow? That's just a funny song. What is the direct translation again? Uh, for Polska Goro? Yeah. It's... Uh, Poland strong? Just like... Amazing Poland. Something like that. Hold on, let me see. Okay. Sign me up. Ooh, look at this booby trap setup. We got Hades with his head down. We got Goofy up top with Beretta's. Glaive's going to draw the attention out. Oh, you think this is going to go well, Vitality, but you're wrong. Chewed through like it's nothing. Four kills and even Mezzi flashed as he tries to get anything going back. That could not have been better. Uh, Polish Mountain, apparently. That set up the layers. The Berettas off the boxes, I mean perfection. And Mezzi comes out into the B site, looking for anything to be proud of here. Ents are absolutely taking this opportunity versus the world's number one. And Vitality are going to have to get to work sooner than later. Sorry, Mezzi, you got an entire camp of players on the other side of it. You got that slow flank coming from the last piece. This is a perfectly placed pistol setup. Glaive calls it quick. And Entz, the momentum doesn't stop now. Ooh, ooh. no, it does not. It was Apex at the beginning of the game saying, sit down. It's not over yet. He said it's only beginning. Well. They haven't had anything since. Maybe he's the one who wants to get up. There's a conversation to be had within this game, of course. We are talking about Apex on one side, the in-game leader of the year in 2023, versus Glaive, one of the best in-game leaders to ever do it. Yeah, I think his... Um one thing he was always criticized was for how many players he had to win with or whatever. Although if you have a good team, why would you make the roster move, right? That's sort of the, the silly part of that. But one thing that he's, I personally always known about him is he's extremely adaptable because he, every time he talks about a new teammate or somebody, somebody else in terms of learning something, 
He is always open to novel ideas about how to approach the game. Whether it was taking advice from teammates that he had on his roster, or when he switched from Kirby to Magisk, he said it's always good to learn from like the new players, young players' way of learning, learning the game. Even when he was younger, that's the same way he would look at it. So, seems like the idea of CS2 being brand new would actually be a good fit for somebody like him. Goofy under pressure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Apex gets the charge going. Ooh, the Tech Nines got close. I'll give them that. Diha and Kylar almost killed, but SMGs tear them up. You've got Zywu alive, which means you've got problems still if you're Ents. All his teammates are dead, but he's got a 1v3 nearly wrapped up already. Diha and Kyler. Oh, that softening damage not going to mean too much. Ents win another one. The full buy means nothing for Vitality. They don't get the bomb plant. They don't get those kills close on generators that they needed. And so this one continues to fall away from them. Yeah. We're, we're getting into stomp territory now. Oh, yeah. And there was uh, some investment there. I think that Vitality still aren't really thinking about losing until next round. And uh, I don't think Ents are thinking about winning till the game's over. So at least that's a good thing with them. Even their match versus the Bongols, they were super locked in front to back. Because it is MR12 and they are the team that are going to suffer Amazing upsets and vi oh, upsetting yep. victory, upsetting upsets, excuse me. Beautiful timing from Mezzi on the first kill. We saw that jump over the wood wall, but even on the jump, he didn't see Mezzi just slide under him. So the Tech Nines burst through to the B site again, setting up the possibility of the plant. We get Apex's Deagle finding a mark, but fast flank wastes no time. Diha getting back the man advantage, leaving just these whittled down Tech Nine players, the hopes and dreams of Vitality, looking for that plant still alive as Flames goes deep over the Ooh, smoke he into got the CT out. spawn and very quickly over towards A with an M4 to work with. Yeah, no one cutting off his cross. He knew exactly what he wanted to do in that moment which makes me feel like he's quite sharp about how he's going to play this out in the end. His big problem is, of course, his HP, and he's chosen to sit on the bomb. So thing is, the two normal options would be short or, or on the ramp here for the CTs to try to clear him out. That means he needs to take one headshot fight fast. But honestly, he doesn't have room to escape from the other. I mean, both of them are going to have to be headshots. There's one. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man, back into the cover, confirming Hades, too. Flames swings, and Hades makes sure. Not today. Not this time. Not as Ents continue to collect a tenth round of the board. Although timing almost works out greatly there for Vitality. Have to say it, Mezzi had a golden ticket to get into that B site. It got Flames up and over the smoke, escaping with the M4. Bomb plant will help if Vitality are going to come back into this map. But I do respect Diha, a triple kill on the B flank. Definitely keeping this one in control for Ents. And yeah, <laughs> you see Hades shake it off. High pressure situation for him to close that 1v1 versus a very capable aimer in Flamesy. Yeah. And Hades also had some tr struggles in high pressure situations, usually with the op. He just misses, has a dull shot and a big round sometimes. That unfortunately has become sort of a part of his brand. And uh, hopefully that can change. And I also think that's something that Glaive could potentially help with as well. Like, Glaive is the reason that Device stopped choking famously and brought him his first major. So, he recovered the what it what became the strongest branded CS, Astralis, for the later part of that game. Someone like Hades could use that. Somebody who has massive talent, has had such big maps playing under Snappy, but has also choked. Spinks doesn't want to get into it top middle. A consistent piece Sorry, is his late lurks. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, I am saying Snappy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And Snappy. It's been a couple of roster moves since. I was making the <laughs> Ends 9 thing again. Okay. That was messing me up because of Deha. Oh, Kylar. Ahead of it as well, right? That smoke's up. T's are thinking, nah, they're going to give us a little room. I do like that Ends get disruptive with it. 
comfortable 5v3 here, cutting one off of the cross. Kylar Goofy combining again, and no entry, none allowed. Sphinx gets the headshot as Zaiwu falls empty-handed. That is only Spink's second kill of this map. His nade, ooh, nearly finishing off Goofy, but that is an 11th out of Ents, and as previously said, we are deep in the territory of a stomp. Yeah, we are, yeah, and, and with a 2-14 and 14 score line, I mean, that only amplifies the issues, I guess, on the side of Ents. It is looking fantastic on the side of Vitality. There are numerous problems, and uh, especially when the right-hand man of the server can't get it going in a match where he's expected to. It's going to make every round hit a little harder. What an opportunity Glaive is giving these young men. Every Polish player dreams of a chance in the Spodek, and it is still a difficult journey to get there, but this is the first step, the quickest road ahead. And the pundits have considered Group B to be the one open for the taking. Sixteen kills on Glaive, fifteen frags on Kylar. And a huge buy advantage here for Ents to try and establish that 12-5 lead. Glaive trying to get his contact down ramp, nothing really rolling. Low utility for Vitality in this round. Double smoke and a flashbang. That's not to mention, again, just two guns. Uh-oh. Miss CT smoke. It's a bit thin. Here we go, Apex over the top. Oh, d -Hub, beautiful. Ooh. Triple kill like it's nothing. Mezzi's gonna get the one wow. D in, but this is an immovable, rock solid version of Ents. You, you, really, you really don't wanna get too excited about, you know, any map in CS2 that doesn't finish. But now that it's 12 to five, and you see the plays that are happening, they're only growing in momentum. It's like, wow. Looking back on all the previous maps that Ents have had at this event, how much better they're getting too day by day has just been really, really nice to watch. And now their biggest, strongest competition going down, maybe the fastest as well. Insanity that this is such a blowout. Felt like 10 minutes ago that Apex told them to sit down and warn them that it was only getting started. Little did he realize that was the end of Vitality's success. Yeah, maybe Vitality wished they got started sooner. So missed out on some progress. This is now 10 of the last 11 rounds added to the board for Ents. A one-off in the middle of it all, but at least this time, Flames, he gets the quick entry on A before any other piece is really in place. Ents far more adamant about B and mid. Goofy and Hades only working with the $700 to spare, so maybe with the way A falls this quick, it is just an easy save call. Yeah, they were ready for an attack right then. I mean, if they were going to, you would never play. Well, to be honest, that could have been a, a slight mistake, right? It, it, they should have been either playing retake or from some very unexpected position late round or something uh, to play a 4-1 set setup like this. But they were definitely not, not expecting or hoping that it was going to be the A ramp. So really, minimal losses here for Ents. Let it go. So what? Apex catches you with a little off timing. I think there's a very expected Apex call, though, to say when we're losing this much, all right, wake up. You know, it's time to go. Let's get something done. Well, they'll need more than that one. Still trailing by six. And a map one win on the line each and every step of the way here for Ents. So cool to see Glaive's name at the top of that board. You, know, you do it once, you think it's just a flash in the pan, a throwback to times long gone. But here he is, taking a chunk out of Vitality tonight. d -Hut trying to open up, but it's Hades from the short side, double Ooh. through the tarp. Talk to him. Sets him down. 
And a 5v3 to try and lock in map one. Mezzi looking to reopen the possibility of Vitality extending this opening map. But my god, does this look bleak. Not just bleak, but at times uninspired. Back into this slower pace, the tempo and the utility. It just sets a precedence and it puts Vitality back. Like walking through sludge towards this A site. As D has set up on sandbags, he will peek into Spinks. And that headshot fast enough to put the A play under question. Glaive pushes ahead of the smoke grenades, wants to hold off on short. But he made movements and sound on the way in, so they're on high alert. They have been corralled to the crane. This is their only option in. Spinks versus Glaive. He loses the duel to the Danish IGL. And as Mezzi's hands are busy, Flames has to give good cover. The threat of that smoke push was high, but nobody actually comes through. We've got one on headshot, keeping his head down as they have lost track of Glaive. He works back around the crane. He knows oh, that's his squeezed. teammate. Yeah, he knows he's been squeezed. That's perfect. a perfect play. Sat down by Tarp. He goes back into them, softening them up and trying to end this. But Flamesy, he comes back around fighting. Goofy's got one. Hades the last. And just like that, we've got Ents map up over Vitality. Ladies and gentlemen, Poland in Katowice is a whole other beast. This core has taken a real chunk out of Vitality. And I'm not talking about squeezing some 13-11 off the board. A stomp to kick off this best of three. Ah, yes, and they return to form. Yes, that is the little ints that could. And hot damn, Trace. Yeah, hot damn indeed. You thought we were done with close games. No. You thought we were done with three mappers. No, we're not A stream. We go all night, baby. And Apex might get a little bit of something at the end, just not what he was hoping for. Yeah, and <laughs> maybe right now, just keep it confined to the server. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, overall, you see the score line. Your eyes do not deceive you. These numbers are not backwards. It is ints picking up. Uh, the first map of this series and the opener for what is both of these teams within this stage. Uh, and I welcome you back to the Intel Extreme Masters. We got Steel in the end, we got YNK in the middle, and I go by Trace most of the time, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> well, we were talking about, you know, for Ents, they're trying to mash all these different things. Yeah. A little bit of Ents, a little bit of Cube and Glaive. 
I think there's a lot of nine right now in this team, man. Like they, they were one of the best, if not the best team in the world on Vertigo, despite probably not being a top 10 team in the world, but they really nailed down that map. And that just continues to be the case, even here in this lineup, when they have the core of the team, Kyla are doing tremendous work for them. Yeah, and you know, I, when I was watching it, I'm like, you know, Vitality, not really good on the CT pistols, and not really like the greatest at CT side. Eh, it'll be okay, they'll start coming back, they'll start getting rounds eventually, and then, yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on. It's, uh, they looked like they were going through the motions of doing all their protocols and everything, but they just looked flat. It looked like, I mean, Sphinx was down at like 1 in 16 at some point in the game. Like, he was not having any any luck getting anything going. Zaiwu was you know, doing everything he could, but at some point, people need to be able to hit shots, and even though it sounds like boiled down, watered down, like, that's not really a deep dive into the analysis of what's going on here, but realistically, there were so many just opportunities to win duels that they traditionally should win, but they just didn't. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't come together, but uh, I think you're right. I think I think Yanko's touched on a very important point there, which is for the side of nine, which, you know, obviously the former nine that is that now plays under the Ants banner, 16 win streak on Vertigo kind of speaks for like, hey, we know how to play the map. And I think also something that we shouldn't forget as well, another really strong characteristic of that Astralis roster was preparing for your opponents. And sure, there was probably a good part of that that was Zonic, but I think there was a good part of that that was Glaive, you know, and being able to find gaps in your opponent's game, just come up with a couple of things that you want to try and exploit, that you want to concentrate on. We've seen that so far happen in a couple of games for this new Ants lineup where they're doing a really good job on the T side. Jumping Jack's Trace? You yeah. Those? One, two, three. No, I mean, they're actually they're doing all right. This guy's yeah. speeding through it, yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, this is one way to stay active, right? Obviously, your blood's flowing from that one. You're playing Vitality. You already know you're not the favorite coming into this matchup. Then you got to go outside where it's cold, so you might as well stay warm. Oh, yeah, and you just won, so you want to keep that one going, too. Much like a, a quarterback, perhaps, putting that jacket on on the sidelines, Janko. Yeah, exactly. You want to stay warm. You have that little pouch where you're putting your hands in. Uh, I don't know where... Vitality has to put their hands in order to <laughs> get a little bit warm and warm up into the game. But now it's getting a little bit interesting, right? As you talk about Anubis as well with Enz picking the T side, that's why. So they can just keep building that momentum so they can be the aggressors, the one who dictate the pace of the game. Yeah, and we just saw in the last series, for example, that, you know, going aggressive on T side, being able to split the map, taking the map control, and then just having your way with the the defenders is going to be really easy. But I mean, this is also Vitality's, like one of their better maps, if not their best map. So are we going to see the same thing that happened on Vertigo? Probably not. But as I just discovered today, the Caster's Curse is real. And I'm not going to make any of these, you know, things... Uh, you need to be careful with the yeah. power that you have. Yeah. yeah, it's with great power comes great responsibility, something like that. So I'm going to, you know, take a step back from that and make sure that I uh, don't say anything silly. Which is for why all of our sake. Which is why Trace never uses it. You know, he's very irresponsible. Oh, you know what? Tell me more. Yes, <laughs> yes, I might not be. Uh, no, I, I think Anubis. Do we need a third? I mean, come on, man. I think there has to be. Like, has come to on. Be, right? I think for Sphinx as well, Anubis. That's one of his highest-rated maps. I think this is probably his worst map. You know, since on, he joined Vitality on, Vert yeah. Yeah, on, on Vertigo. I don't see that happening two rounds in a row. Right, first map of the tournament as well for Vitality and uh, a bit of a rude awakening. Yeah, it's definitely not the start that you want to have, but I mean, it's a BO3 for a reason. And, you know, all the hype that we did and talking up Vitality before the game started, it's not because we're just like, doing this for the fun of it they've shown time and time again that they are the best and so it's you know we can chalk it up to upset or whatever we could say good preparation from ents and you were right like we did see a lot of glaive-esque things coming in here and i i think i was talking about this earlier about you know i saw on ancient i saw on mirage it looked like glaive did the the microwing yo let's regroup here, you two go here, you two go here, we clear the map together and we move around. Like a very Glaive, Astralis era-esque way of playing. And we're seeing glimpses of that in this roster. So, you know, parts here, parts there coming together and, you know, probably preparation as well. Yeah, which is what we have to do. Go prepare ourselves to sit down and then watch this of Anubis. <laughs> What's <laughs> I don't know. A deep breath, a bunch, of, a bunch of gigglers around here. Uh, yeah, so Anubis comes up next. We do see Ents currently ahead in the uh, series itself, and that's by winning that first map. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. We'll be RB. Well, uh, 
ends with a victory on that first map, and I was here watching most of it. The energy that is coursing through their veins from the very first round until the last, led by Glaive. It is, you, you want to say fairy tale, but it's starting to form just a little for me, taking down Vitality. I will say right there, this we saw this in the Astralis game. It's when they're playing against some opposition that is a mighty team that they seem to want to go further and want to go harder. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen on this next one on Anubis. But what happened over on Beastream? Well, Beastream is done. Oh. Complexity got themselves not just one map win, but two. 2-0? Two yes, 2-0. Two I spoke to TC in between the first map and the second map, and even though they were going into their map pickup overpass, which has always been good for them, he realizes it's been struggling so far, right? Ever since the start of CS2, it was right on a higher to a final and then slowly down. He said, we need to play to our strengths. We can't be kind of overthinking things. We need to come in some confidence. Halzerk had a better performance than we've seen at all recently from him. And on overpass, it did get close. It did get scary. But what I see as a positive, they fought from behind. And that is something they can take forward into future games for their group. But let's see how it goes. It's still early days, but one win for Complexity means a lot. Maybe Complexity is back. Who knows? And maybe Vitality loses 0-2. No! Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike! Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. But for me, this is like, you know, they saved the two guns and yeah. now they force again yes. and they only have three smokes. Yes, but it's because if you don't force and now and you also have an AVP, so it's... And if you don't force, you will only have three guns next round also. But now you will have two guns and your loss bonus will only go up. So if you lose this one, then you have uh, three loss bonus and then you just need one eco buy. So I think this is why we're seeing more and more people forcing. And I think actually it makes sense. Uh, I think we also trying to force a bit more than you did in, in uh, Cisco. I just sometimes I see these teams save on T side, right? And mm. it ruins their economy for like the next four rounds. Yeah. Unless they somehow win a round uh, or, or, or maybe get a couple of Bob plants in a row. But you see now they're in a 5v4. Yeah. They're main splitting again. They like to use main. And they're doing it perfectly. One from door, three from main. Yeah, that's tough to get out from heaven when you have one in T event. That's not gonna happen, especially not against an AVP, right? Another force, I guess their loss bonus for the last one is 2400, but I mean, that would have given them a good gun round for the end. I think they maybe believe that the CTs have really low economy. I mean, I was surprised when I joined the NST because they were so used to forcing. <laughs> and I was much more used to playing full buy rounds. I think Snappy is thinking a lot about economy, about when they can break the CT's economy and stuff. Kind of have an opportunity to do it, but not really, right? When we talk to him, it's also... Sometimes it's full, but sometimes it's just, you know, AKs. He just feels to have to put the pressure on the opponents. Mm. Well, constantly, even if you, like, lose the round, but you get two, you need to get some kills. They can't mm. be having flawless rounds, which... Yeah. Sure, but also, if you constantly have weird buys because of it, then it makes it harder. Now they have one more bad buy, right? Yeah, it's been so many. It's, it's, it's kind of, you know, they could five drop, rounds is a lot. They could drop an AK if they wanted to. I think it would be good in this kind of situation, but they're doing some execute instead, maybe. And they're doing yard smokes and just going five guys yard. And I mean, the, the tough thing about going five guys yard is that if they push lobby, they know exactly where you are at. Oh, I see, yeah. Mm. Oh, but <laughs> Oh, uh, what? So who can miss? What? Yeah, two in a row. It's Never crazy. seen before. It's Never crazy. seen before. I think Sonic will give some freedom mm -hmm. to Snappy. Uh, a lot, probably. Uh, like, just really a lot, I think. But I think with time, he will try to implement some of his own faults and stuff. Um, and um, yeah, I think he could be... 
he could probably be saying like, is there a p- possible scenario where we don't force so much? And Snappy will probably say, maybe. Yeah, maybe, we'll, <laughs> maybe, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss see. it. Yeah. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Lukas, yes. uh, best of luck in the tournament and, and dobre. thank you. Dobre, for, dobre. <laughs> thank you very much. I can't explain I can't explain And so ends have decided to roll up in style the group stage well underway and they're not wasting any time it wasn't a bare bones beating of vitality no it was an all classic whooping back on vertigo of course definitely putting the nine core back up in the spotlight as one of the best on that map that's a statement win to kick off this series but there's also still questions around the depth of this roster and of course it would be so uncharacteristic for Vitality not to bounce back. Yeah, uh, we'll say though, it's a pretty damning analyst test segment in terms of the expectations for Ents in the series, despite how promising Ents have been, just because of the fact that it's Vitality they're playing up against. But Josh said in the back half, in these last two maps, they're both decent for Ents. So it's a, there's a chance that the upset could happen, you know, if they don't straight up get 2 owed Down the road. But now, mm. they got Anubis to look forward to. I think they're actually not in a bad position whatsoever. And they're just a little bit more revved up right now than Vitality are. Yeah, we saw him head outside immediately after their map win, hitting the jumping jacks, looking lively. Got to keep that blood pumping because everything you just did in the server, you want to do again. They said it prior to the series going live, that Vertigo had to be a part of Ence's map win if this upset were to happen. Two chances to close this out. If not on Anubis, then Nuke after this. Ence have given themselves some real runway tonight to cause a real tremor in Group B of the group stage. Betting odd favorites still Vitality. Hades and Deha leading the charge. We got Jakey and MC on the numbers tonight. Bringing you the POVs of this bloodbath. Mezzi, quick attempt to hold back. Temple doesn't find his mark. Apex kind of leaning between both attacks, both avenues, both routes being taken here by Entz. Nicely done by Sphinx. There he is, all map long, back on Vertigo. His absence was unfortunately deafening. And now Hades will be definitely trying to claw this back. We've got the entirety of what's left of Vitality stuck down in the dark room. Not that he knows this, but he picked up the bomb and he tucked into platform. And now he hears the rumblings of the CTs looking for him. What if he just sits back plat and never gets found? His teammates over towards Temple, he hears them leaving. Hades, he hears two sets leaving, but he gets blindsided by Flamesy, who confirms Bomb was hidden there the whole entire time. At least it's a plant. At least it's a chance for Glaive to come and join him. But he dodged the first threat. And now Ents, they're just going to pull off the bomb site. They're going to give space over to Vitality, who then throw a smoke on top of Bomb and tap, and that tap is going to elicit any kind of a response. Glade comes back in from Temple, gives up his death. Hades, it's a fresh mag and a 10-second stick. He's trying to duel with Flamesy, Ooh. who picks it up with Berettas, and Vitality will take CT Pistol. to trust the stick. You see how they come flying around every corner, spraying, basically, no matter what gun they have? So important to do that right now, unfortunately, uh, but it works out quite well. I think that the smoke they throw down is the, the best thing they have. Whether or not they need to actually diffuse it, it forces the peaks out from two very powerful spots. You could say, oh, well, Hades, you know, unfortunately sh showed himself a little bit earlier, but they were never going to get that far away with three players from being able to walk back in to darken. I think the plant was inevitable, so very nice pistol rounds. Well coordinated here for Vitality. Feels like if Hades catches Flamesy off guard, then that kill really guarantees it. Hold on, no way. Double Galil kill coming out from Goofy. He's got a third one on a silver platter, but Apex 
makes sure to draw blood back. And that immediately cools off what could have been a crazy round for Ents to just stampede into A. They'll still hang on to man advantage with very capable weapons across the board. Light on Util with a smoke and a frag. But they've got this defense so split up, so getting proactive is Apex. If he can get into the back line of the river push, that would be one thing. But this three-player pack is already up inside of E-Box. Sphinx looking to improve from the first map. Doesn't get the best of Deha. Leaves pressure on Zaiwu and Apex. And that's one of them confirmed. They start to head the other way. They've got to cut their losses and lick their wounds. This is an immediate bounce back out of Ents. That's a statement. I mean, this is the kind of story that you see happen when it's a dominant team versus an underdog. It's usually a dominant team. They stomp the first map, then the second map. They give up a pistol, then they bounce back instantly. This is happening to Vitality. Vitality are not the ones who are showing that they are the better team, that they're the more dominant team or the less scared team. The fact is in Counter-Strike, that has to be earned week to week, it feels like, and that's why it's always so incredible to have periods, eras. Any kind of win streak. Yeah, any kind of win streak. Apex holding on to the one Galil. The remnants of what was Vitality's opening momentum. It was Astralis, right, to be Vitality at Blast Groups? Yes, sir. And this would be an even... Uh, steeper upset, and it's actually beat Astralis, but that was already an upset. So <laughs> it's like you could say that this would be kind of even uh, even more impressive. I think the context of a Polish team making it to the group stage of Katowice, and then following it up with an upset over the number one ranked team. Oof. History in the making. Although very early on here in map two. It's a good kill on Flamesy. Deals with the long control, creates a question mark for Vitality that's gonna keep half of what's left of them just occupied to this half of the site. I wonder I wonder which next great nation that Natu will bless with a Katowice <laughs> run, okay? Yeah, right. Whether it's the Finnish ends in 2019 or the ends today, you know, being the first Polish CEO to bring ends to Katowice glory here. He has had a wild ride. And, I mean, it's crazy that like, <laughs> the this team. Polish cores haven't even had a match win or a map win in years. All of a sudden, we've got Rebels and Ents knocking on the Spodex door. Kylar creeping in wonderfully here and dealing with both Mezzi and Sphinx. And his performance back on Vertigo was a welcome sight. Again, when it goes beyond Hades, we were looking at Goofy for months. Kylar's gonna fall, bomb plants canceled. Glaive's got covered dipping deep from Deha. And Kylar should be proud. Makes mincemeat of that B site. Stepping forward here with his brethren. 2-1 lead for Ents early on. And it's pistols for Vitality now. Yeah, yeah, this is no joke. But it, it is a step up in competition when they played. They played against Mongols, and Mongols had... Sad part about Mongols, man, is they're... Individually, they're so much worse than they were last year. They have players like uh, Blitz in particular, but who are just look good on all fronts. But they played against them on Anubis, and it's got the 9-3 T half, and that that's excellent. But uh, even a 9-3 T half here versus Vitality is not going to be the same, so they shouldn't be in the same headspace. Vitality can still easily come back into this match at any point. And the interview can always be, we just took a long time to wake up. <laughs> it's a good day. This would be a glorious one. Glaive trying to chase that frag over to the A site. Actually falls back with Bomb. Don't want to lose this one of all rounds, but it is indeed a B site stack with a Deagle in the middle of the USBs. Catching that one player who was A in mid. He opens the door, plenty of time, send the MAC-10 okay. in. He is going to make some money. Vitality thought maybe they had the slimmest of chances, but that <laughs> MAC-10 shreds through all three. Man, I got to say, dude, these Poles are looking hyper-focused. Glaive just got to actually start learning Polish so they can reach the, the max heights, level. Right, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 
He strikes me as the type. <laughs> that laugh? Who was that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Damn, Vi Vitality. You're getting laughed at. That was Cuban. Producers reporting in. That was Cuban. That was Cuban. <laughs> Here we go, a little active play from Vitality. Let's see if their guns can make a difference. Because you can't get stomped on map one and the second. Oh yeah. my, the confidence. The box with this SMG still. I mean, Mezzi's feeling doomed here. 39 health, oh wow, he turns it even blind. The fact he's able to kill Kylar is huge. But a chance for Glaive to double down on the entry. CT set scrambling. You see Zywoo making his move. Apex shapes Diha off of the bomb site. And that will still be bombed down. I much prefer this deep smoke. Ooh, oh, okay. Saiwoo finds timing on flank, and that is Hades canceling the plant, potentially delivering the bomb to the temple player if he pushes through. They no longer is compromised, but Saiwoo actually didn't stick around back there. He goes back to bridge instead, which is a great play to cut off any potential river rotation. Goofy just caught out in the no man's land, and Hades forced into the 1v3 clutch with a clean tap deep. He gets the first one down. And that reactivates Saiwu from watching on bridge back to holding long. Oh, what a wonderful clutch this would be from Hades. He set it up perfectly. I mean, Saiwu's slow flanking. Hades can clear out behind him fast, so he doesn't have to worry about that ever. Even though Saiwu's been missing, it's not part of his inventory anymore. Two taps down long to get Apex off the play. Silence here as Vitality get on site. Saiwu showing him a little skin, but Hades can't make the most of the chance he had. That headshot connects, and Flamesy's up next, but Vitality will answer early on. Yeah. Or the rest of the spray either, to be honest. That was that would have been a good, good test right there. Hit that one shot, but I, I like the way they hit the site. They just got picked off before their site smoke went up. And the deeper side smoke was well complemented by them clearing around with the first player with the MAC-10 who's low HP. But then he also died. I just much prefer, th much prefer that than the default smoke that everyone's been throwing where you can get spammed on the back of default and it's just a mess for allowing CTs to get rotating in too deep. So I wouldn't say Ents give that one away, but they did give a couple of kills away in that. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, I think there's also Mezzi fully blind 180 turn towards long and barrel stuffing the first guy. Goofy getting caught on the crossover. But Diaz confidence. Mm. That MAC-10 entry. I'll take that all night long. You know, Diaz is somebody who could take over games back in the international Ents. No doubt in my mind he could do it with his Polish brethren. Put him back on that platform. Hades, quick scope in off the mark. Kylar takes the angle, but the flash, well, that'll turn both of them right back around. You know, there's always this conversation around Zywu and when he is going to take over a server. I think that last round was a quick glimpse of what happens when you let him go unchecked? His cross on bridge caught the long player completely off. d trying to look through flames here. Him and Sphinx exchanging glances. And utility at this point. We got Goofy setting the flash in. Here it comes. Mezzi, not blind. It actually bounced yeah. off the top stair, so not ideal. But at least nobody runs through and dies because of it. Yeah, and they would have stayed in there anyway. So it's inconsequential, it seems like. Sometimes it's just important to know that uh, someone ate the flash more than you actually clear the area out. In this case, it doesn't really matter. Ooh, lost duel. Flames, he gets active. Goofy picks it up in the smoke. Three caught. Ooh. And Apex, bomb delivered. Not to mention that early damage out of Flames is going to prime Apex wonderfully. Sphinx tries to press out from Temple while Hades... Yeah, he's going to look the wrong direction. So CT is corralling the kills inside of A. 15 to the clock and Diha to the clutch. Apex pressing down. Ooh. Excuse me. Mezzi is there to close it out. His first on the round. Him and Sphinx survive. And Vitality tie the game at three. They should have just kept running, man. Uh, they were both sitting there <laughs> inside the camera smoke and were too scared to press forward if they both had run. 
then one of them gets the trade for sure. And even Glaive here as the second, sorry. It should have been Glaive to just continue forward. Hell, run and shoot. Yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> crouch walking while spraying. Yeah. You see that muzzle flash? That's so easy for Apex. Yeah. That's where, like, old habits die hard, of course. That's not even Glaive being old. Anyone's played CSGO is like... Miss chance. Kylar goes for the aggressive entry. Ooh, it's giving away a lot of momentum now. Like, Ents, they lose the first round, but it's close. The second round, but it's not as nice with the amount of uh, sort of mistakes that are being made now. The first round, the right after, you lose the opening kill instantly. They need to treat it as a little bit more precious, I think. And Gracious Glaive hands over an AK. No vision of anybody here. Vitality. Start to lean that second player back. Zywoo's not going to miss his shot on the approach. Missed Molotov as well out from the tees. That would have been burning Zywoo out of this position. It would have exposed Ooh. him to Goofy. Instead, Zywoo finds a safe pocket. And his sanctuary holds off Entz entirely. One missed utility just leans itself into the favor of Vitality. So strong, so easy there for Zaiwu. Yeah. Now it looks like Vitality have finally woken up and it'll take a little bit more effort from Ents yeah, don't to stay on all these kids. Yeah, I think no matter what, even if Vitality's form goes down a little bit, they're still always going to make less mistakes. And that's how you get consistency in the first place. And that's why they should be able to pick apart team to, who are as new as Ents every time. Less mistakes every single time, but uh, Vertigo, there was no mistakes from Ents, and they were keeping up aim-wise. Now, there are openings, and uh, Vitality's aim's getting a little bit better. Yeah, two elements of the game that turn to the tide. Vitality's favor. We get a timeout here as Vitality go up 4-3 on this CT half. You know, even though this is a new roster, I do like that we are talking about a core of the nine camp with Kylar, Goofy, Hades. And I know for a fact as well that Diha's always playing with these guys in FPL, even throughout the previous Ents iteration. So I yeah. feel like, you know, the chemistry at the very least, I think that has a quick start. Oh, yeah. Know? And it's not everything. There's still a lot of work to do. Nobody would deny that. But it is, I think it is a, it's a, it's a quick start. No, I think that matters a lot. I think yeah. that matters a lot. Okay, good. Then I changed my opinion, uh, too. I, I, it matters a lot. If you play if you play with people all the time, that's real. Yes. Like, the way they play yeah. is the way that they're going to act in a lot of your big matches, the way you, they talk, you understand what they mean. It matters. You get ahead. You, get ahead. You, know, you don't have to climb a mountain together to figure yourself out. You played three years of Face It together. Almost the same thing. Kind of harder, actually, than climbing mountains. Yeah. <laughs> Do you still play Face It three years later with your same teammates? Man, you guys have made it to Everest. That's back. K2 minimum. Yeah. <laughs> Triple Tech 9 out from Ents off the pause. I think there's some wiggle room in middle for Ents to maybe get rolling forward with. We've seen them iced out on camera by a smoke, but... I still think getting to that point has been easier than maybe it should be. We'll see if there's an opening there to exploit as we get Flamesy leaning back closer to the site with Zywoo, who, while blind, picks up Hades, goes back in for second servings. Oh, Zywoo! Oh! Come on. Three kills, him and Flames locking it down like it's nothing. Ents thinking they could serve up an A split. They get rocked. And Diha desperate to get anything going. Zywoo knows you're there. Sniff him out. Yeah, you're not getting past this. It's a full house between Zywoo and Flames. Yeah, my man is sharp right there. That was crazy with the op. You can see, yeah, I mean, Zywoo ultimately is like, it feels like he, you obviously don't see him off that often. More often than not, but still not that often compared to other oppers. Uh, but you just wonder what his stats would be like if he if he did off even more. Or maybe he does have. Maybe he has that Goldilocks zone of offing to 
rifling ratio, where if he did overdo it, it wouldn't be so nice. Who knows? Who knows what goes on in that mind? Mind of the woo. Quick pressure, oh. trying to cross. That Tech-9 Swarm can be deadly, but Mezzi holds the line just like that. Crack of the whip and the last one's down. Woo. Man, those Tech-9s got out quick. Some good strafes going on. Usually first, you see a bad spray like that and it's over. Yeah, first player's got three players in separate spots. Luckily, Mezzi lines them up. Look yeah. at this pack, all spread out around Sphinx. Yeah. Mezzi, good target selection. Newbie. It's like the first map didn't even happen. It's like a really good place to be mentally, though. <laughs> the past doesn't exist. I wish I could get stomped out and then just instantly reset like, yeah, like exactly. Apex can. That's, uh, that's a life skill. You know, like people, like you saw Ed's getting hyped up in between the, oh, hold on. I was just going to say, you saw hype, uh, Ed's getting hyped up outside, playing games together and stuff like that. That's something that Apex feels like people have stolen from his team. Bringing the soccer ball. Sorry, the football. 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 Playing ping pong. Ping pong. Oh, man. Iced out. Apex, he's... Uh... He's doing a lot better. 11 and 5 as he takes over the top mid bridge control. Smoke comes down towards the B site. Deha looking for the entry. We saw great things from his Mac 10. And he's got a player on a position familiar to Entz. Spinks going to lock it in. Apex just throws himself at this hold. Attempt at the spray control. Deha's going to let this one slide. Apex is everywhere all the time. Yeah, that's nice. And Vitality taking a quick lead here on Anubis. 7-3, the CT side looking rock solid. And this is one of the maps already in this half. This is something you learn from if you're Entz, and that's like the two rounds that they let them get back into when it was 3-3, maybe 3-2. And, uh, or sorry, 3-1. Tied up and then one more. Yeah. Only made possible, by the way, because of that round two force buy. That's the thing, though. Those, those mistakes start to really come to the surface again in retrospect. Gonna try it again, huh? Tech Nine's looking to blast past the B defense. Mezzi's gonna get burned out by Deha. Sphinx's position is known, but guess who's here again? Apex, perfect nade. Blows Deha away. Sphinx locks in on platform. You cannot enter this bomb site. This is the vitality we expected. Uh, keep powering him up. And just like hat, they just like that. They've already made half of it. One round left to go, and ends do not have anything to look forward to now. Uh, nuke. CT side will not be easy. A missed shot. Do my eyes deceive me? before to deal with yet again that pressure on bridge reapplied this time by apex <laughs> i feel like apex took that first map personally up to 14 and 5. looking for the dark room fight but nobody's there to give it to them so this could be a way to peel a player off the b hit deal flashed in oh nice hold by sphinx goes for the wide open angle Still concerned about the long hit, and indeed, the bomb is inbound. But every time, it's Apex just attacking the sides, jabbing you in the, in the gut, He's never so giving you any room. He's so good at timing that flank rotation fast. Yeah. With the shots to the side. He does that a lot, actually. You know, feels like a... It always feels like a stick-up when it's Apex. Just when you think you got your sight hit going, Apex gonna stab you in the side. That stiletto between the ribs. And then he gives it a twist as he talks his shit. And it's a fair one, because Vitality lead 
Hot damn, folks. We got some hot-handed in-game leaders tonight. Glaive back on Vertigo leads the show for the Ents Map 1 win. Apex told them to sit down. It was only getting started. We thought he was talking about the first map, but he's talking about this best of three, because now he's at 16 and five after a just clinical dismantling of Ents' T side here on Anubis. Vitality locked him out, shut him down, sent him home. Although we already are in Poland. It's yeah. a 9-3 comfortable lead for the T side of Vitality on a map they love to win. So let's see if they can make it quick. Push this series to the decider of Nuke. D-Hawk, give it a chance with the dual Berettas, gets as many kills as he has guns. There's damage here on Apex, who couldn't get up the oh. rugs. Hades, nice second shot. Not too bad. Leaves us in the 1v1. Flavesy does not know where Goofy could be, and he is in one of the most unlikely spots possible. Looking for a late catch on this rotation, and Goofy will not hear this, but oh, he will hear. Run. Now he's just got to time this. There's no plan coming in just yet. And because of that, he's got to know that Flamesy is uh -huh. just sitting tucked, right? No. <laughs> oh, my God. So well Execution. played. Well played. Here's Goofy flanking fast, sits was... in the corner and lets him make his move. I mean, that was a little bit fast to run down when you know Flamesy can also hear you. Yeah. Uh, Unless he only dropped assuming he had waited long enough and maybe Flamesy would be deeper. Do you think, or I... would you have thought so? I mean, if you, I mean, if you were on the bridge. If I was on the bridge, I would have thought he heard me. Yeah. But. Better believe he did too. Yeah, the way he did that wide swing. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing that didn't really make. <laughs> He's just looking for it, man. So they're going to be set back to USPs. This is looking like a quick one. Vitality going to crank that dial. Put it on hot. Flamesy. One shot in with the MAC-10. Goofy's USP will answer a quick fight down from camera. Ooh, messy. It's messy. Four kills with the Galil like it's nothing. Because it is easy. Unarmored USPs to the wayside. Ents knew that one was going to slip through their fingers. It's all about nuke at this point. It feels 11-3. Vitality ready to seal the deal. Unless this op on Hades and the one real buy that Ents will get in this entire half comes to fruition. Mm, yeah, could be the case. And it is just a CT buy. In a lonely pool of three rounds of total. And it is something, there is something so real about Apex talking smack after a couple of rounds on Vertigo when things went wrong. And that's, that. Uh, yeah, there is a whole series. And in the long run, no matter who they're playing, no matter what series it is and what environment, Vitality will probably win. So, <laughs> I mean, even though, you know, we don't, we don't get really the errors anymore. It's kind of becoming a characteristic of the best teams to always be able to claw back series. You know, look at FaZe and all those overtimes they gave us in the last year or two. It's nice to see Vitality have that up their sleeve as well. They've been tested at the start of 2024. But a passing grade's a passing grade. And here on Anubis, well, it's passing with flying colors. Zaiwu gets out to the pillar of the B site. We've got a late lurk top mid holding off in Sphinx. Zaiwu can smell you. Not going to let his guard down, but actually jumps up into Goofy, who luckily isn't hiding in the corner, has an earlier angle than Zaiwu expects, and puts us back 3v3. That's two CTs inside of the B site. Bomb starts to head back to A. They want to dodge That's it. Good play. Yep. I mean, they exposed themselves so much out of camera. Or sorry, Hades. not at all out of camera. Nice hold. Op up. Ooh, oh, great to Apex between the eyes. And pushes Flamesy to the clutch. Smoke doesn't quite extend to the bomb site, so now he knows he's doomed. Goes for the camera kill. He will get that one. But nice three-piece from Hades. Yeah, that is. So at least, that, at least we know when they get the good guns, they have a good chance as well. Their one attempt. They stick the landing. Great sequence from Hades. Wow. Great last shot as well. Two headshots. Overkill, but cinematic. He does hit great shots like that. I mean, that, that's something he is known for, I'd say for sure. Ooh, and 
Titans feeling like they got wiggle room this round. It is correct. We have majority pistols for Vitality, but they've got Goofy in the open. And there was no support there. Glaive went back. What was originally two CTs peeking out from E-Box turned into a solo expedition for I don't, Goofy. I don't know if they read the money properly. Maybe they're, I guess they're pretty surprised that this is an anti-eco, but that actually could cost them the map. Right? So this is Vitality surprisingly broke, and I think that Eds were not treating this as an anti-force or an anti-eco. At least Kylar gets that, but then he extends into what would have been the pack that had his teammates gun. Goofy delivered this M4 on a silver platter, and it's already coming back to haunt Entz. Glaive up next, thinking about the same peak. Saiwoo ready, and even though he doesn't get the kill, Apex there to finish it off. We've got a 3v2. Guns, of course, in the hands of Entz. Feels irretrievable with this persistent dark peak that's been coming out of the CTs. Maybe they just respect that wiggle room. Look how they know how to press the edge every step of the way. Nope, they get the gun back. They're just so perfect in their movements right now. Deha versus essentially three, all convening on this one spot. And they might just walk in right beside him. Oh, oh my God. And it wasn't even one of the rifles. No way. A single shot from the Deagle of Spinks, and the round is over. Plant goes down. There was no chance for Hades to get back into this one. He is so far away. And they're not going to give him anything. I, I, I'm going to say that this was a, a situation where they misread the economy. What do you think they were expecting to I push think, a player down? I think they were river? just, well, this would be, imagine if they had full guns, if they were going to take, um, if they were just going to take control of canals in any normal way. It's just objectively less risky. Uh, obviously, it's just objectively more risky, I should say, to do this versus ecoing players because they're more erratic. The game plans are more erratic on eco rounds. You could be trying to inter inter uh, to stop a rush or something like that, but you could you could do that with pre mollies and nades and doubling up on sites, right? So I'm gonna assume I didn't see the full sort of outlook on this opening setup. But do you want to put your rifles no. at close range to rifle uh, to pistols on rounds like this when it's like? You have lots of money and lots of utility. It's like, I don't know. Oops. Oopsie. Mistakes were made and uh, you can't take that one back. Yeah. And it's crazy because like Vitality show you from that point on how to keep the edge. Yep. And how to make it bigger and bigger. Yeah. I mean, there was this, this consistency from Ants peaking E-Box, right? Two more players die trying to control the gun of Goofy. It's like sunk cost. They keep trying to... Just keep investing. Yeah, just keep trying to double dip right there. And like, you only lose when you quit. Rut row. Listen, it was always going to be low chances for Ents to make this comeback happen. But now with a double five seven MP9 buy, the non-believers would already call it quits. Full-blown util across the board. Goofy at least presses up close with that 5.7. We know the capabilities of this nasty pistol. Far more passive and in contrast to the last round. Hades. Ooh, he's looking to the left, but there's actually a player on the plat to the right, so the pistol's going to have to get the duel. AK wins that one. Op's going to try to come get him. That's a good recovery from Hades for now. It frees up a bunch of long control, but we can also get Vitality sliding down into the A site. In the meanwhile, long range fight here from the M4. Mezzi trying to squeeze in with the fountain play. Glaive gets aggressive down the river. And this is good control from Glaive. This is a big fight, but Saiwu's gonna win it. Wastes no time taking his head off. They know where Hades was. They know where Hades probably is. And they know that this one should be easy to wrap up. We go back to Vertigo. It's a beautiful win for Enz. It's not even close with that 13-6 scoreline. And this one should be a bitter stomp, but Hades still fighting tooth and nail. Gets into the cover, but just fell for the ruse. Decides to walk it back. 
And as he does so, Mezzi doesn't ever need to cross. Saiwoo fakes it once. Hades comes out from camera, missed shots, and that's gonna be his demise. Had he hit that, we know he's got the talent to follow up on the re-peak, but instead it is Vitality answering back. And not with some crazy Zywoo performance, nay, with Apex putting his money where his mouth is, a 19 kill map to take it 13-4 and push our series into nuke. I feel like he is the GOAT of CS overall, the best in the world by far, in my opinion. Perfect teammate. He doesn't take up too much space for putting up the numbers he does. Just plays his role, and because he's naturally so good, all situations like feel good to him. I think he just leaves so much space to the other four guys to do their thing, and he will just like fill the gap in a way you haven't really seen any player do before. Zayu adaptation to CS2. At first, when I started watching the games, I even told my teammates, maybe he's not gonna be that good on this game and, I, and probably last like seven days or something like that like the guy is just unreal he knowledge for CS and he's feeling for what's going about to happen and strength and in terms of hitting our shots it reminds me of course here like he doesn't miss any shot like he has a chance he's gonna take it he doesn't see him losing duels I would say he's pretty optimized already he's one of the best players when you become top tier player you build a bit of ego and he build it he has the ego but I feel like in the best way like I don't see him like being toxic or being like, he, he don't have this be bad behavior. I feel like he's really good teammate, he's positive guy. This, that's what's important. And if you will keep like that for the next years, he will be like, I, I don't know what to say. Like he's, he's a, an alien. And I just can't believe you were all sleeping on Vitality. What were you thinking? No, I'm just kidding. I don't really think anyone thought that at all coming through any tournament anytime soon. But yeah, here at the Intel Extreme Masters, it's obvious that Vitality is siege for vengeance after the first map. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes, Team Vitality. That was my The International voice. I hope I pretty good, like... did it justice, but this is back to normal, so to speak. You know, it seems like it was a little bit of first map jitters, getting into the swing of things here for Team Vitality and on their own map pick. I think they show us, you know, why they have 100% win rate on Anubis. Yeah, definitely good things coming out of them on Anubis. And we could definitely see that on Vertigo, you know, ends coming in, they're prepared, they know what they want to do, they have a good game plan. It's a good map for upsets. Obviously, they have a strong record on it, but going into Anubis, Vitality's map pick, Vitality looking really strong on it, especially on their CT side. Like, usually we see lots of teams picking up a string of rounds on their T sides, ending with 8-4 halves, but you know, Vitality just slamming them constantly, not even letting the T's get any situation around canals, around outside of E-Box, up middle. Vitality is just like, we're going to fight you head on and we're going to fight you from different directions all at the same time. So really good and well played by them. And actually on round 10 specifically, like we saw them active from three different spots all at the same time. We saw them, we're going to see it here. We're seeing the setup from Apex, the nade onto the canal steps here. We're getting people close to A main. Apex is going to also, he's going to fight mid soon. But then at the same time as this, Zywu is actually coming out of E-Box right now and he's fighting. So they're getting a pincer maneuver on canal. Else. But after this fight happens, it's going to be like a little bit of a silent time. But it, that's not it. That's that's not the round for them. They're like, let's go for more. And they re-push that spot. And then they reset and they continuously shift around. They're never in the same spot. They're never fighting just one spot. They're just swarming together and fighting all sorts of different locations. And this is like why Vitality is so good on this map. And this is something that other teams need to start incorporating into their play. Like we don't see this from every team, and Vitality are definitely the trendsetters right now, I think, on this map. Yeah, and just remember the fact that one time, I mean, I know it's still different lineups, but there was a Vitality playing a phase on Anubis that was like 14-1, came all the way back, now didn't they? So Yanko, 
It was there the whole time. The, the writing was in the pudding. Different lineup, different game. Different lineup, different game. But so, like, one time that did happen. No, I'm, I'm joking. No, it's good. I think what we say about Anubis, right, it's difficult to sort of make plays on the CT side. It's very hard to hold the sides, you know, the whole round. And... Vitality almost re religiously follows that. So they're constantly looking for those fights wherever they can find them. They know that if they hang back, they're probably going to be worse off, you know? So sometimes it may look even a little bit silly. Hey, they already have a man advantage. Why are they pushing for more? Well, because one for one trade is good. Any information is good at that point, because even if someone dies, you know, maybe you get some good info, allows you to make a play somewhere else. And we've seen so today, even on Anubis, a couple of other teams that are not, Approaching it that way, like struggling to if. struggling to find rounds on their CT side, yes. Which, uh, you know, it, I, it's hard to pinpoint it, I guess, right? Because some teams, we look at it, we talk about, you know, is, is their T side like a CT side lacking? Is this more of a meta, the way the game is approached now, that causes these things to happen? Or are they just a new roster? I mean, that's pretty much what it comes down to this day and age, right? Yeah, I, I think for, and, you know, obviously, we were talking about it, if they're going to have a chance in this series, they have to win Vertigo. They did that, it was a, a, a bit you know, too high of an expectation for, to, to think they're going to 2-0 Vitality and they bought enough time to now go to Nuke, right? Where they're probably going to have an easier time managing the CT and the T side. Yeah, Nuke's probably going to be a little bit easier for them. But having said that, Vitality are super strong on Nuke as well. That's one of their better maps. And again, sort of the same thing as on Anubis. They have really good protocols when it comes to giving up locations, fighting together, moving around the map, never really letting the enemy do the next step. It's always they aren't reacting. They're proactive. They are staying one step ahead. So if you are going to do this, you're showing this about yourself. We're going to leave this open. We're going to go over here. We're going to do our thing. And as soon as this thing is done, whatever we get out of it, we're already moving on to the next play. And we've already had this planned, you know, 30 seconds in advance. We're not just going to do one thing and then be like, OK, what's next? They've already got that in the chamber ready to go. Yeah, I'm interested to see what the plan is for ends, right, on their T side? Is it maybe going to be just throw smokes yard and maybe wait for a reaction, right? Wait for them to flash Apex through the smokes, to break the smokes, maybe try to punish that with Hades on the AWP, have someone uh, look out for the lobby push, try to get a kill, some extra information. It's tough, right? The, the, what you said, the way Vitality plays is just really, really good CS. And on top of that, the individuals seem to have woken up now on, on Anubis. Yeah. One step, yeah, just one step further about it. We saw Entz actually playing Nuke earlier, and Glaive was getting kind of abused CT side at ramp as well. So I'm not so sure how I feel about Entz's, you know, if they start CT they, with winning knife round, is that even good enough at this point? I'm not even sold on that. So it's going to be really scary for Entz, honestly. Like, I don't want to do the caster's curse thing again. So that's all I'm going to say about it is it's going to be scary. We haven't said it for a while, Trey, so I'll say it. It has to be both pistols. <laughs> and converting, Three in the pistol, you know, get both pistols. A clutch or two in there. That's the oh. only way Ants wins this one. I guess you could say it depends. Uh, that one's, <laughs> oh that one's the lowest one I think. It's I, been a I'm, long day for I you. I just want to say I'm sorry to everyone home for what I just said. Like, <laughs> that wasn't even that good. Uh, some of those woes, though, uh, you know, Spinks is having an off day. Yeah, I gotta, I've got to say that. It's just kind of happening right now. He seems to be one of those drivers over there that can make moves. He can make the moves that are necessary for Vitality to find success. Um, I don't... I don't really know how to place that. What do you think, Ingo? I don't know, but he has a very important role for Vitality on you. He's the lobby player on T side, right? So you have to have confidence to make plays, to go for flanks, to perhaps go towards ramp if the ramp player is going to help the yard fight for you to take the available space there. And I think Spinks will do that no matter his score. I think he's experienced enough at this point, doesn't have that mental block that you know, if he's not finding the frags, he's all of a sudden going to just hold at the, at, at the start of lobby you know, and wait for pushes. Yeah, when you have a player like this, that it's their not necessarily, it's it's their style to go for it, right? It's not like a oh, I'm not feeling confident, so I'm not going to go for it. Like they're doing it no matter what because that's what the team needs. And when we look at Vitality, you know, Zai was really consistent and he's really good in the clutch situations, the the mid rounds, the late rounds. But he's not the one that's seeking out the openings. Usually, when we see that, we see it from Apex. He's pretty really, he's really active. He gets around CT side, T side. He's looking for openings. He's looking for information. He's looking to see how he can help develop the round, especially as the IGL. But the other person that we looked for to do that type of stuff is Spinks. He's the one that's kind of getting around, getting opening picks, you know, trying to play into his 
skill, which is, you know, his mechanics are really good. So he tries to do that to open up the round. We're not going to see him just being like, well, I'm not having a good day, so I'm going to just like sit back and do nothing. So Josh, tell me this. We've got just a few seconds. You know, we're going to be heading to a break. But tell me, if you're Ints, how do you go into this map and beat Vitality on Nuke? Well, you sit down on your chair and you... Okay, that is step one. That's <laughs> Make pretty sure good. your mouse and keyboard plugged in, your monitor's on. But when you do that, I mean, we're going to need to see them really breaking through together. They can't really sit around and wait for things to happen. If Vitality are able to move around and get the jump on them, it's game over. So Ents needs to be explosive, and they need to just get out of the gate really hard. And no jumping jacks. No jumping yeah, no jacks. No jumping jacks. Obviously, Obviously jacks. that's kind of proven. Maybe some push-ups. Set them off the groove. Let's go ahead and go to a break so that that way we can get situated for the last map of this series. We're going to settle the score on Nuke between Ents and Vitality. You are, in fact, watching the Intel Extreme Masters. Ents. here with me and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about building a team you know and starting off uh, with a new team with a new lineup what do you want to focus on we're, we're going to use uh, another new team Falcons uh, with some of your ex teammates on it uh, in their game versus Vitality or Nuke so before we just get into it some of the key things right that you also just had to address recently how do you go about it really it's tough but i think in falcon's case they have the same in-game leader as they had before in snappy and they have kind of the same core and in that core the in-game leader is as well so i think it should be a bit easier for those guys that have like the, the core with the same in-game leader or just like keeping the in-game leader I would say it's a pretty good pistol because the thing is that a lot of uh, duels is playing from inner and now you see two actually, both Apex and Saibu, uh, and they get the first kill and see the other guy. But the thing is that it's really hard to go up against these dual elites, so I think a lot of uh, teams are trying to avoid dual elites, so they're actually trying to uh, not hit uh, inner or A side. In the end, all left to Mazzy. 1v3, yeah. I don't think there's going to be much there for him. So, nice little pistol to kick yeah. it off. Maybe we will steal it. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep an eye out for yeah. it. How do you feel about forcing, not forcing? We see more and more, more and more teams starting to force. I think you need to have a good plan of what you're going to do. Don't force and just go into default, use your utility as normal and hope for the best because that's probably not going to work uh, unless the T-side is doing something wrong or unless you have like really skilled players that is just like killing two guys with, with MP9 or uh, or deagles or something. Um, but I think the most important thing is to have some second round strats, I would say. Here we see them just throw the smokes outside, yes. turn back into an A split. Yes. And because they, you don't have any Molotov in second round at CT, this is, uh, uh, the A side is one of the hardest to hold. And uh, you see that the, the Falcons is actually uh, utilizing that and uh, trying to take A side. Tough thing about A side is there's so many close range duels and you're going up against pistols, MP9s, maybe a shotgun. So that is the difficult part, but you know they don't have a lot of utility. So if you go slow and you wrench frag these uh, pistols, it should be easy, right? Also helps when you're splitting it from three ways with main, you know, it yes. gives you a whole new uh, avenue of attack, so to speak. So yes, that's true. These are the rounds where the T-side can sometimes overextend and when you lose these kind of rounds against maybe 157, two Deagles and uh, two USPs, it's always because people are overextending a bit and you think, ah, I have advantage, I have AK, they have nothing. And then you meet a Deagle and boom, you're dead. And then the snowball can go from there because maybe you don't have a lot of uh, information about them because you just died and these rounds is tough if 
uh, teams are not playing uh, the correct way or players are not playing the correct way, I would say. You really have to maintain your discipline yes. uh, in these rounds. They can go wrong so quickly. Yeah. The hard thing about maintaining the discipline is that CS is so stat-oriented today. Everybody's talking about stats, everybody's thinking about stats. You know how you get good stats. In a, it's against pistols, yeah. right? It's actually insane that we don't have like a filter for economy yet. We're pushing for it, but yeah. <laughs> who, who knows? Yeah, let's see. And so we dive into the deep end of Ents versus Team Vitality, the world number one versus a set of local heroes. To think that Ents were going to come out on top of Vertigo in such a lopsided fashion seemed insane. The answer is Vitality on Anubis, leading by example, Apex to the top of the boards. And now we fall onto Nuke. I think this is going to take something spectacular out of Ents and also a worse version of Vitality than what we saw in that second map, because that second map was near perfection from Vitality from top to bottom. Couldn't choose a mistake that Vitality made. Ents have promise. We've learned that much so far this week. Katowice has been good to them. But to beat Vitality in a best of three and to do it on this map here, now, tonight, this would be massive. They still have to reach another level. And yeah, Vitality, I think the most telling sign that they were back in it was just like, they started from a worse position on Anubis, found an open door and then kicked it open. Mm. Off the damn hinges. Off the damn hinges. And never, never looked, looked back. back. Yep. Exactly that. Apex, he told him to sit down. And you should too. Buckle up, folks. Deciding map between Vitality, world number one, and Ents, the local heroes. It is a top-heavy wounded G2 that awaits the winner of this matchup. The playoffs and the Spodek on the line. We've got Vitality sitting pretty on the CT side. Smoke on Flamesy with dual Berettas and armor. Talk about being set up to succeed. Molotov for the top hut. Flames burns his smoke. Perfectly applied. Hangs onto the angle. Makes the most of it with one kill. Goofy comes out. Trade is there. No follow-up. Apex uses the whole mag. Ooh. Gets a reload in. And Sphinx is here from main to try and help. It's man advantage for Vitality. Taken back off of Hades. And then both can leave. Perfect setup into the mid rounds. Well, now the late round, I guess. 2v2. Both CTs guessing. You know, all four players in general. Cheese was just more control over what decision is correct, per se. If they want to run lower, they can do that. They know they're exposing himself to almost the exact same risk, but I don't know if they actually want to end up planting downstairs with no smoke. So, CT and Zywu holding on to control, assuming, okay, well, I've got this if it comes this way, but yeah, they're going to come back upstairs. This is where Mezzi resides, sitting up in heaven. He's kept crouched. Not taking any kind of angle. The possibility of that ramp to heaven flank at an all-time high. Glaive yep. is going to watch heaven while the plant goes down. Yeah, he knows it's going to be... This is the only plant available for no utility as long as you have someone to cover heaven. As he sat here and he's got a flash ready to get Zywu out from vent. Flashback sight serving up the distraction. But Hades has departed into hut and looking to now come back into the bomb site. Zywu caught on the front of it. He gets his headshot, as will Mezzi at Apex. Yeah, a little relief oh. as it's Vitality's CT side to kick it off. Yeah, he said Zywu got caught, and I think, you know, anybody else, they did get caught, but Zywu, I mean, they had, they got to kill him right here, right? You got to kill him. You got three, four bullets. That's all you get for free, usually. That was Zywu's weakest moment. Okay. One each, guys. Yeah, one each, exactly. Dismantling the post plant. But with the bomb plant itself, Ents decide this is the chance to buy. They want to come through double MAC-10. We saw some good MAC-10 work out of Diha back on Anubis. And Snappy may not be here. But in spirit, Ents can still rush. Zaiwu dives vent, wastes no time. Diha just shrouded outer. 
Apex leaning back has no vision on the crossover, so it's got to be the possibility on Vitality's mind. And... Ooh, ooh almost perfectly crossing over. Oh, a little crouch crawl gets them in. So you got to be got... so in tune with that. Yeah. you got to be spiritual about it, those smoke timings. We got three trophy, two secret. This is priming itself to be the B split. Mezzi with the Fomus up. Two, fright, two fights, two fronts. Ooh, Sweet meant to be assistance. Gun. Apex gets rattled, and Hades, well, he's gonna follow through with the double kill. Zaiwu holds on to the bomb site. That's the two frags from Secret, but his gun goes dry, and so does his hold. Flames and Sphinx silently approaching down from the vents. Blinded Whoa. doesn't matter. Flamesy perfect tracking with the MP9. Grenade gets a huge chunk of Sphinx off the play. Now it's tough to play it. Door open off of that frag as well, I believe. So now suddenly they're feeling pinched, but so is the bomb site. Oh, Goofy comes through with a headshot. The force by working out wonderfully for Ents if they can finish off the quarter health of Sphinx. The single door still shut. No have, cover. They have control side. He swings it wide. Goofy putting a couple shots out. Both these T's getting back into this. And as they close the one door, Sphinx is looking around on site for tools for the drop. There it is, the smoke grenade that Zywoo's Wait, corpse dropped. You can see the plant, though. He taps it once. Goofy's oh. got to come out from window. Goofy's going to gun him down. Smoke a little bit off the mark. And the force buy works out. I wonder if the smoke was like to trick you perspective wise if you're playing control side to thinking maybe it's maybe it was somewhere over here and he could see over top of it not exactly sure certainly did feel like he had to come up with something tricky gimmicky to be able to win that 1v2 the one thing they knew they had going for them is the impending fate of flamesy or the engagement if they have him on control stairs someone has to take that fight eventually whether it's flamesy fighting out of it or them fighting to get, get the plant spot off because otherwise they, they don't have room to plant at all. So they went ahead and earned that. That was good. And it's a good steal back. And that's kind of crazy because at every point in that round, Vitality were putting one of their players in jeopardy on the other side of the map. Secret, they're covering that cross, the nades down in, uh, in B site, as well as the attack on ramp. It was all perfect from Eds, but there were Vitality players every. Trying to get the T's to move, trying to get something going, but it's already being watched. What do they call Sphinx? Um, I actually don't know this. What do they call what do they call Sphinx in like chats when he's not playing well? Sponks? I don't know, man. Don't look there. I never go looking. Sponks? Maybe. Like Sponks O N K S? Or still with an X at the end? O N K S no no, they would just change the one letter to the okay. you know. One Sphinx. Good Sphinx, bad Sponks. It works. I don't know, Launders. I don't talk trash about players. <laughs> yeah, you've never, you've never talked trash. I have never said a bad thing about anybody. Do you also lie on Fantasyland? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Great show, though. You guys check it out. I leaned in on Navi today, and uh, Donk taught me a valuable lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Yet to be humbled. It's crazy, man. Someone's got to give this kid a lesson. Yes. I think the buildup is to Monacy, which makes perfect sense. He's the player in objectively equivalent form who has... Mm. Also returning Katowice champion and MVP. Like, yeah, just objectively better and in equivalent form um that'll be that'll be amazing to see if that happens if big if g2 got to get there g2 play the winner of this match true a chance to make it straight to semi-finals apex you saw a little frustration in that last round but frustration looks good on apex i guess zywu versus donk would also be kind of cool dude kind of be awesome. It'd be awesome, dude. It'd be awesome, dude. Oh, oh. Give me the donk, dude. 
any day of the week. And what do they call Donk when he's playing well? Mm. Pink. No. no. I mean, he's always playing well, so they just call him Donk. Donk. Apex. Crawling around the rafters. These pistols not doing much. Waiting for some kind of a play out. Feels like Ants have just, you know, they've taken like a karate stance. They're looking to counterattack anything that's thrown at them, but a quick chop to the throat. Yeah! And you've got yourself into the A site. You know, you're just trying to avoid Zywu and his Galil, but you found him, you got a piece of him, and he got a piece of you right back. 2v2, and he's going to quickly run down the ramp. He's got six kills already here on Nuke. Ooh, tried to throw himself up ahead of the nade, but he dies as Diha's Mac 10 hits him in the face at Apex. Go ahead, buddy, walk away. This is, uh, oh, I love the shape lead. of that. That was a good round, man. Good mid-round calling here from Glaive or whoever snapped made this judgment. That was really, really solid, and I think that uh, we've seen a lot of that. Yeah, the call is pretty simple. Zywu's heaven, run! <laughs> now in Polish. You owe no chance. <laughs> no chance. For me, it's like the Polish, they just put English in a dishwasher a little bit. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let you explain yourself. Dishwasher. <laughs> okay, okay. And they get a Lukash, you know what I mean? Sure. So. She's got a little twine. It's like Danish, you just take English and you, you remove a couple letters. The British, they just take it and then make it sound a little more condescending. Americans take English, make it sound stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the Polish, the dishwasher. Yeah, you're onto something. That's like my worldview. That's sure. my worldview. Yep. Hey, man. It's your truth. Basically, no one's getting it right, in my opinion. Fast play from Kylar. And it's going to crank. Wow, what a contrast to the last round where it was all posturing, all positioning. This time it's ferociousness. And Kylar rewarded. Blindsiding Sphinx, a second headshot. And that's Zywu. It's also Flame stuck up top with his double kill right back. He's got to take damage on the fall down. Diha chases Apex. And it's man advantage out of Entz. What an opening from Kylar. And this is no longer the Kylar of Nine who struggled individually. The Kylar of Entz is sharp. Let's touch the Skylar. But they're getting active. Oh. They're still trying to move this one forward. CTs don't want to fall back. Mezzi, it's the one headshot that he needed. He's going to peek. They line up and they close him. Ow. Hades to keep Entz in their winning ways. A 4-1 T-side start. That's fire right now. That is brewing under Entz. I mean, of course, it's Katowice. Of course, it means a little bit extra to them. But that alone does not get you to playoffs. There has been no team since Virtus Pro to do anything significant in a Polish lineup, uh, you know, for many years. So, what can you say? A last was it last year when? What was Pasha biking to? Wasn't that oh no? Yeah, it was nine trying. If not, no, no, he was biking to. They're biking to Paris. He was biking to Paris for nine. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. By the time he got there, they were gone. Yeah. Um, Shuhei still made it though. And Pasha didn't even say hello. He didn't think, I don't think he knew Shohei at the time. That's fair. But at least now he has two chances to win, doesn't have to bike anywhere. Three chances, actually. He could have snacks as well. Fingers crossed. And then he has four chances, sorry. Taz, the coach of G2. Five, Shuhei still exists. I was, Unless you I thought I was count. counting him, but. Well, don't count Vitality out, I'll tell you that much. I thought with that M4, something could happen, but it quickly exchanges hands into Flames' instead. He got lucky there as he peeked into a player with a nade out. That nade finds two players down to half health, and I'm looking back through the history books of this nine core. I want to see who have they ever taken down when it comes to Nuke specifically. This would hands down be the biggest scalp they've ever had on this map. And I'm looking at the last 12 months. Okay. So... This start is sure. just phenomenal. The rumblings of an upset. 5-1 T-side, map three. We're not playing games here. That's interesting for me to hear watching their nuke. I've definitely seen some good rounds. And so it's impressive, again, how much they've gotten so good recently. Yeah. What's, their, what's their next biggest win, I guess? would be an interesting question. Do you mean as an opponent or do you mean as yeah. in scoreline? 
Because probably I, opponent. Opponent, yeah. So I see a map over big on nuke, a map over Mao's. Uh, G2, a 16-14, back at the previous major. The previous major? Yeah. Wait, sorry, what, what team are you looking at? Answer. Nine. Oh, nine. Yeah. Okay, right. The core. Nine core, okay. Fair enough. Yes, sir. Majority here. Quick event dive down out of Kylar. Again, just kind of cranking the tempo out from Secret. Or Squeaky, excuse me. Flames trying to pick up anything that would be left behind. Any tracks, any tips, any tidbits. But Kylar's long gone. He did open the single door. Should be audio heard, you'd assume. But still CT's no rotation. They'll put a second guy into the ramp, but Kylar looking at this, they they must not have heard that squeaky door open downstairs. Oh, yeah, they must have timed it. They're playing this perfectly. Kylar, this is going to be another round where he's going to open it up. He shoots right away. There's another CT above him. He could easily give this up. Oh, Apex, it's just the one and done. Great trade. And Kylar's going to lead the charge downstairs. That's that extra space already guaranteed. And because the door's one? open, if anybody comes peeking, Spinks, he's going to go right into the scope of Hades, you'd assume. Comfortable bomb plant from Glaive, perfectly oh finagled, plus Diaz flanking. Layers. This is excellent. Ants, there are layers on this one, and it is going to be a guaranteed 6-1 T-side lead. When Glaive said, uh, when we make this team, we've got to make it as a combination of cultures, combination of styles and eras. And he said, I'm going to learn from these guys, but they want to play a little bit looser. I want to play a little bit more structured. Maybe he gave him a little Danish nuke, okay? That's never hurt nobody. My oh my. Let this reality sink in. World's number one in a map three, down 6-1. And Ents, I mean, it's not like Ents are getting through these rounds by the skin of their teeth, Mohan. This is Ents in commanding fashion. And the runway is getting short. Tied half at Ooh. best. Apex calling for help. Extaz, get in here. But at the same time, as Extaz gets a chance to speak, so does Cuban. Him and Glaive, the Polish brains of the operation here for Ents. Man, this would be a second sort of other storylines aside. This would be a very sizable upset for Vitality to take on at the beginning of the year. Like massive, sort of. And it, it, it is legitimized by the fact that Ents are overall having a great run, but yes. still, versus Vitality, Massive. it still shouldn't be close. So, but since it's already happened with Astralis this year, at a certain point it goes, whoa, what's up this year, Vitality? Because, okay, Blast Groups, but now you've got Katowice as well. They've got to be sweating about that a little bit. There's no way they're not taking it very, very seriously. Every step of the way. Pressure mounting in this series, but Zaiwu's going to alleviate it ever so slightly. That's an M4 kill out from Secret. There's been this pretty consistent threat of the Secret cross. We've seen Apex try to hold back the smokes. This time Zaiwu gets ahead of it by throwing himself into the staircase. Glaive looking for the answer, looking for something to tug on. How do you open this A site? How does he get through? Flames firing the AK from heaven. That's going to indicate a second rifle in play. Oh, nice movement Ooh. from Flames to come down that ladder. Just as Outer is starting to slip into the hands of Ents, he takes it back a bit. Was a great clear. Meanwhile, Kylar, who has successfully found footing on the A site, is actually stuffed. Goofy gets the trade frag back, but it is a Hades 1v3. Off of Extaz and his input, Vitality's defense holds strong with only two rifles they came into this round. But two rifles seemingly enough. You've got to stop the bleeding. And they're lucky to do it now. Yeah, I think this is where a team can get back in versus you. Let's say Team Agnostic. Depending on the types of calls that you come through with now, if you're Ents. Now, the, we saw Vitality break back into Anubis. Ents were very quick to give away, give away two big rifle rounds back to back. And then also 
succumb to a 5v4 early on in the next one. After, I mean, it's part of it for Glaive is like picking the right call based on the economy, based on the momentum as well. And then the other part of it is if your teammates don't hit shots, then uh, it doesn't really matter what calls you make. You still got to make the right ones. So let's see which part of it works or which part of it fails. So I'd say for the sake of the map, this round might not matter that much, but for the sake of the mentality, it could mean a lot. Ooh, and there's an stuffed. opening for Vitality once again. Yeah, and once more, it's Zaiwu outside who just decides he's drawing the line in the sand. Glaive? That's right, Glaive. Outduels Zaiwu right back, though. That's, uh... And it's so early on. Kylar, he's trying to get into the vent. Ooh, he could have gotten caught. I mean, that, that smoke didn't even completely cover him. And Spinks, who had an atrocious first map on Vertigo, is struggling on this A floor in the third map of the series again. But he at least takes control of Squeaky, so they are going to trade vent drop for Lobby. Yeah, Glaive kind of knows what's going on. I mean, he's not going inside of Lobby at all. He's playing outside of it. Maybe he won't. Oh, wow. so yeah, he knows what's going on, man. This is really good. He covered that kill from Zaiwu. Excellently done. Came back, pulled his teammates out of lobby to get moving with the rest of the round. And now they're organizing based on it. But he's also potentially left upstairs as an option. Mm -hmm. And upstairs would be a great option because it's only Flamesy, or excuse me, Apex behind Vent. Now think about how tricky might, this might be to figure out, however, because they haven't cleared out lobby again. They threw main smoke. So there's also utility usage going down upstairs, but at the same time, pressure here. Three yes, seconds, look at that. There look it goes. That. This is a great call from Glaive, man. He actually figured this entire round out. Now they got to get one more kill. Oh, Apex lines oh. him up. Two kills. Damage on the next, but the nade out of Glaive. He reopens the round. Flames, he's up from Vent. It's a man advantage. Apex did everything he had to to try and take this back from Ents, but we've got Kylar back sight in the clutch. All he's got to do is shave them off one by one, and he gets the first oh. damage to the second, but Mezzi holds on, and Vitality, they won't let that seventh slip. That's uh, the play that Apex had to make. Uh, uh, there's just no way other, no other way that they could win the round. Now, I was saying that it can come down to a good call, but if you don't hit your shots, then it doesn't matter. I think this is a good example of exactly that. They had a really well-called round. They covered everything. They even survived the 5v4 right away. But they got a little bit outgunned in the end. And I wouldn't even say that it was like a, a raw duel that they just had to outskill their opponent. Apex had a good lineup from a good position. There was not much they could do about that. Played it with the possibility of that rotate back up to A. He knew that if they did come back, he had to do it all. And just that slight bit of smoke from Main, right? It was a bit of bit poofy. He made the most of it. Immense that was, damage. That was a good call, though, man. That, that made you... From Ents, yeah. Yeah, that you could really see they have a, a good feeling for what the whole map looks like. And for a team who, at this roster, have only played this once versus the Mongols with this exact lineup... And lost. And lost. Uh, that it, that precipitates a win. If it's not now, it's in the future for sure on this map. Yeah, the improvement's clear. And this much improvement this quick. If Ents have shown us anything already in this series, it is promise. The hope is a win. Mezzi gonna stuff Diha on the approach from the stairs. B site feeling all the more comfortable. Sphinx cautious of the potential main wrap because they don't have deep vision outside. And Hades has that scope up waiting for Apex to get ever closer from spawn. At a moment's notice, that squeaky door could be under siege, but there's not many moments left. 25 on the clock here in round 10. Glaive tries to take the tip of the spear. Fast flank out of Hades. Nice Ooh. second shot. Apex in the oh, open. It's he's a triple. Going. Hades just stopping it all. The AWP creeps in from main, and Zaiwu, his counterpart, can do nothing. He's got to let them get off sight. Hades, from start to finish so far in this round, has done everything that they needed to get that bomb plant. And again, six rounds, par for the course. Everything beyond is just icing on the cake. Mezzi hoping to cross around from main, but that angle surely being held by Hades. Oh, and denied, dude. Kylar's headshots are nasty, but not as nice as Hades op. Four frags in a critical round to keep Ents leaps and bounds ahead.
Wow. I, I honestly drop him into a hot action moment and like he takes off. And I was going to say, go for it all the way. Make it a movie. Keep pushing after you get those first three kills. Sometimes I feel like after a 3K like that, Hades can fall back into playing like a standard smart way and then just get oh, hit by an AK or something. Somebody swinging on him. I'm really glad that that worked out with an extra kill at the end. What, a two on five? Maybe a two on four in the end? Something that was all 80s and Kylar. 3v5, my dude. Impressive stuff. Hades saw the chance to just slam that A site. Made to open up Apex. Looking to hang on with just this measly MP9, but he does good damage with it in the background. Still, the front runners punctured through. Saiwu just missed this. Diha's not going to see anything, but yeah, if he comes down vent, it's perfect. I, I don't even know. There could still be someone backside, so I guess why not try to go for this flank? Flamesy of two minds. He's going to come downstairs. Spinks going to get the best of him. Four versus three. Miss shot, Saiwu goes down to the hands of Goofy. And I mean, that's two good rifle moments out of Ents versus Zaiwu. Okay. Kylar last round from Hut into Sight, and this time Goofy opening up the A Sight so that Ents can reopen the possibility, not just of beating Vitality here, but of smoking them, map three. And it's key that the, re the reading rotation so, so clear, so palpably downstairs that they know instantly when it's time to take upper and goofy fights his way out to hell to make that happen because even if they did get a kill and they took ramp and they went lower they would still have the most resistance possible they still have to waste more utility taking control side so it's better that uh they know exactly what the ct setups are based on who's downstairs and find a way to get back up into heaven which sometimes is scary to do oh man now they're just now they're just laying on the hurt Clearing flames off the board. M4 for Sphinx. All that's left. Cuban can't help but have a smirk from ear to ear because he feels this one coming. Dude, this T side needs to be studied because look at it. It could have even been better. It's true. If Apex doesn't hold vent that one round, we'd be looking at a 9 2, potentially 10 round T side from Ents. You just lost to Mongols. Yeah and you're about to take Vitality down a peg. But I alluded to it back on Anubis, right? The best teams, number one every time. They've always got to show resilience. Claim a fourth CT round win and get to work on your own T side, Vitality. It's gonna have to be a long night and a hell of a comeback, and you're gonna have to find a solution to Hades, because my god, is he taking this opportunity with both hands, 15 and three on this T side. Dare I say it, he's not done yet. Molly's exchange towards Squeaky. That consistent threat of Kylar's entries. And Kylar's uptick in performance is such a welcome sight for Ents. They cross over after Zaiwu's nade exposes no one. He's concerned about the main wrap. It puts Sphinx down the vents. He's really willing to just let them have all of Garage, but two players down secret. The trade is likely versus Sphinx. Luckily, he's got flames to work with. They definitely want to press in. Do they predict it? Flames on the off angle. Oh, oh, oh man. This is Glaive. Dishing it out, baby. Just We're, like old times. I mean, unreal accuracy. His his individual and, level. And so much on the entries for this whole event as well. It's a it's, uh, key part of his game when his form was on point. And hey, you don't even have to IGL that well if you can double entry. I'm telling you. So not only has been doing a great job as a caller, but his individual performances, not only his peaks, but his average have been standing out. A mandatory retake demanded. Apex falls out from the heavens, wings clipped. Zywu, 1v5, nothing to pull on. Believe your eyes, a Polish core, 9-3 up on map three versus world's number one.
what your clothes are for but I can't tell what you're looking for And I could lie They say you ain't my type But it feels right, I know right And it looks like you just might Make me wanna say Years since a Polish core has found success at Katowice, and yet here we are with Entz knocking on the door of a best of three win over the world number one. Incredible calls coming out of Glaive, incredible headshots coming out of Glaive, but it is Hades who tops the charts tonight in map three, 16 and three, in fact, as Team Vitality have to set out on this T side with a massive endeavor ahead. This could already be the upset of the year, essentially, with the you know level of difference. The only thing softening that blow is Vitality already taking a big loss. But uh, with the uh, very little time that ends have been together and the little expectations we have for them, this is more than astoundingly <laughs> impressive. And wow. oh my god, all right. Well, as I always said, shut up. Hell of a way to kick it off. A, a warning of what's to come, perhaps. Now, we do have a player boosted in the ramp room. Glaive's going to try to take back that space. Saiwu made. Nice tap. But he does lose control of the fence. Beretta's inside of Hut. Hades. Oh, it's a great distraction. Oh, they're everywhere. Diha, he presses his Berettas on the flank. And there's Saiwu continuing with the P250. But we've got Messi in what is an essential 1v3. Great gush. Oh, Great what? God. He stays in the open, exposed oh. to the ramp, and down at the hands of Goofy. Kubin can feel it coming because we've got Entz three rounds away from victory tonight. Reaching escape velocity now, getting that pistol round. I mean, yeah, still nothing was promised, but now at 10 rounds and you steal away the pistol, even if you get eco at this point, you have a good lead. You have a CT side to get onto. You have really overcome the beast of Vitality. And the number one favorite for this entire tournament. The first tournament of the year. From the best team coming out of last year. You could take them down on your run at Katowice. Maybe the dream was to make playoffs. What if the dream is now to win? Up into heaven, go to. Vitality coming in with everything they can damn well afford. An MP5 on Kylar, making his job a little harder, but at least he's got the Fomus here with him. And it was that prod from Hut last round that set up the trophy push. This time Glaive looking to come in again. Oh, hell yeah. Shave Sphinx off the lobby. And this is total control for Entz up in here, but the moment they leave, two players of the pack do come back. I think they are just happy to take a risk and not even get punished that hard for this. But the one thing I like about this on this sort of bonus round is their buy lead is not even that strong. So playing it 100% safe doesn't necessarily make sense, uh, even though you just won the last round, just on CT side. But now with a kill, they do have the ability to relax a little, <laughs> a little bit more. Molly comes in, Kylar. It's going to be safe here, looking to press that MP5 into anybody that looks to split sight. Flames comes in, looks at heaven. Goofy's got it from up above. It's a stuff. It's a shutdown. And it's Apex desperate to get anything oh. going. An 11th in the bag for Entz. It is all gone wrong. Cuban, look at that. He's soaking it up already. And he's not one to get excited before the game's done. No, no. and I think that's really the read of the situation. He's been a, he's just been how convincing it's been. been. Master of his emotions, but... Uh, I think we've all got a little pull in us tonight, if you know what I'm saying. Just such a marked improvement from the likes of Kylar. His first shot accuracy has been through the roof. 
Hades taking it to a whole new level. And Goofy, who as of late has been struggling within this core. That was Hades' right-hand man when the nine core were making a name for themselves throughout 2023. That dip in performance had to hurt. And for Goofy and Kylar to be two players asked to go into an English-speaking roster, the challenge that Ents face, nothing to scoff at. And yet here they are stepping up to the plate. It is a, still a long road to the Spodek. It is G2 that await them. But my God, if the dream doesn't feel real after a win over Vitality. And this isn't just two maps that they've scraped by. This isn't just getting Vitality making mistakes. As we hit a hiccup, unfortunately, in the round. But damage done, so round live. Glaive is going to hold off on ramp room. Zaiwu comes up from downstairs. Deagle into Glaive. Nice response from Goofy. Snaps the shot over, but Flames' AK opens up. They're going to try to charge it downstairs. Kylar's holding. And Hades not far off. Apex comes through. Deagle oh, headshot from him. What? It's a kill that he tries to press down into Hades. Hades recovers. Beretta's are out. But they don't know that Dihas crashed. And so this is a round one for Sphinx. Wait, but... Oh, man. Dihas stands here. Sphinx will plant. And oh, my God. Round is over, folks. Literally nothing they could do about it right now. Nothing they can do. Oh, that's tough. That does hurt. <laughs> you know, on the plus side, I don't know what happened. It's not 12 11, map three. It's not, yeah, that, not like that ever happened before. Nope. And luckily, there's a big bank of hype that Ents can tap back into. Just remember, boys, you were smiling, you were celebrating just a round ago. Get him back in there, Kubin. Don't let this derail the reality that is Ents. Still, even after that, seven rounds ahead. Yeah, people don't really understand how hard it is to stay focused uh, after things like that happen. But it is actually the true reality of a pro player to have to, for any number of extenuating circumstances, whether it's PC issues, personal health issues, anything. High performance environment, lots of days of playtime, things like this will happen. When it happened to Fallen, or sorry, when it happened to Furia the other day, Fallen said, hey, it sucks, but in my career, I've seen it happen so many times. And uh, in his case, he didn't have rounds after to recover from it. Uh, but when you do, it's still hard to get back on track. And I think that's why you get pre-tilted, is because even though you know you have a lead now, and you know, oh, well, we'll probably win in the end, well, you're probably also going to lose a couple just in that time that it takes you to get back into that zone where everything was perfectly good. Snowball effect. So there's still some money for Ents, but... Not enough to come in with the buy right away, so that one round does indeed mean another. Unless they're calculating, tabulating, crunching those numbers. Now uh, we'll see five sevens. Couple pistols come out. We'll hold our breath for Ence's sake. So they were looking to run away with this map three and the series and the chance to play G2 for the Spodek. All of that still very much on the line. You can pop open that smoke, brother, but you got a USP. I don't think you're stopping much. Maybe you get vision, maybe you scramble to the B site, but... We're gonna get Flames pulling them apart up on A. Nice spray control for the following kill. Mezzi will die. And honestly, you take what you can get. Really can't be understated how great of a map Hades is having. 
downhill go this time. There's Vitality's fifth. There's the freebie that comes with the hiccup of the round prior. Yeah, to be honest, when they played against Mongols, they would have won if not for Hades. Like, Hades had missed a couple of really important shots near the end, where I was like, ah, man, like, this is when you're playing on end, so much attention on you, but, like, just a couple of shots in big moments that you were clearly a little, little nervous where you let it go. But then right after, bounce back, massive map again. And all map long before those big shots, huge from Hades as well. So lots of time for him to prove himself on Nuke versus a much better team. So let's give it a shot, Ents. If they survive that test, we'll have so much more to be proud of. Ooh, big nade. Anytime you can get Zywu down to 50 health for free, you take it. A bit of chip on flames as well, but very quickly evacuating ramp room was Glaive. Down to the B site, he'll go. It's an entire Vitality team in tow. Ooh, frisky repeak. Almost costs him. He's got support from Hades, and again, the potential for the hell flank. The op already in place. Wow, now crossing in the open. Yeah, dangerous, but Hades makes it. Whoa, going over to single, that's insane. <laughs> As the Molotov comes down, he reopens the door. Hades playing on the gates of hell. Reed peeks out, just pulls Flames oh, off the play. The pressure is, that is immense. The play. He gets back into the single door. The amount of risk that Hades throws Vitality's way this time, and to do it in such a high pressure moment with what could have been the entire team breathing down his neck. Glaive quickly off control. Can't manage to get his second. There's the response back from Zywu and Mezzi. The only two left to try and make this 2v4 happen. They've equaled things out. Kylar down to the single. Zywu here to push. But it's Kylar clean with the rifles again. And last time, Mezzi couldn't clutch it. Playing front silo on site. Wants to get out of dodge. He'll find a way to exit. Yep, here's the other one running. That's a good picture for Mezzi to work with, mentally knowing they're both over there in the depths of this site. Molotov goes a little too deep. Mezzi comes out, but a oh. miss. And it's Entz right back to winning ways. Ooh, spray went awry. It was the control steps. Molly, that helped them ISO. If they just, if they did Molly on the stairs, they wouldn't be able to defuse from that angle. Mezzi, if he took one kill there, he knows he gets both. Or at least can play for time. Uh, this is, uh, honestly, Haiti. <laughs> Hades hit some, made amazing plays here, hit some great shots, but I was with you when you crossed the decon. I was like, oh my what? god, this is nuts. So there were a couple, and then he ended up dying in decons. So there were a couple small timings where things almost went south, but you got to appreciate him getting in the middle of that in a round like this. I mean, that's how you have impact in the first place. It's playing to win, so yeah, he's playing to win. He's got the most kills. Answer up five, 12 to 5. It's all the ingredients you need. Two days ago, it felt like getting through the play-in stage was a victory enough for Entz. Meeting the world number one in their opening game of the group stage felt like a sentence to the lower bracket, and instead they've seized this opportunity, this dream of getting to the Spodek with both hands. With a white knuckle grip on their guns, they have swung for the fences. Kylar's entry on the A site set the tone for this nuke map. Goofy's found his moments, Glaive has ripped headshots, and all the whiles, Hades up in lights. The opera that will not be stopped. To think he finds himself back on this Ents roster once again. An organization that cut him in the place of Sun Pius. Returning with his countrymen at a hell of a time to come alive. It's Goofy backside to be tested. Glaive up above him to sweep one away. It's an all-in commitment from the Vitality camp, and they've got three sets of feet out from Squeaky. Kylar holds. And as Bomb goes down, he senses a chance. Hades, ooh, missed shot on the snap over, so Lobby falls to the hands of Vitality. Man advantage right there with it. And Entz yeah. may have to just hold off. Wow, it's not, I mean, it was very close to unwinnable right there, but there was a little bit of a chance both from Hades, pe or from Deha peeking from heaven as well as peeking right there into Mini to see if he could search a kill. And I'm not saying it's the end of the world to let this opportunity go because it is still 6 to 12, but you know how quickly a lead can vanish. 
Um, I do think there needs to be some rounds that you think about how to maximize, even if you don't fully go for them in games like this, because this round was a pretty big opportunity that Vitality actually pulled back. That was a good upper defense, responded to by greater entries, but at one moment here, it was over. If Hades had hit his flick there, obviously hard shot, but if he hit it, it would have been over. If they had one more kill in the upper defense, it probably would have been over instantly. So you hate to see the, those ones let, get let go, and now there's not a full buy behind it. Don't be fooled, Hades can scout. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Makes this gun look real good. But has to forego control of outer. Crossing red, the entire camp of Vitality, bar Spinks, who's left back on lobby. But with no real indication of just how compromised this B site is, we've yet to get the rotate. Now they will start to work their way down from ramp. And of all the names we've had to say tonight, Diha on this third map, it's been relatively quiet, so a huge chance for him to have impact late game. An opportunity to close as Glaive presses against the glass. He gets his head taken clean off. Zaiwu, it's an easy first entry. Diha's position now known. Snap up to control, but a trade looks good on Flames. And the forced buy just doesn't come to fruition. Vitality fight on, a seventh secured. I swear the angle is good, but the glass itself is such a liability because of the damage absorption. So it's like, you never want to be the first person to shoot, but in CS2, you never want to be the second person to shoot. So now you can't take that fight anymore. What should you do? You got to take a new one. How do you do that? Like move to a new... I say break position. the glass. Break the glass. Yeah, like pre-break the glass. That's yeah. yeah, the beginning of the round, sure. Let them know. That's a good idea. Well, if you if you shoot first, all that happens is you, you get killed. Back to the workshop then. Five rounds the lead for Ents. But again, they're going to have to take one. Just let it slide. And every time Vitality went around, every step they get closer to closing this gap. Those big grins, those hoots and haulers we were getting out of the Ents camp. Back to reality. Map and match not closed just yet. The pressure is a different kind of pressure when you have an opportunity like this with a five round lead. So the map you haven't proven yourself on, but clearly are good at. So the team you haven't proven yourself with. One, one month old Polish IGL, ready to take over the world. And a honeymoon period that you're trying to maxim <laughs> maximize in order to win the biggest Polish tournament on the calendar. And one of the biggest tournaments, period. Quick opener on Diha. Cuban coming out yesterday, of course, when they qualified and made it, or rather advanced to the group stage. He said, I'm shocked with how good we are so fast. Did not anticipate this level of success out of the gate. Little did he realize the limitless potential that Ents seemed to have. But again, job's not done. Kylar peeks right into the AK of Sphinx, and the A site crumbles. Goofy ugh, just can't get there. Hades, it's a fast scout flank and a swap to the AK, but a bomb plant secured. And there goes the eight. Surely, although slowly, Vitality get ever closer. The shadow that looms behind Ents catching up. And you'll hear Apex get louder. The path to victory gets a little bit more clear. The path to OT in this situation is we're on map three. Becomes a little bit more 
viable, accessible in your mind. Vitality will now have a, a more a stronger strength buy here from Ents to go up against to test their metal, but I think they're focused on one round at a time. And they're probably telling ourselves, okay, let's just let's see where they fall apart a little bit. Let's play it to the best of our abilities, and then we go done. slowly find new ways to kill them. Love this angle from Flames in between smokes, catching one in transition. That's a big kill on Hades. Someone else going to have to pick up his slack. Meanwhile, poor Diha's just got an MP9 to try and hold off on the ramp. Frag grenade could be a little too late here. Kylar going to peek in and then decide to dive back. Fire removes him from the support of Diha, but at least now he's got Glaive. Do they try to crunch this? Ooh, this could be the call, actually. They're going to throw themselves at the ramp fight, and if Mezzi's not ready... Oh, he goes down. But Spinks inside of the corner, spotted out by Diha. He is locked in, and Kylar just got the support of Frag. They're going to swing on Spinks. AK gets away. Diha wow. comes through. Man advantage taken back. That's and the glade then difference. The right kill now. on Apex. There's oh. the close. There's the dream. And the hopes of the Polish Ents. As the road to the Spodek is still a long one, but the first step paved by the blood of Vitality. That's the glade difference, baby. Right there. Oh! That was, uh... That's a special way to end. I didn't want to give them too much credit with this new project. They've all been doing so good. You see those Kylar peaks? So sharp. Good disengages and everything. And they just took out world's number one. The Grim Reaper knocking on every door, Katavid says. Ents. Ents. And what lies ahead? A top-heavy G2 that's looking mortal. The returning champs who want to make that semi-final run. But Ents step past Vitality to open it up. Worlds ranked 49 over top of number one. And in a round with no Hades, everybody else steps up. Wow. An absolute performance, a showing of force there from this Int squad. A lot of questions were coming about this Int squad before we came here, but now, now they've damn sure done something uh, noteworthy. A shocker, Trace, taking down the world number one in their first big tournament, really. Uh, great performance from Ants, and have Kylar joining us. Congratulations. Hello, guys. How are you feeling? <laughs> uh, pretty good. Expected? <laughs> Expected win? Of course. <laughs> of course. So tell, tell me what it looked like coming into today for this matchup in particular. I mean, for Vitality. I mean, sitting across from them, they're known to be pretty good. Yeah, they are pretty good. But uh, <coughs> of course, we are under God, underdogs. So we uh, we feel pretty confident. Like we don't have anything to lose. So it was pretty easy to play. Like without pressure, we we didn't have to win. It was all on them. So it was pretty nice for us you guys have had some close games in the play and right like where you were able to come back that mirage game versus the mongols as well how much did those games mean to you you know how much did that strengthen you so to speak coming into this match now against vitality yes we are a new team we are struggling a lot like with beginning of the matches because uh, a lot of chaos at the beginning a lot of emotions so <coughs> The comeback that we made against Mongols shows that we are pretty good mentally already. And when we pl start playing our game, we are really strong. We just need to keep doing that, and I think it will get even better. Yeah, the game against Mongols yesterday, it looked like you gave up a lot of first kills on your CT side especially, and it, things weren't looking good for you. What was different today where, I mean, we can't just say, oh yeah, we're just hitting our shots better. Was there something else that was going on as well, or was it actually just, yeah, we just didn't give up first bloods, we hit our shots? Uh, against Mongols, it was a bit different because they were the underdogs, and we kind of played, uh, I don't want say disrespectfully but yeah a bit more reckless uh, and against vitality we said that we can give them anything we can't just uh, lose 2v4 and just collapse so we played like against Australis we took every advantage to the full 
you know, on Vertigo, obviously, you did a lot of great work, but on this map, especially on Nuke, we picked out a couple of rounds too early on on the T side, where you were sort of the tip of the spear for your team, right? Going through, you know, the door play that you had first and the following round going down once. Is this something that you just enjoy doing in general, that you specifically knew that maybe there was a gap against Vitality that you could use it? Talk us a little bit through that. <laughs> I have... I think I have the most uh, entry place in my team, uh, and I like playing first, so it's nice. It's nice to have spawns finally. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, uh, we knew it will work, so yeah. Uh, so Kuben said, just do it in, before the match, and I did it. <laughs> <laughs> what if it was always that easy, right? <laughs> what are we looking at here in this round? It's <laughs> our. Actually, I have a strat from nine. <laughs> <laughs> you got a couple of those saved up from nine? A couple strats from those times? Yeah. So you use them on other maps, not just Vertigo. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, obviously, this this was a big victory for you guys. You came here, and for Ents, there are a lot of question marks. Is there anything that you want to say now? I mean, you've beaten Vitality. You made your way all the way to this point. Is there anything you want to tell the fans at home? We are coming to spot it. <laughs> okay. Hell yeah. It is that simple. Well, uh, look, man, I, I think we'll get you out of here if, if you're okay with that. We appreciate you joining us. It's okay. <laughs> unless, you want, unless you want to stick around. You're more than welcome to stick around. But this is where we start doing our, our cleanup and our housekeeping and whatnot. So, <laughs> and our Air Force Aim High. What was I even thinking? That's the United States Air Force Aim High. Who do you think it is, Yanko? Hades, maybe? He had a great game on you. Hades, for sure. Hades for sure. <laughs> there we go. Hades for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he was definitely there. Go ahead, man. You're good. Uh, he was definitely in the building. We talk about feeling yourself, and this was it. Yeah, absolutely. Been a little bit up and down here and there, but on this decider map, I mean, on the T side, he was an unstoppable force right there. The round towards the end of the half where he gets four kills with the AWP as uh, Ants is splitting the upper bomb site. We see doing some work in the second pistol too. Really tremendous impact from Hades on, on Nuke. And it looks like a sharp contrast actually to how he was looking yesterday and in previous days where it used to look like he couldn't hit a shot, and today it looked like he couldn't miss a shot. So, I mean, he had an in insane performance here, and it's not like he was just like sitting around in the back. He was getting in their faces. He was getting dirty, down and dirty. But, I mean, a lot of this focus right now is on ends playing really well. But on the flip side of things, Vitality was also kind of like off their game. They were missing a lot of shots. They were standing in the open, getting shot on the side. In, in, in all these 2 vs two versus twos, one versus ones, they were just like aiming at the sky. Like, what are you aiming what, at? Are you, you know? not supposed to do that? I don't know. Sounds, <laughs> sounds, sounds, I don't know. Anyway, look, what I did you see in round 12, though? Like, um, what, what was your big deal about round 12? You okay, can talk so, about for hours. So Vitality, we saw that they were actually leaving the upper bomb site. They were doing a stack on the ramp. They were doing a stack on lower. And Glaive just comes downstairs and literally just rips their head off. They Like, he doesn't care about them at all. He's on point. He's hitting his shots. But worse than that is Vitality had the right read. They abandoned Upper, they knew Ents wasn't going to go there, but it doesn't matter because they just, first guy doesn't even shoot, second guy swings and just misses everything as well. So uncharacteristic for sure from Vitality, something that I did not expect to happen. But I mean, we've seen Na'Vi also fall today and now Vitality is, is thing, are things getting shaken up? Or Close like, the tournament wide open, Trace. Yeah, yeah. that does. It, it definitely puts a wrench in some in some plans here for, uh, well, at least Vitality for sure, right? <laughs> so <laughs> well, there's that guaranteed uh, at the very most. I Let's take a look at the bracket. Jim. I didn't catch the FaZe Clan game, albeit they played Rebels, so I don't know how much you can take away from that game. But so far, man, the best team in Katowice, or the team that looked the best, is Team Spirit. And I'm not I just fair, talking fair. about the fact that individually, you know, Donk and whatnot, just as a team, they were super polished, um, playing against complexity for a spot in the playoffs. I think they're a big favorite in that matchup, but over in Group B is where we had the big upset oh with Vitality losing to Ants. And now Ants versus G2 for a spot in the spot deck, returning champions versus the Polish home, hometown favorites. And down in the lower side of the bracket, we still have games to play that's going to come tomorrow. Well, Monty was, versus Gamer Legion, Cloud9 versus Mouse. That's what I was going to say about the lower bracket. I mean, you give that a year ago, I don't think that looks right. <laughs> What's going to happen in the lower bracket too? I mean, Cloud9 lose to Rebels, then beat BB team, beat VP to get into groups. Mouse, are they ready to take the next step now with Brolan? Monty hasn't really played 
anything this season yet, right? They have a spot at the RMR, so they didn't have to play the qualifiers or anything like that. What have they been up to? A lot of questions to be answered tomorrow, Trace. And a lot of questions to be asked still, uh, which is what we'll be doing tomorrow. But again, this is what Day 5's A stream does look like. You see Cloud9 Miles, you're just kind of touching on that a little bit. Navi Apex, uh, and then Yanko, I got a little, a little match you could touch on right here at the very bottom. Yeah, I think that's actually an interesting one. Eternal Fire on the way up. I think the problem though is Phase's permaban is vertical. That's Eternal Fire's best map, so they'll have to, you know, dig deep in that series to really uh, cause another upset, so to speak, and get into the playoffs. Gamer Legion, Monty. Yeah, that's cool. Spirit complexity. Can Spirit continue to do it? Rebels, Falcons, Falcons. Is there like a bounce back? Like, what's gonna happen there? We don't know. Steel. It doesn't matter right now, though, does it? I don't think it really matters right now. I thought they were gonna do a lot better coming into this tournament, but I mean, they fell flat on their first game. It's like, what's going on here? It's Everything I'm predicting right now, every team I think is going to do well, every team that I think is going to go far, like Astralis. Yes, you are wrong well, about everything we noticed. I, I'm <laughs> wrong about everything. Well, not everything. Not everything. There have been a couple of things, but also there have been some right things. So, you know, really good job, man. What is right anymore, you know? What is right anymore? I don't Everything's know. Everything's fluid. Uh, I think you're doing a great job up here, Steel. And you're all right, too, I guess. Oh, thank you, man. Uh, and for us, that here. does it for the, the day. That does wrap up the A stream. The B stream has been gone for some time. So now for us, we get We to are the only down. people left here. Right here, right now. It's over. It's done. It's for done. the day, at least. We'll come back tomorrow. we got some more Intel Extreme Masters coming your way. It's Katowice in 2024, y'all. We'll see you tomorrow. This ain't new to me Since the age of 22 I've been losing it Like it's fuel to level up Like it's jumping in my cup Like there's nothing interrupting my pursuit of dreams There's a vision in my mind It's consuming me Take my confidence combined with opportunity Mix it up with unity Soon to be the greatest of my generation Operation Victory Butterfly Oh you will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! A lot of fights, big dreams met with bigger lies. It ain't what it seems from the outside. My downfall, they pray. Will I surrender or will I betray? Given the trauma that lives in my brain, or use it to fuel up the fire in my veins. I never complain, I boss up and do it. If there's a battle, I'll find my way through it. If the wind blows, I thank God that he blew it. Cause what is a blessing depends on you feel it. The fruits of my labor are in abundance. Indispensable, I'm not redundant. Incomprehensible, the way I've done it. When the struggle pushes me, I'll shove it. I rise above it. Vital fly, we will stay. Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! Setting fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up, not coming down, screaming We are, we are Superman's kryptonite We are, we are Blowing up, dynamite Dynamite! Setting fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up, not coming down, screaming
Oh! Okay. 